the story is about a 40-year-old man who lived a miserable life in a wealthy family's corporation, despite his best efforts to rise to a higher position. However, he was still eliminated by the wealthy family due to trouble. After that, he was reincarnated as the wealthy family's grandson. The process of climbing to a new position, making money and taking revenge will be like. Let's wait and see. At the beginning of the story, the large building of the Sun Yen Group stands out. This is a group with annual sales of nearly $300,000 billion, with just business profits exceeding $30,000 billion. It is the leading enterprise of the Republic of Korea, leading in the field of automobiles and electronics. This group cooperates and is signed with countless other large companies. Therefore, this group holds the power to influence most other fields such as media, heavy industry, chemicals, distribution, fashion and even food. Also present in this business is the main character, a person living and studying at a university in a rural village. Therefore, when he received notice of being recruited into the Sun Yen group, his father invited all his relatives to come and organize a lavish party to show off his precious son. Until the main character was transferred to headquarters to plan future strategies for the tower, the son of the Sun Yen group, his heart was so happy that it exploded. But who would have thought that his job there was to clean toilets for people at a construction site inside the Sun Yen building? A group of well-dressed men were beating a weak man while behind their backs were two men, one wearing black glasses like a bodyguard and one sitting symbolically as a boss, like a final boss. Our main character plays the villain. From a janitor who specializes in handling ordinary and dirty things, that was just his humiliating past. He did not give up but tried to learn to become talented, focused on learning English and learning more about business plans. He gritted his teeth as a henchman for the group and until today his position has turned to a new page in the noble family of Sun Yen. No one does not know the name Hain Kwa. Hain Kwa is now like Miss Universe. Life has turned to a new page, a new position compared to Hain Kwa two to three months ago. The name Hain Kwa has become a name that everyone always looks for when they feel regretful. After 13 years of working, no one knows the true face of noble families like Hain Kwa. He has received maximum trust from the Sun Yen group. At Morova Airport right now Hain Kwa is at the airport. The Sun Yen group trusts him so much that they immediately transferred $700 million into Hein Kwa's black account fund without fear that he would take high money and fly away like in movies. Hein Kwa pulled a suitcase probably containing money, a suitcase of money and a handsome main character walking back and forth in the airport. At the crowded airport with bright sunshine, the main character played dumb by not wearing glasses but naturally looking up at the sky. Just don't know that he squinted because it was too sunny. Remembering his conversation with his boss who said he would give about $700 million and Hein Kwa would temporarily hide in Morova. After investigating the company by prosecution, his boss will contact Hein Kwa and by then transfer money back into his account. Hein Kwa was afraid because it was too much money so he told his boss but why did he ask with an unpleasant attitude? Hein Kwa told his boss, is it okay to have that amount of money in an account under my name? The boss was silent then sneered sarcastically of course it's okay. Even my wife I don't trust, I only trust you. Hein Kwa leaned back in his chair and spoke in boss's tone only you can handle that amount of money. Hearing his boss say that made Hein Kwa very happy because he thought he was being trusted. At the airport, remembering that story also made Hein Kwa laugh for seven days and seven nights. After a while of playing dumb, standing looking at the sun, Hein Kwa took out his sunglasses with absolute trust from the Sun Yen group's family. Hein Kwa's life as a main character officially begins now. Hein Kwa put on his sunglasses to pretend to be the main character. Suddenly, a voice came from behind OLO. Head of Hein Kwa's department turned around and saw two familiar names, one tall and one fat coming from afar. You must have had a hard time coming here? The two pretended to be friendly and asked. Hein Kwa was extremely surprised. Isn't this the secretary's office? Why are these two here? 
the chairman sent us to assist the head of department, Hein Kwas Talmaim said. Assist how? The fact that I came here is top secret information that Hein Kwa thought silently but did not dare to say. Suddenly there was a flash, Hein Kwa panicked and looked over. The fat man had gone behind his back without knowing when. The fat man put a gun to Hein Kwa's side and said that the chairman had given clear orders, we must assist you, so please be quiet and follow us. Please invite Mr. Chow to pretend to be polite, he said at this time. Hein Kwa was just scared, could it be that Huen started to feel scared all over his skin? Could he plan to kill me this way? Thirteen years is the time Huen has been loyal and worked like a dog at the Sun Yen group. Hein Kwa looked at the fat man then looked at the skinny man. Hein Kwa couldn't believe he was being eliminated by the chairman like this. He pretended to sigh, hey, can I make a call to the chairman? In pretending to be pitiful, he said to the fat man, but he coldly replied, dream on, the fat man disdainfully said, you have a lousy head of department position but you dare. Hein Kwa was so angry that he yelled at the fat man. Then you guys call him and tell him I've finished my job and disappeared. I'll hide in South America or East Asia, swear I won't show up until I die. The skinny man sitting in front, who had just spoken up, Hey, head of department Hein Kwa, can you shut up? Don't you think about your parents and your wife? After he finished speaking, it made Hein Kwa die, parents. He told you not to go home. Your parents will receive compensation. Afterwards, the fat man told Hein Kwa, and your wife will be supported by the chairman to move to America for a peaceful life there. Nonsense Hein Kwa thought after dealing with me, surely he would cover up everything for me. Is there any case where an employee's family causes a public scandal and still enjoys those privileges? Hein Kwa was angry, clenched his fists into fists, he was sure he would not receive a pension and if sued, confiscated property would not have a penny left in his pocket like what he had done. The wheelchair rolled and kept running until it reached the edge of the forest. Hein Kwa got out of the car and walked step by step towards the rock wall. This lake that I don't know its name, Hein Kwa thought again, is it my grave? Suddenly Hein Kwa wanted to say one last word with those two names. He turned around and said wait a minute I want to say something. But the fat man didn't care, he pulled out his gun and pointed it at Duju and then there was a flash and suddenly the story turned into a child with a frightened face as if he had just dreamed of a nightmare. The child opened his eyes wide in extreme fear again as that dream. Hein Kwa is this child's past life, Duju and woke up with this child's body for three months but still always dreamed of his past life. Dujuan are you okay? Still okay? The caring mother asked Dujuan silently, opened her eyes wide but did not answer, this woman is Dujuan's mother in this life, an actress who became famous with just one movie but heard she disappeared from the screen after receiving a proposal from her father. He is also a passionate fan of his mother, next to Dujuan's brother in this life. He was pressing his phone while cursing that he was sleeping and suddenly making a mess. Is that so, did you dream of a nightmare? You look not okay? The caring mother asked Dujuan. Dujuan pretended to be calm, no, I just startled a little bit, don't worry too much. Well then it's lucky Dujuan, our family sometimes behaves like adults, making me a little worried. Is that so, Dujuan hesitated, and replied Dujuan understood his mother's worries because he himself was also very panicked about his own situation. On June 26, 1987, 30 years later on this day, it will be the day Dujuan died in his previous life and three days later, Gilgeron's grandson, the founder of the legendary Sun Yen group, will open his eyes to life. The youngest 10-year-old grandson of the group ordered the killing of Dujuan in his previous life at a peaceful lake in Morova, remembering the gunshot in his previous life still made Dujuan shudder until now. Dujuan still doesn't understand what it means to reincarnate into Dujuan's body because during the time he served as a servant and sold his life for the Sun Yen group. Dujuan had never met these people before because at that time they had been completely eliminated. That means they are absolutely not allowed to approach the Sun Yen group. What Dujuan heard at that time was their noisy marriage to their son. 
despite everyone's objections, to marry the one he loved, Chairman Qin Yang Chan was very angry. But because of the grandchild in her belly, he had to accept the wedding ceremony. After that, this family was completely eliminated from the Sun Yen group. However, Du Juan admires this couple very much. Because in order to get a little more shares of the group, other brothers are willing to fight each other like dogs. As for this couple or rather Du Juan's mother in this life, she stays away from that battle and takes care of her own life. Du Juan secretly felt that this couple was admirable. Du Juan now, although still having memories of his past life, has been reincarnated as the son of this couple. The car slowly stopped in front of a building with countless guards standing guard. Du Juan had to exclaim, this place is so huge. Unexpectedly Du Juan came here. Three buildings with a ground area of about 3,636 square meters along with 53-story above-ground parking lots and two underground parking lots. A huge tower with a fence circumference of 380M superscript 2, this is the mansion of Chairman Jin Yang Chan who founded and operated the Sun Yen Group. The guards saw Du Juan's family coming and respectfully bowed. Du Juan remembered that after Chairman Jin Yang Yang passed away in his previous life, his eldest son Jin Yang Ki would inherit this mansion, this is also where Du Juan had to weed in his previous life, his first task after being accepted. He remembered that before his previous life he came here more often than even his parents. Today Du Juan's family comes here because it is Chairman Jin Yang Gan's birthday. Many big-faced guests are laughing and talking to each other. Du Juan's family walked in, those flattering guests gathered around whispering and speaking ill of Du Juan's family. Du Juan silently thought without knowing what was happening. The whole family held hands and walked in. Du Juan realized that everyone here showed contempt for his family, surely they didn't need to pretend to know him secretly. The whole family continued to walk past all the guests and reached the door of the mansion. We're here, said Du Juan's grandmother as she opened the door. At this time in the living room, the whole family was present. They looked at Du Juan's family with contempt. His aunt and uncle in this life pretended to ask, Are you here? This is your aunt and uncle and their whole family over there. They are all ambitious people, just waiting for their father to die quickly to seize the delicious piece of meat that is the Sun Yen group. Du Juan silently observes the faces of everyone. At this time his aunt shouted, Why are you late? I thought you were still in the period of applying powder and lipstick. Do you think you are a movie star? Why dare to come last? Du Juan stood aside and observed, And who is this woman? This face looks familiar. As for Du Juan's grandmother, she hurriedly said, I'm sorry, I thought I just had to be on time. At this time his aunt finally stopped talking. Anyway, it's late already. At this time Du Juan remembered that when he was 70 years old in his previous life, his aunt still changed her lover like a meal and guided the young to follow. Du Juan saw that her character when she was young compared to then was exactly the same. Du Juan used to suffer a lot because of her, suddenly her aunt looked at Du Juan and said, Did you just laugh? Du Juan replied with a sound to pretend to be dumb. Can you still laugh in this situation? People in the house start to show an uncomfortable attitude. Everyone stared at Du Juan. Now it's still just a kid, yes I didn't laugh, Du Juan said. His aunt didn't give up, she shouted, the brat dares to open his mouth and lie. How dare you at this time your brother just spoke up. Hey, can you stop now? Everyone is gathering together and you still make noise? His aunt continued to argue but that brat. At this time a powerful voice spoke up, who dares to raise their voice in my house? Everyone was scared and turned around, a tall and majestic man was the owner of the voice just now. His uncle and aunt saw him so scared that they bowed their heads and dared not say anything more. Every step down of the man made those sitting in the living room scared, not daring to look up. The man kept walking step by step, those with uncomfortable faces just looked down at the ground, not daring to stick their faces up. 
Du Juan's whole family also respectfully bowed their heads because this is Du Juan's grandfather in this life, the leader of the Sun Yen group and also the legend of the group. The person who even his children are afraid of and of course, the cause of fear is because of his money. Afraid of not inheriting that pile of money, afraid of being robbed by brothers and sisters of their share, afraid of not keeping the name of a wealthy family. These fears intertwined, making them all extremely scared. His grandfather is the most powerful person in this house. Ji Angan, chairman of the group, a person who even sold his life like a dog in his previous life, Du Juan had never had contact with him before. Sir, we're here, Du Juan's parents respectfully bowed their heads and greeted. His grandfather glanced over, making Du Juan's brothers so scared that they had to hide behind their mother. His grandfather just glanced at his grandson without saying anything. Du Juan secretly analyzed that this brother was the reason why his grandfather could not object to the wedding so he was so scared. Just thinking about it, Du Juan suddenly felt goosebumps on his sideburns. His grandfather was looking at him with bullet-shaped eyes. Du Juan was suddenly scared too because his grandfather was walking towards him step by step, it was too scary. Du Juan now wants to cry but can't. Du Juan is thinking about what his grandfather will do to him. Suddenly his grandfather changed 180 degrees, he smiled broadly and said, Oh my puppy, it's been a long time since I saw you. I said I had to come often. At this time Du Juan stood still too suddenly, kind not used to it. His kind grandfather patted Du Juan's head and asked, Do I have something for my puppy? Are you curious? Dujuan is still frozen at this moment, not knowing what's going on. As for his grandfather's children, they are furious. Why does our father favor that brat? Does my uncle not believe his eyes? Another uncle and a small aunt also grind their teeth. Even Dujuan's parents were surprised, Dujuan was even more confused, what the hell is going on? Why is he only smiling at me? Dujuan secretly thought, is there something wrong with him? Next is the huge three-tiered cake with a sixty-six candle. His grandfather blew out the candle with a puff, all the flattering people clapped their hands, then who clapped louder? Congratulations on your birthday sir, the guests began to flatter. Happy birthday to my father, wish you good health and live a long life, his son and unpleasant aunt also flattered. Du Juan's father sighed silently without saying anything. Du Juan was bored standing among the flattering people, standing bored with nothing to do when Du Juan heard, sister-in-law brings more food here. Du Juan heard the sound and glanced over, saw his mother carrying something over, it seemed like wine with some glasses. Du Juan's mother was still being bossed around but still smiled kindly while his unpleasant aunt arrogantly said, the youngest sister soaked the drinks in ice for cooling. Another aunt also followed suit and said, Sister-in-law, put away the unused bowls. Du Juan's mother spun like a top but those women still scolded, Hey, aren't you quick enough? Don't you see everyone waiting? After speaking, those hateful women turned to eat and drink and talk to each other. Du Juan saw this scene and couldn't stand it. These hateful women, look there are up to ten employees standing around here but Du Juan's mother still has to carry like a waiter. Du Juan saw it and was so angry that he couldn't do anything. Just this morning, his mother gently buttoned each button for Du Juan, after buttoning she smiled gently, touched Du Juan's cheek too, then praised that her son was so handsome. Although still not used to living in this body, but Du Juan felt that thanks to his warm mother, he could adapt quickly. While remembering his warm motherly love, the sound of those unpleasant ants rang out again, Sister-in-law what are you doing? Bring out the food then hurry up and wash the dishes. Even Du Juan's mother was startled but couldn't do anything. Du Juan was so angry that he clenched his fists but still had to endure. Someday I will help my mother be treated properly by everyone, Du Juan secretly thought. At this time Du Juan leaned over to look in another direction. Over there is a crowd of people laughing and talking to each other, his grandfather stood in the middle with a glass of red wine in his hand. Everything is due to his grandfather treating his parents coldly, 
Du Juan looked at that scene and remembered that earlier his grandfather took him to see the gift. How about it? I prepared this gift exactly as you said. Do you like it? His grandfather asked, but Du Juan was dumbfounded because he was too surprised and couldn't answer yet. In front of Du Juan was a wooden horse toy that looked very luxurious. Du Juan secretly thought, horse? In the past, did this brat ask his grandfather for a horse? But one important thing is that the cruel grandfather is smiling kindly at Du Juan as if he treats Du Juan better than expected. Could it be that his conscience suddenly awakened after abandoning my father? Although forced to accept this marriage, is he secretly forgiving my father by treating me well? Du Juan felt that such a prediction seemed reasonable. Anyway, Du Juan has already reincarnated into this brat's body so why not try to see how close he can get to him? Thinking about it, he pretended to ask him, Oh my god, grandpa! His grandfather also made a very friendly sound. Du Juan continued, I prefer real horses over plastic horses. His grandfather widened his eyes and asked again, What? Do you prefer real cars over toy cars here? You also like real boats that float on water instead of boats that only play in bathtubs? Du Juan finished speaking and his grandfather gave him a look. At this moment, Du Juan knew he was scared, it seemed like he had gone too far. His grandfather asked again, Du Juan, do you understand what real things are? Du Juan thought to himself, I must not hesitate but answer spontaneously, like a five-year-old child would say. He replied, Yes, they are things that you create. You can create real cars, boats, and TVs, and I like those things. His grandfather listened seriously to Du Juan's words, he leaned down and looked straight into Du Juan's eyes as if studying. Looking into his grandfather's eyes, Du Juan felt that this time he was done. I don't know how my grandfather will understand my intentions. I don't know if I can pass his test. Du Juan, if you want the real things you mentioned, you have to do a lot of work. Hardship, sometimes even facing scary things to the point of death. But if you like fake things, you don't have to do those things, his grandfather pretended to advise Du Juan. But Du Juan thought, didn't he also make me do all the hard work in my previous life and then kill me? Did he think I would be scared by threatening me like that? Or let's do this, his grandfather said, if you want real items, then in one year your subjects must score 10 points. If you can do it then next year's birthday, I will give it to you. Du Juan heard his grandfather ask so itchy. Even though it was just a rural university, in his previous life he also studied at a prestigious school. Don't underestimate the old man. Moreover he once worked hard to the point of not daring to sleep, to achieve the desired position in the group. So now his grandfather challenges him to score 10 points in elementary school subjects? Why am I not confident enough? His grandfather asked. Dujuan smiled secretly at this moment, it's easy. Dujuan said, yes sir, just need to score 10 points right? Exactly, I'll wait for your results. His grandfather and Du Juan completed their deal with each other and returned to the party. Du Juan secretly calculated that he would surely change one by one gradually. While thinking, a man came over and said, follow which uncle? He said, uncle takes the children to the nursery. Watching this guy do it, Du Juan worried. Du Juan's previous life suddenly appeared, it was on that day that this guy said, he said of course, even my wife I don't trust, I only trust you, Hein Kwa. It was this guy who ordered Du Juan killed in his previous life. Du Juan stood still watching the miserable head of department. Calm down, I have to be calm. Now I'm not Hein Kwa but Du Juan. I don't need to be provoked. Du Juan reassured himself like that. Following him to the toy room earlier. Oh, that horse. Du Juan's cousin cheered up happily. You get out of the way, I'll play first. He pushed everyone away and ran to grab the horse. He happily played as if the horse was his own and laughed. Run, horse, run fast. These naughty kids made Du Juan feel angry. 
he clenched his fist tightly like his brother discovered and stopped him. Dujun looked at his brother in confusion. His brother seemed to be used to this scene and had to stop. The whole family must have been used to it. But Dujuan didn't want it that way. He gave his brother a puzzled smile. He pushed his brother's hand away and walked proudly to stand in front of the rude cousin. Dujuan thought about what he should do. First, he had to teach him a lesson so that he would be less arrogant in the future. Run, horse, run fast. This game is so fun. The cousin was still playing on the horse. Dujuan suddenly had an idea. I have to make a strong impression on my grandfather. After thinking, he said to this cousin, This horse is mine. The cousin asked back, What did you say? This is my stuff, you get off. Dujuan replied, but the cousin still sneered. So what if it's yours? If I like it, I'll play as I please. The surrounding cousins also laughed along, he dares to say it's his. Dujuan clenched his teeth and took a step forward, using all his strength to kick the horse and break its body. After kicking, his face was still calm as if nothing had happened. The cousin was shocked and screamed, the cousins who had just shouted also changed their faces. Only Dujuan was calm, stabbing the horse and falling on the cousin's leg. The cousin screamed in pain, ah, my leg hurts so much. Seeing this, the brothers and sisters went to call for adults. Dujuan stood still calmly. The cousin lay on the floor crying, oh my leg hurts so much. At this time Dujuan came up to him, he said to the cousin, never touch my stuff again. Do you know that, cousin? Furious, lying on the floor but unable to sit up. Kang Juna, the worried sound of a woman from afar came. The cousin heard his mother's voice and cried even louder. Mommy, mommy. When her mother saw her son like this, she ran over angrily and asked what happened. A bunch of arrogant ants also followed in, the mother and cousin just hugged each other crying loudly. Dujuan saw his mother come and last, oh my mother must be very surprised right? Dujuan even winked at his mother with a victorious look. While winking at his mother from a sound like thunder erupted. Bop one time, Dujuan ate a painful slap full of pain. Are you crazy? The cousin's mother asked. Just after asking, another slap hit Dujuan's face. His face swelled up like a peach, that aunt was so angry that she raised her hand, ready to slap again. Why did you dare touch my son? At this time Dujuan's mother rushed over, she hugged Dujuan to prevent the ant from hitting him. Seeing that, the ant shouted, don't you hurry up and get out of the way? But Dujuan's mother still didn't move but just said, I'm sorry. Dujuan was stunned and hadn't recovered yet. His mother still hugged Dujuan tightly against her body, afraid that he would be beaten by the ant. The ant gritted her teeth and cursed one word. When she was about to hit both mother and son, luckily there was a loud scream, what are you guys doing? The whole audience standing watching just now with the ant startled. His grandfather stood out majestically. The ant was startled and stammered. The guests were outside making trouble ah. Take that brat to the hospital. After everyone dispersed outside. No one is left except his grandfather standing looking at Dujuan and his mother. Dujuan looked up at his grandfather to see what he wanted to say. Only Dujuan stayed here. His grandfather said to drive Dujuan's mother out. His mother was still scared and didn't dare leave Dujuan alone. Seeing that, Dujuan smiled brightly and said to his mother, I'll be old later, mom, go ahead. His mother at this time dared to stand up, bowed her head to greet her grandfather then left the room without daring to say anything. Did you cause this? His grandfather asked Dujuan. Yes, yes, Dujuan replied. Why did you do such a dangerous thing, and even do it with your cousin? His grandfather asked again. At this time, Dujuan calmly replied, that horse is mine, it's a gift from you. His grandfather was extremely surprised by the answer. So Kang Jun took the horse away, so I kicked it and broke it. 
if it's broken then no one can play with it. Du Jun said to him. So you won't be robbed of your things anymore? His grandfather asked again. Yes, yes sir. Du Juan deliberately said so to see how he would react. He looked expectantly into his grandfather's eyes. Suddenly he smiled, his smile getting bigger and bigger. Du Juan knew that Chairman Jean really liked this cruel character, the cruelty of a king who would not let anyone take an inch of land, this was what was needed when competing with outsiders. At this time his grandfather spoke up, even though you didn't intend to harm anyone, you still hurt him, so you have to be punished for your actions. Dujuan could only bow his head in shame. His grandfather turned around and said, follow me. Dujuan bowed his head pretending to apologize but actually laughed secretly in his heart, just closed the door of the room his grandfather led Dujuan into. The whole room was large and a long conference table with many people sitting seriously. Dujuan exhaled a breath not believing his eyes. Although the official office of the Sun Yen Group is located on the 27th floor of the headquarters, but this is where all important decisions of the group are made. Only directors of subsidiaries and powerful people can come here. At this time, his grandfather solemnly entered and sat in the chairman's chair in the center. Dujuan remembered himself more than 15 years ago, serving as a servant for the Sun Yang Group. He had entered and exited this mansion countless times, but never set foot in this meeting room. But this life, today, finally he did it, in a spacious, large and majestic meeting room. Dujuan was punished for kneeling in a corner by the bookshelf. Despite being forced to kneel, Dujuan still took advantage of observing, looking around. He saw his eldest uncle and his son sitting in front of him, realizing that it was supposed to be his father's position, but it was taken by Di Yung Jun, his eldest uncle's son, even though he was only twenty years old. Could it be that he has been chosen as the heir? At this time, the meeting began, his grandfather spoke up, everyone, state your thoughts. How should this be handled? A director replied, you also know that I am a man who knows how to compromise. Even though I am at the end of my term, I may not be overthrown. It can be said that this family is not afraid of anything. His grandfather asked again sarcastically, not afraid of anything? That means a strong family, sir, the director replied. But his grandfather continued, originally for a long time, this family has been considered strong. The government is planning to send troops into battle, isn't it? Yes, the director replied. This time his grandfather seemed contemplative when he heard about the army. Everyone in the classroom also started whispering. Dujuan listened for a long time and guessed at the end of his term, suppressing the army or not, this matter concerns the country, not just business anymore. At this time, another person in the meeting spoke up, we have to think of another direction. Right now there are more than 100 people protesting nationwide, if even the army joins in, then maybe there will be 200 people. His grandfather still remained calm, the protesters stand before their spears and dare not be afraid? The flame of indignation is burning fiercely. If we can put out the fire then they will be afraid, but the participation of the army is like adding fuel to the fire. Even the government does not understand this. At this time, his grandfather angrily slammed the table and shouted at those in the room, What else? What do you want to say? Tell me to find a way to prevent it when the government collapses? He thought, Will the president of next term support the opposition? The director hesitated and replied, Yes, it could be like that. Hearing that answer, his grandfather angrily slammed the table again. All directors in the room were scared silent and bowed their heads without daring to speak. His grandfather was still angry and shouted at their faces, everything could be like that? Of course, this could happen or not. What else? Do you think I came here to kill time listening to your nonsense guesses? Everyone in the room bowed their heads in unison and replied, we apologize. His grandfather was still angry and loud, just say who we should follow. The vice president was called over and was also startled, not knowing what to do, he could only reply, yes, Mr. Chairman. 
His grandfather specifically asked the vice president, You go first, who is it? The vice president hesitated, I. I can't say anything else. The vice president and his uncle's son and the next ones all bowed their heads without daring to speak. Dujuan remembered that this was the person who had falsely accused him and ordered him to be killed. At this time, the vice president finally stood up seriously and said, not only the current government, but also the successor. During the seven years this government has been in power, there have been many protests nationwide. I think the current situation is just a little more serious. At this time, the next few people also hurriedly followed, I also agree with him. Me too, those who didn't follow along also bowed their heads without daring to speak. Dujuan felt something strange. Three days later, the president will resign with such severity that the Blue House must have already planned it. Could it be that the Sunyan group doesn't know about this? Dujuan watched a bunch of company officials whispering to each other. It turns out that this is what the group looked like in the 80s. Even though the situation is chaotic, but talking about which side to follow in the future, it seems a bit too much. They should have built a business strategy to cope with change and predict how the world will change in the future. Dujuan thought these guys would have some lofty thoughts that other employees couldn't think of. At this time his grandfather had enough orders, you all go back quickly, collect all information for me. Everyone was relieved, happily stood up, bowed to the chairman and left. Dujuan was disappointed and thought to himself that this meeting was just about which side to follow. You come out here, his grandfather sat on his chair kindly and called out. Dujuan slowly stood up and walked slowly. Damn it, I've been kneeling for so long that my legs are numb and I can't stand, Dujuan trembled as he thought while trying to walk. Suddenly his grandfather praised, Dujuan, you are very good. Even though you have to kneel for so long, I never see you frown or get tired at all. Even adults will feel uncomfortable and change their posture, but you always kneel straight back. Actually because Dujuan was listening to the story, he didn't know how long time had passed. Maybe that's why his grandfather was satisfied. But there's one thing I want to ask you, why has your character changed? At this time Dujuan froze for five seconds before replying, it's because I can't stand it anymore. His grandfather was puzzled and asked again, what? It's because my parents always endure others, so I have to do the same. But now, I'm so angry that I can't stand it anymore, Dujuan said while thinking, I should act a little bit at this point, thinking, if I could shed a tear at times like this then it would be perfect, so naturally Dujuan froze for many seconds. His grandfather stepped forward and hugged Dujuan into his arms, what is this? His reaction was beyond Dujuan's expectation. Could it be that he feels sorry for his grandson? Thinking so, Dujuan decided to give him another shock, the boy told him to be friends with those three people. His grandfather was extremely surprised, pushed Dujuan away and asked, What are you talking about? Be friends with those three people? Dujuan replied again, The people you mentioned earlier, sir, the next president. His grandfather was startled, staring intently at Dujuan. Dujuan pretended to be innocent and continued, the president is the most powerful person in our country. When you don't know who your opponent will become, just make friends with everyone, because they are the people with enough power to become president. After hearing Dujuan's words, his grandfather was stunned like a rock. Is that right, sir? Dujuan asked again. This time his grandfather laughed loudly to his ears, of course it's right, the more friends the better he said kindly. After speaking, he was even more pleased and laughed loudly without stopping. Dujuan was happy because the plan was successful, he thought to himself, okay, let's stop here today. At this time his grandfather also let Dujuan go outside and said he had something to do. He told Dujuan to find young Jun and tell him to come to the room to see him. Dujuan hurriedly bowed his head and then turned and walked out of the meeting room. His grandfather watched Dujuan leave and began to ponder something. As for Dujuan on this side, he smiled triumphantly because he had tricked the old chairman. 
Then his grandfather picked up the phone and called someone. He told the other end, from now on, keep an eye on all three people. The other side asked again, do you mean keep an eye on all three people? Yes, including VIPs, his grandfather also instructed, don't forget to tell them that we want to help them solve the current political turmoil. After the other side had memorized it, he said smugly, my ten-year-old grandson said a commendable sentence. At this time there was a knock on the door. Young Jun entered and asked, is it Mr. Chairman who called me? His grandfather was kind then, now I am your grandfather. Young Jun breathed a sigh of relief, oh, yes sir. His grandfather asked again, today you just sat and listened, but surely you have thoughts in your heart already? Young Jun hesitated and couldn't answer. He continued, I am asking as your grandfather, not as chairman of the group, you can freely express your opinions. Young trembled and replied, yes, currently the number of protests is increasing, but I think if the president has sent police and troops in, then surely the situation will be suppressed. So do you want to consolidate the current government? His grandfather asked again. Young Jun hesitated and replied, with that person being both a friend of the incumbent president and a successor, there is a high chance that he will become the next president. His grandfather smiled and replied, so I will listen to you and stand on that person's side? Hearing this, Young Jun couldn't believe his hands. His grandfather asked again, is that right? Young Jun saw him, scared without saying anything. His grandfather thought to himself, I just asked for opinions, but the kid was already scared like that, he remembered his very confident grandson. Then he said to Young Jun, go outside. Young Jun didn't understand anything, suddenly asked a few questions out of nowhere and now let him go outside. You respectfully bowed to your grandfather before going outside. His grandfather lay tiredly on the chairman's chair. He thought to himself, why is it my youngest grandson? In the car, Du Juan's family went home. Du Juan's mother asked her husband who was driving, what did father say to you? Her husband replied, father told me to focus on the children's studies. The wife was extremely surprised, at this time her husband looked at Du Juan through the rearview mirror and called his name. Du Juan answered with a sound. His father continued, Father didn't mean to scold you for what happened at his house because you were already punished by him for kneeling. Du Juan replied, I'm sorry. His father still kindly said, It's okay, knowing your mistake is good. Earlier he told my father that he would send a tutor to teach the two of us. My brother heard it like a bolt of lightning, shouting, What? His father still gently said, if Sang Jun doesn't like it, he doesn't have to study. He turned to Du Juan to ask for his opinion, and Du Juan. At this time Du Juan was thinking to himself, I don't need a tutor right now, I can teach them backwards. But I can't disobey my grandfather. So he replied to his father, I will study. But his father said, it's okay if you don't want to study. Du Juan insisted, no, I want to study. His father knew then, if he wanted to, his father would report back to him. His father replied, already said. His father looked out the car window again. At this time his brother nudged Dujuan. His brother praised Dujuan, you did well today. Dujuan didn't understand what was coming out of his mouth. His brother continued, today you made Kang Jun cry. After speaking, his brother also smiled and looked out the car window. Du Juan looked at his brother and thought to himself, this kid has a lot of grievances too. On June 29, 1987, the president announced, Dear comrades and fellow citizens, In the situation where the country is facing threats from hostile intentions and deep divisions between the people. At this time Du Juan was sitting leisurely in the car, drinking banana milk and listening to the inaugural speech of the incumbent president. The announcement will be implemented on September 26. This statement will become the official statement of the government. From now on, the power race of a new era officially begins. Du Juan leisurely drank milk and pondered, I wonder how Chairman Jean will respond now. 
the car stopped in front of the house. Dujuan got out of the car, put both hands in his pockets and walked into the house. As soon as he entered the gate, he heard a maid say, Dujuan, your grandfather is here. Dujuan was also surprised that it was so fast. At this time there was a shout from his grandfather inside the house. What is she talking about? Dujuan hadn't figured out what was going on yet, but heard his mother say, I never aspired to have shares in the group. Du Juan's father also did. Later we will still be like that. His grandfather angrily asked again, what? This time Du Juan's mother was scared, not daring to look up, but still gathered all her courage and continued, I understand that you want to raise Du Juan well, so that he can help with the group's work. But he is only ten years old, I want him to decide for himself when he grows up. His grandfather angrily asked again, don't you know the meaning of having shares in Sunyan group? That means we accept you as our children and grandchildren. So are you giving up this last chance? The mother knelt down, crying and begging, I'm sorry father. My husband and I just want to live our lives and do what we want. His grandfather was angry, blood rushed to his brain, speechless, you. At this time Dujuan appeared, shouting out loud, Grandfather. Dujuan walked up confidently, calmly standing in front of his grandfather. My special little dog son. His grandfather happily hugged Dujuan and asked, Have you come back from school? Dujuan was suddenly lifted high. Thinking to himself that this grandfather is still quite strong, the little boy looked at his gentle mother. From before until now, his mother has never said a word in front of him but because of his own affairs, it was really touching. Grandfather, are you angry? Dujuan pretended to ask. No, why would I be angry? I just spoke too loudly so you thought so, the old man replied. His mother also hurriedly added, No, he's not angry, Dujuan. He's just talking to mom. Dujuan thought to himself, These people, do they think I don't know? Just thinking again pretending to say, don't argue with each other because of me. Because I won't grow up and do what I want, like what mom said. At this time both his grandfather and mother were stunned by Du Juan's words. After hearing it, his grandfather suddenly became angry in a strange way. Du Juan smiled triumphantly in his heart, oh my, a person who is not afraid of anything like him, but gets angry when he hears this from me. Du Juan quickly continued, I will grow up and become the director of a large group, like my grandfather. His grandfather heard this and was frozen for about five seconds, then he smiled, smiling so much that his mouth reached his ears, laughing and saying, it is indeed my flesh and blood, people have said that sometimes the second generation will inherit genetic characteristics, but only the mother. Hearing Du Juan's words, she was startled, at this time his grandfather turned to ask Du Juan's mother. What now? You have run out of excuses, right? Dujuan also wants to become a businessman. His mother opened her eyes wide and listened to his grandfather's words, then suddenly her eyes were misty. Dujuan's mother told his grandfather, Father, let me bring you another cup of tea, then hurriedly turned into the kitchen, okay. Dujuan went to the room with you, his grandfather said, I have something to tell my grandson. Dujuan looked at his mother and thought to himself, why did mom suddenly get emotional? It looks like she's about to cry. Could it be because he called her daughter-in-law instead of calling her ma'am anymore? Dujuan's mother was busy in the kitchen at this time, while Dujuan was behind her thinking about something. When the two grandfathers entered Dujuan's room, his grandfather asked him, do you remember what I said a few days ago? Yes, which one sir? Dujuan pretended to ask again. It's about those three powerful friends. Ah, those three powerful friends right? His grandfather smiled. Yes, that's it. Dujuan pretended to be innocent on the outside but was triumphant inside, how could I not remember? Today he must have come for that reason. His grandfather said, to create more goodwill with them, so I sent them gifts, just like what you said. 
Du Juan secretly guessed, unexpectedly he could rely on my words to judge and withdraw the black fund immediately, which was really scary fast action. His grandfather continued, but from today on, everything will be different, those three people don't want to live in harmony with each other. They had an argument, person number two and number three teamed up to defeat person number one. So now I also have to choose only one side. Dujuan interrupted him, politely asked, but sir, all three people you mentioned are planning to become president right? Yes, they will choose a class leader, his grandfather replied. Dujuan pretended to be innocent and asked again, so if number two and number three team up and win, will they become class leader and deputy leader? But his grandfather replied no, in a country without laws, there can only be a class leader. Dujuan pretended to be wise and said, if there is no deputy leader and number two and number three still cooperate, I don't know why, because only one of the two can become the class leader. His grandfather seemed to pause for a few seconds and asked again, do you mean we shouldn't cooperate? But Dujuan said, if you don't get anything, how can number three withdraw number two? Even if it's number 10 or number 20, even if it's number one, number three will never help. His grandfather was frozen as if he had just realized something big. He thought and muttered to himself, that means number two and number three cannot cooperate with each other. Dujuan, having lived a lifetime, knew that on the surface it looked like that, but in fact those two people were not in harmony. No need to be specific and clear about the future, later I will give him a different perspective and suspicion. With just this seed, Chairman Jin will still understand everything. Dujuan thought to himself, Chairman Jin's son also started scheming, even the board of directors of Sung Young Group and the powerful people I have met. He doubted the merger, only Dujuan was the only one who said that there would never be a merger. Dujuan doesn't know about politics, so of course he can think like that, but Dujuan knows about human desires, based on these arguments, Dujuan knows that what he says is not unfounded. Indeed his grandfather patted Dujuan's head, he even praised why his grandson was not smart and bright like that. Dujuan pretended to smile innocently and kindly at his grandfather. Indeed his grandfather believed what Dujuan said. On a luxurious car rolling on the road, Dujuan sat alone looking out the car window. He began to recall his conversation with his parents in this life yesterday. His parents were extremely surprised when they learned that he wanted to go to Danjin City. When his mother asked why he suddenly wanted to go, Dujuan tried his best to pretend to be eager to learn and said that in the textbook it was written that it was the only place in our country bordering the Northern Sea, so I want to see it with my own eyes. Both father and mother were extremely surprised by the reason Dujuan gave. But in fact, Dujuan had no other reason, he just wanted to go to confirm something that at this time his past self was living. Dujuan stood in front of his old house and was moved, here it is, my house. But then he began to hesitate, what if I meet my parents? What should I say? What if I accidentally call my parents? Dujuan was thinking when he saw his parents behind the glass. Both people seemed to be hanging clothes together happily. Seeing this scene made Dujuan extremely moved. He teared up and unconsciously called out, Dad, Mom. Both his father and mother, both of them were here. Dujuan shivered thinking. At this time suddenly there was a knock on the door in front of his house, and then the door opened. His mother from his previous life came out and asked, My child, what's wrong with you? Dujuan almost couldn't hold back his tears. His mother from his previous life was standing in front of him but didn't recognize him. At this time, his father also came out and asked, What's wrong? His mother told her father, This kid is crying in front of our house. The father, a kind man, asked Dujuan, Is that right? Did you forget your way home? Dujuan replied, No sir, I'm looking for my friend's house. The father asked again in surprise, Which friend? Dujuan hurriedly said, Yes sir, Hein Kwa. At this time, both husband and wife showed a surprised and confused expression, Hein Kwa. There is no child named Hein Kwa here? 
the father said to the mother. However, the mother was still very patient and said, Let me ask Quincy to see if there's a friend named Hein Kwa at school. Dujuan was shocked and incredulous, Quincy could it be? He hurriedly asked, Who is Huini, sir? The mother calmly replied, Huini is our daughter. But Dujuan remembered that in his previous life there was no one named Hyunji in his family, and now both his parents didn't know Hein Kwa. Could it be that the person named Hein Kwa no longer exists? Back at Chairman Jin's office, on the table was a newspaper about the latest president of the Republic of Korea. Chairman Jin was sitting and thinking. In front of this newspaper, Du Juin had indeed spoken correctly a few months before the government surrendered, a series of financial groups all praised Tu Kim. But no one doubted the merger, and everyone believed that one of the two would be the next president. Fortunately, he listened to Du Juin's words and gave the largest gift to the ruling party. For Tu Kim, he only sent them a little money. The chairman smiled triumphantly, not expecting Du Juin's opinion to help the group so much. At the house where Du Juin was living with his parents in this life, he placed a newspaper identical to the one his grandfather had just read on the table. Until now, everything was still as Du Juin knew about the future but he still couldn't rest assured. Because a girl had replaced Ju Hin's position through birth, who should have been born. That means that details in the future can still be changed without Du Juin thinking. Perhaps the future has begun to change since Chairman Jin Yang Chun loved Diyun. Diyun thought that changing the future meant that his powerful weapon would become meaningless. He calculated that from now until he was 20 years old he had to accumulate a lot of capital to take over the Sun Yen group. Because in a few years, Chairman Jin Yang Chun will get sick and just lie in bed waiting to die. Before that time, Du Juin had to try to get as many shares as possible to transfer to his father later. This could be a fuse for the war between his father and Park Jin Yang Ki, and also for the traffic accident that happened when he was 20 years old. He must prevent Jin Dujuan's death in his previous life when he was ordered to clean up for Jin's family, then his current family would not survive at all. They all died in that terrible accident when he was Hein Kwa. This family has been neglected for too long, so he didn't bother paying attention. So now, I can't remember all the details about this accident, it's such a pity. Dujuan calculated temporary plans before him, just avoiding his death in this life and he wondered if helping Jin Young Jun live longer would change the future. When Du Juin was thinking while dressing, he heard a knock on the door. It was his mother in this life. She smiled and said, It's time to go. Du Juin also smiled at his mother with a smile. Du Juin thought that no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't solve this mystery. Except for being monitored every day for what actions the story moved to Sun Yen Group's high-rise building. Still his grandfather's happy face as usual. Oh, my dog son is here. Du Juan hurriedly ran towards him, then pretended to be happy and shouted, Grandfather. Inwardly thinking, his mouth, after practicing for so long, I still haven't gotten used to this flattery character. But what can I do? I can't help but flatter my grandfather. At this time, his grandfather hugged Dujuan and said, Kid, sit down quickly. Dujuan obediently sat down on the chair in front of him. He looked around and saw that at this time there were only him and the old man in the room. Could it be that he wanted to talk to me privately, so he sewed for the supervisor? In the large and luxurious room, only his grandfather and Dujuan sat facing each other on a round table. Dujuan thought to himself, It's true because this morning he was anxious to follow the election results, then went crazy with joy when his father succeeded. Dean looked at his grandfather sitting opposite, smiling gently and kindly at him. He pretended to ask, Grandfather, what's so happy? He said at this time as if startled, gasping. He was remembering the phone conversation with the president. On the phone, the president said, I will never forget Chairman Jin's kindness. Thank you. Remembering that scene, his grandfather smiled triumphantly. But he told Dujuan, Well, 
I see you are in a happy mood right away, so I will buy you delicious food and toys you like. Dujuan pretended to ask his grandfather again, Oh, do you know my score already? Dujuan saw his grandfather realize that he had forgotten that promise. He played a big game after listening to Dujuan's advice. Thanks to that, Sung Young Group will be strong for the next five years. Outside his mouth, Dujuan still pretended to be innocent and said, Yes sir, all my subjects have achieved 10 points in any subject. His grandfather was extremely surprised and asked again, All subjects have 10 points? Dujuan replied triumphantly, Yes, in the class only I got 10 points in all subjects. This time his grandfather was even more triumphant, he laughed loudly and said, How do you know it's too late now to buy a horse for you? Then Duyun smiled, curled his lips, and went after that ragged horse. Why take advantage of people to place bigger things? Duyun thought. He still told his grandfather, It's okay sir, anyway I can't ride a horse after taking horse riding lessons. In the winter semester, you can buy it sir. But sir, if not for the promise, why did you call me here? At this time, his grandfather laughed and said, Because thanks to Dujuan, my company can become much stronger, meaning I will make more money. Dujuan continued to pretend to be innocent and asked again, So can you buy me something more expensive than a horse, right sir? At this time, his grandfather began to think, then said, Of course something bigger and more beautiful than a horse, let's see. I plan to buy you a real horse. But what should I buy now? Dujuan hurriedly showed concern and said, Sir, if you want a horse, you have to raise it on your farm on Jeju Island. But I can't go to Jeju Island every day to ride horses. When his grandfather was hesitating after hearing what Dujuan said, Yes, you're right, what should I do? At this time, there was a knock on the door, a group of servants with many food carts were pushed in. His grandfather saw it and said to Dujuan, Well, let's eat and think more. Put it on the table now with a lot of delicacies, a table full of people can't eat it all. Oh my god, it's really rich. Dujuan pretended to be polite, yes sir, I invite you sir. Yes eat sir, you speak well. His grandfather bought him a farm so he could ride every day, okay Dujuan. His grandfather asked afterwards, Dujuan pretended to be surprised and asked again, is it true sir? But inwardly think, will you be able to give me the form in reality, Grandpa? Doju is acting very realistically right now. He has a look of amazement on his face. Chow thanks him very much. Then, he hurriedly ran over and hugged Grandpa. It's true that people with money forget everything. Again, but where is that farm, sir? His grandfather replied, Not far from North Seoul, there is a place called Quan Dan where there is already a farm. I will buy that farm. Dujuan pretended to be innocent, but was angry inside. No, I don't want that place. His grandfather saw that Dujuan seemed unhappy and asked, Why, don't you like it? Dujuan hesitated and replied, No sir, I like it. But my house is in Gangnam so it's too far from there. But his grandfather still smiled and said, Far away, you are also picky about choosing soup, there are no farms in the south of Seoul province Jong or something. Dujuan hurriedly said, Just build it and have it sir, my grandfather is the type of person who does everything quickly. Hearing this, his grandfather was startled by what to build, then his grandfather laughed loudly for a lifetime. Dujuan didn't understand what was happening to this old man. He thought to himself, what's going on, why did she suddenly laugh like that? His grandfather continued, of the 48 subsidiaries of Sun Yen Group, only 18 companies were founded by me, the remaining companies were handed over to me. Hearing him say nothing, his grandfather continued, most of the companies I founded were during the early business period of the group, meaning at first you had to establish your own company. Only then could you form a connection with the company, then gradually you wanted to build it stronger. Dujuan was stunned, could this old man understand, saying just build it and follow my direction? But his grandfather still showed affection for Dujuan. He said, I am extremely satisfied with your thinking. Just build it and have it. 
Then he carefully placed his hand on Du Jun's shoulder. Good job, Du Jun's first steps, I will support you. His grandfather said Duyin, listen but listen but the brain still hasn't caught up. Could he come to teach me business? Is this how it is? Du Jun thought, is anyone outside? His grandfather suddenly shouted loudly to call the servants. Then he ordered the servant, bring the map of Seoul and Jiangjir. Duo Jun was secretly happy for the person bringing the map. Does that mean he's about to get something? The two grandfathers sat waiting under expensive lights. A few minutes later, the servant brought the map. His grandfather hurriedly opened the map and placed it on the dining table to see how sharp his Du Jun's eyes were. He said to Du Jun, then handed Du Jun a pen and told the boy, Mark where you want to build the farm. Du Jun sat down, his brain still didn't understand what was going on. In fact, Du Juan wanted to build ten farms across the country. If he can hold on to places where land prices will rise in ten to twenty years later, it will definitely be extremely profitable. Before the battle for shares of Sunyan Group, he thought so. Looking at his grandson who was still hesitating and didn't know what to do. His grandfather reminded, remember to choose carefully because you can't choose right in central Seoul and have to avoid downtown south of Jong province or something. After hesitating for a while, Du Juan marked a point on the map and confirmed with him, Here sir. His grandfather took the map to look at it and then asked Du Juan again, This place is quite far from your house. Du Juan still continued to pretend to be innocent, Is that so sir? However, his grandfather still told his subordinates, you find out what this land is like now, you must know its situation. The employee hurriedly obeyed and closed the door, holding the map outside. Du Juan watched him go out, breathed a sigh of relief because his grandfather didn't ask him all the way. Then, two grandfathers calmly continued their meal. Du Juan pretended to flatter him to sit down with his grandfather for this meal. At this time, his grandfather sipped tea while asking Du Yin, how are you doing at school? Do you have many friends? Although he was polite outside, there were no friends around him. Du Juan was 40 years old, so how could he make friends with those green-nosed kids? At this time, there was a knock on the door. His subordinate came in with a map. The other person respectfully bowed. And his grandfather asked, how is it? The subordinate reported that, this place is called the Southern Green Belt and is considered a restricted development area. This rural area has a lot of cucumbers and cucumbers, sir. In addition, the traffic infrastructure is inadequate so it is very difficult to get in and out. Moreover, the residential area there is only inhabited by poor people. Experts believe that the development potential of this place is extremely low. Hearing this subordinate say, his grandfather began to think. He muttered, this place can build a farm. Saying that but still thinking deeply about something. His fingers tapped on the table. Each tap of his grandfather's hand made Du Juan sit and sweat drop by drop. Finally, his grandfather stopped tapping, probably calculating the land price at this time. He turned to his subordinate and said, fine. He turned to his subordinate and said, Find out if we can buy any land, at least 165,000 square meters or more. The subordinate hurriedly obeyed. Du Juan was extremely happy when he heard his grandfather say that. This part in his head only has one word delicious. After completing the task, the subordinate hurriedly left the dining room. His grandfather then turned to Du Juan and said, My boy, the land you choose now is still just an underdeveloped land. If it were me, I wouldn't buy it. Du Juan asked him why sir. His grandfather replied because this land would take a very long time to have high value. Who knows if he dies before it goes up in price. So he has no reason to buy it. But you are different, Du Juan asked again, why am I different sir? His grandfather patiently replied, because 20 to 30 years later, this land may become an extremely valuable place and you still have time to see that change, so consider it as a reserve. Du Juan nodded quickly, Lia Lia, yes sir, 
I will remember your teachings. Outside his mouth he said so, but inside Dujuan had calculated. He thinks I'll keep this land for 20 to 30 years? There's no such thing, because just two years later that area will become a new urban area. By then, I will have more than 165,000 square meters of fertile land in my hands in the new urban area. Then Dujuan thought about it and was happy. He ate while being satisfied with his calculations at Chairman Jin's office. He asked his son, Did you tell RA to help with the election in Yongzhou? The chairman sat on an expensive chair in the meeting room, while two children had to stand humbly begging. At this time, his daughter said, Although it's my first election, if my husband wins a high position, it will be very beneficial for my father. However, the chairman didn't care, he scornfully told two wives. Husband, those Django and Peace have already listened to Ra's imprisonment, just call them even if it's midnight they have to run over. So you should be content with being an MP in Sakoni, where there are many power plants and Sunyan contractors, so you don't need to bribe, you will still win. His daughter boldly asked her father, are you reluctant to invest money for your son-in-law? The chairman angrily said, I cleared the way for him to become head of the prosecutor's office, then it was son-in-law Choi who said he didn't want to be a National Assembly member. His son-in-law could only bow his head and apologize to Chairman Jean. His daughter heard that and hurriedly spoke up for him, my husband doesn't deserve it. I treat him as the best in Korea sir. Even without Sun Yen Group's label, he will still easily win elections anyway. He will always be given top priority regardless of whether he is from the ruling party or opposition party. The chairman heard that and laughed sarcastically, the best law firm family in Korea? I helped my son-in-law Choi's father climb up to the chief prosecutor, all thanks to my money and power. Even the position of head of the inspection department was supported by me. Do you know why? My daughter heard her father say this and could only swallow her words, standing still without making a sound. The chairman continued, I want your family to be the watchdog for the Sun Yen group. At this time, his face was extremely contemptuous of his son-in-law, and his son-in-law Choi heard this and his face turned pale, bowed his head, clenched his fist, but did not dare to make a sound. Choi, my son-in-law, the chairman called out, don't dream and think nonsense anymore. Just live as you are now, eat what I give you. Remember to pass on my words to your family, if you dare to be greedy for no reason, then you may lose everything. Mr. Choi heard his father-in-law say this and could only bow his head, yes, I understand. Mr. Choi knew that his father-in-law only needed to make a phone call and all his relatives would be immediately expelled from the prosecutor's office and local justice department. So Mr. Choi could only keep silent and follow. SEO June, the chairman called out to his daughter. Chairman asks his daughter, do you not want to be the head of the shopping center as I arranged? The daughter was asked and her face turned pale, thinking to herself, did my father find out? I originally intended to bring my husband into politics to hold power in my hands, and then eliminate my brothers to take over the Sun Yen group. Too scared of her father, Seo Jun quickly bowed her head and apologized, please forgive me this time. The father continued, be content with what you have, if the revenue of the shopping center decreases a little bit, I will replace your position immediately. The daughter could only bow her head and obey at this time. On the other side of the conference room, Dujuan was sitting in a corner on a chair, pretending not to know anything and drinking his milk while watching the couple. SEO Jun was driven out by the chairman and he thought to himself. The couple's ambitions have been extinguished again. They must be worried about being deprived of their inheritance rights or being taken away by their brothers. So Dujuan just thought that way. He would let them handle it slowly. At this time, the chairman changed his attitude 180 degrees and turned to ask Dujuan, Are you bored? Dujuan pretended to be innocent and said, no, I'm just reading a book. The grandfather, chairman, hearing this praised him, that's a good habit. Remember to always bring a book with you wherever you go. Dujuan quickly agreed. After that, he gave Dujuan an envelope and told him to take it. 
Dujuan asked in confusion, What is it? The kind grandfather replied, It is the land document of where Dujuan wants it with a total area of 265,000 square meters. Dujuan was confused because at first it was said that there were only 165,000 square meters but now it has increased by 100,000 square meters. So he hurriedly asked his grandfather, why is it over 100,000 square meters like that? The grandfather smiled, this kid remembers all the numbers. Dujuan was satisfied because he had calculated an answer in advance to please his grandfather. When doing business, remembering exact numbers is essential. Indeed, the grandfather was very satisfied with this answer. He smiled and said, there are many landowners there but no one sells 165,000 square meters so I added another 100,000 square meters. Dujuan secretly rejoiced, so that's why I have another 100,000 square meters. He calculated that after two to three years, the compensation for 265,000 square meters of land would probably be around 16 billion won. So when Grandpa asked if he liked it or not, Dujuan didn't think about it but replied, Yes, I like it. Why wouldn't I like it? Currently, the price of 100 square meters at Hong San apartment building is only around 7.500 square meters. Dujuan plans to spend money to buy 200 apartments in this building. So Dujuan flattered and hugged his grandfather, thanking him. Dujuan smiled cunningly and thought to himself, I was given 16 billion won by him, so I should pretend to be cute like this, right? 1988 was a special year. The constitution of the land, the Republic of Korea, came into effect. The president was elected from a direct election and also took office, and the president issued Statement 77, including policies on inter-Korean cooperation and support for the development of North Korea-U.S. relations. After 38 years of a divided government regime, state inspections were carried out again after 16 years since the reform. Although the exchange rate reached 601 and the economy entered a recession, people still flocked to Seoul causing house prices here to rise. The government could not control the skyrocketing real estate prices, so it announced a plan to build 2 million houses. Although the government announced that it would develop large-scale housing in Sanban, using a stick, although John was young, house prices still could not stabilize. And so 1989 arrived. In addition, new urban areas were also identified as Seoul South City, Bun District and Iran District. At this time, the chairman was reading an announcement about the new urban area. First of all, he laughed happily and was shocked when he read this news. Secretary Lee Hukta saw this and asked what happened to the chairman. The chairman happily asked the secretary, Do you know that I had Dujuan built? The secretary replied, Yes sir chairman, pointing to the location of the farm on the map. The secretary was shocked and asked, isn't that place chosen as a new urban area or why is the chairman so happy? The land that the kid chose has increased in price a hundred times in just one year. The secretary was stunned and stood still waiting for the chairman to continue speaking. The chairman continued to ask, but do you know what's interesting? I once refused to buy land here but he insisted on choosing this area. After saying that, the chairman laughed loudly with great pleasure. He instructed the secretary that if Dujuan grows up to be a talented person then he should take care of him because if he divides the company into three to four parts and then divides it among his children then they will take everything. It must be prevented again. The secretary bowed his head and replied, I will remember your words sir chairman. The more the chairman looked at the map, the more he laughed happily. That night at Dujuan's house, he held a savings book in his hand and couldn't help laughing. Dujuan happily looked at how much money he had now which was 14 billion. Dujuan calculated that first he would sell 199,000 square meters and 66,000 square meters first and wait for it to increase in price before calculating it later. After that, it is estimated that he is holding about 20 billion in his hand because before that his grandfather had said that Dujuan could use the money he earned as he wanted. 
looking at the savings book on the table Dujuan couldn't help but laugh with his mouth open. Dujuan happily calculated that land prices would be 100 billion after living in imagination about a wealthy life. When Dujuan was in an imaginative state about wealth there was a knock on the door. Dujuan's parents opened the door and said, Dujuan dear, let's talk for a while. Dujuan seriously said yes for his parents to enter the room. The parents went in and sat opposite Dujuan. The mother seriously asked, What do you intend to do with that money? Dujuan seriously replied, Grandfather said I should deposit it in a bank. The parents looked at each other and smiled. Dujuan knew they were worried about managing such a large amount of money but in front of them Dujuan just said so even though it wasn't really like that. Dujuan's mother asked, Don't you want to buy anything? But Dujuan still replied, No, everything I need has been bought by my mother. However, Dujuan suddenly asked, Do you want to use that money to buy something? This question made his parents so surprised that their eyes widened. Dujuan looked at his parents and saw them startled, not understanding why they were so surprised. At this time, the father suddenly stood up and went out without saying anything. Dujuan watched his father leave without understanding what had happened. The father left with a sullen face. The mother suddenly sighed, took Dujuan's hand in front of her and smiled kindly, saying, Because your father was too surprised, let's talk about this later, okay? At this time, Dujuan could only nod. After leaving the room, the wife went out to the yard to find her husband. The kid is innocent so he only has good intentions. Don't take it too seriously, the wife said. The husband was silent for a while and then said, I'm not angry, I'm just feeling ashamed. The wife heard it but didn't understand what was going on. The husband continued, When Duwei Jun said that sentence, my heart beat very fast. The opportunity is here, even though I thought so as a father. The father felt pitiful but the wife still smiled gently, because that amount of money is too large. The wife said, with that money, I can go abroad with you and our child to live. I thought so. At this time, the husband smiled kindly. The couple leaned against each other to comfort each other. Dujuan had been hiding behind the door and heard the couple's conversation. He secretly thought their love for their children was too great. I'm sorry dad, Dujuan said. The father was sitting on the sofa reading a newspaper when he was suddenly apologized to by Dujuan. He didn't have time to understand what was going on and asked, why apologize? Dujuan replied, it's not because you're angry with me dad, it's just because you're surprised. The father asked further, right then what do you plan to do in the future? Dujuan replied, I will do what I want. The father asked again, what do you want? Dujuan replied, I want to become the director of a large group owned by my grandfather. Hearing this rumor from his son-in-law made him extremely surprised and then laughed out loud. After that like scratching an itch he laughed even louder. Dujuan saw this and just thought his father was laughing because Sun Yen Group was already the number one business in Korea. A kid like me is dreaming of setting up a bigger group. However at this time the father stopped laughing and asked again, Du Jun's dream is big isn't it? Du Jun hurriedly replied, so I need your help dad. But the father looked sullen and said, I probably can't help you much son I've said before I'm not interested in the company's business. Although his father studied business abroad he loved cinema. Du Jun interrupted his father, you continue what dad just finished saying you studied business in England did dad have classmates? The father was asked like this and suddenly froze looking at his 10-year-old son in front of him not knowing what to say. At this time at Sun Yen Group his uncle was angry with his subordinates asking about the kid who got 14 billion compensation money. If he sells the rest will he get another 10 billion? His subordinate replied yes. The uncle was angry, his face red with anger. Why is it like this? At this time his uncle's son sitting on the sofa blurted out enviously of Dujuan, if you deposit money in a bank you will get 2 billion won in interest then every month you can buy 20 apartments in Gangnam. 
The uncle was angry, slammed the table and yelled at his son that it wasn't an important issue. My son's husband is not the type to give money easily like that. But no. He built a farm for that kid, transferred everything to his name and spent a large amount of money to handle it. That's the problem. The child started sweating. The uncle continued to ask his son if he had given him any land or book yet because he saw that he was not worthy of it, but he still sat there making money with the interest money nearby. It's really pathetic. After finishing speaking, the uncle leaned back tiredly on the chair back, he began to think about something, then he ordered that from now on closely monitor Jun's family. At this time at Du Jun's house, the father introduced Du Jun to a friend of his who had studied with him before. Mr. Du Jun respectfully greeted uncle. This person introduced himself as Oh Se Hun. Oh Se Hun. Dujuan remembers that this uncle is a representative of Pokashima and 30 years later will be a management company with assets reaching 800,000 won per year. At this time Oh Se Hun told the father that he wanted to talk privately with Dujuan. And Dujuan still didn't dare believe that his father was friends with such a big character. At this time, the father left space for the two to talk and even invited the two to talk happily with each other. Oh Se Hun comfortably put down his luggage on the ground, sat down on a chair and asked Du Juan, Your father told me you want to be a businessman? Du Juan confidently replied yes. Oh Se Hun asked again, Like your grandfather? Du Juan comfortably replied, I want to run a larger group than my grandfather in Korea. Soon Yen Group is already the largest but I want an even larger group right? I have high ambitions right not ambition but dream. Dujuan was still very calm. Oh Se Hun asked again, ambition like grandfather dreams like father? Dujuan asked his uncle again, is uncle also the director of a big company? The uncle replied, in a very large company but I'm different from your grandfather I do things to help the rich get richer. Dujuan asked again, so you must meet many rich people right? Can you help my money become more? Oh Se Hun was extremely surprised by Du Juan's questions. He laughed loudly and said, I came here to talk to you because your father just can't be my customer. Du Juan asked him why and he replied that because his customers were all rich people. Du Juan wondered if his father hadn't talked to him about his money yet. I have 14 billion won in my account. If I sell the remaining land I will have another 10 billion. With this amount of money can I be your customer? Du Juan asked him. Uncle hearing how much money the kid had could only keep silent, unable to speak because he probably wasn't as rich as this kid. Du Juan du remembered his past life. There were many rich people in their teenage years who were given shares by tycoon corporations, but that situation still does not exist. After 30 years, the amount of money he owns will be worth at least 100 billion VND. It's hard to believe that a 12-year-old boy like him has that much money. Time is constantly flowing, creating pressure on Uncle Ose Hun. He sat there muttering to himself, unable to believe that a kid has 14 billion VND. Dujan reaffirmed, yes, I will have more than 10 billion VND this year. Oh Se Hun heard the little boy's words but didn't know how to respond. Du Juan handed him a book and asked him to take a look. Oh Se Hun asked curiously, what is this book? The boy replied, this is my own investment plan. This made Oh Se Hun even more confused. He flipped through every page of the book, his eyes glued to the pages, startled and scared. He kept flipping through one, two, three, for years of pages, sweating profusely. Every number and word that Du Juan wrote made Oh Se Hun feel like he was being exposed and he couldn't say anything. Du Jun replied, You are quite smart, uncle. You don't look like your appearance at all, but Seo Hyun still doesn't believe him when he says that it can't be to this extent, you don't believe the content in this notebook for a 12-year-old child, book? What if it was written by a third party? Even a business student from a top-ranked university couldn't think of this. Du Jun smiled cunningly. A top-ranked university student is not the grandson of the chairman of a conglomerate and doesn't have big dreams like you. 
for the past three years, you have come to your grandfather's house every week and followed him and tried to understand everything he said. This plan is also influenced by Chairman Gene. If the kid imitates what Chairman Gene said, then, thinking that, he asked Du Jun, are you influenced by Chairman Gene? Hearing Seo Hyun ask that, Du Jun knew that he had guessed right. Even if he was a genius, he couldn't have come up with this plan by himself. At times like this, he just needed to use his grandfather as an excuse. Du Jun smiled mysteriously because he had achieved his goal. He pretended to say, I always stay with my grandfather, so he tells me a lot of important things. Seo Hyun was stunned when he heard that. He left and went to the yard and met Du Jun's father. His father asked Seo Hyun what was wrong. He looked serious. Seo Hyun asked back, Why didn't you tell me about the 14 billion? His father only remembered that now. Oh, that? I was afraid you would be biased about money matters. Then Seo Hyun mentioned Du Jun, making his father worried and asked what was wrong with Du Jun. Seo Hyun said that he was not a normal child. I think the kid is a genius. His father still laughed and said, Really? Even though Du Jun is really good at studying. Seo Hyun interrupted him and said, Not that. The two men looked at each other for a moment and no one said anything. Suddenly Seo Hyun left and said, I have to go back and think more. I'll be back. He said and left in a hurry to the gate. He left his father standing there wondering what was going on. His father wondered if Du Jun was really a genius. At that time, Du Jun was standing at the window looking down. His father looked up at his son's figure. Du Jun pretended to smile stupidly. His father wondered to himself what kind of genius his son was. One night at Du Jun's house, Seo Hyun asked the kid, so you mean because you were the first one to know the information that your grandfather had, you want me to follow your plan, right? Du Jun nodded. The two of them were silent for a while to think. Seo Hyun continued, it makes sense. If it's an investment plan from Chairman Soon Yen of the conglomerate, it must be more valuable than other plans. He said and stood up immediately. He held some papers in his hand and said, that's it. I don't need these investment guides anymore. Du Jun thought to himself that if he wanted this uncle to follow his plan, he just needed to use his grandfather as an excuse. Seo Hyun said further, by the end of the year, we can set up an investment company where you will own 100% of the shares. The capital will go to the US until you want to withdraw it and of course you have to use your own money to pay for the operating costs of the company. Du Jun smiled and replied, just do as I say, uncle. I still have some things I want to ask you for. Seo Hyun started to feel a bit scared of this kid again. What would surprise him this time? Du Jun just smiled kindly at his uncle. After finishing his work, Seo Hyun hurriedly left. As soon as he stepped down the stairs, he sighed. His father saw that and asked why he sighed. Did Du Jun cause any trouble? But Seo Hyun put his hand on his father's shoulder and said, I'm so jealous of you for raising such a smart son. But his father didn't understand and asked why he suddenly said that. Seo Hyun collapsed on the sofa and told him that he had said earlier that Du Jun would use the money to invest, but only invest 10 billion. His father asked, 10 billion? Not 14 billion? What about the remaining 4 billion? Then Seo Hyun sighed and said to his father. You once said you wanted to set up a film production company, right? You will be the top candidate for the CEO position of that company. His father was very surprised when he heard Seo Hyun say that. But Seo Hyun just smiled lightly. The average production cost of Korean films is only about 150 million won. With 4 billion, you can produce at least 10 films. His father started to get dizzy when he heard that. Seo Hyun told him that Du Jun had calculated that if he got someone else to invest, the money would increase and he would be able to make more films. He also praised the kid for being thoughtful. 
he knew that you would refuse if he just gave you money. So he set up a film company for you. Even if you don't want to go, you have to take over this company. His father listened and bowed his head to the ground. Then the two men sat there in silence. At Chairman Jin's mansion, the chairman asked his secretary about someone's information. The secretary replied that it was Seo Hyun, the representative of Park 1SE from Korea. The chairman looked at the resume and asked his secretary if this name was The secretary answered yes, they had studied together in England when they were in high school. Then the secretary said, Do Jun is too good, isn't he? Instead of just depositing money in the bank to earn interest, he thought of giving it to an investment company. The chairman heard that and put the resume back on the table and ordered. Hachi, you meet this guy and see. Maybe he's just a fly trying to get Du Jun's money. The secretary obeyed the chairman's order. Then he went out to do his task. The chairman started to rack his brains about Du Jun. He thought he just kept his money in the bank, but he invested it. The chairman was pleased with Du Jun's ambition and was not satisfied with bank interest just like himself. And then in August 1889, about two million people in three Soviet countries protested to demand democratization and independence. They held hands and formed a chain of more than 600 kilometers across the capitals of the three countries, also known as the Baltic Way. In the fall of that year, while the Korean people were enjoying a bountiful mid-autumn festival, the Hungazi government opened its western border and East Germans began to flee on a large scale. And this was a sign of help from Eastern Europe. While the whole world was focusing on the changing situation in Eastern Europe, Du Jun concentrated on setting up his company in New York, USA. In this company, Du Jun held 98% of the shares while Seo Han and his partner held 2%. Finally, on November 3, 1089, Du Jun and Oh Han flew to America. Du Jun was silent as he stood in America. Standing in front of a tall and large skyscraper towering over him. Du Jun told himself that this was his company. But Oh Han said this building looked a bit shabby. You didn't want to waste money on useless things so you just looked for cheap space. Hearing that, Du Jun felt a bit confused. He didn't see this place as shabby at all. This place radiated an unusual bright light. And of course, in a city like Manhattan that controls global finance, this building was only mediocre at best and the name of the company was Fantasy. Oh Hun said this name was too childish but Du Jun didn't think so. Du Jun told himself that he would use this company to create miracles. The two uncles and nephews had now entered inside the building. After Oh Hun opened the door, Du Jun started looking around. Du Jun entered a large office. He could hardly believe that this was his first company. Du Jun told himself that he would raise a monster to swallow the Sun Yen group. As the two cousins were standing, they heard a voice and looked over. They saw some foreigners coming over and wanted to shake hands with Oh Hun because they hadn't seen him for a long time. The group of people met and chatted happily. At this moment, Oh Hun suddenly stopped and everyone looked at Du Jun. Oh Hun told him to greet everyone. Then he introduced Du Jun to everyone as the CEO of our company. Du Jun looked at the crowd in disbelief. Oh Hun introduced them to Du Jun as the people who would work with him and briefly mentioned him. The people in the company greeted Du Jun eagerly. Du Jun also calmly said hello and introduced himself to the whole company in English. The whole company was speechless after hearing that. Oh Hun asked him if he also knew how to speak English and Du Jun replied that yes, he sometimes studied by himself. Oh Hun started sweating profusely. This was not a level of speaking that someone who studied occasionally could achieve. He sounded like a native speaker. But they didn't know that Du Jun in his previous life had to learn foreign languages in order to get a position in the Sun Yen group. He had worked hard day and night to learn foreign languages. At this time, Du Jun spoke to the people in the company and said that it was not nice to talk about work when they just met but please help him investigate this company. 
Osan panicked and didn't understand what the kid wanted. The whole company was also in an uproar and didn't know which company the kid wanted to investigate. Seeing this, Osan asked Du Jun which company he wanted to investigate. Osan started to feel a headache coming on. The employees were also stunned and didn't dare to believe that this kid asked them to investigate Martin Computer. But Du Jun still smiled very smugly. The kid said to the crowd that yes, that would be the first place our company invested in. At 10 years old, he made $2,000 from selling stamps. When he was in high school, he made a lot of money from selling newspapers. That was Martin Bell. Oshan asked him if he intended to invest a large amount of money just because he heard a story of his exaggeration. Du Jun still calmly replied that although he didn't have a rich grandfather like him, he made money at his age. Isn't such a person worth investing in? Oshan was speechless when he heard the kid talk like an old man. The whole company started whispering. Oshan ordered them to investigate all the information about Martin Computer and Martin Bell immediately. At this time, everyone dispersed and went back to work. Du Jun was very pleased to see the scene. A few days later, when Du Jun was walking around the street with Oshan, he couldn't believe that Martin wanted to meet him at a hamburger shop. At this time, Oshan said that the chances of investing in Martin Computer were quite low. But Du Jun casually replied that it was because they were being invested by another side for $30 million. At this point, Oshan continued to say that his nephew already knew. If it was last year, he would definitely want to meet us. That's why he said timing is the most important thing in investing. At this point, Du Jun started to calculate the timing of investing and withdrawing capital. He told Oshan that we were one step behind. Oshan also agreed with this opinion. He said that Bell chose to meet at a fast food restaurant, meaning that this meeting was not important enough for Bell. Moreover, he also had to struggle and get tired to make an appointment with him. Du Jun sighed and was lost before entering the restaurant. Oshan called Du Jun to hurry up and go in. The space inside the fast food restaurant seemed crowded and noisy. The two uncles and nephews walked in and looked around. Suddenly they heard someone call out, Hey, you! They looked over and saw a skinny kid sitting and waving at them. Du Jun was surprised and looked up. At 27 years old, Bell became the youngest person to enter the top 500 richest people in the world. At 34 years old, according to the law, he was in the top five richest people in the U.S. with an official fortune of $21.4 billion. Then Oshan and Bell started to greet each other and identify themselves. Bell asked Oshan who Du Jun was and his uncle answered that he was a fan of Bell. Bell laughed out loud when he heard he had a fan. The three sat down at the table and started to introduce themselves. Bell told Oshan to get to the main point right away. He said he had to go back to the company in 15 minutes. The uncle hurriedly announced that Fantasy Company wanted to invest in Bell's company. Before he could mention the amount of investment and benefits, Bell quickly refused. He said we don't need investors anymore, we have enough now. Du Jun listened and understood that Bell had just received an investment of $30 million in capital. The company was guaranteed, so he didn't need any more investment. Oshan still tried to negotiate with very good benefits, hoping Bell would reconsider. But Bell ate and said he only needed enough capital to expand his company and he had a perfect plan already. He said he could make money by himself and he wouldn't do stupid things like raising stock prices to make more money. Hearing Bell finish, Oshan didn't know what else to say. At this point, Du Jun looked at Oshan a little and then came up with an idea right away. Du Jun pretended to be naive and asked Bell if he could call him Mai. And Bell was very happy with that, sure kid. Then Du Jun told Bell that you in the past were me in the present. In the future, I will definitely be like you now. But Bell laughed and said oh boy, you're dreaming big ha? Huh? My childhood was a bit different from normal, you know, I never lost. Du Jun said I'm the same and I'm different from you too. At this point, 
Belle had a different look at this kid. Du Jun continued when you were 12 years old, you made $2,000 by selling stamps but now when I'm 12 years old, I have $150 million by selling land. Mr. Bell heard that and was shocked too. He couldn't believe a 12-year-old kid could make $15 million. Du Jun continued I don't know what you used those $2,000 for. But I have already planned how to use $15 million. I will use this money to become a major shareholder of Martin Computer. Bell heard the kid finish and was also stunned. He asked Osun if this kid was his son. But Osun said that this kid was my boss. Bell then suddenly burst out laughing. Then he laughed louder and louder. Then he even slapped the table with a bang. Bell said to Jun that he would ask him two questions. The first one was where did you hear about me making money by selling stamps? Suddenly being asked that, Du Jun was also very surprised. But he confidently answered Bell that anyway it's an investment of $15 million, do you think I didn't investigate anything before rushing to decide? Bell forced a smile. Then he asked again, you want to be a major shareholder, right? But I already said I don't accept any more investment, so what are you going to do? I hold more than half of the voting rights of the board of directors, my opinion is the most important. Du Jun calmly replied, I think your company will go public in about half a year. At this point, Bell suddenly choked. Du Jun smiled inwardly, thinking he must be surprised and wondering how I knew that. Du Jun continued, I will use the money to buy all of your company's shares on the market. With $15 million, I think I can become a major shareholder, right? Oh, and one more thing, this year I can prepare another $10 million. Bell listened and felt more and more that his brain was not enough to deal with this kid. Bell heard Du Jun say further, as a major shareholder and investor, I will become a member of the board of directors and have the right to participate in the business process. This is a basic requirement that must be met. The two adults sat in silence as they heard Du Jun say each sentence. If you agree to let my company invest, I will give you all the voting rights of the shareholders until I sell the shares. And I will give priority to sell the shares back to you. I will sell them to you at the market price at that time. Hearing this, Mr. Oshun hastily interrupted Du Jun and apologized to Bell to discuss again. He told Du Jun that this decision could not be made like that. First of all, the buyback price is usually higher than the current value. If you look at it from the perspective of protecting your business rights, you should sell back your shares at a higher price than when you bought them. Bell then smiled happily. He spoke up and said, It seems true, huh? That kid is your boss, but I was doubtful all this time. Bell asked Du Jun what his name was. Du Jun introduced his English name. I am Hakwaden. Hakwaden memorized this name in his head. Then he enthusiastically put his hand on the table and said, Hakwaden, let's discuss more details, shall we? Du Jun smiled confidently, knowing for sure he had won this game. Mr. Oshun still didn't understand what was going on. On the flight back to Korea, Mr. Oshun said from now until the investment agreement, he would be a bit busy. The conditions would still be as agreed, but they would surely reject all $15 million. What should we do with the remaining money? Du Jun was very comfortable and replied, Uncle and staff meet with each other and then report to me where to invest, okay? Then I will decide. Mr. Oshun heard that and was a little startled. You surprised me a lot. Du Jun didn't know what he had said that suddenly surprised him. Oshun continued to ponder and said. Especially the conversation between you and Martin, I thought about it for a long time but still didn't get it. I always considered myself a smart kid to look at things but still couldn't. Du Jun smiled wickedly and pointed to his head. Actually, I'm someone who lived 30 years later but reincarnated here uncle so of course in my head I will have the knowledge and thinking of a 40-year-old person. Mr. Oshun heard that and was a little stunned. Then he narrowed his eyes and looked closely at the kid. 
Osun gritted his teeth and said stop joking around with the old man. I don't like the sci-fi genre. Du Jun quickly laughed and asked don't you find it funny? Osun still continued to think and said. That's right, that's why you are like this now. If this is the understanding of a 40-year-old person who regularly does business, then who would dare to doubt it? Hearing that, Du Jun just smiled to get by. The flight continued to fly towards the Republic of Korea. At the Sunyang building, the secretary was reporting to the chairman about the investigation results in New York. He said they just went sightseeing and shopping, sir. The chairman looked at the document and said Oh Sun also went with them, so it was a business trip, not a sightseeing trip. The secretary hurriedly said he would find out more. Then the secretary wanted to say something but stopped. He hesitated and stuttered. The chairman saw that and asked what was wrong with him. At this point, the secretary dared to report to the chairman that Dung Ki was currently setting up a film production company. It was almost done and maybe from next year he would start making movies. He heard he planned to make two movies at the same time. The chairman was furious when he heard that. He gritted his teeth and asked again, is it due June's money? The secretary quickly answered yes, the kid gave him four billion. Hearing that, the chairman was even more angry. Four billion ha? Huh? The angrier he got, the more he clenched his fist. He told the secretary that Du Jun also had to fail once to know the taste. If he wanted to be recognized by others, he shouldn't use money. The secretary didn't understand what he meant by Du Jun why. The chairman replied yes, even if he was his father, he still had to feel for himself that he shouldn't waste money if he didn't see the possibility of success. For billion is a very cheap tuition fee to help the kid become decisive and escape from the desire to prove himself. The secretary asked again but maybe Dunkey's movie will be successful. The chairman heard that and just sighed. Dunkey is just another parasite. Has he ever run a business before? Making movies is not easy like that. If so, why are there so many failed movies? The secretary heard the chairman say that and didn't dare to argue back. He just thought secretly as long as one movie succeeds. We will surely see Du Jun's excellent ability when deciding to invest. At Du Jun's house, Oh Sun was reporting to his young boss. We will invest $9 million in Martin. I have selected candidates to invest the remaining $6 million, he stated, and then handed Du Jun the papers to review. At this point, Du Jun noticed a very intriguing name. Du Jun exclaimed, Microsoft, ha! Huh? Osun quickly replied, it sounds unusual, doesn't it? To be honest, I don't know much about this company either. I've heard that investing in it carries some risks. Dujun's uncle had mentioned this before, but Dujun, being from the future, knew about Microsoft and Bill Gates. How could he consider it risky? Dujun inquired about the reasons behind his uncle's caution. Osun explained, this company has consistently released multiple operating systems for computers, but the market hasn't responded well. According to the information I have, they plan to release version 3 next year, but their past failures make it difficult to see any promising prospects. Moreover, ESM has also developed its own operating system and separated itself from Microsoft. Hearing his uncle's words, Dujun contemplated whether Microsoft would release version 3.0 or 3.12 next year, but he concluded that it probably didn't matter much, it was only a difference of one or two years. Then he turned to ask Osun's opinion, what do you think, uncle? Osun honestly said, actually I'm interested in Microsoft. Hearing his uncle say that, Dujun knew that his uncle still wanted to invest in the field that he didn't understand well. Dujun said, then just do it, uncle. I think we will be lucky. The uncle smiled and agreed, okay then. At this point, Du Jun said again, oh uncle, can you sell the land in Bundan for me? Huh, why sell it? Just keep it until the land price goes up to the peak and then sell it. The uncle asked. But Du Jun smiled and said, I can't ignore the company in New York. 
If I use $15 million to invest in these two companies, I will have to find more money to run the company and invest elsewhere, uncle. Osun remembered the company story when he heard the kid say that. Du Jun continued, we will only use half of the money from selling the land. The rest will be saved. Osun also understood his way of doing things. Then he got up and left. After seeing Osun off, Du Jun collapsed on the chair. He had to continue thinking. He was just using the scattered knowledge from the future but didn't know anything about anything. He was just an ordinary office worker who had never played the stock market or visited Wall Street. What he had was just future knowledge picked up from some articles. He didn't know when to invest or which company was worth investing in. But 30 years later there was one field that would surely become a legendary unbeatable field, which was film. Among thousands of movies produced in Hollywood, he knew almost all of the movies with high revenues. The film investment company would never fail. Du Jun smiled wickedly because he knew that film would help him become the King Midas in Hollywood. A few days later, Oh Hun brought documents to Du Jun's house. I don't know why you want to see this but I got it for you. Here you go, take a look he said and put a document on the table about the current situation of film production and investment. Du Jun started to study the document he brought. Osun asked him if he wanted to show his father because films could be imported. Yes, I'm planning to do that. Du Jun replied. Osun smiled and watched Du Jun concentrate on studying. Du Jun saw a title that was very explosive in the future. He was so annoyed that he cursed because this movie had been confirmed for distribution already. Too bad if this movie was distributed by my father's company in the country, it would surely make a big noise for the movie owners and help my father's movie have a chance to go to theaters. Suddenly, he noticed another name. Dujin quickly turned to Osun and asked, Uncle, is this movie still in production? Osun inquired, Which movie? Dujin handed him the document related to the movie. Osun reviewed the document and replied, This movie is still in pre-production, but it's on a small scale. The director and the lead actor are both newcomers. Oh, and by the way, the lead actor is someone of your age. He advised Dujin to consider skipping this movie. Dujin asked, Why? Osun explained, Quasir initially budgeted $14 million for this film, but suddenly the costs escalated. The project was transferred to another company and is currently undergoing a budget reassessment. If the project doesn't start on the right foot, it's hard to see how it could succeed. However, Dujun insisted, saying, Uncle, I want to invest in this movie. I want to invest as much money as possible. This time, Osun was very annoyed. Du Jun had invested in stocks and movies in completely different ways. Stocks were very risky, and losses were immediately visible. However, with movies, if they didn't break even, you could lose everything at once. There was no opportunity to withdraw your money. Oh Sun stated that he opposed this move, it was not an investment, but a gamble. Du Jun quickly pleaded with him, even though he was the one with the money. He requested just this one time. He promised not to bring up investing again after this. Wasn't that acceptable? Osun was genuinely frustrated with Jean Dujun, which made him jump. He understood why Osun had reacted so strongly this time, but he knew he had to seize this opportunity. Fantasy Monster Company could not afford to miss this valuable chance to make a name for itself with a Hollywood movie investment. Of course, the profits could increase by tenfold. After thinking it over, Du Jun told Oh Sun that if he lost money, it would be his own loss. He had promised his parents that he would do as he pleased. Oh Sun was shocked by what the young man said. Despite his anger, he couldn't do anything. Du Jun remained firm in his decision. Furthermore, even if he used up all the money to run the company, it wouldn't matter. After all, his grandfather was the wealthiest man in Korea, wasn't he? This time, Oh Sun was truly angry with the young man. He had to control himself and not make a big issue out of it. 
Eventually, he agreed with Du Jun. Fine, do as you wish. Du Jun reminded him to secure the distribution rights for the movie in Korea. Oh Sun replied that it wasn't a problem since they might be the only company investing in it. Was there anything else? No, that's all, sir, Du Jun answered. As soon as he heard that there was nothing else to discuss, Oh Sun hastily gathered his documents and stood up to leave. He stated that he would handle things quickly and report back. Du Jun's mother emerged from the kitchen and suggested that Oh Sun stay for dinner. However, Oh Sun, who was still upset with the young man, declined, saying, Du Su, I don't have the mood to eat with everyone right now. I'll excuse myself first. Du Jun's mother couldn't understand why he was so angry. Du Jun thought to himself that it would be all right. He guessed his uncle would be very angry. His mother asked him, Are you okay, Du Jun? Yes, I'm fine, mom. Don't worry too much, Du Jun smiled and replied. He thought that as soon as he saw the year-end ticket sales, his uncle's anger would vanish like melting snow. Du Jun then picked up the movie documents again and looked at them. He grinned wickedly, feeling like a winner. This was because the movie's title was To Be Home Alone, and after the launch of the DOS 3.0 operating system, Microsoft quickly entered the computer market, causing its stock price to soar. Martin Computer, which used to be worth 30 cents, set consecutive records with its stock price continually rising. Thanks to this, Osun's anger subsided, and in its place was a smile as bright as a flower. He even consoled Du Jun saying that the $8 billion loss, roughly $5.6 billion on average, invested in the movie to be home alone, would recover swiftly within a few years. He waved his arms and legs, telling Du Jun it was all right. But Du Jun, who was 40 years old, was sure that Oh Sun would eventually have to eat his words. Finally, Oh Sun was metaphorically slapped in the face, and it was no different from hitting himself. He told Du Jun, just the profits from that movie alone reached 33 billion, which is six times the initial investment. But that was only the profit from the US. If the movie was released worldwide, the amount would be even more. Compared to elementary school students in the world, you are the richest kid. Du Jun answered, but uncle, I'm in middle school now. That made him speechless. He couldn't believe that in March. Du Jun would officially enter middle school. Oh Sun was stunned, probably afraid that if the kid went to school, no one would make money anymore. At this time, Du Jun's father came in and asked what was going on so he called him over. His mind was also very confused right now. Oh Sun quickly asked why, because of what he said last time? The movie you made hasn't been released yet? The father answered painfully, don't say it anymore. Clearly, all the movie schedules were against the Lunar New Year and Christmas last year. There was a very famous movie called To Be Home Alone, so they said they would show that movie. Oh Hun still insisted on asking the father, so that movie set a limit for the theaters to schedule against it and wait for it to be shown? The father answered painfully without looking at the two of them, but still said that it was a family comedy, so it was very suitable for showing on Lunar New Year. It even set a record for comedy movies. Oh Sun continued to ask kindly, so your movie wasn't shown because of that? The father sighed and said that to be home alone had to be in theaters before his movie had a chance. The father confided that he heard that this movie had a distributor in Korea, but he didn't know where. The central region is very chaotic right now. Hearing that, Oh Sun still sat and laughed at his old friend's misery. The father went crazy and had to find a way to meet the person who distributed the movie in order to adjust the release date and choose the movie. As soon as he finished speaking, Oh Sun put his hand on the father's shoulder and intended to say something, thinking it was comforting. But Oh Sun's grandfather said to the father that you should bother me once, making the father go mad. Oh Sun calmly sat and drank water and continued saying because I know who distributed that movie making the father anxious to know who it was. Du Jun calmly sat and watched the two old men talk and only spoke up now. Dad, 
Don't worry about that movie this Lunar New Year. Just show your movie. The father heard it and didn't understand what it meant. He didn't know why his son said that. Oshun looked at him and said that you should listen and follow Du Jun's words from now on so you won't fail. At this time, the father gradually guessed something. Then Oshun gave him a document. The father took the paper and was stunned too. The paper clearly stated that home to be alone belonged to Duan Film Contractor, which also meant his family's film company. The father was speechless when he heard Oh Sun say that as long as he signed his name, home to be alone would be his. Du Jun gave some advice, why don't you announce that any theater that shows your movie will get a screening of to be home alone? Because Lunar New Year is the peak time. After saying that, Du Jun and Oh Sun both looked at each other with satisfaction. The father was like he had just been given a gold mine by his son, so he was stunned and didn't know what to say. Then he came to his senses and took the document and ran away while saying, wait for me to handle this and then we'll discuss it in more detail, Du Jun. After saying that, the father flew out as fast as the wind, leaving the two uncles and nephews sitting dumbfounded. Oshun laughed a lot. This guy was so impatient that he forgot to ask why we had that contract. And Du Jun, because he had memories from the future, wanted to play big and said to his uncle, uncle. Make a list of the movies that will start shooting this year for me. This time I will invest $200 million. Oshun stopped him and said that playing big once was enough. But Du Jun calmly asked, Uncle, what is the interest rate for investing in the fantasy employees in New York? Oshun hesitated and answered two points, two percent. Du Jun's head started to calculate quickly and then said that in one year I would earn more than six times, 600%. This is the lowest interest rate among the investments I decided to make. Oshun was itching because he lost to the kid. And Du Jun still smiled calmly at his uncle. This time the uncle couldn't argue anymore and just said he understood and would make a list and report to him later. After finishing his work, Oshun also got up and left. Du Jun was tired and leaned back on his warm bed. He lay down to rest but his head was still calculating. He was in middle school now and had to focus on studying. He had to maintain the highest rank so as not to disappoint Chairman Jean. And maybe in the next three years, Du Jun would be more free because he only had to choose successful movies. As soon as he thought about that, there was a knock on the door of his room. His mother poked her head in and asked if he had finished talking with his uncle. Du Jun sat up and politely answered yes to his mother. Hearing that, his mother invited him out for dinner with her. Du Jun also happily agreed with his mother. The next day, Du Jun was sitting at home when he heard footsteps running up the stairs. It turned out to be his father who looked like he was in a hurry to go somewhere. When Du Jun greeted him and asked where he was going, his father said that today was the movie premiere day. Then he hurriedly walked away while saying that he would go to the theater to see how things were going and come back right away. Seeing his father so rushed made Du Jun feel very funny. Then the middle school genius arranged to sit and read the Korean economic newspaper. He flipped through the pages to see if there was any news about any new beauty queens to invest in or not. Du Jun suddenly saw shocking news that shook the earth. The little guy had to put the newspaper on the table and read each word carefully. All the newspapers were attacking H. N. Car Company. Du Jun fell into a trance because he didn't know what this was about. It seemed like there was no such thing in his previous life in 91. According to what Du Jun knew, H. N. Car Company suffered heavily from the foreign exchange crisis in 97 and then in 98 Jia Huang Group bought H. N. Car Company. Du Jun started to get nervous, did he change the future because of himself? Or was this just a move by a business as part of the government's corporate restructuring process? Du Jun was scared and quickly looked for his mother who was probably crying because she was afraid of running out of money. The caring mother asked him what was going on, thinking that he needed her this time. But no, this time Du Jun asked when he could go to his grandfather's house. The mother answered that he could go tomorrow. 
but Du Jun was in a hurry and couldn't wait. He wanted to go right away today. The mother agreed and told him to eat breakfast first and then go. But she was still angry and told him not to make the chairman's grandfather angry. If he got angry, there would be no money left in the house. Du Jun then remembered and asked his mother if she wasn't going to the movie theater. Today was the premiere of the movie. But the kind mother confidently said, what if there were no audience? She was too nervous to go. Du Jun understood that he couldn't tell his mother to go and meet him confidently because she didn't know any information about his father's movie. It had been a long time, so maybe she had forgotten. Or maybe she would think that there was no movie from the beginning. Du Jun just gave him a chance. The rest of their lives would depend on their own decisions. He thought that standing from afar and watching without interfering with other people's affairs was also a kind of fun. At this time, at the chairman's mansion, the maid said that he was receiving guests in the library. So Du Jun had to sit in the living room and wait for him. Du Jun noticed that there were two pairs of shoes outside, but he didn't know who they belonged to. He wondered if the shoes were smelly or not, so he kept looking at them. Then Du Jun walked to the sofa while thinking about the article that was published right before the holiday. And the meeting started early in the morning. These facts made Du Jun unable to figure out any clues. Du Jun was boiling inside, sitting in the living room and wondering what the old men and the chairman were talking about in there. At this time, in the library, the chairman asked his son if he was confident enough to take over Agin Motor Company. The uncle heard his father ask him and gathered all his strength and saluted like a flag-raising ceremony. He said yes, as the chairman said, this was the best thing to achieve second place on this day. He would buy Agin and try to get first place. The chairman gave him the task of this matter from now on. He told him to discuss with the department heads and buy Agin within this year. If successful, he would give him all the shares of the automobile industry. The uncle and the secretary were shocked by the chairman's words. But a second later, the uncle smiled confidently, thinking of the money he would make. The secretary looked at this scene and also started to calculate in his head. The secretary thought to himself that giving him all the shares of the automobile industry was almost like giving him the whole Sun Yen group. Did the chairman already make a decision? At this time, the chairman interrupted their thoughts and asked his son why he didn't want it or wasn't confident enough. The uncle quickly answered no, he thanked his father. The chairman looked at his son who seemed depressed and then continued to speak. He told him to go back and remember not to make any mistakes. He didn't need to come early tomorrow either, just came to work on New Year's Day. The current time was gold and silver. The uncle nodded to his father and then hurriedly left. He probably thought he was very lucky, but the secretary and the chairman still watched him leave until he reached the door. The secretary said to the chairman that he got a lot of lucky money this year. The chairman asked him what he meant. The secretary replied that he wasn't going to announce his plan for the successor. But the cunning chairman said that he didn't say he would give him Sun Yen Group, he only promised him shares of the automobile industry. The secretary was very surprised that this chairman was old but his head was full of sand. The chairman still had a calm and composed attitude and continued to preach that if he had more than half of the car parts, he would still be able to protect the business rights of the group. This was what he wanted to say. And of course, the car part was still a big bonus. The secretary only sighed and said, you will disappoint the vice chairman like this. But the old chairman smiled smugly and said, he will surely be greedy and try everything, because he will think like you. The secretary was speechless with the old chairman's quick-witted brain. After the old men finished talking, Du Jun also waited until the afternoon. Then he beckoned Du Jun to- Du Jun walked into the library and asked his grandfather, who was still working despite it being Tet, how he was doing. The chairman saw that his grandson had good intentions, so he answered him despite being busy. Du Jun noticed the bookshelves in his grandfather's library as he walked in. 
Benny noticed a newspaper on the table that looked like the one he read earlier in the morning. Du Jun knew right away that today's meeting was about HN. Du Jun pretended to be casual and said that his grandfather looked very happy earlier and was laughing while walking, but his grandfather only said that it was probably because it was Tet today and didn't say anything else. Then he quickly folded the documents and put them on the table, afraid that the little guy would peek. Du Jun's 40-year-old head couldn't believe it, so he asked his grandfather again if he had a question. The chairman still wanted to know what his grandson's question was. At this point, Du Jun saw that there were documents about the automotive industry on his grandfather's table. Du Jun just stared at it and forgot to talk to his grandfather. He speculated that maybe his grandfather was behind this whole thing. The chairman waited for a long time and didn't see his grandson say anything, so he had to ask Du Jun why he wasn't saying anything. Du Jun quickly said that he found it strange because every newspaper today had many articles, and asked if the chairman was talking about a Qi motor. The chairman asked why his grandson found it strange. Du Jun answered naively that it was always like this. But every time a newspaper article about Sun Yen Corporation was published, he would get angry and ask who wrote the article and find out who did it. The chairman was pleased that his grandson remembered that detail, and Du Jun quickly said yes to be loved by him. Then the chairman said that newspapers are places where words are sold to make money, but Du Jun didn't understand what selling words meant in relation to journalism. The chairman continued to teach his grandson about business, saying that those articles seemed to have nothing to do with money, such as an article about Seoul's traffic congestion would be under the guise of a beauty pageant. Come closer to him. He stroked Du Jun's head to praise him for his intelligence. Du Jun's mind started to go crazy after knowing everything, damn it, it was him who did it. He couldn't believe that he was the first one to come to his company. But there was one thing that Du Jun remembered from his previous life. Dianmoto was the group that got Achimoto, not him. Du Jun started to get more nervous. Maybe because he failed, Dianmoto got that opportunity. The next day, it was still at the chairman's mansion. The sound of the kitchen was noisy and bustling all over the house. In the kitchen, the chefs were performing the dark meat stew. The female servers were quick to serve the dishes. They arranged a table full of delicacies, but they didn't see the dark meat stew. Maybe they quit their jobs and left that dish for later to eat secretly. The whole family of the chairman gathered on the rich dining table that was eight meters long. The chairman quietly enjoyed his delicious meal. The two daughters and their husbands also ate silently. Then it was the number 10 couple, Mrs. Zero and Mr. One. Then the husband stroked his young hair, making his wife next to him angry and wondering why she married this husband. The family of the youngest daughter, who was a prosecutor, also behaved solemnly and didn't dare to make a sound. Du Jun's parents were poor and seemed scared. Du Jun was the favorite grandson and had a lot of money, so he was very confident and ate without fear of anyone. Suddenly, his uncle remembered his brotherhood with Du Jun's father and pretended to care and ask about the performance of his father's movie premiere yesterday. Du Jun's father hesitated and couldn't answer. The chairman heard about his useless son and just frowned and couldn't say anything. Suddenly, Du Jun's father confidently said that it was quite good and that the theater had half of it. His brother heard that first movie is already successful. His father modestly smiled and said that today was only the first day and he had to wait until it decreased. Du Jun was happy to hear his father dare to speak up and ate while smiling. At this time, his fat aunt called Du Jun's mother a sister-in-law. Then she gave her a bowl and ordered her to go to the kitchen and get more soup for her. The kind mother only endured and said yes and obeyed. Du Jun was very annoyed by this scene. This old woman still ordered his mother around. His father also got angry when he saw this but didn't know what else to say more. At this time, the chairman suddenly spoke up and said, Second daughter, give me a bowl of soup. The mother was startled and had to turn around and look. Then Du Jun and his father also didn't understand why the chairman did that. 
the second daughter who was fat thought she heard wrong. The chairman started to get annoyed and gave him the bowl and scolded him for being lazy. Give me some soup. The second daughter heard that and jumped up and quickly took the chairman's bowl without daring to delay for a second for fear of being scolded. The other two daughters of the chairman on the table sighed with relief as if they had escaped a disaster. Du Jun's parents didn't understand what had just happened and just sat still in one place looking at the chairman. The chairman still calmly ate because he was the richest in this house. Du Jun thought that his grandfather had recognized his parents in front of the whole family. From now on, other families would not be able to bother his parents anymore. Du Jun smiled wickedly. He knew he should be grateful and cry, but he was busy thinking of ways to betray him. After the meal, Du Jun sneaked up to his grandfather's study room. He peeked and opened the door and walked in. After he got into the room, Du Jun started looking for a way to see the report from yesterday that his grandfather left on the table. He searched while calculating that if he wanted to ruin his grandfather's plan, he needed to know about it clearly. Finally, Du Jun found the plan on the table. He quickly flipped through those documents to see later. Du Jun forgot to hide and just sat on the floor reading those documents. He found out that something seemed wrong. Du Jun turned those documents upside down. Du Jun discovered that this was not a report on the takeover strategy of Agin Motor. This was a report on the necessity of restructuring the car industry and the government support policy and plan. The document said that the Huen Motors takeover of Agin would raise concerns about monopoly in the market, so Sun Yen Motor was the most suitable group to buy Agin. Reading this, Du Jun clenched his fists tighter with anger. So he made up the policy he wanted and then proposed it to the government, and the government would act accordingly. In other words, Sun Yen Group and the government had a very close relationship. Du Jun bit his finger in anger. He thought he couldn't take advantage of this situation. What should he do now? But if he gave up, Ajin Motor would be taken by Sun Yen Group and his plan would also collapse. At this time, Du Jun didn't notice that there was a pair of feet getting closer and closer. The chairman asked, What are you doing there? Du Jun's eyes froze at that moment. His face was stiff because he was caught red-handed. But Du Jun still slowly looked up at him with a ray of hope. But unfortunately, in front of him now was his rich and cruel grandfather. The chairman's face was very angry and red like a mask. He looked down at Du Jun as if he was kneeling and begging for his mistake. From the low angle of his throat, Du Jun looked up at his grandfather's face. He only saw his face red like a tomato and only lacked water to slap Du Jun. Du Jun thought to himself that he was screwed. He was stupid and didn't notice that someone came in. The chairman still stood there waiting for an explanation. Du Jun looked at him more scared because he knew that if he said one wrong word, he would lose all the trust of Chairman Jean that he had built for so long. In this situation, for someone like Chairman Jean, he would want to hear a true word rather than a lie to cover up everything. Du Jun thought so and then told the truth that he was too curious. The chairman frowned and asked, Curious? What do you mean? Du Jun still kept his innocent face and said that he had read a lot of news about Ajin Moto in the newspaper lately. The last time he came to his house, he accidentally saw this report and wondered if it had anything to do with those articles, so he apologized for being rude. The chairman heard Du Jun say that and still kept his angry face and didn't answer. Du Jun calculated in his heart what he would react. But he thought that Chairman Jean would like him to do this. Although young, he still read the newspaper every day and cared about the economic situation. Along with that, he had a desire to answer his own questions, so he came here to find related documents. Sure enough, after a while, the chairman smiled at Du Jun. He asked if you had found the answer yet. Du Jun was happy as if he had won a lottery, but he still pretended to be innocent and said that he had just glanced at it and was not sure. The chairman stood sternly and said that it was a pity that you could not answer his question. He said that the spirit of learning was good, 
but from now on, if he was not there, you should not enter this room without permission. Do you remember that? Du Jun was relieved to be forgiven and quickly put the documents back on the table and apologized. Then he put the documents back on the table and turned to leave. The urgent situation was resolved, but the real problem was later. He thought that the report would have a plan to acquire Ajin Moto. He walked and thought that he had to find another way to reverse the situation, but he did not know what to do. Suddenly, Du Jun stopped when he was about to reach the door. He turned his head and looked at his grandfather with respect. The chairman still smiled kindly as if he was not evil at all. Du Jun bowed and had a new idea in his head. He knew that the person he needed to stop was the government, not him. He had to make the government ignore the car report that Sun Yen Group proposed. He started to search his memory from his previous life to see what was going to happen at this time. The next day, in the chairman's meeting room, he was sitting on a chair listening to the secretary's report on the situation. According to my investigation, everything is true. Chairman Don Suzasu of Hanbu Group bought land from politicians and also bribed them. The secretary continued to say that it seemed that we should limit contact with the Blue House for now. I think this matter will be hard to calm down soon. We also have to stop buying shares of Ajinmoto. The chairman listened and tapped his fingers on his face, making the secretary sweat with each tap of his hand. The chairman shouted after hearing the report that there were a bunch of disasters. He had said not to invest in land under this government. He ordered the secretary to withdraw from this deal and the secretary only said yes sir. On his desk, there was still a file about buying the car industry with the government's support. He looked at this file and felt disgusted. So he angrily threw it into the trash right away. At this time, at Dujin's house, he was drinking his milk comfortably. Dujin praised himself for being lucky that he remembered. It would take some time for the whole country to be shaken by the information that he sent to the media outlets, but finally there would be some results. He thought deeply while drinking his milk. He knew that with this level of scandal, the government would not have time to care about his proposal anymore. He knew that his business would suffer for a long time, but maybe they would not care about anything else either. Dujin was very proud that he still kept Ajinmoto. The next day, at Oshun's office, Dujin said, Uncle, it's time for you to be my colleague. His grandfather did not understand what this kid was talking about. Dujin continued with his rich attitude, Uncle, don't work at power cost anymore. Focus all your attention on fantasy monsters. After all, you are a shareholder who owns 2% of my company. You also make a lot of money, so I'm sure you can afford a huge salary. Osun smiled and asked the kid, what if I don't want to? Dujun was annoyed, why? Why don't you want to? Osun answered, you currently hold 98% of the shares and make all the investment decisions. You are successful every time. What can I do then? Am I right? Osun looked up at Dujun. Dujun calculated that this was not good. He had to offer some bait to keep him. He immediately tempted the old man by saying that he would build a branch in Korea. He was thinking of using some of the capital to run the company in Korea. An uncle also had a black fund, right? Dujun was trying to hold on to Osun. Dujun knew that during his grandfather's investigation of Oshun, he had realized that he was talented. But not long ago, he had trusted him with Wendy. Oshun was silent and wondered if Chairman Jean had told Dujun everything. Or maybe Dujun had asked the chairman for some high-level information. Dujun continued to lure him, I will only invest money in Martin Computers. The rest of the money in the Black Fund will be managed by you, okay? Osun was shocked and said, What? You intend to withdraw your investment from Martin Computer? Dujin said seriously, Yes, I plan to withdraw it next year. Hearing this, Osun could not calm down anymore. He stood up and shouted at Dujin's face, Are you crazy? Martin is the gold mine that brings us the highest profit. Why do you want to withdraw? 
their stock price has never fallen since they went public. And you want to sell that diamond share? Dujin was still calm as if nothing happened. He said, we will discuss this later. What do you think about what I just said? Oh, don't misunderstand me. I'm not proposing, I'm asking for your help. Oh Sun was more angry when he heard this kid's nonsense. He turned his back to the window and did not say anything. But he still said, you arrange your requirements and report to me later. Then we'll talk more. Dujin was happy when he heard this. He thought to himself that it was okay. Whatever the conditions were, he would accept them anyway. Because what he needed most now was an adult like Oh Sun. Someone who did not treat him like a child and was smart and experienced. The most important thing was that he had a lot of experience and could not be taken advantage of anywhere. From now until he grew up, the only person who could represent him was Oshun. Oshun asked again, Dujin, I have a question. Where do you want to use the money for Martin to invest? Do you want to invest in Japan? Dujin answered. Hearing Japan, Oshun's eyebrows furrowed together. He said no way. He yelled at Dujin's face, you also read in the newspaper that if there is an economic bubble, Japan is the country with the highest risk of crisis. Why do you want to invest there? Dujin still had the attitude of a rich kid and said, Uncle, you know very well that the most dangerous place is also the place with the best opportunity. Oshun was furious when he heard him speak, but he felt helpless against this rich kid. He had to make him understand that it was just the words of some successful people. Out of 100 people, only one could seize the opportunity in danger, and the rest would suffer heavy losses. Dujin confidently asked him, Don't you think I will be one of those 100 people? The kid was so confident that Oshun could only stare blankly and didn't know what to say. Seeing Dujin still sitting and smiling confidently like a pervert, Oshun had to exclaim, don't smile anymore, it's creepy. It was a beautiful day at the Sunyan Corporation, but it was not as beautiful inside the house. The uncle asked his son how the meeting between him and the grandfather went. The son said, he told me to stay in Europe until I'm 30 years old. The uncle was angry and said, what else? Did you get angry with him? The son said, of course not. Do you think I'm still a stupid kid? I just smiled and promised to do my best. The uncle praised him with a sentence, very good. He looked at his three children and told them to remember his words. The grandfather would monitor their every move. If they made any noise, not only them but also others would be affected. The second and third children sat and listened like deaf ears. They were annoyed by the old man's preaching. The uncle said to his daughter Haikyang, you will graduate from college next month. I will find a decent guy for you to get married quickly and then go study abroad. Before he finished his sentence, the daughter interrupted him and said, Dad, who gets married right after graduation these days? Wait a few more years. The uncle shouted at her and said, listen to me carefully. The daughter was scolded and had to stop her rude behavior. She sat quietly and feared her father because she was afraid he wouldn't give her money. The uncle pointed at his three children and said, You only have academic titles with the grandfather. Only then can you focus on doing what you want. If the grandfather ignores you, your current living standard will drop by more than half. Hearing their father say that, the eldest son and the daughter dared not say anything because he was right. The youngest son felt tense and had to ask, why do you suddenly say that? The uncle looked at his three children and said angrily, Don't you know that since last year, the grandfather has changed? He is very fond of Uncle Ute and Dujin's family now. The eldest son said, It's true that Dujin is favored by him lately, but he doesn't consider Uncle Ute as his biological son. He is not the kind of person who cares about Uncle Ute's whole family just because of Dujin. The other two children didn't know whose side to take, but they always sat and looked sullen. The uncle sighed and said, listen to me. Even if you are busy, you have no time to watch Uncle Lute's movie. Think about my age. 
I don't have much time left. From now on until then, you should visit your grandfather more often and ask him to let you into the corporation. Then you can live however you want. Do you understand? The children heard about living happily and quickly agreed. After saying that, the uncle angrily drove them all out. The children were relieved to get out of there and ran away before he could scold them again. After they left, the uncle started to have a headache. He blamed himself for not being able to buy HN Motor last year. Since then, everything big and small in the corporation was done without his knowledge. The problems that he solved at the subsidiary were finally approved by his father. There were rumors in the corporation about changing the succession order. Some branch directors even dared to ignore him and report directly to his father. It was clear that his father was changing. He was angry and slammed his hand on the table, thinking that he had a vague guess. He remembered Dujun and realized that his father was not wary of that kid. Just because of a grandson, he made the whole family chaotic. His father thought that if his children couldn't handle the work and didn't have the ability to become the owner of the corporation, it would be best to abandon them. The uncle thought angrily. At this time, Fantasy Monster Company in New York had injected 10% of its capital to establish a branch in South Korea, and Oshun was the legal representative director of both branches in the U.S. and South Korea. Now Dujun, the major shareholder of the company, had established a good relationship with Oshun, the business expert. His attitude towards him was still the same, but he no longer strongly opposed his opinions. Dujun was secretly happy. Oshun listened to Dujun more. When they argued, Dujun realized that when he had different opinions, he would make reasonable proposals based on the available information. Today was another exhausting day for the two cousins. Oshun encountered another headache. Mr. Tranton advised Dujun, think again, do you want to sell all your shares of Martin Computer, not just a part? But Dujun calmly replied, a 100-fold increase in profit is enough, isn't it? There is no reason to be greedy anymore. Oshun advised him not to do it, but he had to accept it. When he was about to leave, he saw something on the bed. It seemed like a document of Dujun's. He looked at it and said to Dujun, Have you researched about the company that is worth investing in? It's not easy. Its revenue last year was 100 billion won, almost equal to ours. Dujun said, That's already a big company, what else? But Oshun said, This company has a strong connection with the IT industry. The more IT develops, the stronger the company will be. In the future, it will surely be stronger. Dujun looked closely at the document. He saw that it was information about Paul Quabank. Dujun smiled cunningly and thought that he had already chosen a company to invest in. But he wanted to show respect for his colleague, so he asked him to make a list. It seemed that Oshun also wanted to choose that company. He asked him what he meant by not easy. Oshun said, I think they are already developing well and don't need investors. After saying that, he suddenly remembered something. Oh right, the founder of this company was a third-generation Korean-Japanese in Japan. Dujun knew this person. He was Choi Dung Chun, a third-generation Korean-Japanese in Japan who wrote a legend of success. Dujun asked if they planned to list their shares. But Oshun said he hadn't heard them say anything about it. Hearing him say that, Dujun was happy and said that they still had a chance. Dujun remembered that he only read a few news articles on the internet and didn't have a detailed view of him. But he still remembered that after listing their shares, their price increased by more than 100 times. Dujun quickly told him that they had said this before, everything in the world has its price, but each person will think of a different price. Oshun listened attentively to see what this kid wanted to say. Dujun continued, as long as they met the conditions, they should sell immediately. At this time, Oshun asked, how much do you intend to pay them? Dujun coldly asked back, what do you think? Oshun was asked back and didn't know how to answer. He thought for a while and raised his five fingers. 
he said as he raised his hand, five times. With this price, after they list, we will get 3% interest on the difference thanks to the first squeeze. Dujan smiled and said, if it's only five times, they might not care. Oshun heard that and could only scratch his head. He said, this is really beyond our ability. There must be many investors who want to offer five times. In other words, if the price is higher, it's not worth investing anymore. But Dujin was still very confident. He said, we just need to pay more than five times. This kid kept hesitating and made Oshun annoyed. He finally asked, how much do you want to pay? He planned to increase the purchase price by 10 times and was thinking about paying them 50 times. Dujin calmly said as if money was falling leaves outside. Oshun heard the kid say that and felt like thunder struck his ears. He couldn't do anything but cover his mouth and gape. But Dujin was still very relaxed. He said, don't be so surprised. Martin has increased by 100 times already. Why can't Power Qua Bank achieve that level? This time Oshan was very scared. He decided to advise this kid. He said, what if it doesn't work? Power Qua Bank is not a production company like Martin. It's just a distribution company. 100 times? We might lose everything. This is a big gamble. Oshun said very worriedly. Dujin thought of the image of the rich old man in the future and said to Oshun, You can't make the other party sit at the table without us. Who plays cards alone? Right? You have to see the outcome. Hearing the kid who was only in his teens say that, Oshun couldn't believe his ears. He thought to himself, This kid is young but thinks so highly. It's true that blood is powerful. Because he trusted in Dujin's blood of wealth, Oshun decided not to argue anymore. He stood up and left, but still said, All right, since you are blessed by the god of wealth, let's try this game. I will bet on you. Oshun said this until here and hesitated a bit. But Dujin said, Yes sir. Oshun said again, Gambling addiction will make us bankrupt. Remember that well. Dujun was confused because he had never played cards before. But he still smiled at his uncle and said, This will be the last time until I become an adult. Oshun heard that and smiled and left. The next morning at Dujun's house, Oshun brought a stack of documents and said, I have signed a contract to buy 5 million shares at 35 times the price. Now we can only hope for your luck. Oshun said and laughed. Dujin also laughed and said, Don't worry, everything will be fine. Seeing Dujin drinking milk, Oshun still asked, Do you really want to sell all your shares in Martin? Dujin smiled and said, We have made a lot of profit from Martin, 100 times more than before. There is nothing to regret anymore. After selling the shares in Martin and buying the shares of Power Qua Bank, you can manage the rest of the money yourself. I will be in high school next year and I want to focus on studying for the next three years. Oshun rarely saw this kid not greedy for money. He laughed and said, this is the first time I hear a student say that they study hard and it sounds weird. You always rank first in your school, so of course you want to go to S University. You plan to choose economics or business as your major, right? Contrary to his uncle's thoughts, Dujun answered no. He planned to go to law school. Oshun was surprised and asked again, Law school? Why? Du Jun answered, Next to me, I have the best businessman in Korea, my grandfather, and my uncle who studied business in England. What else can I learn from them? Si Hoon asked, What do you think you can learn from the law department? Do you want to be a prosecutor? Du Jun said, Of course not. I just want to show off. Sihun didn't understand what he meant. Du Jun explained, I want to be a third generation Chable who is also smart. Some Chable families have people who study at S University, but none of them are good enough to get into the law department. Sihun was shocked by his ambition. What was he planning to do? The next afternoon, at the chairman's mansion. 
The chairman sipped his tea and asked Du Jun, You only have one more semester before you go to high school, right? Du Jun quickly agreed to please the old man, because he was good at flattering. Du Jun also said to him, I have talked to my father. The chairman wondered if he was looking for a school. Du Jun said no, he would study at a normal school. He didn't need to study abroad. The chairman was not happy to hear that. He thought his grandson didn't care about him. He knew it would be like this. He said, don't worry, I will find out about the prestigious universities in Switzerland for you. I will let you study at the best school in the world. But Du Jun was stubborn. He said he would study at S University. The chairman was very surprised and asked. What? S University? Du Jun politely said yes, it was a school that gathered talents from all over the country. The law and medicine departments had the highest entrance scores, but he liked humanities, so he would study law. The chairman was stunned and asked, Law? Do you want to be a prosecutor? Du Jun smiled and said no, he knew his dream. He wanted to be a businessman. The chairman asked why he wanted to study law then. Du Jun said to make him proud. Among the Chabel descendants, no one was smart enough to get into the law department of S University. The chairman was speechless and amazed. He remembered how proud the chairman of Ji Hyun Group was at the meeting of the Korean Industrial Federation. His grandson got into S University and became the topic of the meeting that day. Everyone knew the tricks that helped him pass the exam, but he still bragged nonstop and made everyone angry. He heard that he hired dozens of reporters from S University and the Ministry of Economy to go to S University. The reporters followed the officials and investigated the situation. Then they chose a department with the lowest competition rate before 6 o'clock and successfully submitted the application before the reception stopped working. He heard that he got into a dead-end department like Oriental Studies or Oriental History or something like that. If he took the regular exam, he wouldn't even dream of setting foot in S University. But even if he was a Chable chairman, he was still a normal person, so after a year he still kept boasting about his grandson. It was a bland boast indeed. But if it was getting into the law department of S University, it would be different. Because this department did not allow cheating and everyone had to admit it. Thinking of this, the chairman quickly asked Du Jun why he registered for the law department of S University because of him. Du Jun smiled innocently and answered, Of course, sir. Why else would I want to study law if I don't become a controller? The chairman looked at his grandson and was very touched. He smiled happily and said, Finally, there are many people who make money to increase my assets, but none of them make me happy. But my youngest grandson moved me to this extent. The chairman said emotionally, You should go to S University. Whatever you want as a gift for admission, I will buy it for you. Du Jun laughed loudly and replied, Yes, to please the chairman. But in his heart he thought, You have to remember what you just said. Because what I want is not just an imported car. I want the power of the chairman of Sun Yen Group. In July 1994, Paul Gubin announced his stock and was listed at the highest price of 18,900 yen per share. After listing, Paul Gubin immediately earned 200 billion yen. Chairman Choi Dung Chun announced the positive buying and selling and merging with the ambition to reach the world. The first $230 million of Du Jun's initial capital increased to $850 million after only one year. He earned $620 million. Before Paul Gubina's economic bubble burst, he withdrew his capital and stopped investing. Du Jun also devoted all his energy to studying for three years in high school. Sometimes he also invested in Hollywood movies, but of course he only considered it as a hobby. If people think that his investment in the movie Titanic by director Tram is risky, he has to accept it. Fortunately, Du Jun's British friend Sang Don successfully completed the high school program, but because he did not get enough scores to enter the desired university, he quickly went to study in the U.S. 
Although he is the type who easily changes his mind, but not his nature, it turns out that no one in the family expects or cares about him. So he can easily continue studying in his favorite field, which is probably music. Then he also boarded a plane to the distant U.S. Now in the third generation of Sun Yen group, everyone is looking at Du Jun, a 12th grade student, to see if Du Jun can become the first person to pass the law department of S20 University. Everyone is watching Du Jun's achievements closely. Some are curious, some are cautious. Only his parents and grandfather always expect and follow him. One day before announcing the university entrance exam results, the chairman sat listening to the phone and boasted loudly to the other side that my youngest grandson ranked 39th nationwide. That's not school-wide, but nationwide. If only considering the humanities field, he ranked 10th. The maximum score for the university entrance exam is 400 points, right? The kid got 367 points. He was only 6 points away from first place nationwide. That's not too far behind, right? The chairman boasted for a while and still didn't get bored. One day before announcing the university entrance exam results, the chairman received a paper with Du Jun's results. He held the paper in his hand and called the other side saying that he had to pass the law department of S University to be qualified. He said that he had studied hard but was S University capable of teaching my grandson? I should have chosen Harvard or Oxford. I really have to pay all tuition fees for those children who can't get scholarships but this smart kid will definitely get a scholarship. He pretended to complain to the other side, which was really difficult. After hanging up a phone call with the chairman, he eagerly looked at who else he had to call and brag to. Suddenly he saw a name in the phone book. He picked up the phone and ordered the other end to call the media department to come here. That afternoon at the chairman's mansion, the chairman handed over the paper result to the newcomer and told him to look at this. The man with glasses took the paper result and read it hastily. Then he respectfully bowed his head and congratulated the chairman, but the chairman coldly said that there was no need to congratulate him. He secretly leaked this news out and made sure that the reporters came here tomorrow to take pictures of Du Jun for him. The head of the media department still did not understand the chairman's intention. He was bewildered for a while. The chairman started to scold him for not having any affection. What was so surprising? What would people think? The chairman said casually that there was a rumor that the chairman's grandson would use money and connections to get into universities. But with such high scores, could money buy them? Could they use connections? He had to make sure that there would be no more rumors like that in the future. This time, the head of the media department answered yes, I understand, sir. Then the chairman kept looking at the scores on the paper result. The more he looked, the more he liked his youngest grandson. The next day, reporters came in droves. Cameras flashed at Du Jun incessantly like Lee Min Ho Du Jun answered in the interview that he had been tutored in each subject by carefully selected teachers for a year. But ten years of work by the reporters made everyone there stunned and speechless. Du Jun's parents stood aside and felt strange about their son. Du Jun was rich, so he said he was rich. He didn't know what he said was wrong and that everyone was silent. He asked the reporters why they were afraid of the grandson of the richest man in Korea who only learned from textbooks. A reporter answered, No, it's not like that. Then the reporters below whispered, But who is the top scorer this time? Someone else answered that it was a student from Jeju Island. Du Jun said again, you reporters, you can go to Jeju Island to get news and write an article about me. He said goodbye to them. He wanted them to hear him say that and they also said yes. Then Du Jun continued, you can tell by looking that you came here to write an article praising me. My grandfather studied a lot of books, so he would be happy if he read an article saying that I learned a lot from reference books and materials. He had been talking for a while, but the reporters were confused and didn't understand anything. Du Jun's father stood aside and laughed every minute. 
Then on the first day of 1997 at Sun Yen Group, the chairman was enjoying a glass of wine at a celebration party. The guests were also crowded and noisy, all from wealthy families. Du Jun was enjoying a glass of fine wine when he heard someone approaching. Oh, youngest brother, I heard you made a big splash. His brother said sarcastically. You saw the interview and congratulated me, right? He said as he reached out his hand to shake hands with Du Jun. Du Jun was very happy to see his brother. The two brothers shook hands happily. Du Jun said thank you brother Dong Chun. I also congratulate you for coming back to Korea. At this time, his brother whispered in Du Jun's hand that when he became the director of the Future Control Institute someday, he would transfer his legal inheritance rights to him, so he should handle it well. Du Jun still pretended to be innocent and said that the director of the Control Institute should naturally help the person who was about to become the chairman of Sun Yen, who was him, while you were about to become a lawyer specializing in mergers and acquisitions. Who told you that? Du Jun innocently answered, Grandfather did. His brother was shocked, really? Grandfather said that? Du Jun honestly replied, Yes, as you said, if you study law, it is better to be a lawyer than a prosecutor. How can Du Jun say it so easily and think to himself that this brother is too greedy, if there were no people around, he might be laughing out loud? His brother happily asked Du Jun, are you honest? Do you also want to be a lawyer? Du Jun did not answer immediately, but began to calculate that this guy was the best among his cousins. He was so smart that even Chairman Jean recognized him and also ranked highest in the civil service exam. He didn't know if this guy would become his opponent in the future, but Chairman Jean advised him to be a lawyer to help the group, so he was somewhat relieved. He probably wanted to turn him into a close minion. Then Du Jun pretended to be naive and said, I don't know yet, actually I'm not interested in being a judge, I prefer to be a prosecutor or a lawyer, I will think slowly during the study process. Du Jun knew that of course he could say the answer that this guy was expecting, but there was no such thing as getting what you want right away. His brother still smiled and said, that's right, there is still a lot of time, you can think slowly, you just graduated from high school, you don't need to rush to make a decision. Just tell me if you don't want to put those small six-character books like ants, I will help you find a comfortable position in the group ha. Du Jun heard him say that and also thanked him for his happiness. But in his head he thought this guy had made a lot of progress. He could control his expression and show his ease. It seemed that living abroad had helped him grow up. His brother continued to show his concern and said that he had to help his younger brother have fun after this party. You just follow me. I will slowly show you how beautiful and interesting this world is. Du Jun heard him say that and just nodded and smiled for his happiness. His brother was probably too happy and even patted Du Jun on the shoulder like a blood brother. After a fake affectionate scene between brothers, his brother also left. Du Jun looked at his brother's back and whispered, That's right, just live happily and enjoy the world because in the future all you have is the memory of that beautiful life. At this time suddenly there was a flattering voice saying, Oh this little guy how did you get such high scores ha? Huh? Du Jun was about to turn around to see who it was. Then his aunt flattered again saying, I wish my child was half as good as you. His uncle also intervened and finally on his wife's side there was also a junior of his uncle in the study process. If there was anything you didn't understand just feel free to ask uncle okay Du Jun will help you with all his heart. His aunt heard her husband say that and started to get annoyed, junior ha? Huh? You graduated from S. University but you didn't even have a chance to see the gate of S. University. The husband argued back, I didn't say she was a junior from the same school. She is a junior from the law academy. The aunt suddenly changed her attitude and said, That's great, Du Jun. Next time, invite your uncle to be your tutor. He failed to win the election, so now he just sits at home all day. At this point, Du Jun remembered that his uncle had not been elected in the parliamentary election in April. 
he had not known his own limits and had stubbornly refused to listen to his grandfather's advice to run in Seoul. Even this aunt had secretly taken money from the shopping center to invest in her husband's campaign, but it was still a waste of effort. Du Jun looked at the couple who were unhappy with each other, probably because they were poor. So he asked, will uncle be able to run in Seoul again next time? But the uncle was still full of enthusiasm and affirmed, of course, I can't stop after two terms. I will finish this term and then move up to a higher office. Du Jun muttered sarcastically in his heart, but on his face he still smiled like an innocent kid. The uncle continued, you know I'm very happy with your achievements, right? The upcoming supplementary election, you understand, right? Du Jun interrupted him and said, Uncle has to win the supplementary election, and I will ask him to support my campaign funds. The couple were overjoyed and the aunt quickly praised him, You are so smart. You say one thing and understand two things. Seeing the couple so happy, Du Jun decided to throw another bait. He said, If uncle doesn't agree to support me, then I will help uncle. After all, uncle is my senior. The uncle was puzzled and asked, What do you mean? Du Jun asked back, Don't you remember? I have money from selling the farm in Bondang. I still have that money in the bank and I haven't used it yet. There is still quite a lot left. At this point, the uncle finally remembered Du Jun's money. Du Jun secretly calculated that the uncle had to get into parliament and then help his nephew gather some lawmakers to follow him. The uncle happily grabbed Du Jun's hand. He was very grateful and called out Du Jun's name. Late at night after the party that day, a luxury car carrying Du Jun drove on the road. In the car, Du Jun asked his cousin where he was going, but his cousin just said to follow him. He had told him that he would have a few drinks with him today. Then the car turned into a large private area and parked in a parking lot full of luxury cars. Seeing Du Jun's bewildered look, his cousin asked, Is this your first time here? This place is only for my friends and a few younger cousins. My father rarely comes here. He also added that when you want to be alone, just come here. It's very quiet. In fact, Du Jun also knew that this was Zhang Piang's villa of Vice President Jin Zhang Ki. In his previous life, he had never set foot here. He didn't expect to be invited here today. At this time, a servant ran out and greeted them respectfully. So his cousin asked him if she was waiting in the house. The servant hesitated and said that Miss Dung Hai Swan said she had to go out for a location shoot today and couldn't come. Du Jun knew that Dung Hai Swan was an actress who appeared in the weekend drama that currently had the highest viewership record. At this moment, he heard a slap sound that made him jump. His cousin had just given the servant a painful slap on the ear. He shouted, I told you today is an important day, didn't I? Then he kicked the servant hard and cursed him as an idiot. The servant fell down in pain but his cousin still scolded him mercilessly. Then he continued to kick him like a dog. He said, I told you before that even if you have to grab her hair or kidnap her, you have to bring her here. Du Jun looked at this scene and couldn't stand it. He remembered that he had been beaten like that in his previous life. His cousin kicked and yelled, I paid you money to do these stupid things? Your damn family should find a way to go. Seeing him abuse the servant like that, Du Jun decided to speak up to calm him down. As soon as he spoke, the cousin stopped. He angrily said, Didn't we come here today to congratulate you? You lost interest and want to go home? The cousin looked at Du Jun as if he was very annoyed. Then the two brothers didn't say anything and looked at each other. Only the servant who was beaten cried and broke the silence. After a while, the two brothers faced each other. At this time, the cousin said, I forgot that Du Jun has a different personality. And today you are the main character. Then he turned to the servant and said, Thanks to Du Jun, you are spared. Go quickly. The servant was scared and ran to the car to go home. But he had to stop because he heard Du Jun call him sweetly, Brother, please. 
Du Jun continued, I just came to play for a while and then go back right away. Can you take me home? The servant was also afraid and nodded without saying much. When the cousin asked Du Jun why he didn't stay until tomorrow afternoon, he replied, No, I'll go back soon. I'm a bit tired from meeting so many people at the party. The cousin didn't insist and said, Okay, whatever you want. Du Jun really thought that a golden opportunity had appeared, so why should he waste time staying here? He looked at the servant who was waiting in the car. Then he smiled smugly. This was the opportunity to make Jin Zhang Chul's loyal servant join his side. Inside the house, on the table full of expensive wine. The cousin comfortably invited Du Jun to sit on the sofa in the living room. Then he picked up a bottle of wine and said to Du Jun, Here, let's start lightly. Have you ever drunk beer? After gently pouring into Du Jun's glass, Du Jun comfortably lifted his glass and drank it as if he was drinking barley-flavored water. After finishing it in one gulp, it seemed like he often drank barley at home. Once done, Du Jun also grabbed the bottle of alcohol on the table. An elder cousin complimented, You have quite the alcohol tolerance, ha? Huh? You even know the etiquette at the drinking table. Then, as Du Jun was pouring, he said, I have something to ask you. Do you think I should become an auditor or a lawyer? Which would benefit you more? The elder cousin didn't understand why Du Jun asked that. Du Jun, on the other hand, was scheming. Even if the elder cousin thought hard about it, he'd realize Du Jun was just pretending to act mature. The cousin then began to drink, finishing the barley smoothie in one gulp. After that, he said, next to grandfather, there's Li Hat Che. By my father's side, there are also two people close like Li Hat Che. He placed the empty glass down and continued, but they're just outsiders. Though we're cousins, we still have to be united. Du Jun, puzzled, asked, cousins? The cousin, trying to be friendly, replied, exactly, and then lifted his beer bottle. While Du Jun was still confused, the cousin continued, During my time in Europe, no matter how much loyalty my subordinates showed, the reality was different. He smirked maliciously, everyone has their calculations. At that moment, Du Jun felt like laughing. He tried to act as if he wasn't that type of person but blamed others for his distrustful nature. The elder cousin continued, understand this, the distance between the one who gives money and the one who receives is vast. But with siblings, it's different. We don't exchange money for food, we share the sweet and the bitter. Holding his alcohol, Du Jun couldn't help but laugh. He thought, if this were the old Jin Du Jun, maybe he'd believe those words, but not me. I know you imprisoned your own brother, Xin Young Chun, because you didn't want to share assets. The cousin responded, do you not know what's best for me? Honestly, I don't care if you pass your exam or become a lawyer. Du Jun asked, why don't you care? The cousin pretended to be nice and said, whatever you do, I'll be by your side. I'll help you become the second in command of the company. Hearing this, Du Jun chuckled, among all our relatives, I only trust you. The others are useless. Even if they grow up, they can't manage a company. I need a smart man like you by my side. Du Jun wondered if this guy saw him as competition or wanted him as a right-hand man. Suddenly, there was a shout, brother. Du Jun sat innocently, and two scantily clad women entered, greeting everyone. The elder cousin responded, Oh, you're here. Du Jun recognized these women from movies and music shows. One of the women, Tao Mai, exclaimed upon seeing Du Jun, Oh my, it's my first time seeing him. Du Jun suddenly stood up, surprising everyone. When asked where he was going, he replied, I mentioned earlier that I was feeling tired, so I'll be leaving first. The elder cousin didn't stop him, all right, I'll call you later. The cousin watched with a calculating gaze as Du Jun left. Du Jun quickly left the room, loosening his tie and taking a deep breath, I held my breath for so long inside. 
he thought about how this was the first time he drank alcohol in this body and was glad to get some fresh air. The chauffeur was still waiting in the car. Du Jun approached, noticing the man had fallen asleep with scratches on his face from a recent fight. Du Jun felt sympathy, realizing how hard life could be. He went to the other side, opened the door, and got in. The chauffeur apologized for falling asleep, but Du Jun apologized for making him wait so long. The man replied, It's okay. Du Jun said, Please don't say that. Just sit in the back seat and relax. However, Du Jun remarked, Do you think I'm some rich kid or an official sitting in the back? Just driving, I feel awkward. Hearing Du Jun's words surprised the driver. But he simply nodded and focused on driving. The car slowly moved out of the house and sped onto the empty highway at night. The driver politely asked Du Jun if he wanted to listen to the radio, but Du Jun declined. Du Jun then questioned why the driver addressed him as a young master, which made him feel uneasy. The driver looked confused, unsure of how to respond. Du Jun further inquired, You work in the strategy department, right? The driver was taken aback, wondering how Du Jun knew this. Du Jun explained, I often chat with my grandfather, so I know. The planning department is divided into two sections. One section consists of top graduates from prestigious universities who plan for the entire conglomerate, and the other comprises graduates from lesser-known universities. They clean up the messes that people in my family cause. Upon hearing this, the driver started sweating profusely and his hands trembled, affecting his driving. Du Jun continued, I guess you belong to the latter group, right? Just like my past life. At this, the veins in the driver's hands bulged and his face displayed an indescribable anger. Understanding the humiliation and contempt, Du Jun added, You are luckier than the top university graduates. The driver was perplexed, unsure of how he was luckier. Du Jun continued, Think about the chairman's age. He's nearing 80 and won't live much longer. When he passes away, my three uncles and an aunt will likely take over. Sun Yen, the vice chairman, will surely monopolize the conglomerates. The driver wondered why the young man was sharing this information with him. Unperturbed, Du Jun said, when the time comes, the secrets you know about this family can be sold for an astronomical price. The amount you can get is more than what those from prestigious universities working in sales will earn in their lifetimes. Suddenly, the driver yelled at Du Jun, demanding to know who he was and what he wanted. Du Jun, now furious, warned, don't be disrespectful to me. I'm getting annoyed. The driver turned pale and fell silent. Du Jun instructed, I'm a bit tired and want a nap. Wake me up when we get home. The driver was infuriated by Du Jun's commanding tone but drove him home. In 1991, the Hand is Steel conglomerate, which once built a steel plant in Dang Trinh on the western coast, collapsed. Once ranked ninth in credit management, 14th in asset management, and owning 22 subsidiaries nationwide, it vanished quickly. Many banks and over 70 financial institutions faced peril. This year, the predators bore deep wounds. From now, the battle amongst them would begin. In Chairman Jin Yangdan's office, he mentioned a figure of 2.37 trillion won and asked if it was accurate. The room fell silent. The chairman, irate, demanded an answer. The vice chairman finally confirmed the accuracy. The chairman mused, if Handu is worth this, then De Hyun will bid at 2.37 trillion won. Given De Hyun's existing steel production technology, how much should we bid? The room remained silent. The chairman specifically asked Jin Young Chung his opinion. Jin Young Chung quickly proposed 1.8 trillion won. When asked why, he explained it was the maximum Sun Yen could afford at that moment. The chairman was not pleased, pointing out they'd lose to De Hyun at that rate. Others in the room argued against borrowing more money, asserting the value of the asset equaled their bid. The chairman argued that public auctions obviously involve outbidding each other. 
Young Chung highlighted that when acquiring Handu, Sun Yan should demonstrate the best overall efficiency. Since the Hyun already had steel production technology, their efficiency would decrease. The vice chairman frowned but remained silent. The chairman immediately said, We have to write a report that shows the comprehensive strength of Sun Yen, just like what Director Jean said. It has to be perfect enough to move the evaluation board. Then he ordered the people here to prepare it in a week and asked again, Anyone else? Only one opinion of 1.8 trillion won? Anyone else have a different opinion? At that time, someone bravely said the price of 2.5 trillion won. The father and son of the vice chairman were stunned. Everyone in the room was also silent as paper, not daring to speak up. The chairman asked the person who just gave the price for his argument. That person was the director of a construction company that was a branch of Sun Yen Group. He quickly answered about the bonds. Dehyun and Sun Yen had no difference, so Handu could go to either group. He thought we should split the money higher to avoid rumors about fairness in this matter. The father and son of the vice chairman frowned when they heard this. The chairman asked again how to get the money for the remaining amount. The branch director answered that the construction company of Sun Yang currently had a land plot to build an apartment. If they mortgaged the land, they could borrow 700 million won. The chairman frowned and asked, where do we get the money to pay off the rest of that debt? We can't sell the apartment that was built on that land. The branch director answered, the construction company will handle this matter neatly. The chairman doesn't need to worry too much. The chairman was happy, thinking that this was the most satisfactory answer. It solved the problem that could easily occur and shortened the process. If he happened to break the law or bend the rules, he would be the only one responsible and not implicate us. We also didn't have to lie that we didn't know anything because that was the truth. Thinking so, but the chairman still asked Director Hong, you seem very busy when you get a lot of money, huh? 700 million won is not the name of a neighbor's dog that you can confidently say it's yours. The director was scared and waved his hands, Chairman, what are you saying? On the other side, the vice chairman was also planning something. The next day at the chairman's mansion, the secretary was reporting, as predicted, Dae Hyun offered a price of 2.3 trillion won. The chairman smiled smugly, that's Dae Hyun for you. Chairman Chu is not someone who likes to play tricks, right? The secretary asked, do you really want to invest 2.5 trillion won? Why don't you want to? The chairman asked back. The secretary answered, if we do that, the capital and operation of the group will become tight for a long time. The chairman looked at Du Jun and asked with a smile, what do you think, Du Jun? Is there really no other way than using money? The chairman added and then fell silent, waiting for a suitable answer from Du Jun. Du Jun smiled knowingly, knowing that this grandfather had a dark mind as clear as day but still pretended. But he still pretended to ask, can you give me a hint? The chairman hinted, even if you sell a branch of a tree, you have to sell it to someone who intends to plant and grow it. Who wants to sell it to someone who intends to take it home and use it as firewood? Du Jun was speechless when he heard that. The secretary understood and quickly asked the chairman, do you mean Dae Hyun is going to sell Handu again? The chairman chuckled, Chairman Chu of Dae Hyun has nothing to do with this. You just need to think from the perspective of someone who grows and sells trees. The secretary breathed a sigh of relief at this point. The chairman asked Du Jun again, is this hint enough? Du Jun respectfully said yes and then continued, if Dae Hyun buys it back, they will build an apartment on Handa's land and sell them. And the equipment and the steel plant will be sold abroad. That way, Handa's steel group will completely disappear without a trace. But Sun Yen Group just entered the steel field so they will try their best to normalize Handa Group. We have to make others see this. The chairman smiled proudly, it seems like I gave too many hints. Du Jun wondered if this would work or not. Dae Hyun also had a strong network of relationships. Even if their purpose was to sell Handu, there would still be many supporters. 
Du Jun pretended to ask, How much do you think we need to buy back Handu, grandfather? The chairman was startled because his grandson suddenly asked him the opposite. He laughed and said, One trillion one plus one billion dollars, because there is no more even if you want more. The secretary hurriedly advised the chairman that the gap of 500 billion won was too big. He said, find a nice bait and you will throw the hook yourself. Du Jun heard and guessed that the media was the tool to get the best bait. It was the media, so he had to make a noise for the press and television to say that they must save the steel industry, the backbone of the domestic industry. That way, the pressure could put pressure on the evaluation side. But that selfish old man, Du Jun asked himself, wasn't 500 billion a bit dangerous? At that time, in his head appeared the image of the chairman like an old fox saying, you open your eyes and look carefully at how to solve it. See how I use those employees that I have fed and nurtured for decades? Du Jun seemed to understand the plan of the old man. At that time, the chairman remembered to ask Du Jun, tomorrow is the opening ceremony, right? I have left my phone number for the principal and the dean. You should go to school and invite them for a drink once in a while. They will help you when you have difficulties. Du Jun obediently followed his words. At that time, the chairman said again, there is a guy who will help you with some chores. He is waiting outside. I have chosen a smart guy who is trustworthy. Du Jun pretended to be happy and thanked his grandfather. Then Du Jun left the chairman's study. He went out and was surprised to see the person standing in front of him. A tall man bowed and greeted Du Jun. He introduced himself as Kim Chun Suc, an assistant of the strategy department and hoped to be helped by Du Jun. Du Jun took his business card and politely greeted him. Then he invited Du Jun to get in the car to take him home. Du Jun thought for a moment as he saw this person serving him on the highway. The luxury car ran smoothly without any obstacles. Du Jun looked out of the car window with sadness. Then he called out, Assistant Kim. He answered back. He asked again, Who arranged for you to assist me? Is it the vice chairman? Assistant Kim answered, No, it's Director Lee Hat Che. Du Jun searched his memory for the name Director Lee. After a while, he remembered who Lee Hat Che was. He was his grandfather's assistant, a familiar name who always stayed by his grandfather's side until the last minute. If so, he was worth trusting. Du Jun asked again, Who do you have to report to? The director of strategy? Assistant Kim was startled and confused. Du Jun said, Don't you come to monitor my every move? It's clear as day and you're still surprised. He quickly said, I'm sorry. I've never heard that question before. Director Lee said I don't have to report directly to him. Is there anything I need to pay attention to? Du Jun looked at this new assistant and thought sympathetically that he was also kind-hearted. After all, he had to report everything. So Du Jun relaxed and said, It's okay, you just report the truth. Monitoring me is your job as Assistant Kim Director Lee is your superior so you have to listen to him. Assistant Kim was stunned by this situation and didn't know what to say. On the ride home with Assistant Kim, Du Jun was sure that he would know how to choose. The next day at Du Jun's house, it was still the voice of Mr. Seoul. He said, we should stop before they buy Handu. Handu is not something for us to play with. If you buy Handu, you won't be able to continue running the business. You will just split it up and sell it anyway. It's a waste of time. The bidding is coming soon and it will take about a year to find a place to sell it back, and we're not even sure if we can sell it back. Du Jun spoke up, I don't really want to buy Handu, I just want to join the bidding. Si Hung frowned and asked, What are you up to? You know this is a showdown between Sun Yan and Dae Hyun, right? Hearing this, Du Jun just sneered. He said to Si Hoon, I want to help you out. Soon Yan must get Handu. Si Hoon was always shocked by this guy's words. He sighed and said, If the major shareholder wants it, then an employee like you has to follow along. 
you don't have a choice. The next day, the TV started broadcasting the news that Fantasy, a company with investment from the US, had jumped into the battle to buy Handu. They showed confidence by revealing the amount of money they offered, 2.5 trillion won. Let's hear from the CEO of Fantasy. At this point on TV, Sihun started to speak, many businesses have been born and disappeared into the Handu group. Handu is one of them. We don't have an obligation to keep it forever. We understand the clear value of Handu and are confident that we can buy it back. A reporter asked, if you become the buyer of Handu, what are your plans? He said, we are investors, not businessmen. The steel plant will be transferred to whoever wants it, and the land of Handu will be sold back to a construction company. The reporter asked again, do you mean that money will be your capital? Sihun replied, speculation sounds unpleasant. The important thing is that the bank that lent money to Handu has to choose the investor who offers the highest amount of money. They have to reduce bad debts or the bank could be in danger. Then he turned off the TV angrily. At this time, the chairman's secretary and Si Hoon were sitting together in a room. The secretary said first, you're not just messing around for fun, but you're also dragging the acquisition into this? Why? Si Hoon answered, is that why you called me here early in the morning when I'm busy? The secretary heard the word that and got angry. He pointed at Si Hoon and yelled, do you know who you're annoying with your careless attitude? He remembered that before, the chairman had been so angry that he broke the remote. The chairman had said, bring that guy here right now. How dare he meddle in our prepared meal? Sihun just smiled politely and got up. He said, you should watch the interview again and think about how my nephew has helped your boss. The vice chairman was confused. Sihun said more, Sun Yen is the beneficiary here. Even though they will spend more money, they will surely persuade the review board more easily. The secretary was more puzzled as he listened. Sihun got up and said, I'm busy so I'll excuse myself first. I have to meet with the lender. The secretary then realized something. He thought, the nephew was Du Jun? He said Du Jun is helping the chairman? Then he understood what was going on. From Sun Yan's perspective, Fantasy Monster was an unexpected competitor that appeared. But if the intruder was Si Hoon, who knew the chairman's intentions well, then in the early stage he would play the role of bleeding public opinion. He would follow the direction that Sun Yan wanted. The chairman sighed in relief and thought that he finally got some peace. Then he leaned back on the sofa and muttered, suddenly it became a triangle relationship with no head or tail, right? At this time, his phone rang. He answered the phone and found out that it was the chairman. The chairman said, Hat Che is not just angry for nothing. It might become a good fuel for us. The secretary told the chairman that he had just talked to Si Hoon and his intention was to become bait for us. The chairman was surprised and asked, did he say that himself? The secretary respectfully replied, yes. He said that this was a joint product between him and Du Jun to help the chairman. The chairman was very surprised and said, What? Du Jun came out to help me? When he heard the secretary confirm that, the chairman laughed loudly. Then he laughed even louder and felt very happy. He thought to himself, The useless children of mine are all busy doing everything to get my money. But my nephew mobilized the investors from America to help me. The secretary continued to report, tomorrow I will release a series of articles criticizing fantasy. We have to use provocative words like corporate hunters who only think about money, risk of capital speculation, escape from national assets. The chairman has asked you already, what else? The secretary said that I think we should send our people to the discussion program of each TV station with five or six economic professors to emphasize that issue. The chairman asked, did you mention De Hyun's name? The secretary said, yes, De Hyun already has enough steel plants. His purchase of Handu can only be because he wants their land. His real goal is to build apartments for sale. Just throw a stone at that door and the lake will be stirred up. 
the secretary reported with confidence. On the other side of the phone, the chairman agreed and said happily, it was not good to expose the Hyun from the beginning, but Si Hoon opened up and gave us a chance. The next day at S University, the campus was always crowded with people. They were all smart students from rich families. Du Jun casually put his hands in his pockets and walked to school without carrying anything. Du Jun walked step by step to the auditorium of S University in his expensive shoes. Inside the auditorium, the students were sleeping or eating hot pot in the sunny weather like a fire mountain. The auditorium was noisy and full of students and food. Suddenly, everyone looked at the door. Du Jun confidently walked in like Kotex without fearing anyone with his rich kid aura. He walked over and sat down on the only empty seat on the table with a steaming pot of lobster and crab soup, beer and wine everywhere. He couldn't believe this was a university. Du Jun thought to himself, if I only had the memory of being the third generation heir of a wealthy family, how would I react when I came here? Maybe I would sit down with a dumbfounded face. At this time, an old man holding a microphone came out and greeted everyone. He said he was a student from class 95. After his introduction and greetings from some teachers, the new students began to stand up and introduce themselves. The first one was a country bumpkin who said hello everyone I am from the village over there. Next was a guy who looked like a ghost and said I will uphold the future law of the country. And then there were students who introduced themselves from Jeju Island. Du Jun understood that this was still a beautiful time. Most of the new students were from other provinces. This was not a society where rich kids from Gangnam lived. Seoul monopolizes the prestigious schools, but it is still a time when the times create heroes. A student at a local high school can achieve good results and enter a famous university. Du Jun was secretly thinking that the current society was still an equal society, when a microphone was brought to his face. The lady with glasses sitting next to him pushed the microphone into Du Jun's face and said, Here. Du Jun had to reluctantly hold the microphone and stand up to prepare for the introduction. At this time, everyone looked at him. The guys who were drinking also looked over. Du Jun modestly asked his senior, Can I speak a little longer? The senior said, sure, go ahead. Du Jun bowed his head and thanked the senior. Then he began to speak. Maybe many of you already know me. I am Du Jun, who is very lucky to have a grandfather who is a tycoon. That's why I can easily stand here. At this point, some people smiled and some did not show any emotion. Everyone knew that this was not a place where you could get in just by having a lot of money. Du Jun continued modestly and politely, I want to make friends with my peers and seniors, but I guess it won't be easy. So I want to show my skills to you, seniors. If I give gifts to my friends and seniors, will it be considered bribery? The senior replied, No, it's not. The crime of bribery depends on whether there is money or not. In this case, the money that you intend to give to your friends and seniors is only an intangible amount that represents friendship. Du Jun smiled and said, I see. What if I give expensive gifts to the teachers? Will it be considered bribery? At this point, the teacher finally laughed out loud. Unfortunately, yes. The teacher's weapon is the score, and the score is not an abstract thing. Du Jun sighed in relief and said, that's good. At this point, a loud noise rang out, distracting everyone. They all saw people dressed in black pushing a lot of boxes into the hall, making everyone excited because they were about to receive gifts. Who wouldn't like that? Du Jun continued, actually, my skill is learned from my grandfather, to win people's hearts with gifts and always prepare gifts that are more valuable than expected. At this point, the staff gave each student a box of something that made them stunned and open-mouthed. Du Jun said again, your gift is the laptop that Sun Yen plans to launch next month. It belongs to the premium line equipped with Intel chip, super large RAM capacity and hard drive capacity. Then Du Jun continued to talk about the configuration of the machine, but saw that no one bothered to listen. 
he got annoyed and threw down the microphone without saying anything else. Du Jun thought to himself that they only cared about looking at the laptop and no one bothered to listen to his explanation. A few days ago, in the chairman's study room, he was shocked when Du Jun asked for 200 new laptops. Do you know how much money 200 laptops are? Du Jun answered that each one cost about 3 million won, so that would be about 600 million won in total. The grandfather angrily asked, and you want to share them with them just to please them? But Du Jun calmly said that it was both pleasing and making them follow his side, and also promoting at the same time. Du Jun added more. The chairman was surprised, promoting? He didn't understand what promotion meant. But Du Jun was very wise, the laptop was used by students of S school, where the best talents of Korea gathered, and they took it everywhere. That would create a buzz in the school, right? That would make everyone see that our laptop was not only for working people but also for students. The chairman shook his head, it was hard to promote with just that method, after all, it was only on a school scale. And Du Jun said again, there had to be a follow-up blow. The chairman was bewildered and did not understand the meaning of the next sentence that his grandson said. Du Jun continued, because we released late, we missed the beginning of the new semester, so we have to create programs like special discounts for students, academic events, and take photos with S University as the background. Hearing this, the chairman was still a bit hesitant and thoughtful. Du Jun added another sentence, if you regret it, I will use my money. You know that 600 million won is just pocket money for me. The chairman was angry and said, this guy makes me look like a cheapskate. Du Jun was silent this time and did not say anything. The chairman asked further, but why only 200 machines? According to what I know, there are about 400 students in the thesis class. Du Jun politely answered, I heard that only half of the students will attend the welcome party for new students. Only those who attend will get a share. At this point, the chairman wondered and asked his grandson why it was like that. Du Jun heard his grandfather ask and did not answer but just laughed loudly. Then he replied, the difference between those who participate and those who do not cannot be the same. I will let them know that only those who follow me will get the reward. Hearing this, the chairman was happy and slapped his thigh with a loud sound that hurt but still pretended to say, exactly. If you want to lure them, you have to use a strategy of both hitting and caressing. Then he laughed loudly with great pleasure. Du Jun knew he had flattered his grandfather so he also smiled and did not say anything more. At this time, in the cafeteria of the university, everyone was buzzing with the new laptop in their hands. Some people even said to the laptop, today I will hug this machine to sleep. Others gathered to see the configuration of the machine and rejoiced because they suddenly got a gift from heaven. Du Jun looked at this scene and felt very satisfied because this was his purpose. Suddenly a paper was handed to him in front of his face. It was Kim Trat Lai. He handed him the paper and respectfully called him young master. Du Jun took the paper and slowly looked at the information inside. It turned out that these people refused it. He thought to himself that he would pay more attention to them in the future. A few days later, the atmosphere at school had changed completely. Of course not because of the spring weather in April. On the road from the school gate to the lecture hall, Du Jun greeted quite a few friends and seniors. He also had a few people walking with him to the lecture hall. He entered the class with a superstar attitude. At this time someone called Du Jun making him a little bewildered. His friend said, this laptop distracts me so much. Lately I just dream of hugging it and playing all day without studying anything. Hearing his friend say that, Du Jun just smiled politely and asked, really? Then he also sat down. Du Jun joked that this was his real purpose, to give toys to his opponents so that they would neglect their studies. A friend replied that he didn't need to give them then, making everyone around look askance. At this time there were some people standing outside talking. They were looking at Du Jun. Du Jun glanced over and noticed them and also his friend sitting alone on top. 
Du Jun thought to himself, these people didn't get laptops but they hate me so much. Should I give them one more at the May Festival? Then in the hallway at the university someone was making himself a delicious cup of coffee. Du Jun looked behind him and slowly approached him. He quietly stood on one side and observed what this guy with glasses was doing. Du Jun looked at him and thought to himself, he is one of those who refused to accept the laptop. I wonder what motivation helped him resist the temptation of six million dong which is twice the starting salary for new graduates at Daehoon. At this time, Daehoon put a coin into the vending machine to imitate buying coffee because he had been thirsty for a while. Then Du Jun said to the glasses guy, I heard you didn't take the laptop. That surprised me. Suddenly, the glasses guy got angry and cursed, do you want me to grab that thing and thank you? Du Jun still calmly replied, I don't have that kind of thought. I just said it casually. The middle guy thought to himself, I thought he was going to say something special. It turns out it's because of his pride. The glasses guy suddenly went crazy and yelled, you don't need to show off. I know you are the third generation of a wealthy family. So now you use money to lure college friends? Du Jun asked the glasses guy back, if your senior buys you a meal for 1500 dong at the cafeteria, will you also refuse because it's showing off money? Du Jun asked again, is buying a cup of coffee for 100 dong at the vending machine also like that? The glasses guy got angrier and angrier and couldn't control himself. He shouted at Du Jun's mouth, how can you compare those things with a laptop? But Du Jun still calmly said they were the same, making the glasses guy stunned and shocked. Du Jun thought to himself, looking at this kid, he's cute like that friend Hong. It's true. This is the time to protect his own pride. Because as soon as he steps out into society and sees this and that collapse, he will realize that pride is something that holds him back. The glasses guy got even more angry and yelled at Du Jun's face, What nonsense are you talking about? Du Jun answered, For me, those things are the same. They don't count by units, hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands. I only know hundreds of millions billions, tens of billions, or hundreds of billions. Anything below 100 million is changed. So for me, there is no difference between a laptop or coffee. Du Jun boasted arrogantly. He knew it sounded harsh, but he had to do it so that this guy wouldn't dare to mess with him again. When your senior buys you a meal in the cafeteria, you will thank him and accept it, right? If you drop a hundred dong on the street, you will also bend down and pick it up right away. Your pride disappears at times like that. But when you find three million dong at a student club, your pride suddenly rises up. Oh, Du Jun asked the glasses guy and then added another sentence, if that's what you call pride, then it's really useless. After saying that, Du Jun performed a beautiful act of throwing the coffee cup he had just finished drinking into the trash can for the glasses guy to see and then turned around and left him alone. He didn't understand what had just happened outside the school right now with warm light everywhere. The students were playing with each other happily. Some people saw groups of five or seven and probably guessed they were talking bad about some rich kid. Du Jun was having a conversation with his college friend. Then this person got up and left, leaving only Du Jun alone. He thought disappointedly that most of the others reacted similarly and there was nothing to expect from them. At this time, suddenly there was a voice calling out, Jin Du Jun. A tall guy dressed in hip-hop came over and said that his senior said that action was not bribery but actually bribery. Du Xin remembered that this kid also refused to take the laptop. He asked the hip-hop kid, why is it bribery? The hip-hop kid sat down next to Du Jun and said, Bribery is money paid in advance and then accepting favors from people. Giving bribes will be considered as a thank you gift. Du Jun pretended to be innocent again. He was not a government official and she did not need his help. The hip-hop guy laughed. Do I have to bribe you before asking for a favor? What if someone wants to reserve a spot for a few years later? He confidently said, I will become a prosecutor in a few years, so you have to bribe me to let you out. 
Du Jung looked at the hip-hop guy as if he was an alien and then he suddenly smiled mysteriously without saying anything. The hip-hop guy asked, Did you learn this trick from your grandfather? But Du Jun answered, No, I am the youngest grandson in the family, so my grandfather did not teach me anything. He only taught the children of my uncles. The hip-hop guide sympathized with Du Jun and asked, So you are like an outsider in the Sun Yen group? Du Jun sadly said, You could say that. My father, the youngest son of the chairman, was also marginalized early on. That's why he went to make movies. Hearing Du Jun say that made the hip-hop guy feel sorry for him. He asked, So you only have the label of being a third-generation chable? Du Jun nodded and said, You could say that. At this point, the two of them sat on the bench and looked at each other deeply as if they were about to confess their love. Hip-hop scratched his head and said to Du Jun, You are so cunning. Du Jun thought this kid was funny and wanted to see what he would do next. Suddenly, Hip-hop asked, Hey, can you give me your laptop now? It was too late for lunch, which made Du Jun very amused. People who did not want to accept would not become enemies. He looked at hip-hop and thought he did not look his age. So Du Jun asked, You failed three times, right? Being asked about his age made the hip-hop guy annoyed. Are you saying I'm old? You are touching my sore spot. Du Jun quickly appeased him with material things. Then I'll give you my laptop as an apology. At this moment, the hip-hop guy dusted himself off and stood up and said, Let's do it next time. He turned his head and said, This is the first time, so I'll forgive you. Du Jun knew that he really did not want to accept it, but he was about to give it to him when he suddenly left. Du Jun quickly called out, You have to answer me before you go. How old are you? The hip-hop guy did not turn his head back but just raised his middle finger and told Du Jun to shut up. The next day in the lecture hall, many students were rushing into class. A female student was sitting and talking with her glasses-wearing friend. Du Jun asked his friend, Is the glasses girl next to her some engine? His friend answered, Yes, she's pretty, right? Simenjin started to stroke her hair and ears as if she knew someone was looking at her and wanted to act cute. But Du Jun thought she was too pretty and could only be silent. His glasses-wearing friend reminded him, but don't touch her. Du Jun was confused but he immediately frowned and said. We have to have a chance with Simenjin too. If you are a third-generation Chabel, then dating an artist is fine. Du Jun heard that and laughed loudly. Don't say such nonsense anymore. I don't think I saw her at the welcome party. The glasses-wearing guy explained, she just came to show up and then left. Everyone was crazy when you gave away your laptop. She had already disappeared by then. Du Jun heard that and smiled wickedly like those rich old men. He then propped his hand on the desk and stood up, instead of standing up normally. Because he was rich. Du Jun walked away, ignoring his glasses-wearing friend behind him who kept calling him. At this time, Simenjin was doing her homework while acting cute, unlike normal people who do homework. How could she smile like that with a crazy head? At this time, Du Jun had arrived next to Simenjin's seat. Sammy In looked up and saw the rich guy suddenly standing next to her. She then made a beautiful and innocent face to charm the heir of the wealthy family. Sure enough, Du Jun was speechless when he saw such a beautiful girl. He was rich and horny. Simenjin spoke first. Do you need something from me? Du Jun looked at her expression and guessed that she probably knew who he was. He said, I'm curious about something about you. Sammy John didn't know what this guy was curious about besides her beauty. Du Jun continued, at the welcome party for new students, you didn't take the laptop that I gave you. Can I ask why? Hearing this, Simenjin quickly covered her mouth and smiled sweetly. She was really different from the other guys in this story who only smiled with their mouths wide open. She smiled and said, because I don't know how to use it. Du Jun was dumbfounded. Simenjin continued, I'm a computer illiterate. 
why would I accept something that I don't know how to use? Du Jun was bewildered. Who would refuse a laptop from a beautiful girl for this reason? At this time, Siminjin started to play the role of a beautiful girl. She said, don't stare at me like that. A handsome guy like you staring at me like that will make me fall for you. Du Jun heard the beautiful girl compliment him and his heart fluttered. He swallowed his saliva and couldn't say a word. At the chairman's house, an old woman who looked like Mrs. Mai was reporting that the family of the chief judge had passed away last year. This is his granddaughter. The chairman replied, the daughter of that family had declared that she would not practice law after finishing her term as a judge. Mrs. Mai clapped her hands and continued, yes, the place where they gathered is the Supreme Court and the prosecutor's office. You can call them a prestigious legal family that is respected. The chairman asked again, what about that girl? Mrs. Mai flattered her, she is really a rare gem that is hard to find someone like her. She also enrolled in the law school of S. University. The chairman was confused when Mrs. Mai said, yes, she is in the same department as your grandson. They can get to know each other naturally. Nowadays, young heirs hate blind dates in cafes or hotels. They will proceed smoothly without anyone noticing that they are arranged as if they are really dating. When the chairman asked if the other family had that idea, Mrs. Mai answered, of course they do. Who would refuse to be the daughter-in-law of Sun Yen Group? The chairman smiled smugly like a pervert while looking for a wife for his grandson. Very good, go ahead. On the table was a profile of the beautiful girl Semenjin from earlier. At the Sun Yen skyscraper, a question rang out, Are you going on a blind date tomorrow, uncle? The vice chairman was still casual as if he was buying something at the market. That's right, tomorrow noon and tomorrow night and in between then go for tea. His son was surprised and asked, Why three blind dates in one day? The uncle still answered irritably, That's right. Before getting married you have to see each other's faces. No matter who he chose, it would benefit his son. His son heard that and was annoyed, is that your order? The uncle replied, I have chosen those three people and your father agrees with them. The daughter of the director of Du Bank. The son rubbed his head tiredly and said, anyway, it's a bit too much. It's not like finding a mate to breed with. If you say decide in one day then it's a bit. He started to get annoyed again. Nonsense, I already told you. Before getting married, you only look at each other's faces. After living together, you build the feelings later. The son clenched his teeth and cursed silently. Damn it. There is no other way. A marriage that I can't choose for myself is not living with the person I love but living with the person who is necessary to become the chairman of Sun Yen Group. The son still asked, but why does father like Dao Bank so much? The father answered, if your grandfather is still alive, how long do you think he will live? If he dies, do you think your uncles will leave him alone? They will bite and rush to grab some subsidiaries to prepare for that time. So from now on, we have to ensure that we have more shares than them. But if we do that, it will cost a lot of money. The son sneered, so people are not looking for a daughter-in-law, but looking for a collateral that is necessary for a large loan. The father started to get angry. Anyway, the best choice for yourself is also to get married. And do you know who is the best wife in everyone's eyes? I'm a teacher. Because she is a civil servant, she has a high pension. When she retires, she will receive a pension and also have summer vacation. Isn't that great? Men like to choose teachers to have a more comfortable life. Everything is calculated in advance. But isn't father fond of the director's daughter of the bank? Hearing his son ask, the father had to answer, what's wrong with that? If we take over the whole Sun Yen group, where do you think it will go? Everything will go into your pocket. At this time, the son was a bit challenging. Just like father, I also have a younger brother. The father smiled. Then at that time, your brother can also marry the director's daughter of the bank. 
After talking about money, the two fathers and sons fell into silence and no one said anything. At the university, a teacher said, I'm thinking about whether to replace this semester's assignment with a new method or not. The assignment is to give out some controversial events that have social implications and are especially opposed to constitutional values. Dig deeper into those events and come up with new perspectives. The deadline is until the end of the semester. After hearing the assignment, Du Jun thought this method can be applied to senior students, but it is too heavy for freshmen. The teacher continued, the freshmen will find it very difficult to do it alone, so please divide into groups of five to do it. There is a list of groups on the last page, so please find your own group. The class started and Du Jun was confused. Did he already have a group member? Suddenly he saw the name of his group member and froze for about five seconds. In the list of groups, there was one name that was very impressive. At this time, there was a girl looking at Du Jun. Oh, it was Saminjin. She must have become the heroine of the story by now. Du Jun noticed that there was a beautiful girl looking at him and swallowed again. In the car, Du Jun gave his assistant a piece of paper and told him to investigate these two people for him. The assistant asked back, should I entrust this to the information team of the group or just listen to this? Du Jun asked, can you investigate by yourself? The assistant answered, if I only need to grasp some basic information, I can do it. Du Jun was relieved. Then please do that. The assistant was puzzled and waited for him to say more, but he didn't say anything. He asked if he needed to leave out the report of the department head. This time Du Jun was confused. Was he testing me or trying to show his loyalty to me? The assistant judged by himself. There is no need to ask me every single thing. The assistant just agreed and then did it himself. Asking this guy was useless anyway. At this time, the chairman was asking someone on the phone. What happened to Chairman Hong? How many days did he have the meeting? At this moment, the voice on the other end was Ko Tich Hong of Hansung Newspaper. He respectfully congratulated the chairman on the steel purchase deal this time. Then the chairman on this side pretended to be modest. He said, how can I receive such congratulations from the chairman? All these tasks were done by the vice chairman and Young Chun, the chairman on the other side said. He said he heard that he had studied business abroad for a while and now he was in charge of such a big project. Then he called the chairman as if he remembered something. The chairman asked what it was. He said, there are some strange stories lately. Suddenly, all the news piled up around Azen's car, which was exactly like six years ago. The chairman frowned. He thought, if it's like six years ago, then now, his face became angrier and angrier. He slammed his teacup on the table. The water splashed everywhere. He shouted into the phone. Is there someone targeting Azen's car again? The chairman of Bao was scared. He replied, I'm not sure, but the current situation, the chairman on the other side asked again. He said, Han Sun newspaper is also preparing to publish this news now. The chairman of Bao answered, I have temporarily stopped receiving applications, but anyway, it's better to check it personally by the director. Hearing this, the chairman became even more angry. His old face wrinkles. He yelled, Is anyone outside? Bring me a bottle of filtered water. A maid came in trembling with a glass of water. She didn't dare to say anything. The chairman scolded her for not understanding him. He said, what did I say? Not a glass, but a bottle. A bottle of filtered water. Then he angrily squeezed the bottle of water and drank it. He drank a whole big bottle of water in one breath. He was old, but he drank so fiercely. He threw away the bottle of water at the maid who was standing there trembling. Then he picked up the phone again and said, Chairman Hong, can you postpone publishing the article? Chairman Bao replied, of course. At this moment, the chairman started this thing before he got married. 
I already asked him for a favor through his family. It's really shameless. Chairman Bao also pretended to be modest. He said, Chairman is too polite. It's a matter of course. Then he asked Chairman Hong to help him find out where the source of the news came from. Chairman Hong pretended to be very troubled and said, the reporters will have to sweat a little bit. He hung up the phone and smiled very cunningly. He thought to himself, if I pull the Hin Group's leg and help Chairman Jean, I can also help my niece become Sun Yen Group's daughter-in-law. At this time, the sun was shining outside Si Hoon's building. Si Hoon was tired and pushed the door open. Before he could catch his breath, he heard someone ask him, Uncle, is there any rumor about Johnny or Achimoto? I turned around and saw the rich guy Du Jun who was leisurely asking above. Since he was holding a box of baby milk, Si Hoon asked the kid, Are you not going to school? How come you are working before me? But Du Jun replied, Don't you read the news? The country is in turmoil, I don't have time to go to school and read law books. Then Si Hoon continued, What's wrong? Are you worried about the Southeast Asian currency crisis? Or are you planning to take advantage of this opportunity to sweep the Southeast Asian currencies with the dollars you have accumulated when you were in the US? Du Jun innocently said, No, why would I do that? Si Hoon started to think, So you are also troubled by the currency crisis, huh? Du Jun smiled wickedly at this moment, Should I give him a hint? I wonder how he will react. Thinking so, Du Jun said, Southeast Asia is nothing but hell and by April in Korea, for major conglomerates have collapsed. But we still praise ourselves as the four dragons of Asia. When Si Hoon still didn't understand anything, Du Jun continued, it's not bad to prepare for the storm in advance. Si Hoon asked irritably, is there definitely going to be a storm? But Du Jun calmly answered, you are feeling uneasy right now too. Du Jun judged that Si Hoon was someone who always followed the financial flow of the world, there was no way he didn't know the point of the storm. Si Hoon pondered and said, there is a rumor that Di Hin is targeting Achimoto and Achimoto is out of the capital now. If a few powerful people gather and strangle them, they will die immediately. Du Jun secretly thought, fortunately, history hasn't changed. Although history hasn't changed because his attempt to buy Achimoto six years ago was stopped. But now six years have passed and he had to change history. Du Jun maliciously asked Si Hoon, should we eat Achimoto too? Oxywander was shocked by his face. He didn't expect this kid to be so cruel and cunning. Dae Jun began to calculate. The history of Dehin Group buying Achimoto would be changed to the history of a foreign company named Fantasy Investment buying Achimoto. At this time, a meeting was taking place at Sun Yen Group. The chairman was saying that the strategy we created six years ago was used exactly by the chairman of Dehin Group. The staff members were silent and didn't dare to say anything loud or quiet. The chairman became more angry. We desperately wanted hand to steal and we got it in our hands. But we didn't have money so we couldn't buy Akinmoto. All of this was part of the picture drawn by Chairman Chu of Dehyan Group. Well, it's like this now, there's no other way. What will happen to us if Dehyan takes over Achi? The chairman asked the crowd. At this time, the director of Sun Yen Automobiles, Mr. Chu Jiho answered, the market share will drop quickly. The chairman glanced at him and called out a word. Chu Jiho was scared and quickly said yes like a puppy. The chairman said, make a plan. The deadline is before this time tomorrow. The director was reluctant but still replied, I understand, sir. At that moment, the chairman dismissed everyone. Get out of here, all of you. How can you stand being scolded by me all the time? So they hurriedly left. The secretary saw the chairman was very angry and was afraid of being scolded too, so he sat quietly and did not dare to speak. Then the secretary asked the chairman, do we need to quickly sell the 7% stake in Achimoto that we bought under someone else's name? The chairman answered, don't you have the determination to fight to the end? 
the secretary said, if the Hin Group takes over Achimoto, bankruptcy is inevitable. The chairman asked, why? Because the plan that the Hin Group is using is the plan that we created six years ago. If it weren't for the corruption case, we would have acquired Achimoto already. The chairman clenched his teeth and remembered. That was a perfect plan. Can we take advantage of that stock or not? We can't just sit still like this. He asked. The secretary replied, but those shares are scattered everywhere. To gather them all together, we need someone to stand out. At that moment, the chairman smiled cunningly. There is a very suitable person for that, Sihun. The secretary couldn't believe that the chairman was so scheming. The chairman continued, let's throw away the shares in Achimoto that we bought under someone else's name and let him be our representative. We also have a black fund entrusted to us. This is an opportunity to get it back. The secretary was shocked. You want to exchange the 100 billion won black fund in fantasy for 7% of Achimoto's shares? The chairman's reflexes are still not dead, huh? The next morning at Sihun's house, he said, you just met Lee Hatch's head of department. Your grandfather must be very angry. Sihun said to Du Jun. Du Jun replied, because of Dian Group, right? That's right. The chairman has 7% of Achimoto's shares and intends to use them to shake up the situation. He wants you to stand out as the chairman. We still have a 100 billion won black fund in fantasy. He said, buy shares with that money and demand rights. Du Jun asked. Of course you refused, right? There is no reason to buy shares that are falling sharply. Du Jun said and thought. I can read his thoughts. He is not someone who will bring up something he has refused and end it again. But it seems like you have something to say. Du Jun asked his uncle Sihun who suddenly became serious. He asked Du Jun if he really wanted to have Achimoto. Du Jun answered seriously, yes, please. Sihun continued, this is a big group with a revenue of 14 trillion won. If you buy back the parent company Achimoto, it means you will buy back Achimoto Group. Suppose it's just a hypothesis. Sihun asked seriously, if you buy back Achimoto, what do you think? Du Jun asked him back, what do you want me to do? Sihun said seriously, if you think rationally, you have to reorganize 28 subsidiaries. Get rid of what you need to get rid of and balance them to get scrap metal money. And transfer what you can use at cost price. Du Jun asked in surprise, do you intend to sell expensive things? Sihun said, even if it's just more than a 10,001 bill, I'll sell it for that. Du Jun knew this was just the answer of a gambler, so he said, if it's not rational. Sihun laughed, we have to do it properly. After cutting off the damaged part, we apply red medicine to the gold and inject tonic into it. Du Jun laughed and asked, and then what? At this point, Sihun started to hesitate and said, that's it. I'm not confident enough to do business. You want to do something as big as a two-handed conglomerate, but that's beyond your ability. Du Jun calmly replied. Then how do you get to that level? When you get there, you can think about it slowly. Sihun said. The first thing to consider is that even if we jump into the war without buying, the winning rate is still low. Not exactly, it's almost zero. Du Jun smiled. But why are you suddenly interested? You're not the kind of person who would sit in a low winning bet, right? Sihun was asked and felt a bit embarrassed. If the 7% stake of Achimoto from my grandfather is in our hands, we can use it to investigate inside Achimoto. And Du Jun asked right away, and what else? Sihun remembered the old chairman and said, Chairman, please forgive me. Du Jun knew right away. Indeed, if he didn't borrow the power of Sun Yen, it would be very difficult. Sihun continued. The money to buy back Achimoto is enough with my money. But I also know that it's not possible with just my own money. We need the power to blow up the jury, creditors, 
politicians. Is there any place other than Sunyan that can compare with Beihun Group? Sihun said. But the kid looked at him with the eyes of a child asking for a toy. Du Jun gently said, You know already. So you agree with me? Sihun smiled but didn't say anything. It's just because you're older, not because you have money. Du Jun. 28 subsidiaries, more than 50,000 employees and revenue of 14 trillion won. That's a huge amount of money that the winner will take. The money that replaces bullets if you're a soldier in a war. Cutting off the food of 10,000 people instead of bloody casualties. Shouldn't you be more calm than excited? Sihun said awkwardly. We'll go see the OHT manager. And I won't wait for him to finish his sentence. Du Jun said, I'll go see Jin Yang Chun, chairman of Sun Yan Group. Sihun looked at Du Jun with eyes full of trust in the kid. Du Jun also looked at his uncle and showed his confidence. The sun was still warm and shining into the room, signaling that the future would not rain. At the chairman's mansion, he scolded his grandson. Why don't you go to school? The principal even called me. But Du Jun just answered, my purpose is to enroll, not to graduate. And until now I've only studied. I have to play a little bit too. The chairman was angry and said, What play? You still dare to lie to this old man? Do you think I won't know that you went to Diandu instead of going to school this morning? Du Jun was secretly happy. Maybe the report from Assistant Kim had been sent to his grandfather. He said to his grandfather, For me, that's playing. The chairman still laughed and said, If you don't attend enough classes, you'll be suspended. So they even want to withdraw more money through our Su Young Scholarship Fund. How can this guy waste more attendance points than tuition fees? Du Jun calmly smiled and said, Donating scholarships is a good thing. Du Jun thought to himself, I thought I would study for six or seven years in college, but my grandfather ruined it. Do I need to apply for leave after the first semester? From the end of this year to the beginning of next year will be very busy. The chairman asked further, but what do you do all day at Jian Du's office? What did you learn from that Sihun guy? Du Jun answered that it could be seen that way. He was studying about Achimoto. Hearing this, the chairman was shocked. Achimoto? When he heard Du Jun say that, he felt like Achen was going bankrupt. He asked, Really? Why do you think so? Du Jun replied, First of all, when the financial sector turned around last year, Dukyuo used motorcycles for promotion, so Achen's motorcycle sales were very low. Of course, the working capital was exhausted. De Hain Group started to tighten their grip. The chairman asked, Really? What will happen if they go bankrupt? Du Jun answered that someone would quickly catch it, just like he had caught Han Steel. Hearing him say that bluntly, the chairman felt annoyed. But then he smiled with the smile of a rich and powerful man. He said, Your answer just now got eight points. Du Jun was unhappy. Why didn't he get the maximum score? But the chairman still smiled and said, You have to guess who it is to get 100 points because no one knows that yet. Didn't you say that the Dehyan group would tighten their grip? Even if they sell it, no one will buy it. The atmosphere is very unusual right now, isn't it? He meant the crisis in Southeast Asia. Only someone like Su Yang could afford it. But they had used up all their money. Weren't there some places hidden under the surface? For example, Du Jun confidently declared, for example, me. The chairman laughed to see if there could be such a place. As soon as he finished laughing, he seemed to realize something. The chairman was out of his mind Du Jun what else did he say? The chairman looked at his handsome grandson and was stunned. Du Jun still confidently said it's me, sir. The chairman heard it as if he was struck by lightning. He kept asking what after that the two grandfathers looked at each other in slow motion like an Indian movie. Du Jun continued if you faint like this, it will be a big deal. Are you okay, Mr. Chairman? 
The chairman was still shocked and did not understand what his grandson was talking about. The chairman said okay okay, you repeat what you just said. What did you say? Du Jun still confidently said well, I said I could buy back the Akin group. The chairman heard that and wanted to relapse his chronic heart disease. Du Jun saw that and panicked sir, are you okay? Then I'll get you some sedatives. The chairman stopped him loudly this one is my handsome grandson but he's out of his mind. Du Jun confidently showed his innocence because I was scared, so the chairman asked again. Du Jun, did you mean that you wanted Achimoto as a gift for entering school, not a car? Du Jun answered, no sir. I meant that I would buy it with my money. The chairman wondered how much Du Jun thought Achimoto was worth to say that. Du Jun smiled wickedly and asked how much he would write if he bought it. The chairman started to think. Let's see. Then he stared at Du Jun and continued to think. Suddenly the chairman laughed happily and said, Look at you. Du Jun was very pleased at this moment. He had realized the secret hidden in his words. He had listened to the opponent's thoughts beforehand. He had taught me what is called the privilege of the ruler. The chairman stopped laughing and crossed his arms. He asked, You tell me first. I have been in the upper hand since a while ago. Where did you get this sneaky trick? Du Jun answered, First of all, I predicted that there would be an incident with Achimoto if I offered 1.5 trillion won. I have to analyze the situation of Achimoto to know the exact amount. The chairman started to think again. Hmm, you estimated 1.5 trillion won? Du Jun began to calculate. This was the first number that came out of his mouth. It was not the total amount of money he had, but when he said the buyout price was 1.5 trillion won, it meant that he had more than that. However, he only wondered if the amount was appropriate and did not react to his money. Du Jun suddenly asked, You don't seem surprised? The chairman smiled and replied, Why? Should I be surprised that you have so much money or do you want me to praise you for doing well? Du Jun calmly said, Let's leave the praise for later. Right now, if we count the current amount of money I have, it is more than the Sun Yen group. I thought you would be surprised if you saw me surpassing the number one company in the business world. The chairman smiled cunningly at this point. He said, I know you want to show off, but if you want to buy Achimoto, you have to have more than that. I was already surprised when you said you would buy Achimoto. The chairman continued, although I am curious how you got that money, now is not the time to satisfy my curiosity. Curiosity is not the top priority right now, but Achimoto. Du Jun suddenly realized that curiosity was a strong temptation, but not a priority. Suyang was a place where many people did new things every day. When they stood at the top and solved the problems they faced, deciding the order of priorities was very important. That's right, curiosity was always pushed back to the back. If so, he also had to ask questions out of necessity, not curiosity. Du Jun asked again, how much do you think the buyout price is? The chairman was still adamant that he did not know. Du Jun was annoyed. He thought he was a boss, but he didn't know. The chairman said again, I didn't think about buying it, so I didn't research it beforehand. Six years ago, I calculated every bit, but now it's different. Du Jun asked, will you help me? The chairman answered, I will think about it because I have to think about why you want to buy Achimoto and what benefits it will bring to Sun Yen. Du Jun did not expect him to say that. He looked at him and wondered. What was he thinking? Was that the thought of a grandfather who loved his grandson very much? Or was he thinking of prioritizing the Sun Yen group that he had built with great effort over everything else? The chairman still sat with his arms crossed and did not say anything. Then he said, that's fine. Do it once. Du Jun switched from being dumbfounded to being happy. There wouldn't be any betrayal, right? The old man said again. Suppose your grandson Du Jun is the owner of Achimoto and the owner of Sun Yen Motor is this old man. 
we merged the two companies together. Du Jun was stunned when he heard this cunning old man start calculating. He was afraid that he had discovered his intention to use Achimoto as a stepping stone to take over Sun Yen Motor. The chairman asked, I want to hear your opinion on the merger ratio of the two companies. What do you think? Du Jun asked back, Why do you think there will be a merger? The chairman answered, If there is no merger, do you think your ability can protect Achimoto? Maybe in a year, it will be taken over by Dehin Group. Or do you think you can run the business properly? Du Jun replied, You don't have to worry about the business. I also have confidence. The chairman said, I didn't expect my grandson to be so confident. But what if you have the ability to lead the company? Then the merger will surely fail, right? But, Du Jun saw that the old man was starting to play tricks again. He said, that's why you shouldn't be too confident. It will be better. The old grandfather shook his head and said, there is no proposal that can't be accepted. If the balance is not fair, then balance it again. Then he looked at Du Jun and asked further, tell me about the merger ratio. How much do we have to put on the scale? Du Jun reluctantly said a number, 1 slash 0.2. The chairman was angry at this robber. Du Jun quickly explained, if we determine the market share, brand value, new car development potential, then Sun Yen Motors' technical ability is only 20% compared to Achimoto. And this is the opinion of car experts, not mine. And you know that my chairman doesn't know anything, so I said that. That's excluding the car part completely. We have to reflect the hidden value too. Don't you see how the stock price of Sun Yen Motor is twice as high as Achimoto? The reason is because of the shares of Sun Yen Group that Sun Yen Motor holds. Controlling Sun Yen Motor is like controlling half of Sun Yen Group. That's why we need to get Achimoto. Du Jun thought to himself that the chairman said more about the hidden value. He asked, Don't you think we should put it on the scale? Du Jun was just trapped by the old man, so he didn't understand. The chairman said again, let me see how you do it. Du Jun thought that he had revealed a lot of secrets and he also revealed a little bit of his inner thoughts. He thought that my secret is to have ambition to take over Sun Yen group and his thought is to have someone to pass on the group. Looking at his grandson Du Jun, he knew that this was not a satisfactory answer, but he smiled a humble smile and said that this was enough for now. The chairman then continued. Now I have to satisfy my curiosity. Where did you get so much money? More than the reserve of Sun Yen Group? Du Jun confessed, I invested the money from selling the farm in foreign technology companies, but I didn't expect the stock to rise so fast. I also made money from that. The chairman was happy and said, seeing that the money increased more than a hundred times like that, it seems that Si Hun's feeling is good, right? Du Jun argued, I was lucky. He asked, what position do you have in a fantasy investment company? I wonder. Du Jun confidently said, I am a major shareholder. I have 98% of the shares. The old man was shocked by that. More than 98%? What about Si Hoon? The chairman asked. Du Jun answered, he is just an executive director. He also brought a lot of stars with him. A professional manager. The more he heard his grandson say, the more frightened the old man was. Then they both pondered their own paths to pursue their interests. The chairman asked, You also know that my money is in your company, right? Du Jun answered, You mean 100 billion? That amount has increased a lot already. If you give me 7% of Achimoto's shares, I intend to pay back both the principal and interest of your investment. The chairman laughed out loud at his grandson's words. He said, of course. How dare you swallow my money alive? Du Jun innocently said, I just hope you will say that money is my entrance gift. At this moment, the old man suddenly became serious and shouted, Du Jun, if you want to buy an island worth 100 billion won, I will buy it for you. If you want a private jet worth 100 billion won, I will also buy it for you. 
but I will not give you money directly. The old man started to get serious. Du Jun quickly asked, is it because I can get anything if I have money? At this moment, the old man's face started to look dangerous. He answered, exactly. Then he continued, if your subordinates do well in the future, you should only give them a little money. Even if you take them to a bar and buy bottles of liquor worth millions of won, you should not give them money directly. Because they will think that only those who drink have to pay. Du Jun heard this and said, so it is creating false hope and making them believe that the better they work, the more money they will get equal to the liquor money. The old man was very pleased to see that his grandson understood this. Du Jun started to recall his previous life. At that time, he also understood this. He praised him for doing a good job and gave him hundreds of millions to pay for liquor in one night. I wonder how much he thought about giving money instead of liquor money. At that time, Du Jun had been able to swipe his card freely. At this moment, the chairman called again, Du Jun. Du Jun answered, yes. The chairman said, when Achimoto is in your hands, just pretend that you don't know anything. Just hide well until Si Hung shows up. Du Jun smiled and said, I also think so. It turns out that you also, the chairman quickly laughed and said, of course. Li Hat Che doesn't know about this either. Du Jun also smiled a cunning smile with the old man to make him happy. Then they looked at each other in slow motion like an Indian movie. At this moment, the chairman called again, Du Jun. He asked, how much is your total assets? How much will be left if you buy Achimoto? Du Jun answered, you can't just open someone else's wallet and look at it. If you need cash, just tell me and I will lend it to you. The old man heard his beloved grandson say that and could only sigh. The two looked at each other blankly and then deeply like a banana fish. Then suddenly the chairman stood up from the expensive sofa. His face looked very angry to the point of turning purple. Du Jun was scared and thought, did I say something wrong? At this moment, the chairman stepped closer and closer to his beloved grandson. Then he suddenly patted Du Jun's shoulder and made him jump. Suddenly he changed his face and said, you are very good, my boy. You have grown up. Du Jun suddenly saw him change completely and didn't have time to understand what was going on. The next day at the chairman's mansion, he was instructed to select some smart kids. After finishing the shareholders' meeting, let them investigate the accounting books of Achimoto carefully. The secretary answered, I have prepared everything. De Hyun's side will also send a representative to the shareholders' meeting. For now we should find a plan to deal with that. The chairman just sat quietly for a while and didn't say anything. Then he angrily threw the file on the table and crossed his arms and announced that we have to work harder one more time like when we made the report on Achimoto six years ago. The subordinates started to whisper, is the chairman planning to buy back Action Motor? Someone said, you also know that we don't have enough capital right now. Even if we delay paying money. The chairman calmly answered, we are not buying it but we are just preventing De Hyun from buying it back. The subordinates started to not understand what was going on, stop De Hyun? One of them asked courageously, if we stop De Hyun then who will buy it? Are you thinking of Kuyung Motor? Another man said that Kuyung had a lot of capital from the US, so he couldn't do that. Seeing the scene of his stupid subordinates talking nonsense, the chairman was angry and clenched his teeth. He shouted, don't you think I know what you know? Stop gossiping and do what I ordered. I will give you one week, do you hear me? At this time, the subordinates did not dare to say anything more and just bowed their heads and said yes. Then the meeting ended and everyone started to leave. The chairman was still angry and said, they all left. Call the chairman Song Nguyen Zhang of Achimoto to talk to me. I have something to say to him. The secretary hurriedly obeyed, yes, chairman. The chairman was very annoyed and continued, tell him I'm looking for him. The secretary heard that and was very puzzled, but did not dare to ask anything. 
a person who had never done anything for others like the chairman wanted to find the chairman of Achimoto. What did he want to talk about? The secretary thought to himself. The next day at the building where Sihun worked, Sihun asked Du Jun if everything was okay between him and his grandfather. Du Jun replied, Yes, he will support me fully. I just need to transfer the shares and meet with the relevant people. Sihun wondered, It seems like I won't be involved in this matter, right? Du Jun replied, Of course not. It would be ridiculous if I participated. Everyone would see that I have no credibility. Sihun still felt uneasy and asked again, Is that the only reason? There is nothing else? Du Jun casually drank milk. You have a lot of people eyeing your family's wealth. Not only that, but you also have many internal enemies. Sihun thought about what he said and then he said, That's true. If I showed up, they would all think that I was using my grandfather's money. Du Jun continued, Right now, we don't have much time before Achimoto announces their news. We have to quickly grasp the situation. Sihun replied, Our company's accounting department is also preparing. They are checking the documents that have been published. Then he started to check the related documents on the table. Du Jun thought to himself. His father seemed happier than usual. Actually, he was also very worried. With the thousands of billions of won that he earned, he could live luxuriously like a king, but the nightmare that he dreamed every night still haunted him. Du Jun remembered the scene of being shot in his previous life. At this time, Du Jun felt like he had just woken up from a nightmare. He thought to himself that he did not do this because of that nightmare. A life that he had dreamed of in his previous life was more desirable than a life of only enjoying pleasure and excitement thanks to his huge fortune. He wanted to fight for every moment, destroy his enemies one by one, and build a city of his own. He wanted to see the end result. Du Jun imagined himself standing on a hill and muttered to himself, even if it was an illusory ending. At this time, Sihun's voice rang out. What are you thinking about that you suddenly became silent? Sihun's face looked confused with question marks. Du Jun pretended to be calm and said, I was thinking about what you said when you got the shares. We have to pay back 100 billion won of black money to him. Sihun was startled. What? We used half of the money already. Why do we have to pay back? At this time, Du Jun stood up and replied, I'm sorry but that's my promise to him. He also said he would support me fully so I don't have to pay back. Sihun was puzzled. Did you not tell him that you are a major shareholder of Fantasy Investment? Did you not reveal that you own this company? Du Jun replied, I did. Whether I tell him or not, how can I ask him for help? Sihun was shocked. He knows you are a major shareholder and he still asks you to return all the money? This is a good opportunity for you to get 50 billion won legally. Du Jun looked away and said, If your grandfather left such a black legacy, Sun Yan would have been in your uncle's hands long ago. At this point, Sihun had to admire. He was truly cunning and more cunning as he had more talent. Du Jun agreed, That's right. You have to survive among those cunning people. Sihun just joked for a moment but he did not expect this kid to be so deep. At Daehun Group, a shout rang out. Why are the police silent? The secretary trembled and answered, they said it would be difficult to send someone if there was only evidence based on the situation. The chairman was even more angry. There is a witness, what is so difficult about that? The secretary was afraid and continued, if it was ordinary people, it would be fine but these are all people with influence, so the Supreme Prosecutor's Office said we should be more careful. The chairman heard this and became even more furious. So what if they have influence? What about the media? Why are they so weak? I told them to expose some scandals like celebrities using drugs and what else? The group of flatterers were silent and did not dare to say anything. It was true that the old men in the movies were always scolded and choked on their food. The secretary trembled and said, 
Chairman, it seems that Akin is being backed by someone else. The newspapers all reported it, but they were very cautious about something. Another person quickly added, that's right. Especially the Hansung newspaper. Although it has the largest influence, it. The chairman interrupted angrily, then what? Did you not advertise for the Hansung newspaper? Did you not tell them to post ads for our company? The person bowed his head and replied timidly, I did, but they did not publish a single line in the newspaper. The chairman angrily threw himself on the sofa and said, What are you saying? Is it true that they are colluding with Sun Yen? The long-winded answer seemed to be like that. Because if we can buy Achimoto, the one who will suffer the most damage is Sun Yen. The chairman was angry before the party. Why did it happen at this time? He scolded his nephew for selling himself to please them, like the guarantee of Chairman Dehuen. Akimoto Motorcycle was led by the government to prevent the bankruptcy of many businesses. Akimoto became the subject of the bankruptcy extension agreement issued by the financial organization on April 21, 1997. To become the subject of the agreement, Akimoto submitted a pledge to give up the right to do business, the consent of the union to reduce employee salaries, and the consent of the management delegation to postpone bankruptcy for two months. Achimoto began to hide the black fund that was being kept secret. The secret commander of this was Chairman Song Hyun Yang of Akin and Si Hoon of Fantasy, and Chairman Jin Yang Chun of Sun Yen. One fine day at the chairman's mansion, the chairman said, I've heard about this. I heard you helped Du Jun increase the amount by a hundred times, right? Si Hoon was scared and thought, a hundred times? This kid hasn't told him properly yet. I didn't help increase that amount and it didn't just increase by a hundred times, but more than that. Si Hoon replied, I was just lucky. Fortunately, I still remember the original amount so I always feel relieved. The chairman smiled, you are modest. It would be great if you contribute that ability to us. Si Hoon showed that this praise was too much. The chairman continued, I heard this is the amount we can hide. Si Hoon replied, that's right, a total of 270 billion. If the deadline of the bankruptcy extension agreement ends, it will be managed by law. We have to hide all the money before that time. If we are discovered, Chairman Song of a Gene and most of the board members will be arrested. The chairman was very pleased with this report. He asked, so you want to launder money, right? Si Hoon hesitated and said, it's a bit embarrassing but yes. The chairman pretended to think about some scheme. At this time, Du Jun said, Sir, should we give this money to the board members of Akimoto as retirement pay? The chairman laughed, Why do you care about their old age? Who are they? They must have prepared well for their old age. Then he said, Director Si Hoon, what do you think about keeping all this money at Fantasy's U.S. branch? Si Hoon was surprised, all of it? The chairman was right. What if we reinvest this money in Achimoto? We think if we pay enough salary, bonus and bonus money to those who are dealing with this money, nothing will happen. Si Hoon suddenly felt itchy when he heard such a large amount of money. He thought, although that is the most legal way, how can we spend 27 billion KRW if we don't determine the salary or bonus level? It's unrealistic. Du Jun sat on one side and also silently observed Si Hoon's expression. Du Jun thought, but maybe he has found a way not to use this money. Si Hoon said, the problem is they want to be paid at one time and most of them have to resign and go away. So everyone asked for a share. The chairman replied in a situation where others tried to find excuses not to pay their employees even though they knew it was money they had to pay. Then why do you have to pay in advance? The chairman threw the file down on the table and said, The moment you pay them they will become strangers immediately and maybe they will go to the enemy side and bite you back. You should also know that in their eyes you are the one who stole their own Akimoto. Si Hoon felt more and more confused and brainless. He had to endure the pressure from the old man while working for him. Du Jun had been sitting on one side and observing, 
but he did not say anything. He secretly thought that Si Hoon only cared about the numbers and never saw the dark side of those people who changed their minds with the wind. The chairman crossed his arms and continued, Money is both a whip and a carrot. You have to hold it firmly and use it little by little to tame them. If they knew that you used 27 billion to reinvest in Achin Moto, those guys from Achin would probably kneel down and lick your feet. The more Si Hoon listened, the more he could not understand why he became so angry. Du Jun calmly drank tea on one side and secretly thought that he had to show Si Hoon the true nature of his grandfather. Anyway, they would have to meet frequently in the future. Then he raised his voice and called out, Grandpa, this is just a minute, right? Are you planning not to give the money? The chairman heard his grandson ask and was a little stunned. Then he laughed as if he understood everything his grandson said. He burst out laughing, you want to make me a shameless person who embezzled money, huh? Sihun heard these two grandfathers talk and still did not understand anything. The chairman turned to ask Sihun, what do you think? Do you want to give all that money or just pretend a little bit? Sihun hurriedly shouted affirmatively, if possible, of course I don't want to give money. The chairman smiled, of course, if the money doesn't need to be paid back, then who in this world would want to pay money? You have to convince the chairman that this is the best way we will handle the money that Achi Moto is hiding before being controlled by the law. Then we have to withdraw it all and put it in fantasy safe. Sihun immediately stood up and bowed to thank the chairman. The chairman waved his hand and said, thank me for what? I'm doing this for my grandson. Du Jun also stood up at this time and said, if we have finished the meeting, then I ask for permission to leave. The chairman stopped him and asked him to stay for a while. I have something to say. Si Hoon saw that the two grandfathers had something to say, so he quickly bowed his head and asked for permission to leave first. After saying that, he went straight out the door without hesitating for a second. At this time, the chairman asked Du Jun, I heard that you intend to take a leave of absence. Du Jun was shocked. I didn't intend to hide this either, but how did you know so fast? I just got the application this morning and came here right away. Du Jun smiled casually and replied, Yes, I submitted the application this morning. Then the chairman angrily asked, Why Du Jun? You know the etiquette as well as I do. Something big happened so I didn't have time to go to school. The chairman said, Who told you that you need to go to school regularly? Just show up once in a while and that's enough. I told the school to tear up your leave application. Du Jun was annoyed and exclaimed, But grandfather. The chairman insisted, Just do as I say. Then he added, I know what you were worried about. Du Jun replied with a word that he did not understand why his grandfather could guess. The chairman said again, don't you want to maintain your student status to avoid the scrutiny of your relatives? One day you will have to face them. You can't delay it forever. When you need to fight, you have to fight. When you need to help someone, you have to reach out first. Du Jun was still stunned to hear the chairman say, when that time comes, your being a student will be a disadvantage. At this point, Du Jun spoke up, so what? You are the one who holds the knife. The chairman was shocked. Hearing his beloved grandson say that, he scolded, This kid thinks Sun Young is a supermarket in the neighborhood. My knife can't reach many places. If the directors of the important subsidiaries only show up and support your uncle, Sun Young will be divided into two factions. At this point, Du Jun began to tense up and thought, as he said, when I officially become the successor of the group, the board of directors of Sun Young will still treat me as a child because I am labeled as a student. So the power will be concentrated in the hands of my uncle, not a kid like me. Understanding that, Du Jun hurriedly bowed his head and said, I understand. I will do as you say. The chairman said, good. But in his heart, Du Jun thought, his mind must have leaned towards me. At this time, on the luxury car that usually picked up Du Jun, Du Jun said to his assistant, Wait for me at Siojanu. 
A moment later, when the car stopped at the foot of Sioyona skyscraper, Assistant Kim seemed hesitant as if he had something to say but then stopped. He said, I have something to tell you. Du Jun calmly replied, just say it. Assistant Kim said, I don't know if I'm mistaken or not, but it seems that we are being followed lately. Du Jun was very surprised and asked quickly, when did it start? Assistant Kim said, I don't know either. I just noticed it in the last few days. Du Jun was angry and said, tell me clearly. Assistant Kim hesitated and said, I can't see the person but there is always a car behind us. It seems that someone is trying to track our movements. Du Jun heard that and his eyes narrowed and began to think who was doing that. Assistant Kim had said that he worked at the guest house, which meant that he had not been trained enough to notice other people's behavior. So why did he notice? Assistant Kim turned his head and continued, Oh, it was team leader Shin who told me. He said, There are many people following us strangely lately. Du Jun was very surprised to hear the name of team leader Shin. He said, Oh, he is the team leader of our strategy team one. When Du Jun asked if the follower was a reporter, Assistant Kim said, There has been no reporter following us since this morning. Du Jun then began to calculate, Could it be someone from my uncle's side? Assistant Kim looked at Du Jun again with fear and said, Team leader Shin is trying to find out who is behind it. And it seems that we are also starting to catch them. If you are not busy, do you want to confirm it? Du Jun was happy to hear that and said, be careful when driving. Assistant Kim then became serious and said, Buckle up. I'm speeding up. He said that and immediately stepped on the gas pedal and drove away. Then he started driving the luxury car in a race on the road. The car entered a very wide highway. Then, in a mysterious meeting room with a modern projector that looked like a discotheque, someone's voice rang out. Don't pay too much attention to the third son Jean Shanky and the youngest son Jinzuki. Jean Shanky only knows how to cling to his eldest brother and wag his tail and bark. And Jinzuki Kai has secured his position in the film industry. He doesn't care about Sun Young at all. The man reported to the woman. Then he asked. Is the problem with the second son, Jinzuki Kai, right? Someone answered. Yes. Jinzuki Kai is much better than his performance. He is the one who contributed greatly to bringing the heavy chemical industry to the peak in the country. He even received high praise from the subsidiary director and the board of directors. He ranks second in the order of inheritance, but he also receives many compliments from his subordinates. After someone reported, another man interjected. It can be considered that way. According to the situation, Jinzuki Kai may take over the heavy science and technology sector. The youngest grandson and the amazing thing asked. What about the only daughter of Jean Seo Jun? This person answered. She has a lot of ambition but lacks ability, so she can delay the shopping center, golf course, hotel and cultural organizations. At this time, the daughter suddenly shouted out rudely. The man with glasses had to stop her. Soren, be quiet and listen. Then he ordered his subordinate to continue. The subordinate continued. Yes, but when we investigated, we found an unexpected opponent. It was the grandson Du Jun. The man with glasses wondered. Du Jun, the youngest grandson? The subordinate said. He is the youngest son of Gins and Ki. The man with glasses asked further. What about that kid? Isn't he a bookworm from Seoul University Law School? The subordinate explained. The number of days he goes to school in a semester can be counted on his fingers. He goes to work at Rio Du every day. He also often goes to Chairman Jin's house. At this time, the old man fell into deep thought. When he heard the name Rio Du, the subordinate continued. Yes, it seems that he has a close relationship with the foreign investment company Fantasy. According to our investigation, he also has quite a lot of assets. The man with glasses calmly rested his chin and asked. How much? 
the subordinate hurriedly answered. It could be tens of billions of one, or even up to one hundred billion one for some people. At this time, the man with glasses began to be stunned. One hundred billion? Ha! Huh. Chairman Jing gave that kid a lot of money? Why? The subordinate reported again. It's true that he gave him money, but it's a bit different. Ten years ago, he gave him a farm. Coincidentally, it is located in the position of the new city Budhan now. Everyone who heard this was shocked and terrified. The man with glasses replied. That's a jackpot. From a piece of land that was only a few million square meters, it skyrocketed to ten billion square meters. At this time, the subordinate still reported further. That money was sent to fantasy, and the director of this investment company is Si Hoon, a friend of dying junkie from studying abroad. The man with glasses crossed his arms. Is there anything else? The content of the report only talked about a lucky kid so far. The subordinate hurriedly continued. Especially, he is the only grandson who can step into the chairman's study during summer vacation. He almost stays at the chairman's house, so it seems that their grandfather-grandson relationship is very good. At this time, the old man began to carefully study their good feelings again. The daughter who had been sitting quietly for a while now also started to get angry. I also heard young Jun say that the study is not an ordinary place, but where Soon Yen Group operates. The other grandchildren can only see him in the living room. But can he alone enter the study? That means only he can enter the chairman's room and talk privately with him. The subordinate tried to follow along. That's right, even Vice President Jean Youngki doesn't have that opportunity. He always has Director Lee Hat Chase standing and talking with him. Until now, the only person who can talk privately with the chairman is Director Lee Hat Che. At this point, the man wearing glasses spoke up and called his daughter. She quickly obeyed what he said, go and confirm with your fiancé and see what position that kid Du Jun has in his family. Then he continued, this opportunity won't come a second time. We have to be mentally prepared until all of Chairman Jean belongs to Jean Young Jun. His daughter also looked at him with a very unpleasant expression. At a public parking lot at the city bus station, Du Jun asked Assistant Kim, are you sure Kia is the one following us? Assistant Kim replied, yes, I saw that car since we left the chairman's house, but the driver didn't get out. Du Jun drank some water and thought. The only person who has the power to send someone to follow a family member is my eldest uncle. Is he doing this to take over the company? Then Du Jun looked at Assistant Kim silently and calculated something. Then he reached into his inner pocket and searched for something. Then Du Jun took it out and said to Assistant Kim, Use it whenever you need it. Assistant Kim took it. He realized it was an envelope full of money. Assistant Kim didn't know what to do with it, but Du Jun just said, Just use it as you please. Assistant Kim was surprised. This kid is nice but also scary. Du Jun suddenly said, Assistant Kim, you only do what you are told, how much can you earn? You are not smart and have no good education. He was standing in a long line to get into Sun Yen. Assistant Kim heard him say that and wondered if he was about to be fired or what. Du Jun continued, what will you do after you enter the company? Have you ever decided this for yourself even once? Assistant Kim, you have to become someone who can make decisions for yourself. The first thing is to choose what you want to do, choose what needs to be done, then choose who you need to have to do it. Du Jun continued, the money I gave you is a tool to win over the people you need. After saying that, Du Jun stood up and threw the coffee cup he had just finished into the trash. Then he turned around and smiled at Assistant Kim and said, let's go. Assistant Kim was stunned as if he had suddenly been taken care of by a rich man. Then he put the money away and followed Du Jun's order. The next day was still a sunny day in Chang's office. Si Hoon's beautiful receptionist came in and reported, Director, there is a guest here. 
Si Hoon and Du Jun wondered who came and why she looked so tense. When the receptionist nervously said, It's the chairman of Dian Group. Si Hoon was also very surprised. Both Si Hoon and Du Jun were shocked by this news. Then it was Si Hoon's turn to be embarrassed and tell the receptionist, Tell him to wait for me for a moment. Du Jun knew what they meant. He and his nephew would go to the meeting room next door. Turn on your phone. I need to think about what we will say. Si Hoon hurriedly agreed. If he recognizes me, it will be a big deal. I also appear a lot on TV. Hearing that, Du Jun pulled his coat up to cover his face and went out. Si Hoon regained his composure and smiled. Unfortunately, Du Jun ran into the chairman and a bunch of bodyguards as soon as he went out. The chairman saw this kid and thought he looked familiar, so he also looked at him twice. Du Jun quickly bowed his head and walked past the old man's gate. When the chairman opened the door and entered, Si Hoon respectfully bowed and invited him in. At this time, the chairman was very polite and extended a hand to shake. He said, Thank you for receiving this uninvited guest. I'm sorry to bother you so much. Si Hoon quickly reached out and shook his hand. He said, There is no place in Korea that considers the chairman as an uninvited guest. Don't worry. Then he hurriedly invited him to sit here. He apologized for the delay. At this time, the chairman was very pleased. He sat down and said, A company that can get Achimoto, how can it be delayed? Then he looked at Si Hoon and said sarcastically, You are too modest. Si Hoon's face turned pale when he heard the chairman say, There is no reason to hide your reputation, because we are all in the same boat. Si Hoon then sat down and replied, Is it because of the rumors spreading fast or because of the strong information power of Di Hoon Group? The chairman was asked that and thought to himself, I thought he would try to hide it even if it was true, but he looks calm. He cancelled the useless eye-fighting and said more comfortably. He was quite old. He said to the bodyguard, Follow him. Go out, I have something to talk to him about. The bodyguard also obeyed and quickly went out and closed the door. At this time, the chairman said comfortably, You don't hide anything so it will be quick. I will tell you straight what you want. Si Hoon smiled and replied, Of course I want Achimoto. The chairman intended to ask further, Aren't you an investment company? Is investing and earning your original goal? So just saying the price difference can avoid a useless war, right? Si Hoon started to tense up. It's only a few days until the day when they will give the price to get out of this war, right? The chairman smiled as if he had already won. He said accurately, it's just a troublesome war to raise the price. This plan is good, but Si Hoon seems to be misunderstanding. Our investors also have enough money, we just want to have fun. He continued to smile and talk. Everyone loves cars, so we want to have a place to produce cars. The chairman was very angry when he heard that. He thought that just because a child liked toys, he bought the whole toy factory. He was talking nonsense. He thought that he didn't want to negotiate with him. After thinking about it, the chairman said. As long as there is a line in the newspaper saying that the national assets are leaking due to foreign investment, you will have no place to stand. He continued. The Korean people have no less patriotism than anyone else. Si Hoon still smiled and replied. As long as you look at the bidding price, the Koreans will know who is more patriotic. The chairman's face darkened when he heard that. At this time, even the phone didn't dare to ring. The battle of the two men fell into silence. The chairman asked him directly what he wanted. Si Hoon answered, Fill everything you have with public funds and compete only with the buyout price. Isn't that beneficial for both of us? He smiled and continued. No matter who wins, the damage will be small. The chairman became serious. So you mean that your company and mine should work together to create conditions to reduce debt and compete only with the buyout price of the company? Si Hoon immediately argued, yes. Then the conversation stalled. 
Si Hoon had to continue, the chairman proposed the method of change first, so I will also say that when fighting, if you set rules, it will become a sport. Isn't that more moral? The chairman felt very angry about that. But he was still an old fox. He answered, you are an interesting friend. It's been a long time since I had a fair fight like this. His face was like a dark assassin saying morality. The name De Hewen was not created by flatness, it engraved the name that was built after rolling in the mud. Sihun saw this old man looking like a witch and sweated profusely without knowing what to say. The old man angrily stood up and left, slamming the door behind him. As soon as he left, Sihun collapsed without any resistance. At this time, Du Jun opened the door and came in, but still a little scared. The old man saw Si Hoon and said to him, But is this right? What if he doesn't accept this condition? But Du Jun confidently said he will accept it anyway. He smiled very smugly and confirmed that Chairman Chu was a tycoon who would not refuse an offer of merger and money saving. At this time, at De Hyun's building, the subordinates were persuading the chairman to accept this plan. They said Achimoto's debt was 3.28 trillion KRW eliminating 1.8 trillion KRW of debt from Achimoto's subsidiary company. He continued to say angrily that the remaining debt of 2.2 trillion KRW will be transferred to investment. This is a very radical condition to eliminate 7.38 trillion KRW. The chairman had a headache listening to his subordinate still talking incessantly. To achieve this condition, the amount of money poured out from Dehin is relatively large. However, if it touches on the debt cancellation in fantasy, it will have to start over again. However, if doing this together in agreement, then only need to use the buyout price. At this time, the chairman asked does that kid have a lot of money? Does he have enough money to spend thousands of billions? The subordinate answered like fantasy. We don't know Dae Hyun's financial ability either. We also find it hard to grasp them there because they are all American capital. But he suddenly hesitated and the chairman asked impatiently, but what? The subordinate hurriedly said according to the investigation of the American legal entity company, it is expected that ammunition will be enough. That is a big hand famous in Hollywood America. Until now among the blockbuster movies there is no movie without fantasy's money. The chairman became even more annoyed when he heard that. His subordinates still said, there is a very important point. No movie that fantasy invested in has failed. Another one also agreed, his intuition for investment is not ordinary. He will not join any battle that will lose money. The subordinates still persisted in persuading the chairman. Didn't you always say that reluctantly shaking hands when the other side reaches out is also a way to avoid bleeding? The chairman was increasingly pained by the first sentence of reaching out first. One afternoon at the mansion of the chairman of Sun Yang Group, the chairman was enjoying a hot cup of tea and asked Du Jun, Has Chu Dong Yu Yu arrived? Du Jun answered, Yes. He said he would compensate if he withdrew from the acquisition battle. The chairman said, he must be in a hurry to see that old man take such a difficult step. It's also the right way to go for a busy road. But the person who grabbed the hind leg appeared. The chairman asked, then what did he say next? Du Jun told him, our side said that we should compete in a stylish way with only the purchase price and care about all the benefits that the government brings. The chairman was pleased and said, because there is no need to waste money uselessly. The chairman asked Du Jun, then what did he say? When he heard Du Jun answer, he said, let's fight fair and square for once. The chairman laughed loudly. Du Jun smiled and asked, that friend must have had a fever. Mr. Cho gave me a hint. The chairman sipped his tea and said, how will Chairman Chu appear? You must have guessed it already. If it were me, I would have tried to think about whether to reject that project or not. Then the chairman asked Du Jun, so why didn't he answer? Du Jun replied, he will accept it anyway because the debt reduction amount is already a constant. He will not want to add a new variable. At this point, the chairman was delighted and guessed correctly. 
The most frightening thing for a businessman is a variable. Du Jun heard the chairman say that and thought to himself, okay, both chairmen are people like each other. The chairman continued, but Du Jun, you have used up your trump card. Chairman Chu hasn't used his card yet. He will start a big counterattack. Du Jun had guessed it through the media, right? He asked and the chairman answered, of course. The media will persuade the creditors and the jury to accept the government, parliament and blue house that Dae Hyun Group has taken care of in the past. They will also put pressure on them. Du Jun asked again. Hearing that meant no more help was needed. The chairman replied, wanting to give is also impossible. Du Jun was a bit dumbfounded. What does asking for help mean? The chairman replied that. Chairman Song Hyun Trang had stopped it. Just that alone made me wonder if he was interested in Achimoto or not. But because of Chairman Song's restraint, it was more beneficial for the takeover so they calmed down. He continued, I thought it was just sympathy but Du Jun said it wasn't all. The chairman continued to say, the officials working in the country can make it difficult for them, right? They are the ones who have worked as hands and feet for a long time. If we hold the right hand and pull the chairman Chu, and hold the left hand and pull, then what will happen to those friends? They will be torn apart. Du Jun listened attentively to Mr. Ra's lecture. He thought to himself, he says that, but his expression does not show any regret. He clearly has some ulterior motive, but he could not guess what it was. Du Jun pretended to agree, so I and Director Si Hung will do well. The chairman heard his grandson's firm affirmation and was speechless. Du Jun asked with a smile, why is that? Should I try harder to ask for more help or something? But he casually asked, are you close with Si Hoon? Du Jun answered, yes. The chairman continued, do you think he is a trustworthy person? Du Jun smiled, until now, yes. My father also said that he is a trustworthy person. Although he works in a profession that touches money, he is not someone who betrays money. The chairman suddenly became cunning and said, Is that so? Du Jun was suddenly put in a difficult situation and did not know what to say. The chairman continued, Du Jun, there are two types of people that you should keep close. One is a trustworthy person who can delegate work to, like Si Hoon. Du Jun heard this and asked, Then who is the other one? The chairman answered, a person who will sacrifice for you. At this point, Du Jun became even more confused. Sacrifice? What is worth sacrificing for me? The chairman continued, you will meet those people when you shine. You don't need to try to find them. Du Jun could only keep silent and listen to this old man's preaching. After he finished, the old man looked like he had just recited a great scripture. He smiled smugly. Then he said, let's go. It's time for the guests to arrive. You change your clothes. We have prepared them on the upper floor. The evening began to cover the mansion of the chairman. At this time, the guests also arrived noisily and crowded in the mansion. The guests included many handsome and beautiful rich people. The party also had a four-layer chocolate strawberry cake with sweet candy. At this time, the bride and groom were splendid in a sea of roses. On the bride's hand was a diamond ring with a huge diamond. The male Li Du Jun seemed to receive money for advertising banana milk. He saw him holding a box of milk everywhere. Du Jun thought to himself that Jin Young Chun seemed to have feelings for the woman he was engaged to. He learned that the second time they met was a meeting between the two families. Then they met a few times. Du Jun thought it was hard to understand. Did they have feelings because they had a lot of money? At this time, there was a voice of someone who was crazy about handsome men. It turned out to be his sister-in-law who just got engaged. She said to Du Jun, I heard you are the number one beauty in Young Chun's family. Du Jun also congratulated them politely. His cousin said, Thank you, Du Jun. Is this the first time we meet? Let me ask you something. Du Jun bowed quickly and said, 
Congratulations, sister-in-law. I'm Du Jun. The sister-in-law also thanked him, the young master Du Jun. At this time, there was a loud voice calling young Jun. Then the young uncle walked away and left her to tell Du Jun to talk to his sister-in-law and he would be back soon. Du Jun stood there very embarrassed. After greeting, he didn't know what to say. Fortunately, the sister-in-law was friendly and said that young master Du Jun was the ideal model of all the girls, which made Du Jun astonished. The sister-in-law also thanked him politely and said, You are the ideal model of all girls. You are tall and handsome, and you are also smart and in the top 0.1%. Besides, you are the youngest member of a wealthy family that makes everyone jealous. Du Jun smiled politely and asked, Is being the youngest a reason to be jealous? The sister-in-law answered, Of course, you don't have to inherit the company or do business. You can enjoy life by using your inheritance money. Du Jun scratched his head and thought that it seemed true. He continued, The problem is that I don't know if there will be any money left when it's my turn. The sister-in-law laughed and said, Do you need to worry about that? You are the grandson that Chairman Jean loves. Then they fell into silence and didn't know what to say. Du Jun thought that it was natural for her to investigate him since he would become the son-in-law of Sun Yen Group. Then he smiled and said, What do you mean by the most loved grandson? When the other grandchildren grew up, he gave them some shares and money, but he only gave me a sports car that I don't even have a driver's license for. The sister-in-law pretended to be surprised and asked, Really? Then doesn't that mean he will give you something bigger later? I heard you are an exemplary student and hardly spend money. Du Jun denied it and said that he didn't spend anything because he didn't have any money to spend. If he did, he would use a lot of it. He said while holding a glass of wine. Then he thought that if she knew how much money he had spent, she wouldn't stand like this. The sister-in-law said again, Are you sick? Why don't I take care of your pocket money later and I will also talk to young Jun. Du Jun quickly thanked her and said, Really? Thank you very much. Then he continued to say politely that he had to perform well with Young in the future. The sister-in-law also pretended to stand there smiling shyly. Then Du Jun made an excuse and said, Sister-in-law, please wait a moment. I need to go to the bathroom. The sister-in-law smiled brightly like a Korean actress. After that, she started in the direction of Du Jun going to the bathroom like a pervert. She thought that he was not an ordinary person, who went in and out of the stock market every day. How could Sien Du say that he had no money? At this time, her husband turned back and asked how she felt. They both looked like perverts staring at Du Jun. The wife said very politely, making her husband surprised. Is that all? Then she continued, the rich young master doesn't show anything. He's naturally like that, right? The husband said, that's right. When he was young, he was always hiding in the house and always exhausted. Anyway, we don't need to be too cautious because I think I will use Du Jun as my right-hand man. The wife heard her husband say that and didn't say anything but just smiled wickedly. Then she quickly pulled her husband's arm closer and said, that's right. I promised to give him plenty of pocket money, right? The husband smiled brightly and said, of course. It's natural for the elder sister-in-law to give the younger cousin some pocket money. At this time, in the bathroom, Nam Du Jun just stepped in and complained, how inconvenient. He was about to pull down his pants to go to the bathroom when he heard a voice saying, young master. He turned his head and saw the old secretary who came to the bathroom and didn't leave him alone. Du Jun was astonished and asked, Assistant Kim, I told you to rest today. It's an event in the house so I don't need to go out. But Assistant Kim said seriously, I don't know if you have time but I have something to tell you. Suddenly the conversation became tense and Du Jun didn't know what had happened but because he needed to go to the bathroom he said, If it's the parking lot then my car is there. You go there and I'll come out right away. Then Du Jun also got to go to the bathroom comfortably without being disturbed. 
As soon as he finished going to the bathroom he thought, what is it? His expression was not normal at all. Then Du Jun went outside to look for his car in the parking lot. Because it was a mansion of a rich family it was too big so Du Jun walked for a long time before finding his car. Then he opened the car door and got in and asked, what is it? But Secretary Kim said that he should wait a moment and team leader Shin would explain. Du Jun doubted and asked again, team leader Shin? Secretary Kim answered, yes, he is the team leader of our strategy team. I mentioned him once before. Do you remember? At this time Du Jun asked the person who said, do you know about the click fraud? Suddenly someone approached and made Du Jun startled. The man bowed and said, Hello, I'm team leader Shin Chako. Du Jun looked at the man and thought, I've seen this face somewhere before. Who is he? Team leader Shin asked again, Don't you remember? We met at John Fai's villa. My grandfather took you home in the early morning. Hearing this, Du Jun remembered who he was. He remembered that he had saved this person and threw a bait but there was no special reaction so he forgot about it. Team leader Shin continued, because we don't have much time I'll be brief. I don't know if you know but my team is called the third generation. When I worked, someone started following the third generation team a month ago. Du Jun heard team leader Shin say that and was very surprised. They knew everything? Well they didn't grasp all their movements but only their roots. Du Jun asked if young Jun was included in that group. Team leader Shin replied, yes, they followed everyone without missing anyone. At that moment, Du Jun thought, why did he check on his own son? That's too much. If it's not him, then who is it? Team leader Shin continued, with our manpower, we don't have the ability to identify who is following them. We are not experts who can follow them either. On the contrary, since all the members of the team played the role of secretaries, following someone was too much for them. Du Jun thought. Then he asked, but why did you tell me this? If you follow the order, then, team leader Shin answered, I know the order. I have to report to the strategy department head and secretary department head Li Ha Che first and then to the intelligence agents or important figures of Sun Yen. Du Jun asked again, you knew this before, but why? Team leader Shin clenched his fist and said, it's a bit embarrassing, but I want to grab the rope. Du Jun was surprised. Rope? Is it the rope that I'm thinking of? Team leader Shin said, yes, our strategy team has no future and no shelter so it's rare for anyone to endure for a year. Even if they endure for a few years, they can't see the light. Du Jun was confused. But why me? I'm the youngest and have no voice in the company. How can I become a rope? At that time, Secretary Kim also wanted to say something, but team leader Shin asked him, so you don't want to reach out to me? Du Jun calmly said, even so, how can I shake hands casually? No one reached out except me. And I'm the only one who became a goat. At that moment, team leader Shin became unusually serious. Or should I look inside? He said, it's the only hand, but because it's reliable, I want to grab it. He shouted, if it's an unreliable hand, I would have ignored it and turned away. Because among Chairman Jin's nephews, no one is more careful than you in managing yourself. You are sincere and never deceive. Assistant Kim sitting in front was shocked by the sudden outburst of the team leader. After saying that, team leader Shin also felt like he went too far. Du Jun was still silent and thinking. He secretly calculated that he could check on his cousin's movements. There was no reason to refuse. The two guards waited as if they were waiting for eternity. Who said waiting is happiness? Although they waited, Du Jun didn't say anything. After a short time, he spoke up. Team leader Shin and assistant Kim, listen to me. The two of them were suddenly named and became serious. They listened to what the kid had to say. Du Jun said, it's not that you grabbed my hand that I reached out first. 
it's that the strategy team begged me to become their roof and I agreed. Do you understand? The same result but different order. They had to know the difference. Team leader Shin hurriedly answered, yes, of course. But Du Jun said, don't answer so easily. It's not that I reached out and you grabbed it. The difference is huge. Team leader Shin still respectfully said, we know that. It doesn't mean that you can remove the roof that protects us anytime. At this moment, Du Jun thought to himself, have I been too attentive for a long time? Does this guy understand clearly? Team leader Shin spoke respectfully, I will do exactly what you expect, within the limits you set. If I fall behind even a little bit, I will not complain if you caught me off. Du Jun said, I don't mean to ask you two to be loyal to me. It's just a transaction. The strategy team provides what I need and I pay for it. Du Jun looked distant and said, the bright future could be the price, or it could be money. At this point, team leader Shin asked, is it because you are not a member of the Sunyan group yet? Du Jun replied, no, I still don't have much expectation and trust in you too. That's why it's just a transaction. If you want something more from me, show me something that can change me. That's enough. Du Jun recalled, until now, I have never received anyone's loyalty. But I know that nothing is more precious than the loyalty of a foolish and weak lover. Then he called out to assistant Kim, who was terrified. Du Jun said, from tomorrow on, I will take a taxi, so follow those who follow me. Don't rush too much, just take it slow. It doesn't matter if you take a long time. Assistant Kim nodded quickly and said, yes. Then Du Jun started to assign tasks to team leader Shin. He said, from now on, send me the report documents of the strategy team first. If I draw a red line, don't report it to the higher-ups. Team leader Shin was happy to obey the orders of the young boss. Du Jun continued, don't worry about money and don't save on operating costs. If you need personal money, don't hesitate to say it. I won't let anyone worry about money. Hearing Du Jun's offer to support them financially, the two men were moved to tears. Then Du Jun closed his eyes and leaned against the window of the luxury car to rest. He thought that he had gained quite a lot today. He discovered a girl he needed to be wary of and found a replacement for his eyes. The next morning at the Sihun TV Tower, news was broadcasted that another suspicion had been raised about Fantasy's intention to buy out Achi Group. Fantasy's source of capital was revealed to be from Japan. It could not rule out the possibility that Akimoto would become a bridge for the Japanese car industry to enter Korea. Sihun watched the news on TV and was furious. He said to Du Jun, at least we should hold a press conference to refute this. This is cyberbullying. If we touch on anti-Japanese sentiment, there is no way out. Du Jun answered, is there any basis for that news? It's not like they are writing a novel. Sihun said again, it's Powerbank. Powerbank is a listed company and also a company that attracts attention in Japan. So it won't be hard to find out the truth that we invested in it. Du Jun asked, is there any point in requesting a correction? But Sihun replied, the results will be out next year. If that happens, then father's acquisition of Achimoto will end. Du Jun was angry. He said, if the next reports continue to spread rumors, then we have to send the chairman and the executive directors away. The union of Achen Group also uses it as an excuse. Sihun was shocked. He asked, is that the last resort? But Du Jun said, maybe you won't be able to wait until the end. Sihun started to sweat nervously. He thought to himself, the tycoon is scary indeed. I never thought that news would be broadcasted publicly without checking the facts. Dehyan is very skilled in these tactics, isn't he? At the press conference, the reporters competed to take photos of Sihun's clarification. He said, the rumor about the Japanese capital flow is completely false. The truth is that our fantasy invested in Japan, but it was a short-term investment and we withdrew after making a profit. 
On the contrary, we earn Japanese yen. He said seriously, a reporter asked, but isn't the yen you earn still the capital of the US? Sihun answered, that's why we are pouring the yen into reviving Achimoto right now. But the reporter still asked, it's hard to understand why an investment company that seeks profit would buy a car company that would take a long time to recover its investment and make a profit. The company went bankrupt because of poor management. There is a risk of not being able to recover even a penny of investment. Is the reason you accept this risk because you are a representative of the Japanese car industry? Sihun was angry. He thought, do you think you are the one who makes statements? He shouted into the microphone. Who started talking about the Japanese car industry first? Where did you get that information from? At this point, all the reporters were noisy. They said, do you mean it has nothing to do with it? Can you confirm that again? Du Jun was watching from outside. He thought, you are not used to this. Why do you deal with reporters emotionally? Suddenly, a representative spoke up. He said, I know well about the movements of the Japanese car industry because Achimoto had technical cooperation with a Japanese company. I can confirm firmly that Japan has nothing to do with this acquisition. The reporters were still very noisy. He asked for permission to ask a question to the chairman. He saw them appear together in this position and said, can we say that you supported Fantasy's acquisition of Action Group? Chairman Zong calmly answered, That's right. Not only me, but all the staff and employees of Action Group support it. The entire union of Action Group promised to freeze their salaries and not have any disputes until they achieve a surplus in case Fantasy takes over. He declared that it was the resolution of the union. This time, the reporters stopped taking photos and started whispering to each other. Chairman Zong continued, Fantasy's executive director Si Hung promised two things, a clear separation between ownership and business and he promised to do his best to normalize Akin Moto without firing anyone. He also gave a clear answer that they would not hesitate to invest if necessary. Si Hung was no longer angry but just sat quietly and listened to Chairman speak. Then Chairman Song added, I will say two more things here. Businesses are not conglomerates that only pursue profits. They are workplaces that sustain people's lives. The Haiyan group will fire more than half of the people involved in Akin. Chairman Song affirmed, in the name of restructuring. Do one listened outside and widened his eyes, because this was a message that was absolutely necessary. Chairman Song continued, in addition, if the Haiyan buys a Kinmoto, they will control nearly 70% of the domestic car market. If a monopoly business only pursues profits, then the choices of the people will disappear. At this point, some reporters started to sway. They followed the wind and said to each other. They did not blur the nature and character of being in sync with things from Japan. A King group had invested a lot of public money. Chairman Song continued, the revival as a national enterprise, the separation between management and ownership, and the nurturing of large conglomerates with public money, that is the essence that needs to be considered. At this point, loud and enthusiastic applause sounded, making Cho Duchin smile smugly. Chairman Song's message was fully conveyed, but the timing was indeed an issue. This meeting should have been held a day earlier, when the handover was planned according to the schedule. The focus was not to give Cho Dehyun time to counterattack, because it was too hasty. So when they took out the hidden card first, Dehyun could calmly consider each thing and fight back. The global car market had started a scale trip, where only the top 10 global cars existed. The sales structure of Dehyun cars had long exceeded domestic demand by exports. If Achen and Dehyun became one family, they would have competitive power that could be broken by common design, unified procurement of components and integration of the sales network. Consumers could naturally buy cars at lower prices. Of course, restructuring was inevitable at least, but there could be no workers without a company. He hoped everyone would look further ahead and expect to create huge jobs. Until Dehyun Car Company had international competitiveness and entered the top 10 global. 
After watching this news, Du Jun turned off the TV. But the TV at home looked a bit shabby lately. Du Jun sighed a bit and was no longer as smug as before. Si Hoon also fell into a very tense state. Du Jun asked how the stock price was. His uncle answered that Duan's stock price did not change. Du Jun said that the effect was insignificant afterwards. Si Hoon explained that it was because of the collision of two forces VA. Those who thought that buying Achi Moto was a bad thing and those who thought it was a good thing were almost 50 colon 50. Du Jun thought to himself that in the end it was not the result of both forces accepting the transfer of a kin group over here. Si Hoon sighed terribly. It was really scary. He said he was an advertiser, but how could he move the press broadcast as he wanted? Du Jun heard his uncle say that and hesitated for a moment. Du Jun said to Si Hoon, it's not because I'm afraid of the chables, but because the media writes about money. They are not pens that drink alcohol and cameras that swallow love affairs. Si Hoon was amazed to hear the kid preach. What did this kid say? He looked like an old man in society. Du Jun scratched his head and replied, it's not my words, but my grandfather's. If something unfavorable happens, start blocking from the media. Si Hoon sighed helplessly. Da Hyun must have done that too. Du Jun thought to himself. If he had known this, he would not have interfered when his grandfather tried to buy back Achimoto a few years ago. A little later, Du Jun said, This is the first time in my life that I can't think of anything. Du Jun said, Uncle, let's forget everything and drink today. Si Hoon was startled. What? Drink? It was the first time this kid invited him to drink, so he was a little shocked. Du Jun asked, Why? I'm an adult now. Can I drink? Si Hoon waved his hand and said, It's not like that. Do you know how to drink? Have you ever drunk before? He asked. Du Jun remembered his previous life. He didn't drink once or twice until his body was ruined. If he had enough money to drink to solve the daily explosions, he would have a few apartments by now. He laughed out loud when he remembered that scene. Then he got up and said, Today I have to test my alcohol tolerance a little bit. He took out a black card with power and said, Let's go drink with this. There is no limit, so choose the most expensive place you know. Si Hoon heard that and was annoyed. What? No limit card? He quickly grabbed the card from his boss's hand. Si Hoon asked, What is this? Isn't this the card of Hansung Newspaper Company? How do you have this? Du Jun answered. My future sister-in-law is the daughter of Hansung Newspaper Company and she gave me pocket money. Hearing about this kid's family, his sister-in-law was also rich and made him stunned. Du Jun continued, that's the face issue of the third generation Chable. He smiled wickedly. If he was determined to spend it, he had to show his sister-in-law how much he could use. Suddenly today he heard this kid talk about spending money like grass and felt a bit poor. Then he digested it and laughed out loud and said like a pervert, I'll take you to a wonderful place, sir. That night at a luxurious bar with many delicious dishes on the table, Si Hoon was sipping a glass of fine wine by himself. He drank and thought about something. I think I've figured out the hidden card. I don't know what it is, but looking at the alcohol mixed with beer makes me think of a smart kid who gets ideas from nothing special like this. Later that night at the mansion of Chairman Sun Yen, Du Jun bowed his head and said, I'm sorry for being late like this, sir. He replied, It's okay, I haven't slept yet. But did you drink? Du Jun answered, Yes, but I didn't drink much. The chairman asked again, How do you feel about losing? But Du Jun calmly said, I don't think I've lost completely. It's not over until it's over. There's a saying like that. The chairman was annoyed and said, Where did you get such nonsense? Stop acting foolishly because you can't let go of your regret for things that have ended. It's better to analyze your failure and prepare for the next time. 
some people say that men should know when to retreat. Du Jun sat down and replied, if a Qin motor merges with Dae Hyun, then Sun Yen motor will also be heavily affected. Aren't you worried, chairman? That's our business, we can retreat if we need to. At this point, Du Jun realized that retreat? Did he already think of the worst case scenario? There was no reason for that. It was a business field that was so competitive that people couldn't bear it. If they weren't the first in the industry, they would aim for the second place. But the chairman continued, more importantly, have you thought about what your mistake was? Du Jun answered sadly, I knew that the big conglomerates had a lot of influence, but I couldn't understand that it was just a vague guess. The chairman said, that's true. You only know how strong the opponent's punch is when you get hit. What else? Du Jun bowed his head and said, I was in a hurry to go back, so I missed the right timing. The chairman asked, what else? Du Jun said, I didn't know the meticulousness and detail of De Hyun. I didn't know that they would find out about the whole investment universe in Japan. The chairman asked, is that all you learned from this battle? Du Jun answered, I didn't know the cruelty that I couldn't do anything about. I couldn't imagine that I would not hesitate to lie and turn the details of the Japanese investment fund into Japan's capital. At this point, the chairman asked, can you do everything your husband said? But Du Jun was still very annoyed. Isn't it inevitable in the end? We have to be more careful, more ruthless, and be able to lie brazenly without any worries. That's how big businesses are done, right? The chairman replied, Du Jun, you must never forget your heart and determination now. Du Jun understood everything he said and replied, yes. The chairman smiled comfortably and said, now tell me why you came here at this time. You didn't just come here to drink, did you? Du Jun quickly answered, as I said, it's not over yet. The chairman was puzzled. What do you still have? Du Jun said, you are holding my last card. I want to get that card. The chairman was surprised and asked again, what do I have? Du Jun looked at him and asked, it's Sun Yen Moto. Do you know when they will retreat? The chairman was shocked and leaned back as if he was sprayed with glue. Du Jun continued, it's not honey or water to sober up. Mixing honey and water will have a different effect. The merger announcement of the two car companies A. Chin and Sun Yen will reverse the situation. Do you remember what you told me before about the merger ratio? I want to speed up that process. The chairman frowned every time he heard Du Jun say something. Suddenly he called his nephew seriously. Du Jun, I boiled water for you because I was proud of you for buying noodles with your own money. You have to finish eating and end it. You can't complain about getting both rice and noodles, right? Du Jun calmly replied, the ancients said that we shouldn't regret any grain of rice we put in our mouth. Nephew just wants to eat more noodles. Are you stingy? The chairman said irritably, you'll burst your stomach. You're too greedy. Du Jun heard him say that and thought to himself, why is he acting like this now? Didn't he say that I would inherit the shares of Sun Yen Group through the merger of the two car companies? He seemed sincere then, without any doubt. Why did his attitude suddenly change? Is he testing me? The more he thought about it, the more annoyed Du Jun became. He clenched his thigh and said to the chairman, Sir, greed is not a good thing. No matter how big or small it is, you will be criticized for it. So what's the point of being half-hearted? The world's fingers will point at me anyway. After listening to his greedy son-in-law for a while, the chairman began to think. Du Jun thought to himself, I don't need to figure out his intentions. I have to show him how strong my will is, how big my ambition is, and how firm my determination is. After thinking for a while, the chairman asked, what do you have? Du Jun was confused by the question. The chairman continued, the merger is a combination of what you have and what I have. I have Sun Yen Moto, but what about you? You don't have a Chin Moto yet. Du Jun said, 
the announcement of the merger will be an opportunity to reverse the situation. It's not the same as before, but it's not the same result either. In the end, a Chin Moto will be mine, as you wish. He said confidently, the merger that we talked about before could be easy. Just recognize the possibility and that's it. You don't think we can cancel it later, do you? Du Jun answered, turning jokes into seriousness and dreams into reality is my job. And negotiation is not a joke. There is no negotiation in the world that cannot be compromised. If the balance is not right, we have to adjust it. We can exchange some conditions for the confirmation announcement. I will put more on the scale. The chairman smiled calmly, you are so strong now, aren't you? Fine, let's consider it as a pre-merger announcement before verification. As you said. But he added, there is no guarantee that the situation will be reversed. Du Jun interrupted him, not only with the merger announcement, we will have two means of pressure. One is the weight of the name Sun Yen Group, which has an advantage over the Hyun Group, right? Now tradition and government, creditors and judges will weigh Sun Yen and De Hyun, not fantasy. What's the other one? The chairman asked Du Jun. Du Jun calmly answered, it's the security wrapped by balance and fairness. Sir. He said firmly, the unhealthy image of fantasy investment company will disappear like that. Washed away. The chairman stopped talking and seemed to have some problem in his mind. He looked at his precious son-in-law who had a lot of money and then said, the balance is not right. Du Jun replied quickly, we can adjust the merger ratio to make it right. But the chairman still smiled like a superior, too bad. I don't feel like it's enough. Du Jun was surprised and said to himself, he still won't agree after all this? I'm angry with myself. I gritted my teeth and said, I'm greedy for your sake. I'm not even worthy of your shoes. Could it be, he really doesn't intend to give me Sun Yang Moto? Or is the test still not over? Du Jun continued, I have acquired 10% of all shares of subsidiaries that Sun Yen Moto owns. Just by placing a moto like that, I will be heavier. The old man was shocked. Are you saying that we should split Sun Yen Moto? Du Jun answered, eight subsidiaries including a Chin Moto and Sun Yen Moto. We have another bigger car company. They were really shaken by what Du Jun said. What was Du Jun observing? His expression looked at me with more longing and desire. He had to find out what it was. Only then could this negotiation end successfully. Du Jun secretly thought of an unrealistic reason. Then he raised his eyebrows and continued, isn't it too hasty to announce that Sun Yen Motor will split completely and merge with a Chi Moto? If that happens, the stock price of Sun Yen Motor will drop sharply. Just by announcing the branch separation. The chairman was very surprised and did not expect this kid to think of this idea. Du Jun continued, when the stock price hits bottom, I will buy it under a different name. The chairman was eager and impatient to hear the next outcome. Du Jun calmly said, after taking over and merging with Achimoto, for various reasons, the division of subsidiaries will be considered as never happened. Everything will strengthen the dominance of Sun Yen Group. It is possible to merge the entire Sun Yen Group and Achimoto Group. The chairman started to sweat. Then there must be many investors who are avoiding it, right? Du Jun was still calm. A big carriage was moving, and there were ants running on the wheels. We can't avoid them one by one. The chairman asked, for example, the shares of Sun Yen Moto that you bought, will you also become one of the major shareholders of Sun Yen? Du Jun smiled and replied, that's not an easy gift, sir. If the stock price goes up, you will make money and don't have to pay taxes. The chairman smiled very happily after hearing this. This guy is really gutsy, he became a bad guy when he was young. Du Jun panicked because he didn't know what he meant by that. After a second of thinking, he calmed down and smiled. He succeeded. Then the chairman told his subordinates, I intend to buy a kin group. 
the two subordinates were very surprised and couldn't believe their ears. They both looked at the chairman with the eyes of this old man as crazy. The secretary thought to himself, I knew something important happened, but I didn't expect it to be this when he called me in the middle of the night. He immediately said, Chairman, Achimoto has already leaned towards Daehyun. We don't have time to prepare now, and we don't have money either. Another one chimed in, moreover, if we jump in while the battle is almost over, it's too late. The chairman calmly said, we will just step in a little bit. That foot is, then he called the secretary's name. It scared him. The two subordinates looked at each other in confusion and didn't understand why the chairman said that. The chairman continued, if fantasy buys the group, Achimoto will merge with Sun Yen Motor. That's what you need to do. In our group, only Sun Yen Motor can be taken out and combined with Achimoto. The two car companies will have a new start and the CEO of that car company is Zhu Che Ho. At this time, the one standing next to him couldn't help but say, Chairman, even if we do anything to adjust the merger ratio of the two companies, the largest shareholder will still be Fantasy. The chairman said, Sihuna Fantasy has backed off because if he continues like this, he will become a dog chasing chickens. We will create a new car company and transfer it to our Sun Yen. What I mean is to wrap it up nicely. At this time, the secretary asked further, what about fantasy? The chairman replied, anyway, they are just speculators, so they decided to take care of the expensive wrapping paper. We will find out the position of the chairman, but don't worry about that. So, Zhu Chun Ho, please prepare to go. The next day, on a beautiful day at Si Hun's building, Si Hun asked, finally, isn't he the one who will leave Sun Yanmoto to his grandson? Du Jun answered, No, sir, it's still not certain. He is not that easygoing. Si Hun said again, Why leave the motorcycle out and get involved with Achimoto, then it's yours. He also knows that fantasy is yours. Du Jun still has the merger ratio. But if he doesn't give in at that time, the owner will change. Si Hun asked incredulously, what are you talking about again? What do you mean by accepting the merger? Du Jun replied, Uncle, that grandfather is not someone who takes your things and then passes them on to you. But he will take everything and then share a little bit. Si Hun didn't know what to say when he heard that the chairman was so cruel. And Du Jun thought that Si Hun would never know the true face of his grandfather, who was Chairman Jean. His ambition was more important than blood. If he didn't have such ambition, he wouldn't have been able to establish Sun Yen. Si Hun asked further, has the merger ratio ended? Just then Du Jun answered, not yet, sir. We will discuss that after we acquire a chin. Then he stood up and said, I will handle that problem myself, so don't worry. After saying this, Du Jun also went to the high window and looked down. He started to calculate a new plan to play with his cunning grandfather. When the target for acquisition was selected and the merger procedure was carried out, it was also the time when the cold winter came. A harsh winter that had never been seen in history. By the time both Sun Yen De Hyun and the government had no end and only knew how to walk, he would have no choice but to accept my proposal. Then I will give him a glass of wine and he will have to accept it gratefully. Du Jun secretly calculated that tomorrow he would hold a press conference. Sun Yen Motor would become a completely independent company, separate and we would merge with Achi Moto to ensure the role of a car manufacturing company. The reporters hurriedly took pictures and recorded every word of the speaker. The chairman's legal subordinates were still sitting and listening. Si Hun said, So I want to tell you that our fantasy is not just speculative capital. He continued, we will do our best to upgrade the Korean automobile industry to a new level. At this time, there was chaos below. I have a question, what is the relationship between Fantasy and Sun Yen? Director Zhu Che Ho? Then what about Sun Yen in the future? A noisy scene of chaos was happening. And then another remote control went away. The chairman De Hyun was furious. He shouted at his subordinates, 
How come no one knows about this? Didn't you install someone to follow Song Huen Trang and Si Hun? A subordinate stood up and reported, until last night, they didn't have any special movements, sir. The chairman got even angrier, not seeing anything doesn't mean there is nothing. How many phone calls did it take for them to meet and come to an agreement like this? Even if they met, they must have met more than ten times already. What are you guys doing? He was angry and his blood rushed to his head as he spoke. Then he continued, we didn't know about the surprise attacks until now. Now each of you tell me what we should do to salvage the situation. After he said that, the crowd just looked at each other in silence and didn't dare to say anything. Then the chairman scolded them for being blind, now you don't know what to do and you don't say anything? The subordinates started to look at each other in slow motion and didn't dare to utter a word. Then the chairman ordered, from now on, we will give everyone two hours to find all the possible solutions to reverse the situation. Mobilize all the relatives of the Fang family to start lobbying comprehensively. He shouted angrily like a monster. Even if you are level 9 bank employees, don't complain but add pressure. That morning at the chairman's mansion, his nephew rushed in and shouted dad loudly. Then he yelled, this can't be happening. The chairman calmly said first sit down and have a drink with me. But the nephew was still furious and said how can you throw away the motorcycle company like that? What are you regretting? The chairman still sat in his place and said I don't have any regrets, so I threw away everything I was holding in my heart. I threw it all over there and erased it. The nephew was even more angry and said how can you not say a word to me? That was a big issue in arranging the branch of the group but I had to watch TV to find out. How could you do that? He screamed is that all you are? Your vice chairman title is just a name, right? That's so shameful. The chairman looked at his son who was fuming. The nephew continued until now, Director Jun Che Ho has brought me all the documents. He personally announced the merger with Sun Yan Motor. Think about how much he smiled after getting your approval. He became more angry and said don't you think I'm a fool? Then the chairman discovered more and said are you done? The nephew suddenly got asked by his father what's going on. The chairman continued if you have vented your anger and sadness, then you have to move on to the next part. But the nephew still didn't understand anything. The chairman asked is your purpose just to vent your anger? Hearing the chairman say that, the nephew frowned more and shouted you think your son is rude. The chairman slammed his hand on the table, it must have hurt a lot. The chairman also yelled at his son's face enough, enough, you have to stop this. At this point, he realized that he had misspoken and stood still like a mute husband who didn't dare to yell anymore. Now it was the chairman's turn to scold him for being ashamed of his vice chairman title and what else, a fool. If you are ashamed of your vice chairman title of Sun Yen Group, then quit. The nephew hurriedly called his father, Father, please calm down. But the chairman still scolded him the title that you are ashamed of is something that all Koreans would fight like a devil to pick up. The chairman pointed at his son and scolded him everything you did was because you were born and are my son. Because it's a lucky title that you got, you don't know its value? At this time, he quickly explained, it's not what you think, sir. But the chairman was still angry and said, what do you mean? You are over 40 years old and you have received the title of vice chairman. But if you are not my son, you would just stand still and let me scold you from then until now. The chairman asked again, do you think you can even touch the position of director? He was stunned and speechless like a plant. He was ashamed because his father hid his sore spot. Then, the father and son slow motion like an Indian movie. A little later, the next day at the corporation, the director was talking to his subordinates, keep an eye on Du Jun. He is playing the role of a messenger between Seoul and our chairman. He also knew about the recent merger from the beginning. The two subordinates heard the instructions but did not understand anything. One of them asked quickly, so, will the air position go to Du Jun? The director glanced at him and thought to himself, it's not certain that it's not like that. 
The chairman has liked that kid since he was young, but he did not stop him from going to law school. With his achievements, he could definitely be the top student of S University. If he needs a lawyer or a prosecutor, he can just pay for it. But I heard that he did not study properly, and what my father wants is to have a flower to show off and be proud of how smart and good his grandson is. He only expects that much from Dujun, maybe to make the house brighter. If he wanted him to join the corporation, he would have sent him to the business department already. Hearing that, the subordinate asked, but why did he assign Dujun to see Huna Fantasy? He is just a decoration. The director smiled and answered. Because he can be used and also thrown away. He has discovered the talent of that talented kid who can make money with money. Maybe he can take over the financial part of the corporation from insurance to credit cards. He continued, don't worry too much anyway. This war will end as quickly as before in one go. Now just build your reputation step by step without making any mistakes. If you suddenly stand out, it will ruin the plan. Then he asked his two subordinates, is the stock price of Sunyan Motor dropping right now? The subordinate answered hastily, yes, the smart ones have already pulled out. The director instructed, when it hits bottom, buy it back without splitting branches. The subordinate asked why, clearly they said they would split branches. The director said cunningly, my father is not someone who will throw away what he built with his own hands. If he can regain his old position, the stock price will rise and the corporation's control will increase. He warned them, be prepared and don't make any mistakes at this time. The two subordinates answered quickly, yes sir. The next day at a lavish dinner party, Du Jun was enjoying his luxurious dinner. Sitting opposite him was his rich curly-haired cousin. He asked him about the merger of Sun Yan Motor. Did you know about it beforehand? Du Jun wondered how this guy could say such things from his mouth. And he couldn't hide his expression either. At times like this, he had to attack directly. Thinking that, Du Jun agreed. He had known a day before the announcement on TV. Why is that? His annoyed cousin asked. How did you know? Du Jun answered while eating, Oh, no, the director in Soul of Fantasy asked me to propose to my grandfather, and he also gave me a detailed plan for the merger. His cousin got angry and slammed the table. Why did he ask you to do that? He just had to meet grandfather directly. But Du Jun replied, Brother, the group is watching every move of director Si Hoon. If Director O met Grandfather directly, they would know. Du Jun thought that it didn't seem like anything special. But why did this guy know? Or was it not him but someone else who followed him? His cousin frowned and asked, Is that all? Du Jun calmly answered, What else? Do I have to say more? At this point, his cousin got even more annoyed. Don't you understand what I mean? I'm asking if you only delivered the documents this time. Du Jun pretended to wipe his mouth and thought. Why did this guy suddenly become so suspicious? He never doubted that his father would become the owner of the group and he accepted his luck of being born. But maybe it was the daughter of Han Sung newspaper who urged him. He didn't know everything about his youth, but Ji Young Chun never married into a media family. His ex-wife was the daughter of director Sun Yen, a very obedient company. Seeing his younger brother thinking for a long time, his cousin shouted, Don't you want to talk clearly? Du Jun pretended to be scared. You scared me. Why did you yell like that? At this point, his cousin reluctantly sat down. Du Jun saw him sit down and sighed with relief. Then he said, Actually, there is a secret contract between Grandfather and Director Si Hoon, but I can't tell anyone. That's also the truth. I can't tell anyone before the official announcement. His cousin heard that and got angry. Anyone? Am I an outsider? Am I a stranger? Du Jun enjoyed looking at him and thought. Should I make him more annoyed? Thinking that, he said, you are an outsider. Don't you know that Young Chun has no power now? His cousin heard that and yelled at Du Jun's face. 
Du Jun still calmly said, What can I do? The contract with grandfather and director Si Hoon can't be known by anyone. Even uncle or manager Lee Hat Che don't know. And only those two know. Do you think you have more power than them? His cousin was already angry and now he felt more irritated. He asked, Don't you remember what I said? Du Jun asked back, Do you mean you want me to be your right hand? That's right. It's not an empty promise. Next year, I will move out. If you graduate from college, you will become the executive director and the general manager of business. He continued. At that time, he will leave me a place next to him. But Du Jun said that Young Chun is not a child anymore. He is not a fool who only believes in the fragile promises of the future. His cousin couldn't believe that this kid dared to talk nonsense like that today. He sat still and opened his eyes wide like Sun Goku, looking at his cousin. Du Jun continued, the merger announcement this time was carried out without even your uncle knowing. Even though he is the vice president of the group. His cousin was angry. What are you talking about? Du Jun still continued, you don't know that the inheritance structure of your uncle is not completed yet. It means that it can be broken at any time if the grandfather changes a little bit. His cousin heard that and shouted angrily, so what? Is the reason you refuse to be my right-hand man because you want to stick to your grandfather to find an opportunity? You and me, I mean, do you want to compete with my father? Du Jun calmly replied, you don't have to frown so much. From my perspective, I'm just observing. Anyway, the youngest is just the youngest. I don't have any affinity with Sun Yen group, so I don't have any ambition. And to be honest, there is nothing to regret. It seems a bit arrogant, but if I study hard, I will pass the judicial exam in two years. I'm very confident, you know I'm very good at studying. His cousin asked, so what? Du Jun continued, being a prosecutor or a judge or something like that, I can scream and enjoy life, get social treatment without worrying about money. And do you know, my father is very famous in the film industry. Just reach out and the beautiful actresses will come to me. The third generation prosecutor of a Chable group, the son of the director of a film company. Is there any girl who will refuse this title? Du Jun boasted. His cousin heard that and was so angry that he wanted to spit blood, but he couldn't do anything. He asked, so you're going to kick Jun Young out of the group? But Du Jun smiled and said, who said I'm going to kick him out? At this time, Du Jun suddenly became serious and continued, if he was the leader, I might try once, but now Young Chun is not the leader. But his cousin had been ridiculed by this kid for a long time and only sat there angrily. He said, if I become the leader, maybe I won't let you stay by my side. You know we have many cousins and you never know when the stock of Sun Yang group will be broken by them. Du Jun heard that and sneered in his heart. Because of his pride, he still dared to threaten me. He replied, I told you there is nothing to regret. Now just keep what my family has and it's enough to make others jealous. He thought that the story should end here. He had scratched his inside and convinced him that he had no ambition near his house. Thinking so, he continued, to be honest, being the youngest in a Chable family is much more comfortable. My brother Shang Jun dropped out of college and went to study at New DOC Art School. He doesn't cling to things he can't do. His cousin was very surprised when he heard him say that, but Du Jun calculated in his heart that he just needed to lower his survival seat of distrust and insecurity. Thinking so, he said, you only said one right thing. The eldest uncle, the second uncle, the aunties all have a lot of ambition. It's not easy at all. They won't let Sun Yen group fall into your hands. His cousin was annoyed and replied, You think I don't know that? Anyway, my father will handle everything. My family is not just sitting and watching. Then, as he was speaking, he seemed to realize something. He looked at Du Jun and voiced his suspicion. You don't mean the secret contract you know is related to the inheritance structure, do you? 
At this point, even his cousin was quite shocked by his own thoughts. Meanwhile, at the chairman's house, the conversation between him and his eldest son was still not over. At this time, the eldest nephew only stood silently as if waiting for his husband in front of his father. He said, Father, you are really outrageous. The chairman heard this and became even more furious. Outrageous? You should look at your own actions like a fool. How can you still talk to me like this now? The chairman said. After saying that, the father looked at his eldest son and then thought for a while. He sighed and calmed down. The chairman continued, Sanki, I understand that you are angry when you learn the truth through TV, but that was to pass through public opinion. So you should think about what will happen in the future, what preparations need to be supplemented and implemented for the real benefits that our group will get from the merger. That is what a vice chairman like you should do, not be angry like this. After saying that, the chairman gently stretched out his old hands behind him. After a moment of anger, he put his hand on his eldest son's shoulder as if to comfort him. Then the chairman said, Sanji, you only need to work ten minutes with others to get this position. Don't act rashly, just think about the future of the group and use all your strength to develop and protect the group. That is all you have to do. The eldest nephew heard his father say that and could only bow his head and obey. The chairman still stood still patting his eldest son's shoulder. Then he mocked himself that he was over 47 years old but still had to comfort his grown-up son. A morning at Sun Yen Group was like any other morning. A subordinate was reporting that two days ago Du Jun had gotten into Si Hun's car right after Li Che's manager and Chu Che Ho's director had arrived. The speaker showed a picture and continued, Du Jun left before those two arrived. The director took the picture and looked at it for a while. In the picture were three old men shaking hands with each other. Then he kept staring at the picture as if looking at an ex-lover's photo. Having looked, he asked, it's clear that my brother wasn't there, right? The subordinate replied, yes, right after watching the speech on TV, he rushed to the chairman's house and into the reading room. There was a loud noise, but I don't know exactly what they talked about. The director laughed and said, without looking, I know. Given his personality, he must have been whining to dad. He doesn't know anything beyond that. At this point, the subordinate asked the director, is it certain that Si Hoon proposed a merger of positions? But why did the chairman easily agree to it, and even accept it in just one day? The director replied, perhaps it's a script my father had prepared from the beginning. Since taking over Hanistel, Si Hoon has already started showing his intentions. The subordinate speculated, fantasy might indeed be our chairman's disguise. The director, smiling, mentioned Jin Der Jun even though I am over 30 years old, he is a threat. Fortunately, he is the youngest. And luckily, the eldest, Young Chun, is just a fool. At this moment, the cousin and Du Jun were still in conversation. In the luxurious room, he looked at Du Jun as if wanting to speak, then stopped. Du Jun also silently waited to see what he would say. Then he spoke up, could it be possible, or not? Hearing this, the cousin shouted in his face. Du Jun, annoyed, asked, are you raising your voice at me? Don't you understand why? Suddenly, the cousin became as gentle as a rabbit. He said, sorry. Then he buttered up Du Jun. Think about it. As the eldest son of this house, how can I just sit around and be kicked out like this? Du Jun replied, in royal succession, peace comes when it's inherited by the eldest and their sons. If a second or third son inherits, there's always bloody purging. In order, it's your turn after catching the fish. That's why I want to take the chairman's position at Sun Yen Group. Du Jun smiled and said, that way, my family won't suffer any losses. Suddenly, the cousin happily and triumphantly responded, of course. Then he pretended to be wise, indeed, our Du Jun knows something. But he doesn't realize that this guy is just pretending to be dangerous, he doesn't really know anything. Du Jun pretended to sigh heavily, as if troubled. 
He then asked further, in the merger with Sunyan Motor, the stocks of the subsidiary owned by Sunyan Motor will be transferred to another subsidiary, right? That subsidiary will become important in the group, correct? The cousin, also pretending to be wise, replied, right. Du Jun asked, what would happen if someone other than the eldest uncle took over that company? Du Jun didn't answer immediately. He thought that if he thought more carefully, he could understand the truth, but it wasn't a big secret. He continued, that's the entire title of the contract I saw. It was a plan for restructuring the management of the corporation. The cousin was shocked, as if struck by lightning. Restructuring the management? Why? Du Jun then told his brother, I've tried to help you as much as I can. Now, it's up to the eldest uncle and you to protect it. The cousin replied superficially, aha, but he was confused inside, as he was just a rich kid without much knowledge. Du Jun looked at him with a sense of triumph. He remembered the cruel family and thought about Sundank Motors. The hidden claws of each of them would gradually be revealed. Let's see whose claws are the sharpest at this moment, he thought, referring to the busy author. Not knowing what else to draw, he just kept drawing the corporation of Si Hoon, who was looking at his own pictures and news in the newspaper. Then, the old man said, it has finally come to this. We are the acquirer, but I'm worried that we'll be pulled into Sun Yen. Du Jun, who always drank a box of banana milk whenever he came here, asked. When will we make the payment for the acquisition? Si Hoon put down the newspaper, hearing the young man talking to himself. After the merger, 1.2 trillion won should be transferred, so we have to transfer 1 billion dollars. So, the earliest would be next year, right? Si Hoon said. You should ask your uncle about that. If the merger procedures are completed, the shortest time would be by the end of the year. In total, it's 3.2 billion dollars. Now, the exchange rate is 1.1001, but it's more than 3.5001 now. Du Jun, while drinking his banana milk, asked, how much is the tied-up amount? His uncle replied, 600 million dollars, as you said. This year, I'm just managing money without new investments. 600 million dollars will also be recovered next year. Du Jun finished his milk, chewed on the straw, and thought about it. The contingency plan is also good. I've exhausted my memory and returned with an investment a hundred times over. What would happen if a Wall Street fund manager were reincarnated instead of an ordinary person like me? Wouldn't someone like that end up being the richest person in the world? Why is Si Hoon speaking up now? First, I'll transfer one billion dollars so I can pay at any time. Du Jun intervened, no, just leave it. Anyway, it won't be paid until the end of the year. His uncle, hearing him say that, didn't understand what the young man was planning. He was startled and replied, did you realize that the increase in the exchange rate is a bit strange, isn't it? Du Jun answered, isn't everyone eagerly ignoring it? Didn't you see the dollar rising like the tide, jumping 251 in a month? Si Hoon felt a chill and asked, isn't it supposed to be more stable towards the end of the year? Du Jun thought it was not just the observant ones but also the ones asking absurd questions. Everyone seemed to think so, trying to hide the approaching storm due to the bankruptcy of major corporations and the strong winds of the presidential election. Du Jun explained to his uncle, there's a difference between an increasing exchange rate and the depreciation of the dollar. If the dollar falls while you hold 10 billion won, doesn't that money become useless? Compared to 10 billion won on a deserted island, isn't a loaf of bread still more valuable? Si Hoon, terrified, asked, are you saying that even with money, you can't buy bread? Are you talking about the dollar? Du Jun looked at his foolish foster uncle and replied, yes. I know the IMF crisis will explode soon. By then, you won't be able to find a single dollar. Si Hoon asked again, what if the exchange rate keeps rising? Do you plan to buy back in dollars? Du Jun calmly answered, I'm planning to negotiate. Surprised, Si Hoon asked, 
Negotiate what? Du Jun replied, to buy back a kin corporation with the condition of paying in dollars. I intend to wrap it up quickly. Si Hoon was dumbfounded, not understanding what he was talking about. Then he realized and laughed, right, what do you do with a gold bar? I was shallow-minded, trading a gold bar for a life jacket. The dollar is like human blood, without it flowing, people die. Whoever holds the blood bag for transfusion can easily take the gold bar from the collapsing person. Si Hoon smiled and said, when the country's foreign reserves hit rock bottom, will you become the savior, Du Jun? Du Jun just smiled. It's not me but the uncle of Fantasy Company. Hearing this, Si Hoon smirked in a chilling way. He asked, is it because you're young that you don't want to show up, or do you have something to hide? Du Jun countered, if you had one trillion in this world, what would you do? Give out gifts and bribes? Would the world's heirs agree to that? Si Hoon asked, so, will people be wary of you? Du Jun smiled, that's part of it. Hearing this, his uncle still smiled benevolently. He continued, all right, now I'll be your horse. Just pull the reins and swing, do as you like. But time is running short, I'm already fifty. If it's long, then five years from now. Even if you manage directly, you'll have to find someone. What's in it for me? Du Jun was astonished, unable to believe his uncle dared to say that. At that moment, Si Hoon pointed at Du Jun and said, I've been by your side for five years, treating you like my own grandson. I want to retire now and wait to live on a deserted island. He leaned back in his chair with a satisfied smile. Meanwhile, Du Jun just stood still, looking at his uncle. Aside from money, he didn't know what to say, just lucky. The author then depicted the evening at the Sun Yen Corporation building. The uncle was listening to his son reporting something. He asked, what is it? Seeing his uncle's rage, he slammed his hand on the table, probably hurting a lot. He thought, clearly, my father came to pat my back and promised me a position in the office, but he changed the board of directors behind my back. Whispering sweet words while secretly hiding his son. Ending the day, the uncle said, so? If the motorcycle has to split, then we need a little change. The entire framework might shake, but there's no need to worry too much. His son asked, but, dad, if the shares of the motorcycle are transferred. The uncle, angrily, I said it's fine. I'll know how to handle the production, not just focus on normalizing it. Don't miss this opportunity and show me your capability. His son, not daring to say anything, just said, I understand, dad, and quickly ran out the door, bowing. Now alone in the room, the uncle fell into deep thought. He turned and vented his anger on the landline phone. What era is this to still use such an outdated phone? Angrily, he shouted into the phone, planning department, all gather, meet me right now. After finishing his sentence, he violently threw his phone down, as if he wanted to smash it. He thought to himself, Dad, before you make such bizarre decisions, I need to sprint to the finish line. Then Secretary Chun went to a room where his older brother welcomed him eagerly, asking, I hope I'm not disturbing you while you're busy. He replied, No matter how busy, one must make time to have a meal with the chairman. Ha, ah, brother, just sit down and relax. I'm still confused. If Su Young collaborates with Achen, who benefits more? Of course, Dad did this very well, the secretary said, smiling, agreeing with him. He was also quite perplexed by how quickly things were happening. Seeing the secretary like this, his brother felt annoyed. Was this all just an act? Then the younger brother asked, if they split, Director Chu will no longer have any ties with Su Young. That makes me really sad. The secretary, finding the young man too naive, asked bluntly, Are you really confused, or are you testing me? If it's the latter, then it's truly absurd. The chairman's son was taken aback. Indeed, his suspicions were not wrong. But it wasn't about handing over to Achimoto, it was about swallowing Achimoto whole. 
The director quickly smiled and said, What are you saying this morning? Are you probing me? It's just a precaution. Hearing this, the secretary glanced at him and said, I have been with the chairman for over 35 years. In all that time, I only opposed him once. Do you know what it was? Of course, he didn't know. What an inappropriate question, the man thought to himself. He said, it was when we started the oil business in the Middle East. War broke out, and the supply of crude oil was always in a state of emergency. The chairman and I flew to Tetzak to sign a contract for crude oil. Tetzak was done hastily. After driving on an endless highway, we stepped into a steakhouse. That day was so hot that it exhausted me, and I didn't want to eat anything. The chairman ordered a steak and shared it with me. The smallest portion there was 600 grams. He craved it so much that he remembered it. At this point, the director also reminisced about Southern American steaks, weighing in at 300 grams, but the secretary replied, I objected. I wanted one plate each. The director then asked, so you didn't want to share any more? The secretary cunningly replied, exactly. The director thought to himself, I thought he was telling an important story. Is he joking with me now? Then suddenly, the director understood, ah, not liking to share the meat means not agreeing with the split. He then said, Director Chu may not like sharing, but I can't bear to leave it because it's too much to eat all at once. Hearing this, the secretary replied, both the chairman and I finished it all. It seemed like a lot, but I ate it all. You won't know if you don't try. 600 grams isn't that much. The director was taken aback, his face paled, and he began to ponder. The old-style business contributors, although they were just salaried employees, still cherished the Sue Young Corporation as if it were a family heirloom. When the owner of the chariot changes, both the driver and the people change, but they constantly worry about whether the chariot will break down. They are by nature horse beaters, but to get a chariot, one needs a charioteer. Afterwards, the director pretended to be casual and asked, Director Chu, you seem to be eating quite well, aren't you? The secretary started, Now, I can't eat like that. I'm getting old. But I still feel healthy, so I think I'm not that old yet. The cunning director said, If you finish, you'll get a 600 gram steak as a gift. At this point, Secretary Chu was slightly annoyed because this guy kept calling him director this and that. He spoke up affectionately and called out, Donkey. The director, feigning respect, replied, Yes, Secretary. Secretary Chu sternly responded, Yes, Secretary. Vice President Di Chun is his biological older brother and also the eldest son. You don't have a share in this, the, the director is angry. You know very well that Chani doesn't have any special talent. Secretary Chu calmly replied, You have the ability to stay by his side and help, but the director was still very annoyed. Why not let him stay by your side to support you? Secretary Chu calmly answered, How can someone without ability help someone with ability? It's useless. The director called out again, Brother? But Secretary Chu firmly stated, I can't envision a scenario where an older brother helps a younger brother. It's impossible. He will surely be eliminated soon. The director, trying to flatter, said quickly, I will arrange for Chani to be in the subsidiary company, and we will manage each one separately. However, Secretary Chu just listened and was not swayed. He said, even though I'm just a farmer for the Sunyan Corporation, I am proud to have contributed to the development of this land. I don't want to see it torn apart. But the director was still gritting his teeth, determined not to be hindered. Having revealed his true nature, he had to see it through. Thinking this, the director, whenever he thought about it, was confident that he could make this land more fertile, confidently reclaim the land, try, and turn it into a larger plain. Isn't this the vision you see? Secretary Chu just quietly listened and then replied, the chairman is not the one who decides and nurtures the successor. 
the secretary spoke directly to the director, the chairman's son, don't even dream about it. The director was surprised, I haven't been sleeping, so how could I be dreaming? What do you mean by no decision rights? The secretary continued, maybe that day he will consider and continuously evaluate until the day before his death. Perhaps he will announce the successor of the Sunyan Corporation at the end of his will. The director, angry, asked, does it mean that if we don't prepare for succession in advance, we will have to pay taxes? You didn't see that coming. Secretary Chu calmly said, compared to taxes, the future of the corporation is a much bigger concern. The chairman's son, the director, grew angrier day by day. He got mad, stood up, and yelled, so what is Director Chu's intention until now? Didn't it sound like Chunny would inherit everything? At this point, Secretary Chu, also tired, stood up and replied, that's just my opinion. Aren't you asking for my opinion? This time, the director was taken aback, realizing he had misspoken. He thought to himself, is this a warning? A warning not to underestimate the power of the one holding the reins of the chariot, not to dream of changing its owner. He knew that the opinions of people like Chun played a crucial role in the father's final decision. Thinking so, he still sneered and said, the battle hasn't even started yet, but I'll remember this. Hearing this, the secretary just smiled and walked away without saying anything more. At this point, the author paints the scene of a morning at someone's house. It was not yet known who the man wearing glasses sitting at the desk was, looking up. He asked, what brings you here? The second son of the chairman replied, what's so surprising about this guy not being able to come? At that moment, the father, wearing glasses, hurriedly came to shake hands with the second son. Have you ever visited here before, fifteen years ago? The second son of the chairman was also surprised wondering how it had already been fifteen years. The man with glasses still smiled and replied, it's amazing how time has flown. The second son fell silent for a minute. As he reminisced about his youth, the man with glasses asked, but I heard you made a lot of money. What's with this appearance? The second son dismissed the rumor, saying, even if I did make money, I couldn't do it like you. Suddenly, the man felt uncomfortable and said, I look so uneasy. Tomorrow, I will send someone to expand the director's office. Dress more appropriately. The man with glasses refused, saying, I can't, I still have debts to pay. The second son was extremely surprised. You too? Could it be you? But the man with glasses waved it off, don't be so surprised. I didn't intentionally use the company's bonds. I started this business with the money from selling the farm. Don't you know? Speaking of which, it turns out this grandfather with glasses is the father of that kid, right? Why does he look so worn out now, I wonder? The older brother replied, Ah, I remember now. The man with glasses, Nam's father, pretends not to care about money. He says it needs to be repaid. The older brother too laughed and replied, only now do I realize that it's not just about making money, immediate repayment, including interest, is necessary. Hearing this, Nam's father chuckled, let's not talk about that anymore. Forget it. What brings you here? The father of the second son, in a moment of confusion, couldn't answer. Then he suddenly asked Nam's father, Junkie, will you continue on this path? Junkie not understanding, asked, what do you mean? The older brother too, annoyed, replied, I'm asking if the movie at the cinema has ended yet. At this, Nam's father, also looking gloomy, asked, is there nothing to look forward to in the company? The older brother too, pretending to be confused, continued, yes, you and I, the son of yours. Suddenly mentioning the son startled the father, leaving him at a loss for words. The older brother became serious again and continued, I don't want to lose this youngest sibling. Then, the two grandfathers suddenly looked at each other with deep affection. The younger one, puzzled, asked the elder, what are you talking about? There's also the third brother. 
The second grandfather replied, he's no longer my brother. That guy is just an older brother in appearance. Hearing this, the father also fell into deep thought. The older brother anxiously asked, what does that mean? Do you also have your own ambitions? The younger brother replied, reflecting, it's not exactly ambition, but I think I'll try once, truly being a father. The older brother quickly asked, what do you think about Dujun? The younger brother replied, that kid, he aims to become an entrepreneur like our grandfather. This startled the older brother. The younger one quickly waved his hands, saying, oh, don't misunderstand. He has no intention of starting from an affiliate of the conglomerate. He wants to build it with his own hands. Hearing this, the older brother felt that these two were really daydreaming. The younger brother had spoken, and he also resolved to support Du Jun to the best of his ability. The older brother asked, what does that have to do with the company? The younger brother, folding his arms, answered, even though I am the youngest son, I also share blood with Chairman Su Yan of the conglomerate. I won't refuse what you offer, but if you don't offer anything, I will just take my share. The older brother, feeling a headache, replied, you'll take your share? He suddenly realized something and fell silent. The father of the protagonist continued to ask, suddenly you act like this. I guess something happened on your side? The older brother, frustrated and stunned, hastily replied, it's not that. He then stood up and said, you just need to stand by my side. If I win, I will prepare the capital to fulfill Du Jun's dream. But the younger brother stubbornly asked, and what if the eldest brother wins? At that moment, the older brother answered, then you will have to fight with the eldest to become a true C. Hearing this, the father of the protagonist remained silent and said no more. At this point, the older brother stood up, stared intently at the photo of the male and female leads of the movie Titanic on the wall, and asked in confusion, what is this movie? What is Titanic? The younger brother still replied, ah, that movie. Our company will release it next year. We are currently looking for a theme to showcase. The kind-hearted older brother said, let me know if there's anything. If the tickets don't sell, I will buy them all. Hearing this, the younger brother was overjoyed and quickly responded, thank you for the offer. As the night grew late at the protagonist's house, the father looked at the couple in front of him and asked, did you two come to see me at this hour just to borrow money? Looking at them, he continued with a headache, what is going on, really? You visit in the morning, and then something happens at home in the evening that I missed, right? Did the shopping mall director come to borrow money from the short-term company director? Is a day at the shopping center only worth the profit of a single movie, he asked. Hearing this, the sister felt a bit embarrassed. She said, when father took over Hondu, he took all the cash, and now all the money at the department store has been frozen. I have been reporting the expenses and withdrawing money from my father. The younger brother, hearing this, was shocked. Did my sister cause some trouble again? The sister, looking at her husband, angrily replied, it's all his fault. Father has locked our accounts because this man wants to become the mayor of Seoul. Even the money from the shopping center, I can't touch. The younger brother was utterly shocked. Mayor of Seoul? Really? The sister continued, I heard that you received something big this year, right? Don't you have some money too? But the younger brother replied, How much can a successful Korean movie make? Do you know how much it costs? 60,000 soldiers and 6,000 cavalry, 670,000 viewers, so it's only 4 billion won gone. That's without considering the distribution company's fees and production costs. The younger sibling shouted at the couple, saying, when discussing matters, please try to say something that makes sense. The brother-in-law, upon hearing the sum of money, scoffed and stood up, saying, pretend as if you haven't heard anything. After he spoke, the couple also stood up and left, probably realizing that the father was very poor. The younger sibling had a headache, as despite being lovely all morning, they were constantly bothered about money. 
At that moment, when the sisters' couple was sadly walking out to the yard, the main character, who had just returned home, saw this and exclaimed, Oh, uncle! Politely, what are you two doing here at this hour? Seeing her handsome and wealthy nephew, the aunt emotionally exclaimed, Do June, let's overlook this scene as the author didn't write it. Fast forward to the scene where the main character enters the house. Looking through the living room, he saw his father sitting. Du Jun called out, Dad. The father replied, Du Jun, come here and talk to your dad for a bit. Du Jun responded, Sorry for coming home late today. I'll come back earlier tomorrow. But the father answered, I don't have the strength to enforce a curfew on a grown man. He continued, This afternoon, Uncle Song Ki came, and in the evening, your aunt stopped by. Du Jun replied, I just met Auntie outside the house. The father gently took a sip of his coffee and said nothing more. Du Jun felt uneasy, wondering what was going on. At that moment, the father finished his coffee in one gulp and said, It's clear you're my son, but why don't you resemble me at all? Hearing this, the main character was startled, wishing he could split into his past and present selves. He felt proud of his artistic ability and thought, I'm bored with managing money but my son has a talent for investing. How can we be so different? The main character panicked, thinking, why is dad saying this all of a sudden? Did he notice that I'm not the real Du Jun? Seeing his son's stunned expression, the father asked, why do you look so surprised? Du Jun pretended to be calm and replied, I don't know what to say. The father looked at his handsome and wealthy son and smiled happily, saying, actually, I had already heard about it from Seoul. The main character was startled, not knowing what his father had heard. The father continued, My son has assets worth over 3 trillion won and bought the Akin conglomerate, owning the real investment company controlling Hollywood. Du Jun remembered the annoying old man Si Hoon and wondered what he had said. Du Jun thought they were close when they were young and relied on each other in a foreign land. It would be strange for the father not to reveal the secret of his dear friend's son. The father looked at the main character and laughed, saying, My expression is just like yours when I first heard about you from Seoul. Du Jun quickly bowed and apologized for not telling his father. But the father said, It's okay, I might not have believed it before. Would I believe that a high school student managed 20 billion won and spoke fluent English? Du Jun was scared that the father might realize he wasn't his real son. However, the father smiled and sincerely said, You're amazing. Du Jun's eyes teared up, it was the first time his father praised him. The father continued, I was shocked when I heard, but I felt proud and didn't say anything. I'm proud of how much money you've made and of your talents. The main character was deeply moved, being praised like this for the first time. The father affectionately asked, Du Jun, do you want to take over the Suyum conglomerate? The main character smiled and replied, It's just a tool to help me in the future, not my main goal. The father asked further, Then what is my son's dream? Du Jun straightened his back and replied, Our group surpasses even Su Young. He continued, If one wants to establish a company like that, they must have a company. Mother and I set it up from the beginning and I will buy the subsidiary of the Sun Yen Group. Of course, I also need branches of other major groups, not just in Sun Yen. The father, looking annoyed, asked, Is Sun Yen a small business that you can buy? Is it a supermarket near our house that you can purchase? At this point, the protagonist responded to his father, The inheritance of the conglomerate from my grandfather is not what I want. Should I just listen to people saying that I'm lucky to inherit just because I was born into a wealthy conglomerate? Hearing this, the father asked again, Do you intend to buy the best companies of Sun Yen? Du Jun calmly replied, If it's certain that it's the best gift, it's just a dream. Upon hearing his son's words, the father gave a sly smile and then said, In this case, I don't think I can help you. I have thought a lot about this. Du Jun expressed his surprise and wondered, why? The father continued, I have thought about how I can help you achieve your dream even once. If necessary, 
I will decide to use the legal rights of one of Chairman Du Jun's sons. Du Jun was confused by his father's words. What does he mean by the legal rights of a son? Suddenly, the father stood up, placed a hand on his son's shoulder, and said affectionately, Anyway, thank you. Even if the family is fractured, I still have to compete with your brothers. Maybe I will negotiate with some subsidiaries or request cash or shares. The protagonist was bewildered, wait, this is a situation I never thought of. While he was still frozen, the father had already gone to the stairs and said, I don't want to fight and compete because it's exhausting. It's late, I'm going to sleep. You should sleep too. At this moment, the protagonist suddenly called his father back, Dad, Dad, it's not like that. Wait a minute. Then Du Jun tried to be cute, please, Dad, talk a little more, but it was clear that the father wouldn't stay. The next day, at the parking lot of Chairman Du Jun's mansion, Du Jun wandered alone among the luxury cars and exclaimed, There are so many people here. Then he slowly walked up the large, long staircase of the chairman's house. In the chairman's study, it was stated that foreign currency should not be brought into the conglomerate not even a dollar, a yen, or a mark. We need to rearrange the hot money that is due to be paid abroad soon. The banks have no intention of opening up dollars, they are clamping down on them, the chairman listened silently to the report. Due to the increase in exchange rates, the foreign exchange profits were good. However, the process of converting to military currency was still stagnant. The secretary, standing beside, also looked at the chairman thoughtfully. Then he asked, Have you contacted the deputy prime minister yet? The chairman, visibly annoyed, replied, Have you ever called him? It was only then that the secretary said, He doesn't answer my calls. The chairman continued, He surely knows that your call is as good as mine. Say that he is planning to listen to calls from economists. The chairman, infuriated, asked, how much will we get if we liquidate all remaining funds within the conglomerate? The secretary reported, from now until the end of the year, if we make the payments, it will be over 400 billion won. Of course, due to the forex bottoming out, the conglomerate has lost a significant sum after acquiring Hanu. We still have to keep investing capital. The chairman, visibly angry while listening to the report, shouted, stop squandering money. We must immediately start collecting and convert all our holdings into dollars. The subordinates chimed in, though adjusting the price won't be effective. Everyone is lamenting the lack of dollars. The chairman, glaring at the person who dared to create chaos, was extremely furious, but a subordinate continued, there will surely be a special point, even if the exchange rate soars to 2,000 or even 3,001 per dollar. Due to the dollar shortage, it's impossible to find any. The chairman remained silent, just listening. Then, the meeting room fell into silence. No one dared to move, while the subordinates busily searched for something to do, like wiping sweat. At that moment, the secretary called out, Chairman of a King Group? The chairman, upon hearing this, yelled, What? Did they accumulate some dollars in a secret basement? The secretary clarified that it wasn't that but rather about a sum of one to two trillion won left from the acquisition. The chairman then remembered and was startled. He joyfully said, exactly, that money from fantasy, right? They hold it in dollars. The secretary happily responded, yes, we'll receive dollars and repay with one to two trillion won. The remaining deficit can be borrowed from a bank. We're only sure of dollars, not of funds. Moreover, we can issue Su Young bonds to acquire all the dollars that Fantasy owns. If we pay a higher interest rate than Fantasy's annual profit, it's entirely possible. A subordinate hurriedly asked Director Lai, they must also feel the crisis in their country. Just doubling the exchange rate can double their Forex profit. Would they be satisfied with the bond interest rate? The secretary answered, we have to offer one to two trillion in military terms of the exchange rate. I'm referring to the bond interest rate in dollars. Despite hearing such calculated planning, the
the subordinates were secretly pleased. The chairman, too, was extremely satisfied with this outcome. He laughed loudly and said, we can solve this issue. The subordinates, clueless about what had happened, just silently watched the chairman laugh. The chairman continued, because I'm very close to the owner of fantasy. The secretary quickly interrupted, Sihun isn't easy to deal with. Han understands the value of the dollars his company holds better than anyone. At this point, the chairman calmly asked, Sihun is the owner? He continued, I've said before, I'm close to fantasy's chairman Sihun. He's just a representative. The subordinates were stunned by the shocking news, their eyes wide open in disbelief. The chairman inquired about those looks, don't misunderstand, it's not my money. How could I earn so many dollars? It's because you all don't work hard that my pockets are empty, understand? The secretary, hearing this, could only stand aside, lamenting his own laziness. Then, the chairman, infuriated, slammed his hand painfully on the table. He might be hesitant to speak, but expel everyone out. Don't miss any of this advice. At this time, the whole group of slaves hurriedly stood up and were busy leaving. Only the secretary stayed, looking at the chairman with a doting look. Then, the secretary remained silent, bowed his head and did not say anything, then he politely turned around and went out. When he reached the door, he still held a grudge, because he could not say anything just now, only the chairman was laughing happily, because he had calculated some wicked plan. In the heads of the subordinates, they also happily left, knowing that the matter had been resolved, and the chairman would not scold them anymore. Du Jun sat on the sofa, waiting, watching the subordinates smile brightly, looking at them as if they had just returned from singing karaoke. Du Jun drank banana milk while thinking. Thought that he had heard about a meeting due to a crisis. He expected everyone to have serious faces, but it turned out to be quite cheerful. Could it be because Sun Yen, being at the top of finance, has a strong capital base? At that moment, the chairman unexpectedly welcomed them in a strangely enthusiastic manner. Oh, has the master arrived already? Du Jun, just stepping in, suddenly felt that this man seemed a bit mad, which startled him. The master? Could it be that he has appointed me as his successor in the urgent meeting? What happened earlier that made him act like this? The chairman called out gently, My grandson, you are not the master of fantasy. Hearing this, Du Jun realized that the chairman definitely had some ulterior motives. Chairman and spoke, Today, I am not meeting you as my grandson. Let's talk straightforwardly like two business owners. Du Jun quickly replied, Why are you suddenly saying this, sir? It's quite frightening. The chairman laughed mockingly, but you are already showing your true colors, and it's fascinating. Du Jun thought to himself, that's his expression, not mine. The fun belongs to those in a superior position, leaving no room for negotiation. Clearly, our ancestors were not in a superior position, but everyone had their secret cards. Mine were clear, but I still didn't know what his cards were. A foreign currency crisis was looming closer by the hour, by the minute. He seemed quite composed. At this moment, the chairman asked, Have you prepared enough money to buy a train yet? Du Jun feigned ignorance and answered, What else needs to be prepared? Just transferring money from the foreign account to the domestic one should be enough. The chairman happily responded, Of course, it has to be in dollars, right? Then Du Jun realized that it was indeed about preparing dollars for the foreign exchange crisis. He replied, yes, the money is in a U.S. bank, so it has to be in dollars. The old man and spoke, should I exchange it for 1.2 trillion won, right? He pretended to continue, the current exchange rate is about 1,200 won. Let's see, that's exactly 1 billion dollars, right? Du Jun also replied, Yes, that's correct. The old man enticed him to talk about tomorrow as well. Hearing this from the old man, Du Jun smiled cunningly. He calmly leaned back and replied, I don't like it. Chairman An, who had been flattering him till now, 
became extremely angry when his beloved grandson said this, What, do Jun? He continued, It seems too complicated. Why not just give the money directly to the bank for the loan? Why go round and round like this? Hearing this, the old man became even more infuriated and asked, Could it be that you? Du Jun laughed and said, I also have my own sources of information. The dollar is constantly rising, isn't it? Anyway, the merger of Achin Moto and Su Yang Moto must be completed before the lender signs the acquisition certificate. Then comes the payment step. From my standpoint, it's more beneficial to delay the payment. Chairman, sitting beside him, hearing his beloved grandson speak like this, wanted to throw him out. Then Du Jun thought, could it be that he thinks I'm too greedy? But the chairman was not only not angry but also laughed very happily. He said, that's right, you must be like this to be my grandson. The chairman excitedly laughed, now the story gets interesting. Du Zuan looked at his old grandfather, feeling sorry for him as he seemed quite confused. Nonetheless, Du Zuan still thought that he was a cunning man. The old man laughed to buy more time to think, then asked to adjust it to 1501. Grandpa, don't you think Du Jun should negotiate a bit more? The chairman asked with a smile. This little thief managed to get 1601, but Du Jun still isn't satisfied, he replied. It's still not enough. At that moment, the old man asked the boy, isn't the amount of dollars you have a lot of money, considering the farm we bought for you? Have you forgotten? But Du Jun answered, that was a deal made when I was young. I studied hard, scored 100 in all subjects, and brought joy to you. You rewarded me with a farm, right? I know you spent 10 million won to buy back the farm, but I think using that 10 million won to bring joy to you is also a fair deal. To you, those 10 million won are like 10,000 won to ordinary people, the old man said, scratching his head. Cunning boy, you remember everything, don't you? Du Jun smiled and replied, weren't you the one who brought up the story from 15 years ago? But the old man still smiled as if he had fallen into a trap. He decided to be straightforward. How much do you want? Let me hear it, Du Jun said. He sat up straight, pulled his chair closer to his grandfather, and affectionately called, Grandpa, if you want to use soon-to-be worthless money to buy dollars, which are more precious than gold, of course the scale will be unbalanced. Add something else to the scale. The chairman was alarmed, what do you mean worthless? Grandpa, how much do you think the exchange rate will rise to call it worthless, the chairman asked. Du Jun replied, if you can't find dollars due to scarcity, and you can't buy anything with money, isn't it just paper? If currency can't fulfill its role, isn't it just paper? Hearing his grandson's analysis, the old man's eyes widened in alarm. He placed his hand on his expensive wooden desk and tapped it cunningly. Seeing him silent, the protagonist also felt a bit nervous. He thought, did I attack too strongly? Seeing him deep in thought, he must have softened. Maybe I should support him with a reasonable amount of dollars. At that moment, Du Jun suddenly felt extremely happy, even though he was in a dominant position. He reminded himself not to lose this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for sentimentality. Meanwhile, the old man was still thinking and had been silent for a while. He placed his hand on his expensive wooden desk and was calculating something. Then he asked, how did you know our country is running out of dollars? Honestly, I learned it from the media, Du Jun replied. The chairman was startled. What do you mean, media? Du Jun answered, yes, the media is raising all the alarm signals. The story writers are trying to find solutions, but they also understand it's too late. The old man said, the media, of course, like sensational news. They are exaggerating. Hearing this, Du Jun realized that the old man was sensing the danger but still said that, which meant he wanted to know what Du Jun was thinking. So he said, Grandpa, the truth is like a poetry collection. The chairman didn't understand the boy's metaphor. What do you mean by a poetry collection? 
Du Jun continued politely, well, most people don't read poetry, but new collections are always being published. Yet, there are poets who receive the Nobel Prize in literature. The chairman praised his grandson, you're right. The truth has great power, but almost everyone doesn't read it or just ignores it. At this moment, he asked seriously, so what should I put on the scale to balance it? Du Jun looked at him and thought, I won't make the foolish mistake of answering first. After all, Su Yang is the one falling into the water, and I'm holding the life buoy, waiting for the moment when the water rises above our noses. When Sun Yen truly feels the pain, when Sun Yen starts throwing gold bars from his back, that's when I'll throw the life buoy. While thinking and imagining this scene, he felt secretly elated. The chairman couldn't wait any longer and urged, Come on, speak up, let's hear it. Du Jun straightforwardly said, You should place the negotiation terms of the merger ratio on the scale, Mr. Chairman. Hearing his nephew's words, which seemed confusing, he asked again, Merger ratio? At this point, Du Jun smiled as if he had won a prize, while the old man, being at his nephew's doorstep, didn't dare to say anything. He pointed at Du Jun and said, Look at him, it turns out he has a dark heart. Du Jun chuckled inwardly, thinking, he really has intentions when merging, the shares of Sun Yen Group have to flow into Sun Yen Motor, making the merger favorable for me. That's the condition. Du Jun replied, I don't think it's dark hearted. It's just a reasonable request to bring to the negotiation table. The chairman scolded the kid, you're like oil, indeed ambitious. Du Jun answered, in this world, who isn't ambitious? Isn't business about reducing others' ambitions and fulfilling one's own? The chairman just sat there, silently listening to his nephew's sermon. Du Jun continued, ambitions will always be criticized. If I'm going to be criticized anyway, I might as well have big ambitions. The chairman still didn't say anything but just sat quietly, observing his beloved nephew. Du Jun also looked resolute, staring straight into his eyes without flinching. Suddenly, the old man smiled contentedly and praised his nephew, truly a filial descendant, or rather, a grand filial descendant. He corrected himself. Du Jun quickly pretended to be naive and said, Of course. Haven't I always made you happy? From childhood, I studied hard to make you happy. As an adult, I've prepared all the money you need. It's hard to find another nephew like me. The old man replied, That's true, but you've given me something bigger. Du Jun was surprised, wondering what the old man was suddenly talking about. The chairman continued, When I built Sun Yen from a subsidiary into a group that no one dared to confront, Everyone just bowed their heads and tried to take my things. After preparing meticulously and clenching my fists, I waited, but saw no one daring to steal my things. Du Jun looked at the old man, confused. What's this? Does he want to ignite a fire at seventy and see his grandson as a rival? The old man joyfully said to Du Jun, Even if I share with everyone, I won't let anyone steal my things. Du Jun, feeling a bit scared, said, Sir, the bigger thing isn't that, right? At this moment, the old man's face broke into a sly and utterly incomprehensible smile. He fanned the flames like Sangaku and said, Exactly. Let's ignite the fire and see who wins. Du Jun suddenly panicked, Grandpa, am I really your grandson? The old man, full of energy, said, that's what makes it interesting, a battle between grandfather and grandson. At this point, Du Jun began to feel hesitant and worried. Du Jun sat anxiously, waiting to see, what is his proposal, chairman? He replied, I will decide the merger ratio into the shares of Sun Yan Motors. You just need to accept. I might show you more than what you have to fight for. I am your grandfather. What kind of grandfather would be heartless to his grandson, what do you think? Du Jun answered as he had been told, I am dutiful, which means I am filial, everyone. The chairman joyfully asked, does that mean you agree to my proposal? Hearing him ask that, Du Jun smirked arrogantly, are you saying this dutiful grandson made all your joys disappear? 
the old grandfather, taken aback by his grandson's sudden cruelty, was confused. But being more wicked himself, he laughed and replied, Indeed. He said that without fighting back, one is not a real man. Of course, I will refuse your first offer. Du Jun then asked, What is the second offer? The chairman said, It's not exactly an offer, it's more like a threat. If you are threatened, you will regret not accepting the first offer. Hearing this, Du Jun felt slightly uneasy, what exactly is he planning to threaten with such a warning? There hasn't been anything worth threatening yet. The old man said, you refused my offer, so soon Yen Motors and Achimoto will not merge. Hearing this, Du Jun was shocked. The old man said, tomorrow, Director Cheho will have a press conference because the acquirer of a kin group, Fantasy, has many unreasonable demands, so the merger failed. I am sorry for causing public concern, the old man ended his hypothetical speech, terrifying Du Jun. The old man grinned pleased to have threatened his beloved grandson. Du Jun obediently called out, Grandpa. The chairman gently replied, Yes, speak. Du Jun narrowed his eyes and spoke in a deep, hellish tone, It seems your agreement is quite weak. Hearing this, the chairman was at a loss on how to react. Then, the two of them looked at each other with deep, loving eyes. Du Jun looked at the old man with his innocent and handsome face. Perhaps due to old age and weakness, the old man still didn't understand. Weak means what? He shouted. Are you implying that even if acquiring a kin goes beyond limits, it's not a problem? Are you underestimating the acquisition of a kin? He angrily looked at his grandson and asked, Do you want to stop because things are not going smoothly? Du Jun calmly replied, There's no such thing. Have you ever thought that if the merger fails, I still couldn't acquire a kin? The chairman said rightly, merger is the first condition in this matter, but Du Jun is still calm. The situation has changed, sir. He looked at the old man and said, now it's an emergency situation. The old man did not expect the boy to be so wise. Afterward, the two of them sat looking at each other deeply without speaking. About half an hour later, the old man finally said, there is one thing that doesn't change. Du Jun wondered what that could be. The chairman, now brimming with energy and joy, confidently said, It's my influence. If I cancel the merger and inform the Green National Bank Loan Party, the acquisition will fall apart. I bet others will withdraw their bids, he said maliciously, then Chairman Chu of Dihin will call me for a drink. Du Jun was still silently absorbing everything the old man said. The chairman maliciously asked again, what do you think, do you still believe you can acquire a kin without a merger? Du Jun remembered his past life and guessed that in a few days the government would announce, the deputy prime minister has applied to the IMS for a bailout fund. Clearly, it's the end of November. Du Jun softly called out, Grandpa. The chairman, delighted, replied, What, are you scared now? Du Jun said, the government has poured $11 billion into the foreign exchange market, but the exchange rate is still soaring. You've also read the Bloomberg article, right? Our country's available foreign exchange reserves are only $2 billion. Deputy Prime Minister Kong even appeared on TV, expressing hope for loans from allied countries. The chairman, surprised, asked, Do June, are you implying that our strength has diminished due to the foreign exchange crisis? Du Jun replied, No, it hasn't diminished, old man, with a smug, cunning smile. However, Du Jun added, It's not just diminishing, it's disappearing. I'm talking about your influence, sir. It's like you've been slapped right after getting married. The chairman, annoyed, asked, What? Du Jun replied, I might face difficulty surviving, but is your phone call still effective? The chairman couldn't believe how cunning this young man was. Du Jun respectfully advised his grandfather, you should consider the current situation more carefully. Even if your influence diminishes and there's a reaction, it's okay. In fact, I'd be grateful. At that time, 
I won't have any competition and it will become fantasy's exclusive auction. Just think, in this situation, the buyback amount won't be 120 million won like before. Even if I spend all 800 billion won, the lenders will still kneel before me, right? The chairman sat silently, waiting to give a lengthy speech. Innocently, Du Jun said, Chairman Chu of Daehyun must be relieved now. If he had spent one or two trillion won to buy a kin, he would be panicking due to lack of cash. At this point, the chairman understood everything. He called out to Du Jun, but Du Jun raised his hand, please let me say one last thing. The old man's silence meant he agreed to listen. Du Jun clearly said, part of you hopes the current critical situation will improve, or maybe that's your wish. But using a voice from hell, I say that won't happen. The old man didn't know how to react to his increasingly cruel words. Du Jun continued, keep talking. Just look at the truth and you'll know our country can't avoid this crisis. Du Jun thought to himself, feeling uneasy that something that should collapse hasn't yet. Not just him, but everyone thinks the same, yet they still believe that a large economy like South Korea won't easily collapse. Du Jun knew that belief was just seeking out one's own insecurity. The old man asked, Are you sure about that, Du Jun? Du Jun replied, Yes, a big event will happen in just a few days. The old man continued, Keep going. You are Sun Yen Group. There must be a billion dollars you're holding, right? Du Jun confidently said. Our country's foreign exchange reserves are just around $2 billion, and I'm holding half of that. When the dollar fever spreads to South Korea, all businesses and banks will rush to Fantasy's office, the old man said sarcastically. Then, if I want to see you, I'll probably need to take a number. Du Jun respectfully answered, of course not, it's number zero. Right now, you're talking to me, aren't you? After saying this, the two continued to calculate how to confront each other. The old man was both happy and sad. He didn't know whether he was happy or sad. Then he decided to act quickly and laughed. He began, I have to call Lee Hatcher and scold him. I need to talk to my grandson. Du Jun was surprised and didn't know why the old man would call him. He thought, could the old man be taking a step back? It was the first time he had done so. Was the chairman of the conglomerate listening to this grandson? Despite feeling great, he didn't understand why this time, the devilish boy didn't laugh. Suddenly, Du Jun exclaimed, Grandpa, I don't feel happy anymore. The chairman scolded, What, you brat, are you messing with me because you have some dollars? Du Jun replied, I'm serious. I need to quickly complete the acquisition of a kin there's still so much to do. The chairman, perplexed, asked, so many tasks to handle? Is there something more important than this matter? Du Jun replied, yes, I have to walk around with dollars in hand and put them into the basket of another business. I also have to negotiate prices. For the first time in his life, the chairman felt astonished by his grandson's boasting about money. Then, he opened his eyes wide as if he had discovered some secret. This was the second time Du Jun had seen him so surprised. In front of him, Chairman Xin Yang, the founder of the Sun Yen conglomerate, was an astonishing legend to him. In a moment, he had won over the chairman. At that point, the chairman looked at his grandson and yelled, How many dollars do you actually have? Boasting, Du Jun said, I can't open my wallet for you to see but I probably have enough to buy back Kuiyu Osung Motor. The old man, astounded, asked, You have enough dollars to buy back Kuiyu Osung? Du Jun, very calmly, replied, Yes, I plan to acquire two car companies, Achimoto and Kuiyu Osung. If I include Sun Yen Motor, I should be on par with Dian Motor. Slamming the table, Du Jun said, I will take them over and hang the Sun Yen sign for you, old man. Surprisingly, he saw that his grandson was incredibly filial. Du Jun continued, This is another gift for you, as a filial grandson. I'll wait for your second proposal. Everyone should meet and find out how much time is left. 
I hope you and everyone else will make a decision soon before the number of people waiting increases. This grandson dares to stand up and talk to me, which is quite annoying. You seem to agree that my fate is weak, but everything is not over yet. Until it truly ends, this is what the descendant once said, right? Now I realize that those words were not nonsense. Du Jun still smiled, seeing that the old man was starting to talk a bit much. He responded, there's also the saying about knowing when to retreat. This was something the old man had directly said to him. Hearing the grandson repeat, exactly what I said, the old man burst into laughter, saying, hearing that again sounds so absurd. As the old man laughed, Du Jun found it funny too. So the two of them laughed together. Then the two, one standing and one sitting, continued as if they had won the lottery. After those joyful moments outside, everyone knows that those who laugh often have many worries. The lonely chairman sat alone in the large conference room, tapping on the expensive table. He thought to himself, I can clearly sense the danger, but its magnitude and depth differ. Temporary difficulties are not foreign exchange issues or anything special. At times like these, the government will solve it by exchanging money or borrowing dollars from the Americas and Japan. Then he tapped the table again, pondering the situation, but the more he thought about it, the angrier he became. He remembered his beloved nephew Du Jun saying, You know the truth that our country cannot avoid this crisis. He thought that Du Jun also said, This crisis will be different. Even if the strong economies lend us money, we cannot exchange it. If the whole continent only has two billion dollars, it is like having a lot of food but no water. The result is that we will die of thirst, not hunger. Then the old chairman imagined himself dying of thirst in the desert. He was afraid of dying like that, so ugly. At that moment, he was shivering and imagining when there was a knock on the door. He calmly said, come in. Then his subordinates came in to prepare for the usual scolding. It was a familiar scene. Every time this chairman was about to scold his subordinates, they sat with their faces in front of the meeting table. Sure enough, the old man shouted, Electronics Production, announced to the whole department that from today, the export money will be kept in dollars. The money needed to pay will be taken from the loan. The subordinate hurriedly obeyed, Yes, chairman. The chairman continued, As for construction, Bid with foreign projects, 10% cheaper, ah, 20%. In return, we have to get the deposit money, the intermediary money, as soon as possible. Another subordinate, probably in charge of construction, looked up and obeyed, yes, chairman. Now, the chairman talked about insurance, he said, withdraw all investments in financial products abroad, no matter how much money we violate the contract. We have to cancel all transactions to ensure the amount of dollars. The insurance manager said quickly, Chairman, that will cause a huge loss. The revenue and expenditure of business. The chairman angrily shouted, Shut up and withdraw. At this time, the finance insurance construction BCDXYZ guys did not dare to look up and say a word. The secretary usually just stood silently on one side. But because he had to poke his nose in everything, he still bravely opened his mouth and said, Chairman, please calm down. I have prepared everything carefully. I am now controlling the foreign exchange of the subsidiaries. But the chairman said, careful preparation is not enough. You have to prepare with the determination that you might lose your arm or leg. The secretary was scared and asked, Chairman. Did he try to talk to the owner of Fantasy? He suddenly mentioned that company and made the chairman even more furious. He only answered with one word after the secretary mentioned that company and made the chairman angry. The atmosphere was like being in hell. The secretary and the other subordinates silently thought that it was because the negotiation failed. They did not get the rope of a billion dollars lowered down. The secretary still stubbornly asked, did they refuse? The chairman replied, even in the 6-2 war, I made money. I was not afraid of war like now. His face gradually became annoyed. 
he said, now I feel afraid. The secretary also felt scared when he heard that. He was the chairman, and he was afraid, let alone me. The gang downstairs were also there, wondering if they would have any bread to eat in the future. The chairman continued, one who holds many dollars, one who cannot die when standing next to me, even threatens me. For the first time, someone is more cruel than me. The old man suddenly felt afraid, true that there is always someone worse than you. The secretary on one side also started to guess, who was the owner of fantasy, who made the chairman admit that he was more cruel than him. At that time, the chairman shouted at all his employees, all of you be determined. On November 19, 1997, Min Jiehun was appointed as Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance and Economy. He affirmed, strong and will solve the current crisis without needing the IMF. But two days later at 10 p.m. on the 21st, he held an urgent press conference stating that this was a request from the IMF and asked for assistance and improvement of the international balance of payments, stabilization of currency value, liberalization of trade, opening of the capital market, and increasing transparency in corporate management. The next day he read a special statement to the public about the president's request for assistance. This was the beginning of the IMF. The national credit rating of South Korea dropped and the composite stock index also lost 400 points. Nine large financial companies stopped operating and the PESA group went bankrupt. Then another beautiful day Wai Chang as usual at Si Hung's building. Si Hung was annoyed and said to the other side of the phone, Chairman, it's not like we pay after merging. Look at the contract carefully. The negotiation deadline is until February next year. It's still a long time. The other side said something that made Si Hoon exclaim, What? Why pay in dollars? We will pay 1.2 trillion one in one. You just know that. Then he angrily slammed his phone on his desk. Du Jun asked if it was Che Bank or not. Si Hoon replied, Yes. Not only that bank but every other bank is also in chaos. How about your nephew? Is Chairman Jean still considering it? Du Jun calmly said, yes, maybe he won't rush because of his grandson. That's cruel. Si Hoon also laughed, if he doesn't do that, he won't be a tycoon. You are also like that but only inferior to him in cunning ways to drain your grandfather's assets. But what if the exchange rate rises to 2001? How do you plan? Du Jun replied, then it's even better. 3,000 billion will become 5,000 billion. Si Hoon rested his chin and asked, that's why I say you are a capitalist with 5,000 billion won in your hands. At age 20 how do you feel? Du Jun still smiled and replied, don't push me. I also want to hold that money and play some upper-class games in Europe until I go crazy. Si Hoon heard that and was surprised and asked, if you like it then just play. But Du Jun said, between a chairman of a group holding a country and a European family with a lot of money, which one is better? This old man doesn't have money so he doesn't know. So he answered, you are a tasteless kid. Du Jun smiled and said, Uncle, wait a little longer and I will become the chairman of the Korean conglomerate and help you enjoy your retirement like a European noble. The old uncle heard that and obeyed, waiting to get money from this kid would be fun, right? Then, at the Sun Yen group in the afternoon, a warm figure was bowing his head and saying to the chairman, Yes sir, I will definitely win and repay this favor. The chairman was annoyed and said, Stop flattering me and keep those two billion dollars for me. Then, the subordinate hurriedly left the gloomy room of the chairman. The chairman was tired and closed his eyes to rest for a while. The secretary's grandfather saw this scene and thought he would not let the old man rest. He wanted to say something. Then, the secretary asked the chairman, Can you tell me who the owner of fantasy is? I will meet him and negotiate with him. The chairman dismissed him, I will arrange with them. You just go to visit the opposition party. Bring some tonic bottles and say the main point. 
If they support us with $2 billion first, the Korean Industrial Federation will cooperate actively with the next government. The secretary knew he could not get anything from the old chairman and reluctantly stomped his foot. Then he turned around and went to do his task. The chairman sighed, the chairman has been busy since then and now he can finally be quiet for a while. He looked at the black document on his desk. Then he picked up a paper contract and read it. It said 17.7%. The old man thought that the most influential person in the country could bring Sun Yen Motors 17.7% of influence. It was not just getting $1 billion but giving it with a condition of exchanging money. The kid said, after merging, I will return it to Sun Yen but there is no such thing. He is someone who keeps everything in his pocket and never gives it back. The old man was angry and threw the paper back on the table. He often thought, I can't continue if I divide it equally for five children. Each one gets 20%. Moreover, I ignore my son and give it directly to my grandson but he is also qualified anyway. Looking at that kid many times I thought I was looking in a mirror. I knew the joy of stealing from others. Once I had it in my hand, I never let it go. For Du Jun, 17.7% was not the end, but only the beginning. A child born with a personality that values calculation more than bloodline. And he aimed at Sun Yen then the other children and grandchildren would be kicked out. The old man began to worry when he thought about this grandson. He knew that of course he would help Sun Yen grow stronger and become a solid fortress but he would never let anyone else enter that fortress. Anyway, he had a deep heart when he cared for his father so much. He was young but still helped his father realize his dream. The old man thought more about this kid and felt more uncomfortable but he thought. Now is not the time to think about that. I had to worry about the group instead of worrying about my son. He sighed and thought. Even if I was robbed, I had to console myself that the robber was my grandson, not an outsider. Then, the old chairman sat alone in his room. At the beginning of this chapter we returned to a familiar building in Sihun. Sihun said these were reliable companies. As long as they passed these companies there would be nothing. Du Jun received a document from uncle then asked if sister calculated then which company had the highest possibility. Uncle answered of course company at top of list good technique so high profit not intend to eat big bite right correct or not Du Jun answered of course sir. After that, Du Jun started to examine the documents that his uncle gave him. The old uncle also took out a paper and wrote down the necessary documents. Then Uncle Sihun asked, but will the construction collapse? They have a lot of money for internal reservations and international orders. Du Jun asked back. Don't you believe me, uncle? Right now, only Sun Yen and Ah Hyun can overcome this crisis in our country. The rest are just oil lamps in the wind. The uncle was still adamant. Even so, if the construction gets support from the government, they can still resist. Du Jun thought that this uncle was too stubborn and deaf to reason, so he just smiled. Then he knew that this old man had ears of wood, so he stood up and said to wait and see. Uncle Sihun was angry and didn't know what to wait and see. Then Du Jun left by himself. He went down to the parking lot, got into the car and said. Assistant Kim, wait for me at the chairman's house. Assistant Kim hurriedly stepped on the gas and drove out of the parking lot. Then the car drove out onto the wide highway. At this time, Du Jun thought that Sihun's opinion was obvious because the construction was a strong company. And if that company wasn't strong, he wouldn't need to investigate it. After the IMS crisis in 1997, Korea would enter a period of big fish eating small fish. Carnivores coexisted with herbivores on the savanna. There, carnivores could hardly hide their identity, but from now on it would be the era of the jungle. Where there were only a few carnivores who were not garlic but dared to show their tiger teeth and claws. And if he was determined to become the king of that place, he had to act fast. At this time, Assistant Kim spoke up. Young master, 
based on the content I have grasped in the past and the information that Team Leader XIN collected, we can conclude that the Han Sung newspaper has sent someone to follow you. Du Jun heard that and asked. Is Han Sung newspaper an ally with my family? Assistant Kim answered. Yes, it is. Du Jun was stunned and thought. What a surprising result. I thought it was domestic. It turned out that there were already outsiders who were drooling over it. At this time, Assistant Kim continued. Actually, I had already found out since this morning, but I was afraid that they might be allies so I wanted to be more careful and reported late. Moreover, the chairman also knew about the information beforehand and security had reported it to him. He said he had received an order to pretend not to know so I was even more sure. Hearing Assistant Kim's report made Du Jun very surprised. He remembered the chairman and realized that he knew but pretended not to know. What was his intention? He thought. Even if Han Sung newspaper acted, it was not a type worth caring about or he was being cautious with them as allies? I have to learn from every small decision of his. He judged and applied those small things. It was strategy and tactics. While Du Jun was thinking, the car had also arrived outside of the mansion. Because he was the richest in Korea, this house looked like an airport. The car had to run for almost 10 kilometers before it could get in. When he got to the chairman's house, Du Jun gave Assistant Kim a card and said, Today you use this card to treat the staff and the strategy team. When Assistant Kim thanked him, Du Jun also told him not to worry about money and just buy the most expensive things. Assistant Kim was overjoyed and thanked the young master. Du Jun got out of the car and slammed the door hard. He felt happy and thought that this time he had to use his sister-in-law's card to his heart's content. Then he went into the house and the chairman asked him, What do you think? I think that's enough. He took the folder that the chairman gave him and opened it. On it was a number, 17.7%. Du Jun calculated silently, 17.7% of Sun Yen Group plus eight companies of Achen Group is one. After merging those companies, they would be mine. Then he pretended to ask him, Sir, is the daily number just a transaction or an inheritance? This annoyed the old man. But then the chairman laughed and said, how ambitious are you, kid? Inheritance? Do I have to share my inheritance with you? I only share it with my children. Du Jun naively answered, because my father is not a tycoon. But he was also a little hopeful. But the old chairman cunningly replied, that's your problem. Du Jun thought to himself, he said he would share his inheritance with his children, which means he would give some to my father. At this point, the chairman said, this is the second and final offer. Hurry up and stamp it and transfer one billion dollars to me. Du Jun calculated that he should not bargain anymore. If he talked about something else, he might get hurt. A small stone can create a wave in a big lake. No matter how much he loved him, if he disappointed him once, the thin layer of ice would break. He must not make a mistake that would break the ice. Thinking so, Du Jun replied, Yes, I will prepare $1 billion at the exchange rate of 1.6001. The old man was so surprised that he asked again, 1.6001? Du Jun asked, Why are you surprised? He thought you would bother him more. The chairman was dumbfounded, amazed, and looked at his grandson who suddenly became so filial. Du Jun continued, I will always stand by your side. You have compromised so much, so I should not be too greedy. The chairman heard his unfilial grandson say that and did not believe it. He smiled and then asked again, What are you plotting now? But Du Jun looked surprised and said, What do you mean? The chairman answered, Do you think I'm easily fooled by your sweet words? Du Jun looked at him and thought, He is a person who never loses his guard. He said the deal was over, today it is eight billion. The price is 1,342 trillion won. I said I would transfer the money to you, at the exchange rate of 1.6001, then how can there be a bargain? The old chairman replied. 
the exchange rate could exceed 2001. If your $1 billion falls into my hands, then you will suffer a heavy loss. Du Jun thought to himself, I have to check the predictive ability of the Sun Yen Economic Research Institute. Could it be true that he has taken over all the talents? Thinking so, he pretended to ask, will the exchange rate really reach 2.0001? The old chairman replied. More than 90% will be around 2.2001. This is the prediction of the doctors of the research institute. They are not always right, but sometimes they hit the mark. Du Jun was a little surprised when he heard him say such a large amount of money. Then the chairman asked again, are you sorry? Because the exchange rate could rise to 2001? But Du Jun answered, I told you before that it could exceed 2001. But I don't regret it at all. I'm your grandson and I'm not a stingy person. Why would I want to see you lose? At this point, the chairman replied, I know you're not stingy, but you're also not someone who likes to lose. The chairman asked impatiently, don't beat around the bush anymore. What's the additional condition? Dujan thought he was sure of it. Pretending would only increase his feelings. So he said, I want to ask you two things. The chairman smiled happily, that's right, don't say it. Let's see if that condition will be enough to compensate for the loss or bring you a big profit. At this point, Dujan put his hand in his pocket and took something out. What he took out was a piece of paper. Then he placed it on the table in front of the chairman. The chairman looked at the paper he had just put on the table and was very surprised. Dujan said, this is not a map of Seoul. Yes, sir, look at the red circles. The chairman wondered, what are these places? Du Jun answered, the land in the middle belongs to the city of Seoul. I want to buy these lands cheaply. The old man asked in confusion, do you want me to pressure the mayor of Seoul? Du Jun replied, no, sir. He continued, the current mayor's term is only six months left. We have to ask the next mayor, right? The chairman was shocked. Could he be hinting at his uncle? He heard Du Jun nod and say, yes. He immediately said, no way. Du Jun still said, I will support your uncle's election campaign. If he becomes the mayor, he will sell the public lands back to us. And you will pressure the members of parliament to buy them. The chairman was annoyed and shouted. We might not need to threaten the members of parliament, you know. I already said no, what else do you want? But Du Jun kept talking. We will gain reputation in the national economic crisis. If Seoul sells all its non-business lands to raise funds, the public opinion will surely not oppose. The chairman was getting angrier. He clenched his teeth and yelled at his nephew. But the unfilial nephew still asked, Can you tell me why you are so opposed to this? He answered, because that guy is not from the Jean family but from the Choi family. Du Jun could not find a reason for that. Then, the two of them froze and stared at each other for a few seconds. Du Jun spoke again. The mayor of Seoul cannot have a big impact on Sun Yen group. But you said that your son-in-law Choi's involvement in politics was your wife's idea. He is nothing but your wife's puppet. Du Jun thought. Because Jean Seo Jun is only a daughter, she wants to use political power to fill that gap. He realized his scheme. If her husband becomes a powerful politician, even without a microscope she can check all the legal actions and plots of Sun Yen. If she uses that power to make a fuss, it will surely cause chaos. He realized that Seo Jun would use that power to demand a share equal to or greater than her brother's. Du Jun asked. Why don't you think about turning her and your uncle into puppets of Sun Yen? They will clean up everything dirty and shameful. Until they sit on the mayor's seat of Seoul, if they do that they are nothing but puppets anyway. The chairman replied but the dirt came from Sun Yen. If it is exposed, Sun Yen will be ruined too. Du Jun said, I will take care of everything. That way, I will have the power of aunt and uncle. You don't have to worry too much. The chairman was very surprised and said, What? 
but Du Jun interrupted him and continued, I will provide money whenever you need it. Just use it. The old man was annoyed by his unfilial grandson who did not listen to him. He said, if you provide money, I just need to support you. Why do you need my approval? But when he heard him say that, Du Jun smiled mysteriously because he knew that if he called the leader of the ruling party, uncle would have no chance to be nominated. The chairman was very surprised and did not understand how this kid knew so much. Then Du Jun suddenly raised two fingers in front of the old man. He said further, just two times, please agree to let uncle be the mayor of Seoul for eight years. During that time, you just need to take care of the necessary things, right? What do you think, chairman? When he saw the two fingers of this kid, he crossed his arms and asked, what is the second thing? Du Jun heard that and asked, do you agree? But the chairman insisted on asking, tell me the second thing first. Du Jun looked at the old man for a while and then decided to say, build DA. The chairman was puzzled, why do you suddenly bring up another company? But Du Jun explained, you have to block the government funding that flows into Build DA. He was very surprised when he heard the name Build DA. At this time, Du Jun said further, you can't get the land to make a parking lot. You have to build something on that land, right? To do that, you need at least a small construction company, don't you? The chairman was angry and asked, do you think Build DA is a kiosk? Build DA is the fifth company in the contractor list. But Du Jun said, Sir, I am the chairman of a kin group in Sun Yen Motor. Compared to them, Build DA is just a kiosk. The chairman was still silent and listened to Du Jun from beginning to end. After listening, he smiled mysteriously. Then the chairman said, Du Jun, you are really determined. Du Jun was confused about what he was determined about. The chairman continued, it's because you want to show everyone that you will start your own company. You don't want to inherit Sun Yen construction but think about buying it back? Du Jun heard that and asked, if my father asks for it, will you give it to me? The chairman pretended to say that he might or might not. Du Jun looked at the old man with dislike and thought, don't fool me. You say that to annoy me, don't you? Then the chairman started to think about Bill D.A. Du Jun continued, no business can escape the current foreign exchange crisis. Build DA must be desperate for dollars. Just block the government's support and they will go bankrupt. Then I will pick them up. The chairman had to turn his head and look at his precious grandson. Then he said, DA is a sick company that can recover with a blood transfusion. So DA and your Uncle Choi's former soul mayor are in cahoots. Du Jun did not hesitate to answer that if uncle provides blood and aunt provides fertilizer, then flowers will bloom. After seeing Bill D.A. bloom, the chairman was still silent. I listened to what my nephew said. Du Jun continued to speak. After the merger, he would bring in the name Sun Yen. The chairman was very surprised when he heard the name of his group. Then he changed from annoyed to happy and said, that makes me happy to hear. Do you know that in this family, the only person who increased the number of subsidiaries for Cho Sun Yen besides me is you? Du Jun felt a chill when he heard the old man say that. He thought to himself, what is that? It doesn't feel good at all. That smile is not a smile that shows happiness. The chairman continued, I will think about those two things. And the agreement between us is over, right? Then hurry up, even the directors are wavering. You have to quickly put in a billion dollars to calm them down. Then Du Jun replied, then I will do as you say. Then he bowed and walked out of the meeting room step by step. As he walked, he felt a strange coldness on his back. I don't know what it is. The old chairman stood behind and stared at Du Jun leaving. The more he looked, the more strange he felt. The mayor of Seoul was the one who would cooperate to overcome the economic crisis of the country. Selling public land to prepare for support was a good thing. After personally building a mayor like that and taking over that land, even buying the construction company to use as a tool to turn that land into money, 
it was a beautiful picture. To complete the beautiful picture, someone even agreed to distribute hundreds of billions of dollars at a cheap price for the exchange rate to skyrocket. Doesn't that mean that kid is confident enough to pull out hundreds of billions? The chairman looked at his palm as he thought. He must have known the palm reading right after hearing Du Jun's explanation. I tried to suppress that idea immediately with him. Anyway, this is something I can't easily lend him strength. The old man clenched his hand and thought further. And I felt fear again under that cute and handsome face, hiding the personality of the most vicious beast. If he wanted to attach Sun Yan's name to a kin and DA, he would surely take over Sun Yan Motor and build Sun Yan. The old chairman thought and felt very sad. He walked the weak steps of old age and pondered. There was one strange thing that compared to the children who only wanted to receive things from me, I felt especially proud of the grandson who wanted to take things from me. The next day was another warm sunny day at Du Jun's house, a panicked voice rang out, 40 billion? You're right about flattering him. If you pay 3 billion for the special party fee and about 5 billion for the party leaders. And campaigning will cost about 30 billion, so you need about 40 billion left? Hearing that, Du Jun pretended to be dumbfounded and thought to himself, 40 billion is not the name of a dog in your house, right? How can you be so ignorant of the times and need such a large amount of money? And you just say it casually without discussing any details? He pretended to be innocent and surprised and said, That's a lot of money, Auntie. Why are you so surprised? Don't you have that much money? The aunt hurriedly said, I can prepare 15 billion. You just need to prepare 25 billion, okay? Du Jun immediately replied, Yes, that's fine. The aunt happily said, I can't withdraw 15 billion at once. You have to pay the special party fee at the beginning of next year, so prepare 3 billion in advance. Du Jun thought to himself, this is how the brains of those tycoons work. Don't they understand the times? How can they ask for tens of billions from a 20-year-old nephew like that? But out loud, he still answered, yes, I will prepare it as soon as possible. Then Du Jun said, shouldn't we write a contract? The couple heard that and were shocked. Contract? What contract? Du Jun answered, This amount of money has no invoice, so at least we should have a contract, right? The aunt heard her nephew say that and looked at each other in confusion. Then the uncle said, You are still young, so you don't know that there is no one who sends money for election contracts outside. The aunt also chimed in, It must be because our nephew only deals with new investors. This money will disappear and not be used for investment. Du Jun pretended to laugh, but thought to himself, So you think I'm a rich kid, right? He innocently said, I should have explained it clearly, but I forgot. Please wait a moment and someone will explain it to you. The couple heard that and looked at each other in confusion, not knowing what to explain. At this time, Du Jun looked behind him and shouted, Uncle, come out here. At this time, the aunts and uncles did not know who the uncle was. From the stairs, a man came down. Si Hoon appeared and said, Nice to meet you too. Du Jun looked at the scene and laughed happily. The next day at the familiar building where Si Hoon worked, Si Hoon rubbed his sore neck and said, She's not easy either. Unlike her appearance when she borrowed money from her nephew, as soon as she realized that this was a business deal, her face changed immediately. Then he remembered the aunt's angry face. Du Jun smiled and said, Anyway, she's still your grandfather's flesh and blood. Si Hoon also said, I don't know when you plan to use this contract, but you have to wait until I retire and go abroad or else you'll go to jail. Du Jun took the contract and said, this contract cannot be made public. Si Hoon pointed at Du Jun. The new villain had already known that the bomb in his body would give him power. But Du Jun said no. I intend to give it to my grandfather. Si Hoon was very surprised to hear this answer. He shouted, Are you crazy? How can you give that contract? It's like giving your neck to the chairman. 
Du Jun said he didn't care about business. He always just held the business owner's hand. This contract would be used as an exchange so that she wouldn't dare to have any other intentions. He had to make sure that his uncle couldn't escape from his grandfather's hand before he agreed to let his uncle run for mayor of Seoul. Sihun had a headache and said, Your grandfather is really cunning. He doesn't trust his own children. By the way, I want to ask you something. 17.7% .7 is the controlling stake in Sunyan that you have. At least you have to have 80% of the shares in your hand to become the chairman of Sunyan. 80% is just that. If you like it, maybe you won't get 10% of the shares that the chairman intends to leave for you. Du Jun replied, nothing. Sihun was surprised and asked, what? Du Jun said firmly, you may also know that besides me, no one in Sun Yen can be an executive director. But he is inherently selfish. Of course he won't give his things to anyone when he dies. If they were put in a coffin by the group, he would probably do that too. Sihun asked again, you don't ask because of the chairman's ambition? You know his true thoughts but Du Jun was indifferent and said, I don't know either. When feelings and reason fight, reason doesn't always win. Sihun didn't believe it but Du Jun answered that he didn't care about his appearance. He intended to see the shares he gave as a reward. Even though this reward was a bit too much. He thought of his grandfather and thought that his grandson was not ambitious but had outstanding abilities. He didn't care about assets even though he was promised to give them. Surely this was the way but he got the most rewards. Then he looked at the document in his hand and continued, Anyway, this contract will play a very big role. Du Jun calculated in his mind that he had finished step one and was about to move on to step two. Then he asked, Uncle, Sun Yen has already exchanged $1 billion out of the total $3.2 billion, right? We still have $2.2 billion left, don't we, Oxyhun? Sihun was startled and asked, Why? Don't you want to use the $2.2 billion? Du Jun answered, Of course I do. We have to exchange them as soon as possible, because after the presidential election is over, the government will change immediately. I plan to give that money as a congratulatory gift for their victory. Sihun was very surprised and asked, What? He shouted, What are you thinking? Are you trying to imitate those tycoons? Du Jun replied, What's the point of building Media City? No one will migrate to that city. Sihun didn't understand much about migration, but Du Jun explained that we will attract famous companies that are suitable for Media City. For example, television stations. Sihun said loudly, television is too ambitious but Du Jun just smiled and said, there are both broadcast and cable television. We have to do it gradually. Sihun could only keep quiet and listen to this kid's calculations. Du Jun continued, from the government's perspective, the SMC project is not bad either. Building new infrastructure not only helps with recruitment but also stimulates the economy. The business situation of the new government seems reasonable. Sihun heard that and asked, so you intend to throw $2.2 billion at them? Are you crazy? Du Jun was surprised and answered, no way. Why would I give my money to the government? The government has to exchange dollars for me. Sihun then realized that it was also within the public land of Seoul. Du Jun smiled and said, Yes, everything is in one package. He continued, South Korea is short of dollars. If tomorrow there is an investment company that brings $2.2 .2 billion and invests in building media infrastructure, it will be enough to make everyone applaud. Sihun also said, if the Seoul city government cooperates and expands the business, they might even get a budget from the central government. Du Jun was even happier and said, that would be perfect. Suddenly Sihun looked at the kid with a puzzled expression and then asked, Are you a copy of your grandfather? What do you think so far? Du Jun pretended to be a good person and answered, No way. Everything comes from my filial piety. Sihun almost vomited and said, What nonsense are you talking about? 
where is the filial piety? Du Jun laughed and said, after turning SMC into a media empire, I will give it to my father. Si Hoon suddenly stood up and looked at the kid without saying a word. Du Jun also stood up. He said that besides film production, television content production, cable television, there was also internet business. He said that his father was also the son of the chairman of Sun Yen Group and had to do all that to be worthy. Si Hoon had been shocked all this time and couldn't say anything. Du Jun said again, besides, fantasy in America has a close relationship with big companies, right? If we connect well, we might create a global media company. At this time, the chairman was studying a paper. He wore glasses and squinted his eyes to read every word on the paper without missing anything. Then he said, so this is what we got. Du Jun nodded and continued, to the point that uncle won't be able to oppose what you say even if he becomes the mayor of Seoul because if this contract is made public he will have to go to court for violating the law on political funds and his career will be ruined. The old man took off his glasses and asked, do you only want to borrow public land? Du Jun obediently answered, yes, you can take the rest of the land. He felt great when he signed the contract. The old man was surprised and asked him why. Du Jun Van knew the value of the public land immediately. He told him not to dream of using some election money to exchange for all the public land. The chairman asked, then how about I take it all and give you a little bit? Du Jun knew he had succeeded. He had agreed to take it all, but he pretended to be reluctant and said, no, thank you. My hobby is not making money from building apartments. The old man said something sarcastic. Even if your son-in-law Troy participates in the election, he may not win. Du Jun replied, his chances of winning have increased now because you have thought positively. The chairman looked at his smart, rich, and scheming grandson and said, I can't beat your cleverness. Du Jun smiled secretly. He wondered who would be his uncle's target, but that person would be pitiful. Soon Yan's information team would dig up his entire past. If they found a speck of dust, all the media would explode. He would have no ability to resist. The chairman continued, All right, you have used a lot of money to help me get the mayor of Seoul. I can't stand still either. I will also use some power when the election happens. Du Jun bowed his head and thanked his grandfather. The chairman looked at his handsome grandson who had built his own business after the election and thought. He gave me the mayor of Seoul, but was this a hint that I was too greedy when I took his achievements? Thinking that, he said, why do you look regretful over there? Du Jun pretended not to care and said, no, I don't. The old man smiled and said, don't be angry. I will also give you a gift. If you want me to do anything for you, just say it. Du Jun heard that and said, you are planning to build a new business after the election. I will talk to you about it. The old man asked, a business that needs the power of the government? That sounds impressive. You remember to be careful of those politicians who participate. They will cause a lot of variables. Their interests are more complicated than ours. They are not the kind who want to be helped. What they want is everything to be smooth even if they are sprinkled with pepper powder. Du Jun was incredulous. Could he be giving him advice or was he just saying that? He stood up and said, I will consult with you after I finish the plan. Then I hope you can judge for me. If you stop me, I will stop. As soon as he said that, he was pleased and thought to himself that this must be the answer he wanted. But the old man said, you build your business with your own money. Why do you need my approval? Even if you fail, try it once. It will be a good lesson for you. He said that maliciously and then suddenly smiled kindly. It was hard to believe. Du Jun looked at his grandfather and thought that he still couldn't know what was hidden behind his eyes and words. On the morning of December 19, all the media channels reported that Kim Jong Trae, the candidate of the New People's Assembly of South Korea, had become the new president. 
he had collaborated with Hani Jean of Chibi Group and Park Imt of the Democratic Party. The next day, at a cheap pub that had appeared in this novel, where there were many ordinary people smoking cheap cigarettes instead of tycoons, a friend asked Du Jun, Do you still remember your promise to treat us after the exam? Du Jun replied, I know, I know. The friend then asked cheerfully, Let's order something. Du Jun asked, What do you want to eat? Another friend said, Hey Du Jun, you have never been to a place like this. Just order whatever you want. The other one realized that it was true, but they didn't know what to order in places like this. Of course, Du Jun has been here hundreds of times. Du Jun remembered his previous life when he often didn't have money to order snacks. He thought he should let these guys taste what he had always wanted to eat but couldn't afford. He then called the waitress and asked her to bring beer for everyone. The waitress and his friend were stunned. But Du Jun continued, We don't drink often, so we have to drink something good. Otherwise, I will be called stingy. His three friends looked at each other in surprise. Then one of them stood up and shouted, Hey Du Jun is going to buy bottled beer. Don't act like it's your first time. The whole pub is looking at us. The rich people also looked at Du Jun in surprise. Du Jun just smiled and thought. When I was a freshman, I only dared to drink draft beer. Bottled beer was too expensive. He then asked the waitress for some snacks. He ordered a portion of sausage stir-fried with vegetables, spicy snail salad with noodles, and a portion of mentai fish. One friend asked for chicken as well. Du Jun agreed and asked if he wanted seasoned chicken or fried chicken. He then ordered another portion of fried chicken for his friends. At this point, everyone looked at him attentively and asked if he had ever been to a place like this. And Zhang knew well that he was the third generation of a wealthy family and yet he came to a cheap pub. It was unbelievable. Du Jun thought to himself and suddenly felt curious. I wonder if my cousins have ever been to a cheap pub like this. I wonder if they have ever ordered a pot of fish cake soup at a liquor store and sipped soju? Du Jun finished thinking and said, I often come to places like this. My family usually goes to Gadadaji to eat skewers. My cousins and I often drink soju with a pot of steaming fish cake soup. Do you think my family always goes to expensive restaurants or eateries? When we eat at home, we don't have a banquet table with 12 dishes. We just eat soup, stew and side dishes. There is nothing special about it. He thought to himself. Basically, I am an ordinary person so of course I can get along with ordinary people. I have to take this opportunity to shake off the image of being the third generation of a wealthy family. They all heard him say that and smiled at each other. At this moment, one of them suddenly bowed his head and said, Hello senior. So they all looked surprised when they saw who it was behind him. The senior said, Sorry for interrupting you guys with these seniors who are about to graduate. Du Jun politely stood up and said, No problem sir. Then the senior asked, Du Jun, I have something to ask you. I came here on purpose today. Can I ask you? Du Jun answered friendly, Yes sir please go ahead. He said that the three of them had applied for a job at a financial company that went bankrupt. The other two companies cancelled their offers. They said it was hard to hire new employees this year. His friends were speechless when they heard that. The senior quickly added, don't misunderstand, I'm not asking you to apply for me. You know more than us about this situation, right? You have access to a lot of high-level information that we have to study again to apply. But if the situation is still like this next year, I will change my direction. I have to prepare for the judicial exam or the civil service exam. Du Jun sat upright and thought, while his friends looked at him as if they were waiting for him to say something. Du Jun had a headache and didn't know what to say. Should he tell them the truth or comfort them with a few words? He pretended to drink some water to think more. He thought that even if he told these kids what would happen in the future, they wouldn't feel the reality. Then Du Jun put down the glass and exhaled. He said, 
my advice is that you should give up your dream of applying and prepare for the judicial or administrative exam. The senior stubbornly asked, is the job market still bad next year because of the IMF? Du Jun remembered and thought. It will be hard from now on. Applying would become more and more difficult. Even Seoul University was no exception. So he said, everyone who is working will be laid off. There will be a wave of layoffs with the reason for corporate restructuring. The senior and the kids around him panicked when they heard the word layoff. Du Jun continued, the big companies will cut at least 30%. The IMF crisis is not just a lack of liquidity. He gently added, our country is in a state of economic bankruptcy. The guys who only know how to drink and have fun are worried about their future. The senior also fell into silence because he was old. Du Jun said again, there is no concept of a lifetime job anymore. The company can fire any employee. And there will be a new term called non-regular employee. A friend asked curiously, what is a non-regular employee? Du Jun didn't know how to explain the concept of non-regular employees in modern times in his previous life. Another friend asked, should we reduce taxes like income tax and personal income tax for part-time employees? Du Jun looked at the senior and asked, what about pension? But he didn't have any pension as a part-time worker. Du Jun asked again, what if the boss says you have to quit tomorrow? The senior calmly answered, then I have to quit. Hearing that, Du Jun nodded and said, that's right, that's a non-regular employee. This form is not only in trading places but also in big companies. Hearing him say that, the senior was stunned and didn't know what to say. The friends who were drinking and having fun also became pale because they were worried about their future. Du Jun calmly said, from now until the country gets out of bankruptcy and the economy returns to normal, it will take a lot of time. If you don't prepare for public service exams and only want to apply for jobs, you should enlist first. At least you can delay your graduation and avoid the storm. Hearing that, they all felt like they were hit by a storm. The people who sat next to them also sneered because they didn't know who he was and why he was preaching. But his friends who knew he was from a wealthy family were scared out of their minds. Du Jun looked and thought. This matter would not directly affect the kids who were about to finish their first year. But from next year, when the wave of layoffs rose and the people around them became victims of the IMF, they would understand why he said they should avoid the rain. At this time, his senior spoke up. Thanks to you, I'm more sober now. Thank you. He looked at the main character with a grateful and affectionate gaze. Du Jun thought to himself. Nam too was really different. Then he said, no, maybe my words were too negative. It's because the people who run the companies around me always think of the worst case scenario. At this time, his senior raised his beer glass and said, we should think of the worst case scenario to prepare. It's also time to graduate. It's because of us that the atmosphere is so gloomy. Sorry guys, let's drink now. Then he raised his glass high and said, you guys still have a lot of time. You guys will have enough time to avoid the rain and prepare well. Don't worry about anything today. Let's drink up. These guys were happy to hear about drinking beer. They laughed happily and eagerly. Du Jun thought in his stomach that even though it was a forced smile, it also helped to stir up the atmosphere. Whether it was stirred up or not, just look at these two grandfathers smiling with their teeth. Then they all raised their glasses and went to toast from this table to another table. No one noticed the door of the shop being opened. Du Jun was the stinkiest kid in the story and he didn't know this either. A pair of feet wearing Nike shoes stepped into the shop. The person said, Du Jun, it's been a long time since I saw you. He was startled and saw that it was a beautiful girl. Du Jun didn't know what to say because he didn't know her name. The girl pointed at his face and said, Don't tell me you forgot my name already. Lucky me. At this time, his senior shouted, Min Young, what are you doing here? 
Du Jun heard that and then started to remember that he lived two lives so he remembered a bit later. That's right, this girl's name was Xiao Ming Young. Then she sat down and grabbed a glass and pretended to be a girl from home. She said, just give me half a glass. I still have to go to the library. Du Jun sat opposite her and looked at her with admiration. At this time, his senior said, you're preparing for the judicial exam. You're really different. You didn't attend the graduation ceremony, you didn't take a summer break, but you buried yourself in studying. But how do you have time to come here? Min Young replied, I think that you seniors also don't have time to sit and play here. It probably only takes about two years to prepare for the administrative exam, right? But for the judicial exam, this is not something that everyone can be sure of, so everyone will evaluate themselves. Du Jun was confused. What was she talking about? Was it related to IMS? Another senior asked suddenly, What are you talking about? Min Young answered, Isn't it because of you seniors that I came here to confirm with Du Jun how the situation of the companies is? How long will the terrible foreign exchange crisis last? Isn't that right? Du Jun did not say anything but just thought that it was not bad. He heard from his seniors that he thought the girl was just a model student who buried herself in studying and dreamed of becoming a judge. But it turned out that she knew how the world was working. After saying that, Min Young took a glass of beer and drank it all in one gulp. Then she slammed the glass on the table and said, I heard that even the label of Seoul University is not enough to find a job outside. The cold wind is blowing. All the graduates are crying. That cold wind will not disappear easily, but we are still lucky. We studied law, so the civil service exam is not too hard. Du Jun was confused and thought, why does this girl talk like my friend Chan? His senior asked, are you two dating? While dating, will they talk about things like the Korean economy? At this time, a girl crazy guy stood up hastily and said, it can't be like this. Du Jun is not from Earth. Min Young can't date an alien. Min Young said, you are not going anywhere. You said that anyone who boasts about their power is hateful, and anyone who boasts about their money is contemptible. What else? Then he pointed at the male lead and said, this Du Jun has both money and power. You should wake up. Then he turned to the male lead and said, Du Jun, go back to your world. You should meet the only daughter of a wealthy family or date a celebrity. Hearing this, Min Young said, Why is it so long? From the time I enrolled until now, I only met Du Jun three times. What dating? His senior also said, That's true. There is no time and no opportunity. Du Jun doesn't bother to go to school, and Min Young only goes to the library or the lecture hall. How can they date? The other guys heard this and just sat quietly and laughed. Du Jun did not say anything but just thought to himself that he felt jealous of these guys. He was just an old uncle with a dry love spirit. Sometimes his male hormones would rise up, but the stress in his work had suppressed them. Then Min Young stood up and said, I met you already, so I'll go. Suddenly she turned back and said, Oh Du Jun, can you meet me for a moment? I have something to say. Du Jun was surprised and did not know what this girl wanted from him. Min Young continued, I'm so embarrassed to die, but I still want to say this. You think carefully and answer me. Then they started to go outside and the wind blew coldly. Du Jun said, it's so cold. What do you want to ask? Min Young said annoyedly, I want to ask something clearly. The male lead looked at her and thought, what do you want to clarify? Du Jun saw that she was serious, so he also answered her seriously. Hey, it's freezing, but you're still acting cute and not saying anything. Then she spoke up, passing the judicial exam before graduating is my goal and duty. Du Jun asked, I understand the goal, but what do you mean by duty? Min Young explained, my family are all lawyers. Moreover, almost everyone passed that exam before graduating from law school. 
If I don't pass before graduating, the whole family will scrutinize me, so I have to pass. Du Jun sighed but still didn't understand. He smiled and asked, so what? Min Young continued, this exam is much harder than grade 12. Actually, I don't have much time left. Hearing her say that, Du Jun still didn't understand what time she was talking about. Then suddenly, Min Young moved closer to Du Jun, intending to use her beauty or something. Min Young looked straight into Du Jun's face and said, the time to date you. Du Jun didn't understand what she was talking about. Seeing that, Min Young said again, I'm confessing that I like you, and you only react like that? Du Jun was surprised and asked back, I heard you don't like showing off your power and money, but you have both? Mi Jiang was stubborn but he was very handsome. Oh my god, the male Li didn't know how to respond after hearing her say that. Mi Young said again, your reaction is only one kind. What do you mean by that? Then she saw Du Jun clueless and didn't understand anything. Min Young sighed tiredly and said again, let's get back to the main point. I don't have time and you don't come to school often. Just decide like this. We will go out to eat together once or twice a month. We don't need to meet often. Du Jun heard this and still didn't understand what decision he had to make. She suddenly said bluntly, decide on our dating. Du Jun's grandfather also didn't understand what was going on, let alone this little kid who was hit by something. Then Du Jun probably thought she was pretty so he also smiled and asked, do you know my phone number yet? He didn't know how she knew his phone number after only meeting three times. She was like a pervert. Du Jun said again, call me and I'll send a car over. Min Young wondered, what car? Du Jun answered, a car to pick you up. Did you forget? I'm a third generation Chable. Our date can't be ordinary. You just prepare yourself. She confessed without grace and also got accepted without grace so she didn't understand anything either. Then Du Jun turned around and went inside leaving her standing outside in the cold alone. Mi Young hurriedly shouted, Du Jun. This is a secret. If anyone asks, just say I forgot to do the classification homework so I asked you. Du Jun also agreed casually. When Du Jun entered the room without any interest in girls, they asked him what they were talking about. Du Jun was answering according to the script Min Young wrote earlier. He hadn't finished his sentence when suddenly Min Young's grandmother opened the door again and stuck her head in. Then she shouted loudly, I decided to date Du Jun from today. The group of men who heard her say that were shocked by her boldness. Min Young ran away after saying that and closed the door with a bang. She left Du Jun to face the hateful eyes of his friends who liked girls. The next day at a new building that no one knew who it belonged to yet but would find out soon enough. The old men in suits were evil inside, but outside they pretended to be polite and greeted each other. One of them reached out his hand and introduced himself happily to him. I'm Li Young Chio. Mr. Si Hoon also greeted back. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule to meet me. Mr. Li Young Chio replied, Don't be so formal. You are the one who saved the Achen group from collapsing. And my niece is the one who should thank you. Du Jun was standing on one side, silent and observing. He looked at Mr. Li Young Chio with a bullet like gaze, even though he had just met him for the first time. Then he remembered the conversation with the chairman. At that time, Du Jun had to be admired. Chairman of the acquisition board Li Young Chio is really impressive. After graduating from the 16th Department of the Military Academy, he joined the Central Intelligence Agency during the Fifth Republic era and was a congressman of the Democratic Party. The chairman casually replied, that's right. In the early days of the government, Li Young Chio would hold the power as the head of the secretary's office. It was very beneficial at that time. Returning to reality, Li Young Chio looked at Du Jun and asked, who is that young man over there? Si Hoon quickly answered, he is my employee. There will be no secrets between me and him. 
I intend to tell him about today's meeting. I hope you will let him join. After his uncle said that, Du Jun also bowed politely and pretended to greet. Li Yung Chio said comfortably, that's fine. There's nothing to hide anyway. He asked further, I heard from Chairman Sun Yen that you intend to bring $2.2 billion of fantasies available funds in New York to Korea, right? Si Hung nodded eagerly and answered, yes, sir. Li Yung Chio then asked, are there any conditions? Si Hung replied, yes, sir. The reason I met with you is also because of that condition. He took out a document and placed it on the table. The name of the document was Industrial Plan for SMC Construction and Communication. The chairman glanced at it briefly and still didn't say anything. Du Jun stood outside and thought. He didn't seem surprised when he mentioned $2.2 billion. It was clearly a number he heard for the first time. Why was he so calm? Or did he not know the value of $2.2 billion? The chairman calmly thought for a moment and then spoke. Why do investors want to get involved in construction? Finance and cement don't seem to match. Si Hoon hurriedly answered, this plan does not discuss cement business. Although it also contributes to a completely different aspect. I hope you will evaluate it positively a little bit. The chairman heard that and asked, if I'm positive, then you will pour dollars into Korea, right? Si Hoon immediately answered yes. At this point, the chairman said, pour dollars, reap huge profits, then take that money back to America. This is not too understandable why, perhaps the future of Action Group will not escape this fate either. After normalizing it, he would break up the group and sell it off and take the profits back to America. He looked at Si Hoon with displeasure and asked, is that right? Si Hoon quickly replied, no, sir, that's not it. We do the opposite. The chairman was puzzled and asked, the opposite? Then Du Jun said, yes, sir. We at Fantasy want to bring the money we make in America to Korea. Until now, our company has invested in Martin Computer, Microsoft, Hollywood Movies, Powercom Bank Japan and made a lot of profits. We use that money to buy back the Action Group, which can be said to be an export pillar. The chairman frowned and asked again, export pillar? He laughed mockingly, this young friend likes to joke, ha. Huh? Du Jun replied, export is the action of earning dollars, right? We just don't sell raw products, but we still earn foreign currency. But the chairman still said, that's how it looks now, but what about later? Si Hoon answered, if we only think about making money, then the exchange rate difference alone would be twice as much. But if the plan I proposed becomes a reality, it would be hard to guarantee a double profit. Then Si Hoon pleaded, please take a look at it once, chairman. Lee Young Chio was also starting to waver. He slowly picked up the file on the table. For people in their 60s and 70s, the export pillar was a symbol of pride and pride. The motivation that helped the poorest country in the world become an economic powerhouse was export. For those who had heard the story that Korea lacked resources, so human resources were a little bit and export was the only way to survive, they would surely feel uncomfortable when they heard the arrogant words from a guy who only knew how to play with money. After reading that report, the chairman said, the plan to build for the Korean media sounds not bad. You intend to invest all $2.2 billion in the media industry, right? Si Hoon replied, no, we only invest a quarter of it. Actually, we want to invest in many fields. We plan to hand over the investment company in the U.S. to the locals. And we will focus on Korea. The chairman heard that and slowly sat down seriously and asked, what about IT? Si Hoon was very surprised when the chairman asked about IT. At this time, the chairman continued, right, if you get huge profits when investing in Martin Microsoft, then I think IT is also a promised land, right? Hearing the chairman ask about it made Si Hoon startled a bit. Du Jun understood that he must have lost a lot of money because he was the one who decided to invest in IT to revive the economy after falling into recession and IMS crisis. 
didn't the government use force to nurture venture capital enterprises related to IT? In addition, the government also mentioned developing a strong culture. If you ignore the label of an American investment company of fantasy, Mediaset is very suitable for the core mission of the government. Thinking so, Du Jun said that IT would be very useful for developing small and medium enterprises when looking at the case of the U.S. The venture capital enterprises started from Silicon Valley developed so fast that they raised concerns that it was just a bubble. From the government's point of view, just turning the steering wheel would result in good results right away. The chairman was happy and said, young people really know this field well. Very smart. But Du Jun thought, just answer what the officials and politicians want to hear. The answer that Lee Young Trio wants is the bright future of IT. At this time, the chairman asked again, what do you think? Do you consider investing in IT? But Du Jun replied, the chairman of Fantasy has no intention of investing in IT. The two old men were both itching with surprise when they heard him say that. At this time, the chairman turned from happy to angry. But Du Jun continued, IT enterprises have to rely on breakthrough ideas and capabilities to develop. If there is private capital involved, they will only take ideas and technology. Don't let capitalists steal the youth of venture capitalists. The chairman was surprised and asked. So the main subject of the industry must be the government, right? Du Jun politely answered, yes, I think the government should prepare a beautiful flower garden and monitor the emergence of venture capital enterprises that build infrastructure for information technology. Just sit still and watch, you will see good results. Silicon Valley developed this way. The chairman heard this and seemed reasonable, then he started to calculate. Si Hoon had been sitting on one side listening, but he didn't understand anything. So the atmosphere fell into silence again. For the nth time after that, the chairman said, I have heard some very good opinions. I will review this plan carefully and contact you later. Can you tell me about the $2.2 billion investment plan? I will actively consider it from the government's perspective. Hearing the chairman say that, Si Hoon was very surprised. Du Jun smiled secretly because he knew that the chairman's active consideration was another way of saying approval. Then the chairman took the initiative to shake hands with Si Hoon, who hastily grabbed the chairman's golden hand. Du Jun saw the scene. He was about to make more money, so he smiled happily. He thought to himself, I was the one who gave the important opinion, but he didn't shake hands with me. This is how to distinguish the hierarchy. Then the two uncles and nephews walked away hand in hand. They had a car but didn't drive, they just suffered on the street. Si Hoon asked Du Jun, did you really mean it when you said you wouldn't invest in IT earlier? Du Jun confirmed, I meant it. Si Hoon asked in confusion, why? The government said they would invest, so it's like a gold mine. Besides, there are also many insurance companies coming to find us. But Du Jun remained silent, listening to his uncle talk and then sighed. He told his uncle, we are the owners of a company competing with Dian Moto. Venture capital is only a place for kids to dive in and make money. We have to play in big tournaments. Si Hoon was annoyed and said, you are a bit arrogant. If it's a big scale, we shouldn't underestimate it. But Du Jun replied, a few years ago when semiconductors were booming, did they know how much Sun Yan Islet Chanel ICS activities were worth? About 2,000 billion won. No matter how big an insurance company is, it can't touch Sun Yan Islet Chanel ICS toes. After saying that, Du Jun thought to himself, hundreds of thousands of companies are waving at me. I don't have time to pay attention to IT companies that only increase their revenue by 1 to 2,000 billion after 20 years. Si Hoon said, you have to save every penny to make a lot of money. And who knows? What if someone like Jayam at San Ho appears? Du Jun said arrogantly. You just invest little by little in the field you like. At least you have to make some pocket money. His uncle looked at this rebellious kid with bullet-like eyes. 
But Du Jun just thought to himself, the companies worth investing in haven't appeared yet. According to my memory, Queeniek of NES Sun started operating last year and Zinger Bell of Axit started operating this spring. At this moment, Uncle Sihun shouted from behind Du Jun's back, Du Jun, don't be delusional. Du Jun was startled and turned around to reply, What are you talking about, Uncle? Do you think I can become a chairman of a conglomerate by meeting someone who has influence in the government and touching hundreds of billions of dollars? After speaking, Sihun frowned in anger. Du Jun was surprised because he didn't know why his uncle suddenly got angry. After that, Uncle Sihun was still angry. Du Jun still didn't understand. He wondered why his uncle had been angry for ten years. This was the first time he was so furious. At this time, Sihun said, Chairman Jean only manages businesses worth billions of won. He even has to eat with people who have power in the government to keep hundreds of billions of won in benefits. Those are the things that a tycoon chairman needs to do. Du Jun was confused. He thought it was his own business. Why was his uncle so angry? Sihun continued, those people will lead 10,000 workers and try to earn every penny from the side dishes. Then they will ask, use that money to buy back the steel mill and build a site in China. Without workers, there will be no owners. Without farmers, there will be no landlords. Without people, there can be no king. And you. But the workers, farmers and common people don't have you, they only have a little money. Yet, you have already imitated a tycoon chairman. The side dishes they can earn billions, tens of billions, forget it, is that the price of the side dishes? Du Jun was very surprised to be scolded by his boss like that for the first time. But he knew that Si Hung was right after ten years. A former employee like him imitated a chairman. He didn't expect to become so arrogant. After self-examining himself, Du Jun bowed respectfully and said, I'm sorry, I was too naive. Si Hung was stunned. He didn't expect that the kid would be so obedient today. He said awkwardly, you listen and understand quickly, it's good that you understand. Let's discuss a little bit, where do you think we should invest? Du Jun replied, well, why don't you just decide for yourself? Si Hoon answered, no, you can outline the direction, but your investment judgment and intuition are better than mine. You tell me, where do you not like? Du Jun thought for a while and said, then I choose a code and play online. Si Hoon was surprised because he didn't understand online games. Du Jun explained, yes, there are two places, each one billion. The rest is up to you. Si Hoon thought about online games and started to think. After thinking, Si Hoon said, use all ten billion, forget it. The two of them will invest in games. The rest is less than one billion, I will split it to invest. Du Jun said, Yes, as long as one place explodes, we can recover the capital. Sihun laughed and said, You just heard something about the next government investing in IT. How can there be only one place that explodes? Du Jun heard his boss say that and just smiled without saying anything. He thought to himself that in five years, the person he was very grateful to would retire. It was a pity. The winter of 1997 was unusually cold, the only winter without Christmas songs echoing through the streets. The big buildings were covered with cold snow. But inside those buildings were high-ranking officials sitting in meetings. The ones who ate a lot of bribes whispered to each other loudly and softly. The tycoons were cold and didn't bother talking to anyone. The people who held the most important money in the world were always relaxed and comfortable and favored by banks. They had never experienced such a cold wind before, so of course they would panic more. An old man asked us, I heard that the merger discussion of Sun Yan Motor has ended, now we can proceed with the acquisition procedure right? But Si Hoon replied, We haven't signed the merger order of Sun Yan Group yet, we are adjusting the shares. The old man asked again, when will they finish adjusting over there? Si Hoon answered, you should ask that question to the Sun Yen group. 
Why are you asking us? Another man said, Chairman Jean of Sun Yan has made a commitment. The rest is just the procedure. At this point, Du Jun spoke up, that's not all. The directors looked at this young man in astonishment. Where did he come from? One of them asked Si Hoon, excuse me, but who is he? Si Hoon answered, oh, I called him urgently from the U.S. headquarters. He will take charge and manage this acquisition negotiation. Hearing that he came from the U.S., the directors and chairman became silent. Then they pretended to be casual and stood up and said, we have been rude. Du Jun thought to himself, they were very curious about his position. They would surely check if he was qualified to take this role. Then, the directors took his business card and looked at the name Hako Jean on it and were stunned. Du Jun introduced himself, I am a second generation overseas Vietnamese, so I use an English name. Please excuse me. Du Jun calculated in his mind. Hako Jean, an employee at Fantasy's U.S. headquarters, a young overseas Vietnamese who manages the investment system of the headquarters. This also implied that Korea was in danger. Even the main headquarters had to show up. At this time, a polite director said, Please continue, Du Jun. Calmly, Du Jun said, The audit team of the headquarters is carefully reviewing this acquisition. The directors were shocked and said, What? It was supposed to be a done deal. Why do they have to review it now? Si Hoon also acted as if this was a serious issue. Du Jun thought to himself, In this situation, the bank still maintained the principle of not talking to the subordinates. Then Si Hoon scratched his head and said, That's right. You all know that they only follow the system and don't listen to the directors. Because this is related to our company's system, we need to pay attention to this guy. He has a lot of opinions from Fantasy's US investors. So please listen to him explain everything. The bank directors were shocked when they heard his origin. Du Jun said, the original plan was as follows. The Sun Yen group wanted Achimoto, but they had bought Hando Steel and almost ran out of money. Then Fantasy appeared. We plan to temporarily take over Akin. Then when Sun Yen had enough money, we would sell it back at a higher price. I think you can all guess this step. The directors became scared when they heard this. They were afraid that he would not buy it back. Du Jun continued, but Korea suffered. There was a foreign exchange crisis. If the purchase price was 1.2 trillion won, if the exchange rate was 800 won, then it would be 1.5 billion dollars. With an exchange rate of 1,800 won, but now it's only 670 million dollars. What if the exchange rate goes up to 2,500 won? When they heard this, the directors were terrified. When he heard the number $480 million, a director of the IMS aid fund took action. They had about $2 billion, so there was no way the exchange rate would rise to 2,501. The exchange rate would drop below 2,001 and soon stabilize. Du Jun calmly said, they promised to have $5.5 billion, but in the end they only had $2 billion. The government had changed, so they had to renegotiate with the new government for $50 billion. Everyone also understood that they could not predict when they would have enough money. Hearing this, the three directors fell silent. One pushed his fake glasses pretending to be calm, another pretended to draw attention by smoking, or something like that. Du Jun continued, tomorrow was the beginning of 1998, and everyone had to arrange to settle this year's accounts but looking at the books alone would not give an answer. When the government took power, they might restructure and merge banks. If they wanted to survive, they had to put fantasy's dollars into the bank before the new year. Du Jun knew that export businesses earned dollars, while import businesses needed dollars. If they held dollars in their hands, these businesses would rush to demand dollar payments from foreign banks as well. So Du Jun continued. According to Fantasy's position, we, Korea, were very unstable. Many people doubted that Korea could recover. 
the Korean economy would decline to the standard of Southeast Asia. Hearing him declare that, the whole bank was shocked. A director asked, what did he mean by that? Du Jun looked at him with bullet-like eyes. Then he said, although we were the negotiators for buying priority rights, we wanted to give up our status. The three bank directors heard that and their eyes widened. Du Jun still calmly said, that means we will withdraw, if we give up buying a kin, the Haiyan group will show up, right? You guys should negotiate with them. The directors had a big headache when they heard how the Dehaian group showed up. They were still busy putting out fires there, let alone having any spirit of buying and selling. At the chairman's house, the chairman said, This kid, if you don't need to trade then fine. But acting like robbing 800 billion is not different from robbing 800 billion, right? But Du Jun replied, There is no robber who is willing to negotiate, sir. The chairman said, forcing the mouse into a dead end and making it choose. That's the knife. Du Jun sat quietly on one side, listening to his grandfather preaching morality, then remembered when he was at the bank. He had said that the purchase price was 800 billion won at an exchange rate of 2001 which was still 400 million dollars. The bank director asked in fear, wasn't that price only 60% of the original purchase price? But Du Jun was the one with money so he always acted superior. Du Jun said, if you guys accept, I will send $400 million to the designated account today. The directors liked money too but it was too little so they didn't dare to agree. Du Jun thought for sure they couldn't refuse this offer unconditionally. Back at the chairman's house, the chairman said, not giving time to think, you did very well. Give the mouse a corner, it will only escape in time. Du Jun confidently replied, wait until dawn, then everything will become clear. The grandfather chairman continued, I have to nail it to the post to get through your conditions, right? Du Jun looked at him blankly and answered, yes, but he was afraid of his eyes. Then he said, you should prepare a position as an advisor in Sun Yen, I will pay all the costs. The old man looked at his grandson and smiled, you learn bad habits fast. Du Jun learned from him who else? He taught bad habits to his son then he taught them to his son who was also his grandson. I just stayed by his side and learned from him. At this point, the chairman spoke up and replied, I know. Then he handed over a file and said, look at this. Du Jun was surprised. He took the file and opened it. He was shocked when he saw the notes in the document. This is a list of banks that have been sold and merged, the old cunning man said. I don't know what to do with it. It turned out to be for our Du Jun. Du Jun asked in astonishment, are the banks on this list also bought out? The chairman smiled happily and answered, I don't need to report such ordinary information to me. I only know the information about Duyan Group's level. Upon hearing this, Du Jun was so bewildered and panicked that he was almost foolish. The old chairman continued, the policy will be used effectively, consider it your lucky break. If they knew they were about to be unemployed, they would definitely cling on tightly, and maybe even a flock of vultures would come bowing their heads in thanks, Du Jun realized. Those papers and his beloved self, if he had known this information earlier, would have set the price at 50%, not 60%. Suddenly, the grandfather called Du Jun's name and woke him up. He said, at the beginning of the year, Sun Yen plans to announce a large-scale restructuring plan. Du Jun thought to himself, indeed, $1 billion is too hard to swallow. Oh, until now. He only sold subsidiaries, but never rearranged them. How many subsidiaries does he plan to rearrange? Du Jun said, you have made a difficult decision. The grandfather sighed and said, it's a good thing anyway, and it will gather the departments that only eat money or lose competitiveness, and deal with them thoroughly. No one will dare to imply that people like us are unfair dismissal anymore. At this time, Du Jun realized that he had forgotten that IMS was the best opportunity for the remaining companies. This was also the time when the big groups began to monopolize. The grandfather stood up and said, 
the family took this opportunity to do things that had been delayed. You are over 20 years old. I have to give you a gift. Du Jun was very surprised and looked forward to his gift. The grandfather continued, I will give you a small share of the group. I will also mention this in the new restructuring, so you can buy it at a low price. Du Jun didn't understand why his grandfather suddenly became so kind. The chairman smiled and said, You kid, you got Sun Yan Motor but you are still happy with that little share? Then, at Si Hoon's familiar building, Si Hoon called Fantasy in New York. Four hundred million dollars were transferred to the bank loan account the next morning in the main trading bank of Achen Group. Dozens of lawyers reviewed the contract that had been purchased with changed conditions. The contract was signed that afternoon. Today, I am an employee of Korea's second largest car company. On the first day of the new year 1998, at the chairman's mansion, the luxurious yellow lights were lit up. Everyone was immersed in the cheerful atmosphere of the family party. Du Jun was also here. Suddenly someone asked Sang Jun, I heard you study music. Sang Jun hurriedly bowed his head and greeted the grandfather chairman. As soon as he arrived, the chairman asked, Do you want to be a singer? Sang Jun answered, No sir, I am studying to be a composer. The chairman was surprised and asked, What is a composer? Shang Jun explained, A composer creates albums for singers sir. The old man angrily scolded, You kid, of course I know that. Do you look down on me for being old? Sang Jun rarely met him but was scolded by him so he was scared. Then, he asked nervously, Are you okay? The chairman asked back, What's wrong? Shang Jun quickly answered, I changed my study path according to my wish. The chairman smiled, Just do what you want to do, this old man is too kind. It made Shang Jun a little confused. The chairman continued, Learn from your father, I heard he is the owner of the biggest film company in our country, right? He asked his grandson, Du Jun's son. He quickly answered, Oh no, not yet, it's still far away. The old chairman asked again, So, what have you achieved in the last ten years in that tiny industry like a mouse tail? His son answered, This year, my company will rise to the top film company position, please don't scold me anymore. The chairman just smiled and didn't say anything else. Shang Jun met his grandfather again after a long time. He didn't expect his grandfather to change his personality. Du Jun's mother was also surprised because this father-in-law was too kind now. The old man called out, Shang Jun. It made Shang Jun startled, yes, sir. The chairman said, you look like your father, you have to finish your studies quickly and become the most successful person in ten years. Shang Jun didn't expect his grandfather to suddenly become so kind. He heard him say and clenched his fist. He bowed his head and answered loudly, Yes sir, I will become the best person. Du Jun stood aside and didn't say anything but just smiled. The first news on the New Year's TV broadcast was the decision to sell two banks. One was the representative bank established in 1992 under the name Chosun Savings Bank. Two was the local bank established in 1959 and later developed into a national bank. The reason that made the news more shocking was because both banks were designated as priority targets for foreign concessions. Everyone considered the bank as the place where the wealth of the nation was concentrated. So the people were very angry when IMS announced that they would intervene in the Emergency Financial Relief Fund. My gratitude disappeared, because I realized that they did not lend dollars but just borrowed dollars to get the bank. Maybe among those who watched that news, I was the most surprised. I looked back at the notebook of memories from my previous life ten times, but I didn't find this event. It's true that in college, I was too busy playing around and didn't care about economic news. One thought always appeared. If I knew in advance, could I buy back the bank and could I buy it back now? The bank and the big conglomerates all wanted it, but couldn't. If I got that bank, it would be like growing wings. How much is the giant price to buy back two banks? 
10 billion won or 10,000 billion won? The joy of owning a large car company disappeared, a new prey appeared right in front of me. The ambition to get that prey made me excited at the gate of the chairman's mansion. There were a lot of reporters standing outside, luxury cars ran in one by one. There were a lot of luxury cars parked at the chairman's mansion. Some ladies flattered and said thanks to him for giving us a chance to visit the chairman's house of Sun Yen Group. It's true that family halo, everyone in this family looks handsome. Where is the newlywed house? Chai District. Mr. Dame Hanna? Or is it an apartment? The bride smiled and said. My husband's house is in Pyeongchang, starting a life as a daughter-in-law. A friend said, it's true that the tycoon family still lives in the Chinsu era. The bride smiled and said, you are silly, even if they tell me to go out and live separately, I have to cling tightly, there is no prince who lives outside the palace. I am the daughter-in-law of Vice Chairman Sun Yen, how can I cook, wash, and clean? My life only needs to sit at the breakfast and dinner table, and smile. The bride said arrogantly, it's worth it. In another corner outside the huge mansion of the chairman, some guys were gossiping about John Chun getting married. Who will lead us? Another guy said, do you still believe that? Marriage is just a mandatory ceremony, Yong Chun will still play with us later. The groom Young Chun sighed tiredly, then changed his face and said, Whoever hears will think there are only bachelors here. I got married the latest, you guys are just jealous. Among the friends after getting married, everyone only cares about their wives, I want to remind you not to do that. Another guy laughed and said, Because their wives are richer, they have to live like that, how can they compare with Zheng Chun? Young Chun threw away his cigarette and said, Forget it, forget it, after getting married I can't mess around anymore, the old man makes me work seriously. Then he used his expensive leather shoes to step on the cigarette butt, and continued, if I don't pay attention to my wife, I have to pay attention to my father-in-law, everyone is like that, what else, play moderately. The friends heard that and said, okay, we understand. Yong Chun then waved his hand at his friends and said, I'm about to go on my honeymoon, wait for me to come back and have a few drinks. After saying that, he turned around and looked at one of his friends in the whole group, then the two went to a corner to whisper to each other. Yong Chun asked, you had that little girl yesterday, right? His friend replied, the supporting actress in the movie? Yong Chun answered, yeah, two days later send her on a plane to where I am. I will send you the address of the hotel, and arrange a date with the broker in Korea. His friend heard that and raised his eyebrows, Yong Chun patted his friend's shoulder and said. The honeymoon lasts ten days, how can I take someone I don't know, and let my palace go through ten days? I also have to enjoy it. His friend replied, okay, let me arrange it, just consider this as my wedding gift. Then inside the magnificent mansion, some flatterers were bowing their heads to congratulate the chairman, congratulating him on whatever he did. They all bowed their heads. Congratulations to you, Mr. Chairman, the chairman also politely thanked. Suddenly there was a voice, Mr. Chairman, don't mind your uncle-in-law. The owner of the voice was an old man. He continued, this guest is a bit extravagant, to organize a small wedding like this, then go over and shake hands. The chairman also graciously replied. Oh, my uncle-in-law's precious niece but knock should make her feel comfortable when she is at our house. Then the two old men shook hands as if they were fighting. The chairman smiled and said, I have something to say, let's go somewhere else. The uncle-in-law didn't dare to refuse also smiled and replied, yes. Then the two moved to a room that had been reserved in advance. There were two cups of tea in the large room with a table as big as a house. The two sat at opposite ends, looking at each other like they were going on a blind date. At this time, the chairman leisurely put down his tea cup and called his uncle-in-law word, Chairman Hong, we have become one family now. It's time for you to stop. Then Chairman Hong didn't understand and asked back, what do you mean? 
the chairman changed his face and said, you should stop sending people to follow my family. At this time the face of the uncle-in-law stiffened as if sprayed with glue. The chairman continued, your beloved niece is about to marry into a position of someone who will temporarily think that you want to find out what your uncle-in-law's family is like. But only until this point. Chairman Hong hurriedly denied, no not like that. At this time the chairman was furious and told him to shut up and listen to me. The chairman Hong was poorer, so he had to swallow his words when the other chairman spoke. The other chairman said, Young Chun is not fully mature, so he still likes to play, even though he is 30 years old. Maybe you think he won't do anything, so you can easily control him. The chairman Hong did not refuse further, No, sir, I don't think so. Then the other chairman continued to boast, He can do whatever he wants, because he is my grandson. The chairman Hong had to be silent every time the other chairman was angry, because he was poorer. The other chairman continued to say, Does my grandson have to live a lazy life? Why? Because he is my grandson. The chairman Hong did not dare to interrupt, he just sat there and listened to his preaching. After listening for a while, he was so angry that he could only squeeze his leg. The other chairman said again, don't call my grandson to your house at will, there is no such thing. Meet his wife's family instead. If you miss your niece, just call your own grandson back. Today is the last day Zhang Chun meets his family, if you happen to meet him, it's only for business. Only meet him when you need advertising. The chairman Hong did not understand why he had to listen to the old man's preaching, but the old man continued to say, Anyone with the surname Hong is not allowed to set foot in any building named Sun Yen. The pen of the Hansung newspaper can be broken by Sun Yen's money. Until then, the chairman Hong still could not say a word, being poor was so miserable. Then the other chairman left coldly, and when he passed by, he left a sentence, Don't underestimate what I just said. The chairman Hong sat in one place, like Chang Mai who was sprayed with glue and stiffened. Then the other chairman left and slammed the door shut, leaving the chairman Hong alone. The more he thought about it, the angrier he got. The old bastard was calculating. He wanted his nephew to avoid his wife's house, which meant he considered Jean Young Chun as his heir. The old men did not have much time left, both him and Chairman Jean. But the future of the young ones was still very open. Both Hong Sung and Jean Young Chun were like that even if he wanted to warn others not to touch Sun Yen. But time was not on his side. Late that night, the study room of the chairman was lit up. The chairman and his youngest son, who was Du Jun's father, sat together for the first time. The son asked nervously, What do you want to say? The chairman asked if what his son did was true. The son answered, Yes, that field is less affected by the foreign exchange crisis. The chairman asked again, but it's not easy to attract film investors. The son replied, it's not cheap but it can survive the storm. Other fields have to face the problem of survival rather than difficulty. Hearing his son say that, the chairman smiled kindly for the first time. Then he crossed his arms and said, I can help you with your hand. The son was startled and said, don't joke anymore, I'm not as naive as before. The chairman heard his son react like that and felt tense but did not say anything else. His son just looked at him with a puzzled expression and thought for a while before saying Father please speak I need to go. The chairman closed his eyes, scratched his head, thought about something and then said okay I'll make it simple I'll give you Sun Yan's Health Fund and Human Development Institute. The son was stunned and couldn't believe that his father was so generous to him. The hospital run by Sun Yan's health fund was one of the top three hospitals very large so just the tax alone was a billion won. But the human resource development company Sun Yang is not enough to be called a business. Although it operates as an independent legal entity, it is also just a human resource development organization, specializing in training various levels such as training high school graduates, college graduates, new staff, and executives. The vice chairman looked at his son and asked, Why did you react like that? Do you feel lacking? The father thought to himself, 
I don't expect anything, so just accept what I give. There's one thing that I still feel uneasy about, the father thought of his son who was due June, his beloved son. Then he clenched his teeth to suppress his anger and looked at his father and said, Yes, I still feel very lacking. The old chairman couldn't believe that his son was so greedy. What do you mean? The two fathers and sons looked at each other without knowing what to say, just staring at each other, staring for a long time but no one said anything. At this time, the chairman asked, How can you lack when you don't care about our company? I thought you came to give up, now you have ambitions. A son who is not a son should also fulfill the responsibility of a father. The old man was surprised, the responsibility of a father? Are you talking about Dujun? The son looked tense at his father and said, Yes. The father heard that, sighed deeply, then fell silent for a moment. Then he said, You ask Du Jun how much value the hospital and the human resource development company give you. That kid would know, maybe he would congratulate you with both hands. The son was shocked to hear that because he didn't know about these things, the money was from his son. The chairman continued, You protect what I give you, then give them to Du Jun when the time is right. I will also take care of Du Jun separately. Of course, I won't give it for free but sell it cheaply. The son was surprised and said, You sell it? You want to make money from your grandson too? At this time, the old chairman snapped, You just know that. This story, Du Jun will understand you better than you. The son heard that and stopped talking, thinking that this must be a lot of money. Then the chairman said, There are eyes and ears of many people right now, only you know for now. The son stood up, bowed, and said, Thank you, father. The father ordered him to go back, as if to say, just take it and go back then play a first. The bride and groom who just got married sat alone in the plain cabin without anyone else. The new bride looked around looking for someone to talk to as if there was no one. Then she called her husband, Young Chun, is this the plane you rented, making the tycoon husband laugh out loud. Then he replied, No, I just rented first class and business class seats only. Business class seats are for six bodyguards of my family. The wife heard that and panicked, Oh my God, is this the life of a wealthy family? Even my father and grandfather can't do that. Then she took out a file from her bag and said, Look at this please. The husband took it with indifference, so the wife had to urge him, Hurry up and open it. The husband opened the file, then slowly took out a piece of paper inside. At first, he saw some pictures on the report paper. Then he saw that it was information about his family. He was very angry, how did they get such detailed information like this? They must have followed closely almost 24-7. The wife still smiled and continued, as expected, the most notable people are Director Jin Yanqi and Du Jun. Director Jin Yanqi often meets with executives of subsidiaries, especially Du Jun who has officially appeared next to Fantasy's director. The wife was talking when the husband angrily shouted, You crazy bitch! The wife was shocked and asked, What did you say? The husband's face was like a hellish demon and he answered, I already know what that oot guy is doing. How dare you follow my whole family? The wife looked at her husband's face as if he was going to a funeral and she started to be afraid. Then, the newlywed husband immediately tore up the report papers, which showed his whereabouts, while cursing and scolding his wife. You want to act like a boss when you are nothing but a motherfucker? You are disgusting. You just need to give me a son. If you dare to do anything without my permission, you will never escape from the room behind the house. Remember that well. At this point, the wife could only cry silently and she did not dare to say anything. The husband finished scolding and angrily called out, Secretary Choi, Secretary Choi. Choi ran in and said, Yes, Director. The husband ordered, We will separate when we arrive, so you find a hotel for me right away. Watch her closely, only let her go shopping, don't let her do anything else. Got it? Looking at the wife, he felt a bit sorry but did not know what to do. 
The secretary just replied, yes, director. The wife was very angry, clenched her fists, but did not dare to hit that rich guy. After cursing, the husband left that place, then found another seat on his luxury plane and sat alone. He thought to himself, the more he thought about it, the more disgusted he felt, but it was better this way, it was a good excuse for him to be free during the ten-day honeymoon. From the first day of marriage, he had made the person called his wife mentally collapse. He planned to call her three days later. He had met her the other day but now he could call her as soon as he arrived, then the flight would continue to its destination. The couple enjoyed their honeymoon that night at the main character's house, Du Jun. Du Jun said to his father, I think you are giving that person a favor. His father was surprised. But Du Jun explained. People say that Sun Yan Hospital has a lot of VIP customers. Even high-ranking officials of politicians do not want to reveal their health status, so they go to a place that keeps absolute secrets like Sundank Hospital. Many celebrities also go there. At this point, his father was very surprised to hear his son say this. Du Jun continued, From now on, anyone who wants special treatment or privileges will contact you. That way you can build relationships gradually. When making movies, you can also take care of the director or the main actor at Sun Yan Hospital. What else? His father asked. What about human resource development? Du Jun answered, for this part, those who are promoted are trained at the Institute's training center. Although there is no guarantee of promotion from the evaluation, it also affects being eliminated from the promotion candidates. Hearing that, the father was even more surprised. Everyone knew that the Sun Yen group managed human resources very strictly. It was not like the training institute of other companies. The selection and training of Sun Yen was very similar to a judicial training center. There was no loophole. It included training time, seminars, discussions, exams, and evaluations. Du Jun continued. Those who wanted to become the key figures of the company had to study at the Development Institute. If you became a director, many people would call you for help. All those people would become your network, the father replied. Then you would build relationships from both inside and outside the group, Du Jun also said. Yes, because you started to want it, you wanted to turn them into your people. But the father smiled and said, Not into my people. I turned them into your people. Hearing that, Du Jun just smiled but did not say anything. The father asked curiously, How can you understand my intention as soon as you hear it? Du Jun answered, It's because you don't care about these things. The father asked again, Can you tell me about the share structure of the Human Development Institute? And the accumulated assets too. How is the current situation? Du Jun answered, Yes, of course. Not only about the network of acquaintances. If so, you wouldn't have told me to keep it secret. If they knew about this, they would oppose it with all their might. The father asked with a headache, Is there still a secret behind the words to keep it secret? Du Jun smiled and replied, You are a person with many secrets that only tell new people, I seem to be more like grandfather than you, right? It's not easy to fulfill the duty of a father. Du Jun saw his father so kind, he just smiled silently, looking at his father. The scene switched to a very large company. This company did not pay salaries, but the employees in the building still went to work to keep their positions. They must have known that this company was about to go bankrupt, but they still tried to work to keep a glimmer of hope. They could not shine again because every morning they opened their eyes, if they did not come to this building, they did not know where to go. The unpaid salary was also urging them. They hoped that they would get paid some part. Although everyone said it hundreds of times, they did not expect anything anymore. But it was the hopeless hope left in their hearts that tortured these employees. At this time, Du Jun and Mr. Si Hoon stood in front of the building. Du Jun coldly asked what would happen to those people. Mr. Si Hoon just smiled faintly and replied, You have to become their savior. 
you have to pay their salaries and give them extra bonuses to boost their morale. At this time, the scene switched to the chairman's room. A fat man reached out and greeted me. I am Kamajan, executive director of DA Construction. Sihun was in the room with three men from the company. Do Jun despise thinking look at them, in the chairman's room there is only a butler but no chairman? Fantasy bought 5% of DA Construction shares. As soon as they received the notice from the major shareholders, they contacted each other for a meeting. Looking at the empty chairman's seat, Du Jun muttered, I bought shares of a bankrupt company, so I had to pay more attention right away. If buying shares was a big investor who swallowed as in group like fantasy, the more guilty they were, the more scared they felt. The fat director smiled and said, We were very surprised. Suddenly your company wanted to buy our shares. Du Jun smiled coldly, he was just worried or scared. The fat guy said again, our company is not big enough for a big investor like Fantasy to care about. Can you share the reason? Mr. Sihun smiled his commercial smile and answered, There is no big reason for investors to buy shares. Of course, it is for money. How can he say it is not a big deal? The fat director acted mysterious, stroked his chin, and said, It is a bit unreasonable to say it from my mouth. Don't you read the news or watch the current affairs? You may face risks when you get involved in a company that is about to collapse like DA Construction. No one invests in shares these days. They all become beggars. An old man continued, you have to put money in the bank. The interest rate is quite high. Mr. Sihun heard this and frowned disdainfully. He said to the old man, your position is higher than the executive director. Why did he turn black? He continued, if you don't have a high position, please leave. The only thing you shareholders who bought more than 5% of the shares did was to come here and give it to the executive director. It is not the director's representative who communicates. The matter has annoyed me enough. Who are you to interfere? The old man heard that and turned away immediately. The male lead did not say a word and looked at Mr. Sihun who was angry. There, the fat director stood up immediately, bowed his head and said, Please understand, the director is trying to raise capital to save the company. He even met with the assistant of the Sunhouse Credit Fund. After saying that, the fat director looked at the old man who was ashamed. There, the old man immediately knew what to do, stood up, bowed, I was rude. I really apologize to Mr. Sihun, he clasped his hands and replied. So you should know what to do and avoid me. I want to talk quietly. The director looked at the old man and the fat one, and their two accomplices immediately knew what to do and bowed out of the room. The fat director then said to Sihun, please tell me the reason why you suddenly bought shares of our company. Mr. Sihun replied before answering, Shouldn't you tell me the reason why you want to see me, Du Jun? He looked at Mr. Sihun, for the first time seeing him like that. He was usually very polite, always saying bland jokes to show his humor. But now he was too rude and aggressive, surely because he thought the board of directors of DA Construction would embezzle the company's money. The director forced a smile and said, I want to meet with you, just because I want to ask that reason only. Clearly you want something, just tell me straight away. The board's duty is to listen to what shareholders want. Mr. Sihun replied, I told you already, but because I want to make money, that's what an investor is. The director raised his hand and replied. That's why I said, if you want to make money, you have to sell shares higher than the purchase price, but that is impossible. Mr. Sihun pretended to scratch his head and said, I don't know, maybe someone will buy it back at a better price. Is that so? The director heard that and glared at him, then said, Oh, I see, it could be like that. Let us find out then. There are still many people who believe that DA construction will revive. Those people must be preparing to buy most of our shares. Do June evaluated, it's not simple over there either? Mr. Sihun replied, you have tried so hard to that extent, so today we came here also as meaning. 
so can you quickly find that person? The director replied, we will find them as soon as possible. He calculated in his mind, will they quickly withdraw their plan before I destroy everything or will they delay to buy more time? Mr. Sihun stood up and said, we have said what we needed to say. We will take our leave now. The director saw this and pretended to reach out his hand. He said, fortunately, it seems that our esteemed shareholder is satisfied. We will try to find the right person and help Mr. Sihun's wallet become thicker. Mr. Sihun smiled politely and replied, yes, please act quickly. The deadline is tomorrow. The fat director was shocked and said, tomorrow? Mr. Sihun, tomorrow is too hard for us. Mr. Sihun said, is that so? I will request the shareholders meeting to be postponed until the morning after tomorrow. If you want to stop the meeting, you better hurry up. Goodbye. Mr. Sihun and the male lead left before the fat director's astonishment. At this time, they left the company and got in the car. Mr. Sihun pulled his tie impatiently and said, These dogs are definitely 100% greedy. Du Jun opened his mouth and said, We will act tomorrow. We have to confirm the right to audit the accounting books and check the assets of DA construction first. Mr. Sihun said, That's fast. You have learned well, haven't you? Du Jun smiled and said, It's still a long way to go. I'm just a disciple who has just left the mountain, master. Mr. Sihun laughed loudly at that. Then he took out his old brick phone and dialed a number. He said to the goat head on the other side, Yes, it's me. Call all the appraisal team to come. Call Samsung Accounting and ask them to send me a summary of all the accounting firms. Tell the investigation team to wait for orders. We will start the meeting in ten minutes. The scene switched to the huge villa of the old chairman. He sat in his room with his arms crossed and said to Du Jun, What do you want to see me urgently for? And why don't you let me go out? Du Jun said, I need your help. The grandfather smiled happily and said, Tell me what it is and let me think how much I should charge. The male lead thought to himself, He always mentions money but he always gives more than he takes. He is always generous with his grandson, isn't he? Du Jun said, I'm dealing with DA Construction. This is a company that is necessary for the Mabo's SMC project this year. The old chairman said, Your opening is too long. Get to the point. Du Jun looked cold and said, The owner and board of directors of that company are gnawing on the last bones of a collapsing company. I intend to take over the company before that happens. What do you think? The old chairman was surprised and then a smile appeared on his lips. He laughed loudly and said, You are indeed a lucky kid. Du Jun thought to himself, He still pretends to be ignorant but he already knows what's going on and what to do next. The grandfather asked cunningly, Who is the director of this construction company? Is it Kong something? Du Jun said, It's director Kamijin. His younger brother Kamijin is the executive director. The old chairman asked, Have you met him already? Du Jun said, Yes, I just want to confirm it. The old man asked again, So you must have found out that they are embezzling money, right? Du Jun answered, Yes, as soon as Fantasy owned 5% of DA's shares, they contacted us immediately. He said he would buy back the shares. The old chairman was amazed and said, 5%? I heard that there are many wolves in the stock market who are gnawing on bones like that. It turns out that it was Sihun's idea. Du Jun answered, Yes, when DA Construction collapsed, their share price started to drop sharply and there were rumors of bankruptcy. We don't have to spend a lot of money to get DA. Using 5% of shares to stir up the whole company is not only done in companies that are about to collapse. There are people who buy shares of normal companies and become real shareholders and then sell them at a high price. But they have to spend a lot of money to own 5% of shares of normal companies. That's why it's something that ordinary wolves don't dare to do. The old chairman stroked his chin. They must be terrified, right? 
If you request the shareholders' meeting tomorrow, they will also be scared out of their wits. Du Jun replied, Instead of a shareholders' meeting, I plan to check their books and get the evidence tomorrow. They are withdrawing from the company. The old man asked, So you intend to send them to jail? Du Jun replied, Yes, I have to recover all the assets that were stolen from the company. After that, if I reorganize the company in a new start, won't the company gradually gain a reputation? He finished speaking and looked at the old chairman silently. The old chairman thought for a while and then said to the male lead Du Jun, The family of director Kanmo holds a large number of shares. You have to get them in your hands to ensure your management rights. Du Jun said, cash or property embezzlement will be punished more. If the family of director Kanu Sun turns the shares they hold into assets owned by DA Construction, then the number of shares needed to ensure management rights will not be much. The old man said happily, because you are the director representative who controls the common assets of the company. Du Jun smiled and replied, that's for sure. The old chairman said again, then the road ahead is still long, but we don't have time. At least until next month, after buying back DA construction and normalizing everything, we can proceed with the Mabo project with your uncle. Your uncle will also become the mayor of Seoul by then. Du Jun replied, yes, what I want to ask you is about that time. The old chairman was surprised. At that time? Why? Then he pondered for a while and said to the male lead Du Jun, time is precious and cannot be bought with money. Du Jun calmly replied, although you can't buy longevity, you can totally buy life for people. You have also used something called salary to buy the lives of 100,000 employees of Sun Yen. What else? The old chairman looked at Du Jun with surprise. This kid is giving me a headache again. He said first, we have to ban the Kanu Sun family from leaving the country. The amount of money transferred abroad is also quite large, so the Ministry of Justice has ordered an investigation. Du Jun heard that and immediately brightened his eyes. He moved forward and massaged the old man's shoulder. Then please help me ban them from leaving for now. The old man replied, massage me more enthusiastically then. He then picked up the phone and made a call. He said to the person on the other end of the line, Inspector Kim, are you busy? Du Jun was astonished. Inspector? Why? The old chairman continued, that's what I mean. Our country's economy is in this situation, so how can we ignore a company that is on the verge of bankruptcy just to fill their pockets? No, no, first we should stop them from escaping abroad. That's right, I will find out more and report to you later. Let's meet for a chat sometime. The old chairman achieved his goal and hung up the phone. He turned to Du Jun and asked, Are you satisfied now? Du Jun smiled happily and replied, Thank you very much. He then enthusiastically massaged the old man. The old chairman said again, Tomorrow we will only review the accounting books. You need to get at least one piece of evidence and use it to file a lawsuit against the board of directors for embezzlement. If the tax office and the prosecution act at the same time, then the other side will surrender. The male lead was amazed. Surrender? What exactly does he mean by surrender? The old chairman said again, Du Jun, what is your real purpose of buying back DA construction? Du Jun replied, to help the SMC project this year succeed. The old chairman closed his eyes and replied, just say that much for now. Think about the things behind it later. The male lead pondered. He only looked at the immediate goal and chose the things that needed to be done right away. The more urgent it was, the more he needed to focus on short-term goals rather than long-term ones. Is that what he meant? The old chairman said further, after the end of the local election in June, if you want to work with your uncle, you have to control DA construction by early this year at the latest, right? Du Jun doubted and replied, yes, sir. The old man said again, what if after the prosecution collects evidence and starts a trial for embezzlement? 
it will take several years to recover the money in their pockets and confiscate it to return to the company. In the meantime, the DA company will go bankrupt. The lenders will start calculating how to deal with the problem. The fastest way is that DA will be in your hands in two years. Du June pondered. Indeed, time was the issue. He had taken the initiative to ask for a shorter time. And he was getting an answer from him. Du Jun said, so your surrender has a different meaning. You mean you have to prepare a way to live, right? The old man smiled smugly and said coldly, that's right. The prosecutor and the tax office are just for scaring. You have to make them choose between becoming penniless and going to jail in two years or agreeing to pay everything and keep enough to not starve and flee abroad. Du Jun was shocked. Does he have the power to adjust these things? He could not have the power that he had even if he spent thousands of billions of won. He used time to fill the gap of money. He gave money to the state officials and they sold their conscience for that money. At the moment they sold their conscience, they were in his grip. This kept going around and became Sun Yan's power. Du Jun's fingers began to tremble slightly. He felt the carelessness in the saying that money can buy time. The old chairman was still thinking deeply. He was a rich thinker indeed. Du Jun said, I will take care of the surrender, so can you continue to direct the prosecutor and the tax office? The old chairman smiled happily. Let's see how you act. Du Jun bowed. I will try my best. The old chairman said sternly, Don't just talk. Du Jun replied politely, Whatever you want, just tell me. I will listen carefully. The old man continued to think and then said. If you take over DA construction, you have to put my people in the vacant positions in the board of directors. Du Jun stiffened. Is that the request? If it was not only the representative director but also the decision maker like the executive director who was his person, then who would DA construction belong to? The old chairman said cunningly, you don't have anyone to hold on anyway. If you don't use my people, have you thought of anyone yet? Du Jun answered, there are still many people in the two collapsed companies, Dong Su Construction and Gooden Construction. I also promoted many managers to directors here. This will help improve the situation. The old chairman was surprised. Oh, have you thought of that already? Du Jun pretended to smile and said, do you think that's okay? The old chairman crossed his arms and said, Oh no, of course not. The executive director of a construction company must be able to handle those site managers and workers who are exposed to all kinds of storms. They also dare to threaten the residents who are relocated. They are just those who drink rice wine at noon and command the site. I heard they even made those people in high positions. Du Jun remained silent. Although those who came from construction companies were not very good, he thought anyone who had a higher position than the executive director would become a politician. Did I make a mistake in this step? The chairman would say that I am worried, right? I have to weigh whether our country's water is a tonic or a poison. A company that only has our people. I am afraid that I will lose everything to Sun Yen, right? The male lead was petrified when he heard that. He is a tycoon who knows everything. The old man saw that and his eyes flashed. Du Jun said again, I have already told you that I will hand over the construction project to Sun Yen. The chairman sneered. How can I believe this from an ambitious person like you who would give it to Sun Yen? Du Jun was stunned when he heard that. How? The old man knows everything. When Du Jun was standing still, waiting for his husband, the old man said, what are you thinking about with such a serious face? Du Jun woke up and saw the old man's unpredictable smile. He said again, what you have is only money. You don't have time, power, or human resources. Moreover, if you refuse my offer, not only the construction project but also SMC will disappear. Du Jun thought at this time. He was right, I should only worry when I still have a choice. I have to trust the most consistent point in what he has given me from the beginning until now, which is people. 
maybe you will give me more people. Du Jun replied, the audit position is not possible, sir. The people from Director Sihun will take over that position. The chairman laughed and wanted to hold the key to the warehouse. Du Jun was silent and did not say anything. The chairman stood up and said seriously, Du Jun, those who do construction are capable of embezzling costs to the highest level. They can bring hundreds of workers to work and fire them in the blink of an eye. Do you think that's all? If they change the rough wood worth hundreds of millions of molds with wooden bars worth ten molds, what then? Sihun? Or the person he intends to bring in, do they know how to distinguish rough wood? They even dare to embezzle the weight of steel bars and even the side dishes of the cafeteria. How do you think a person who only knows how to type on a computer like Sihun can protect the warehouse? Du Jun realized this problem at this time. He had never thought of it before. The old man said arrogantly. Du Jun, do you still not understand the meaning of this old man? Du Jun thought at this time. The construction company is the hot spot of corporate corruption in Korea, corruption deals, embezzlement of construction costs, selling bids. He was advising me to grasp everything, right? I have to accept that my body will burst before I can see the truth of his words, right? The old chairman looked at his grandson with a proud smile. He said, if you can comfortably control the executive directors of the construction companies, it means you have learned how to deal with the servants. They will know how to make money for you and when you need to use money from unknown sources, there is no place more reliable than construction companies. The protagonist suddenly understood what he meant. He had only guessed half of his question. It turned out that he meant that when he got construction DA, instead of having to accept getting dirty, he could secure his own black fund. The old man smiled happily at this time. Du Jun also smiled at his cunning grandfather. His grandfather was teaching him these things. The old chairman said again, Tomorrow I will send the audit team of construction Sun Yen to Sihun. They are even worse than the lower level audit companies. They just need to scan the invoices and tax bills to know everything. Du Jun thought that he helped him to this extent. If he couldn't swallow construction DA, it was because he was incompetent. Then Du Jun bowed and said, Thank you, grandfather. The old chairman replied, You should save your gratitude for later, right? Du Jun was confused and looked up. He asked, What do you mean, grandfather? The old chairman replied, you have to understand that these things may also be for the benefit of Sun Yen. Don't play dirty with me and then sit there crying and complaining. The old chairman laughed loudly and looked very happy. Du Jun thought that he always played the game of throwing and releasing. At this time, the scene switched to construction DA company. A few employees were staring at the other side in astonishment. The receptionist was also frozen looking in that direction. There was a group of men walking into the company, led by Mr. Si Hoon, along with Du Jun and a few others. The group of people looked cool and took all the spotlight of the company. At this time, the female employee at the reception desk was also confused looking at them. The fat director ran to Director Si Hoon and asked, What is this? Mr. Si Hoon stroked his chin and replied, Do you want to talk here? Everyone will hear it. The fat director was angry but couldn't say anything. He asked him to go to the meeting room. The fat director held his head and looked at Mr. Si Hoon leisurely walking in. The fat director turned his head and asked, What are you doing? How can you find a buyer in just one night? I said I would solve it today. Mr. Si Hoon replied, The person sitting in the position of executive director hasn't arrived yet? The fat director replied, what do you mean? Mr. Sihun calmly said, it's over. From now on we will care about the rights of shareholders. The fat director looked at Mr. Sihun in confusion. A man in black in Mr. Sihun's group said, Article 14 of the Law on Independent Auditing for Joint Stock Companies states that shareholders or creditors have the right to view the company's documents and records at any time during business hours. 
they can pay the fees set by the company and request the transfer of documents. Did you hear me clearly, Mr. Sihun? Bring all the accounting documents from last year and the year before, along with the evidence files for the past two years, to this meeting room. As a shareholder, I doubt the ability of the executive board. How did you manage the company to let it fall into this situation? I want to investigate it personally. The fat director's face turned pale when he heard that. He stood on his feet and looked at the newcomers. One of them, who was the owner of his company, asked the fat director. What are you waiting for, director? Hurry up and bring the requested documents to this room. Unless you want things to get worse. The fat director was sweating profusely by then. The scene switched to another room, where a loud voice rang out. The people from Fantasy want to audit, so they are waiting in the meeting room. What's going on? I told you to settle it smoothly yesterday. The fat director replied hastily. I clearly stated my intention to sell back the shares. I didn't expect them to stab us in the back like that. The other man said. How do you work like that? It turns out that he is the general director of DA construction company Kong Soon. The fat man was silent and didn't know what to say. Then Kong Mu Soon pressed a series of numbers on the desk phone. He said to the person on the other end. Director, it's me here. Then he panicked. What? Is it the same over there? They also went to the accounting office on that side? The person on the other end also whispered yes. Kong Mu Soon was angry and clenched his phone and cursed those dogs. The fat man asked him then. Is this a trick to raise the share price? Kong Mu Soon frowned and said. Ha! Huh. The fat man continued. Isn't it? Their eyes and expressions were still happy yesterday. They wouldn't do something like this for no reason. The purpose must be money related to stocks, right? Kong Mu Sun stroked his chin and thought. Is it just a show? The fat man stupidly said. Of course it is. External auditing won't help them either. Kong Mu soon frowned again. So what's the conclusion? The fat man answered. I'll take Si Hoon here. You have to break their play. Kong Mu soon crossed his arms and thought. The fat man urged him. You don't have time to hesitate anymore. We have to solve it before things get louder. Kong Mu Sun closed his eyes and said. I know, hurry up and bring him here. The fat man was happy and said yes sir. At that time, in the other office, Director Si Hoon asked him what he said. If the general director has something to say, he should come here that day instead of waiting for us here today. And don't waste time anymore, hurry up and bring the accounting books here. The fat man looked like a crocodile at that time, angry and ashamed. The scene switched again, two brothers from the Kin family sat in a room, the older brother was restless and walked back and forth. The fat man saw that and calmly said. Don't worry. How can those investors from Judo find what we hid in those documents? It seems they are trying to do that to negotiate better, but there is no such easy thing. They don't know what to look for, they will surely call me after being buried in those documents. A lot of documents and books were displayed on the table. Du Jun's people divided themselves to look for traces of their corruption. They are searching very seriously on this side. Everyone is carefully looking for the remaining traces Du Jun looked at the paper in front of him. Someone walked by and said, Director Si Hoon, look at this. It seems like currency speculation. Mr. Si Hoon carefully looked at the paper. The other person continued, moreover, the last transfer amount was not sent back to the country. Mr. Sihun asked, so they ignored the exchange rate and embezzled dollars as well? The other person answered, yes, they pretended to import raw materials to get dollars and then used them to speculate on foreign exchange. The exchange rate is fluctuating now, so they are withdrawing money fiercely. Du Jun on this side asked, was the import of raw materials also a lie? The other person answered, that's right. 
Look at this invoice. You can see that they imported high-end interior equipment such as chandeliers with this quantity. It would need about six containers because of the large quantity, but in fact they only used one container. These guys colluded with the customs. Mr. Sihun looked at the paper for a while and then raised his head and asked, Are you sure? The other person answered, We are sure. We have touched these products more than a hundred times. I don't know what my bowl at home looks like or how many there are, but I know the size and price of these products very well. Mr. Sihun closed his eyes solemnly and did not speak. Then he stood up and said, Let's go to the director's office. Du Jun hurriedly said, Wait a minute. You should call first. Then Du Jun took out his phone and called. The person on the other end of the line answered, What's up? Du Jun answered, You sent all the good people here. They found a huge secret in less than two hours. At this rate, the knife will be in my hand. The old chairman on the other end of the line laughed loudly and said, See? They are all professionals. Du Jun smiled and answered, I have seen it with my own eyes, so I understand very well. The old man said again, I will call the prosecutor's office today. They will bring a search warrant. Du Jun quickly answered, Thank you. Then he hung up happily. He looked at the two people and said cheerfully, Let's go. At this time, Du Jun and the two people arrived at the director's office. The fat man stood up and greeted them, Oh my, why are you here so soon? There is still time to check carefully. Don't you want to see the documents that everyone is looking forward to? Are you impatient? Kamu-san heard that and smiled faintly. Du Jun just looked at them and smiled and then said, Looking at you two like that, I understand why the company is in this situation. Do you think we just turned everything over in the past two hours? The two brothers panicked and asked, Who are you to talk like that? Du Jun smiled and answered, I am the one who just reported the board of directors and the owner of DA Construction to the prosecution. Is that enough to make you talk politely? The two brothers were shocked and stood up quickly. What? Du Jun calmly answered, You must have planted about three or four people in the prosecutor's office, right? If you don't believe me, you can verify it yourself. The two brothers looked at each other and signaled. The fat man ran out of the room to verify what Du Jun said. Kamu Sun was angry and pointed his finger and said, What are you trying to do? If you want to ruin everyone and make the company fail, then your shares will be just a pile of paper. Du Jun looked at him like he was looking at a clown performing. Mr. Sihun also disdainfully replied. At this time, the fat director came back to the room and shouted, Brother, the Financial Investigation Department of the Western Prosecutor's Office has issued an order. Everything is going on in a hurry. It seems that someone is putting pressure on them. Mr. Kang Mu Sun gritted his teeth and cursed. Du Jun said again, after buying back Asin Group and taking over Sun Yan Motor, we should also have some vision. We said we would help each other but you are making trouble. Director Kong, how can you call it bribery when the state officials voluntarily help us? You have experience, so can you give me some advice? Mr. Kong Mu Sun was angry and clenched his teeth, but he couldn't do anything. Du Jun said, the whole family and the board members are banned from leaving the country. Don't think about escaping by plane. At night, accept the investigation. The two brothers of the Khan family were very surprised to hear this. Du Jun turned to the two people and said, Let's go. The two brothers of the Khan family stood still for a long time and couldn't recover their spirits. At this time, Mr. Sihun suddenly said, Oh, by the way, if you are afraid of negotiating with the investigation office, just call me. You know my number, right? Don't make up stories before the investigation. The two brothers of the Kong family were still standing on their feet at this time. At this time, it was dark. Inside the villa of the old chairman, a group of people in black suits sat in the meeting room. The leader was the old chairman. 
he asked who was the youngest person here, the construction director of Sun Yan Hong Kong. He answered, Chairman. I am Director Kim Corset of the Construction Support Department. At this time, Director Kim stood up and bowed. The old chairman was surprised. When did you get promoted? Director Kim answered. I was promoted to director in the spring of last year in the regular evaluation. The old chairman praised him, you got promoted in just one year. You are lucky. Mr. Kim thought to himself, what are you talking about old man? But he still calmly looked at the chairman. The directors below were also shocked. From director to executive director in just one year? The secretary of the chairman answered, everyone will soon move to another company. Of course, that company has better benefits than Sun Yen Construction. The position will also increase by one or two levels. The directors were confused. What is that? Is there such a thing? The people there were shocked to move to another company. The important thing is not to get promoted and get a raise. Moving to another company means they are demoted if it is not a subsidiary company. The secretary continued, the new company is Construction DA. The others were surprised, isn't that company going bankrupt? Moreover, it has no connection with Sun Yen Group. The old chairman spoke up at this time. The old chairman smiled and said, Construction DA will soon be under fantasy's control. You know fantasy, right? Someone answered, isn't that the company that bought back the Asin Group and merged with Sun Yen? The old chairman answered, that's right. That's the investor. They are still working on it now, but in about two months they will become the major shareholder of Construction DA. A bald man with a big belly answered, I heard that DA was about to go bankrupt. The old chairman calmly said, I will take it over before it goes bankrupt and help it recover. He looked at everyone and saw that they were still worried. He said, don't interrupt me when I'm talking. The others quickly bowed their heads. I'm sorry, chairman, they said. The chairman said, it's okay. This is a very unexpected situation, so it's natural for you to react like this. In short, what you need to do is very clear. That is to help DA stabilize as soon as possible. The others replied, yes, chairman. The old chairman closed his eyes and smiled smugly. He said, after DA recovers, it will become a subsidiary of Sun Yen within two years. It will not merge with Sun Yen construction. Everyone, try your best to revive DA. If we merge, we will have to cut many positions, right? It will become another construction company of the group. An old man with glasses interrupted and asked, Chairman, I'm sorry, but what is the relationship between Fantasy and Sun Yen? Is Fantasy an investment company that you founded? His question made the whole meeting room silent. The old chairman just smiled and said, I wish fantasy belonged to me. I heard that the company has a lot of cash. The old man with glasses was still confused and asked, Then what? The chairman crossed his arms and pondered. Lee Hass, the secretary, also did not dare to ask anything. He just wondered if he could guess the answer today. The chairman smiled and answered, The major shareholder of fantasy is someone I trust very much, just like the people here. You can say that he used his own capital to build that company. The secretary was very surprised when he heard the chairman say that. He could only think of Du Jun's image. He clenched his fist. Du Jun, he remembered that person and a mysterious smile appeared on his face. The secretary frowned and thought. The missing piece was completed. Chairman Jean was the kind of person who would never help anyone unless they were his blood relatives. The person who made the chairman trust him and consider him as a key talent of Sun Yen and always supported fantasy to hunt down domestic enterprises was only Du Jun, the nephew of Chairman Jean. Maybe the inheritance of the chairman would be passed on to his nephew instead of his son. The secretary looked at the chairman who was happy on this side. After thinking for a while, he just kept silent and did not say anything. 
At this time, at the prosecutor's office of the Republic of Korea, a pile of documents was placed on the cabinet. Kang Imo's son sat in the office with Du Jun, Mr. Si Hoon and another person. Du Jun said, is there any better condition for Chairman Kong than this condition? Kim Yuzin was silent and did not say anything. Du Jun persuaded him, you have money to live on and you don't need to run away abroad. You can come back anytime or just stay in your homeland Korea. However, if you don't accept this condition, then all the monthly salary paid to your children will also be considered as illegal gifts and will be returned to the company. Kamu Su looked at the mushroom-headed man in front of him who was eating well. He was angry and gritted his teeth. He remembered the scene that day in the messy office. The mushroom-headed man pointed at him and said, Don't you remember? I have stamped the guarantee already. Remember it, old man. Kamu Su cursed angrily, you bastard. How dare you? The mushroom-headed man continued to say, you scum. When the country could collapse at any time, you only cared about foreign words and always felt short of money even though you played soccer when everything was like you did. No one would oppose you when you were executed by hanging. You scoundrel. Kamu-san could only grit his teeth and do nothing. The director calmly offered him a pack of cigarettes. Do you want one? Kamu-san angrily sneered. Why is the dark office doing this to me? The director calmly took a long puff and then opened his mouth. Who do you think is the most powerful person in our country right now? Kamu-san answered. Don't tell me the top has, the director replied. No, right now in our country, whoever holds the dollar will become king. Kamu's son asked in confusion. What are you talking about? The director answered. Fantasy is holding the dollar and negotiating with the government. The director of that company said he would release the dollar if he could take over the DA construction company that is on the verge of bankruptcy. Director Kong has become their prey. Kong Mu Sun felt like the sky was falling when he heard that. The director continued. Moreover, the evidence of your embezzlement is too clear. There are many witnesses, such as leaders, employees, and documents. There is no way to intervene anymore. Kong Mu Sun asked again. Does that mean I will be prosecuted? The director answered. If you want to avoid disaster, you have to know where to stand in line. At this moment, Kang Mu Sun escaped from his memory and looked at Du Jun, thinking to himself. Fantasy? Then he opened his mouth and asked. What do you want? Du Jun answered. Bring all the money you embezzled from the company here. Not a single penny less. We will buy the shares in your family's holdings with that money. You don't have to worry about your old age. Kamu Sun asked again. What about the prosecutor's investigation? At this time, the prosecutor who was eating had finished his meal. Du Jun answered. Of course, they will stop the investigation. Kang Mu Sun was horrified and knew he couldn't beat him. He bowed his head and answered. I will cooperate with you. Keep your promise. Du Jun smiled happily. Finally, he finished his work. Then Du Jun's car sped on the big road. Inside, Si Hoon asked. Roughly, it's about 8 billion won, right? Du Jun answered. That way, we can get at least 150 billion won. Si Hoon answered. According to you, it will be at least 200 billion. Du Jun was shocked. 200 billion won? Si Hoon Engian Zhang answered. Yes. Maybe 8 billion won is from last year. He embezzled everything he could. We have to find it all. Du Jun said indifferently. We can find it. We have to let that old man know that his remaining life is exchanged for money. Si Hoon answered. Even if we find everything, I still feel angry when I think about that scum enjoying his old age with the money from selling shares. Du Jun said. There is no such thing. The money from the shares will all be transferred to the company. Si Hoon was surprised and asked. 
Do you intend to make him a beggar? Is that right? Du Jun answered. That's why I said we have to meet his parents or grandparents or a good grandfather. Si Hoon was speechless when he heard that and looked at the kid Du Jun who finished speaking and looked out the window with a very scheming face. Life is so ridiculous. The world moves in the way I want it to. Those who have money see the world as an amusement park, those who don't see it as hell. I have experienced this saying deeply. The scene changes to this moment. The old chairman held a cup of coffee and asked. Did that gutsy director easily give up his assets? Du Jun answered. He revealed himself that he took 80 billion won. Sun Yan's audit team and Judo's accountants are investigating the past with the help of prosecutors and his staff. They will surely find out more things. The old chairman asked again. Do you plan to pay him when he transfers his shares? That amount of money is not small, you know. Du Jun replied. Anyway, the embezzlement has been exposed, so to avoid being punished, you intend to transfer your son's money to the company as well. The chairman laughed loudly. Director Kong is about to become a beggar. Du Jun frowned. I can't forgive him at all. The old chairman was surprised. Can't forgive him? What made our Du Jun so angry? Du Jun said indignantly. Even though he was late in paying salaries, he just had to pay the employees and I would give him some money to live on. But he only cared about himself and made 2,000 employees endure day by day. Recently, bank loans have been blocked, so many people have used the company's bonds to pay for living expenses. Director Kang Imo soon also had to experience their despair. The old chairman sighed. It's painful. Who could have predicted this? How do you understand the feelings of the wage earners? Du Jun bowed his head and thought. Because I used to be a wage earner too. When I opened my bank account and saw a month's salary cut, my family almost collapsed and fell into a debt spiral. I understand that feeling best. Du Jun answered. I can't forget the expression of the DA employees when I first came there. The old chairman heard that and closed his eyes to think. That's good, don't forget that feeling. No matter what happens, you have to feed the employees. There is nothing sadder than having to starve. Du Jun was surprised and looked up at him. Does he also have this look? He is a cold-blooded person who only cares about costs and only as workers die at the construction site. The old chairman continued to preach. People will betray you when they are starved. Just look at DA now and you'll know right away. All the employees who used to make chi receipts said they would try to find the money that Director Khan was hiding, right? Du Jun realized that indeed his words about not letting the employees starve had another meaning. The old man continued. There are only two types of people who betray you, one is those who are too hungry and can't stand it anymore and two are those who eat endlessly and never feel full. In the past, it was your fault for not taking care of their meals, in the future, it was your fault for not knowing how to look at people. Remember that well. Du Jun heard that and pretended to be serious and replied. Yes, then he thought secretly. He is not moved by compassion but just being cautious. On February 25, 1998, the new president of the Republic of Korea took office and he said, Dear people, very precious and valuable, today I officially become the 15th president of the Republic of Korea. On a beautiful day at a tall and spacious building like any other day, Si Hoon and Du Jun were sitting with some high-ranking officials. Si Hoon said, I'm considering the innocent employees of the DA. If the lenders are more generous, those employees will not be kicked out on the street. The official said, what do you want us to do? At this point, Si Hoon handed out a set of documents. The officials were astonished and took them. Si Hoon continued, you can see clearly from the organizational chart that we have a close relationship with the Sun Yen group. The officials heard that and started whispering to each other loudly. Si Hoon asked, what do you think? 
By now I think you will no longer doubt that an investment company that only knows money can still run a construction company well. The officials still looked at each other and no one spoke up, the one sitting in the middle must be representing everyone and said. I agree that the board of directors is very talented. So what does fantasy want from us? You can present your proposal freely, Si Hoon replied. We hope you can extend the loan term for at least one year, the officials asked. Is there anything else? Si Hoon continued. The second thing is to reduce the overdue interest rate and write off the debt. In addition, please transfer the voting rights of DA's shares that the bank is holding, the officials looked at each other when they heard that. The fat man said. Then the shares are the only way to check and control the business of the debtor. You want us to give you the shares? Si Hoon confidently said. What can stop a lunatic like DA? We will return the shares when we regain our position. After he said that, everyone fell silent. The representative of the bank's board of directors said that it would take time to discuss the matter. Is there anything else? Si Hoon quickly answered no, but at this time Du Jun spoke up. I heard that you are going to sell two commercial banks. Considering the administrative aspect, it would be fair for everyone to get Seoul Young Bank, which can revive strongly. Si Hoon was surprised and looked at Du Jun in astonishment. Although he was on the same side, the bank director said that was true, there were actually two places that were more dangerous than that. Hearing that, Du Jun asked about Seoul Dong Bank. The staff of Seoul Dong Bank are small in scale, so it will be easy to guess, right? Next, the government is promoting international trade, isn't that a good opportunity? Si Hoon sat on one side and did not expect the kid to say that. The bank directors asked. Do you intend to buy back Seoul Dong Bank? Du Jun was hit in the heart. He just sneered. Then he said, I mean you can take advantage of us. We will buy it back and then hand it over to you. The two heads of the bank began to think and look at each other. The subordinates also looked at each other in horror when they heard that. Even Si Hoon was very surprised by what he had said so far. Then Du Jun stood up and dusted his hands and said, That's it for today. I hope you can quickly respond to our director's proposal. The directors did not understand what was going on when they saw him turn his face so fast. At this time, Du Jun had stood up and left with a very confident smile. Si Hoon did not understand what was going on and ran after him and asked. What are you talking about? Buy back the bank? Du Jun replied confidently. When a whale appears, other fish will see it as a pyramid. Isn't that right? Because I want to buy back Seoul Young Bank, they will feel that our proposals are just trivial matters. Those trivial proposals will be easier to accept. Si Hoon was amazed by his nephew's calculations and thoughts. Oh my god, this nephew of mine. He is exactly like his uncle in using tricks. Then he laughed and praised his good strategy. Du Jun smiled inwardly and thought of a good strategy. I wonder how he would react if he knew. I really want to buy back Seoul Young Bank. At this time, at the building of Sun Yen Group, his uncle was holding a paper with the name of a personnel appointment in his hand. He thought to himself that the directors of the construction company resigned en masse but did not inform him why. His subordinate reported that Director Hong Song Trio had received instructions from the chairman sir. The recruitment of executive director Bok Che Jin was also decided by Director Hong. The people who resigned were working at Fantasy's office in Yodo. The chairman was very surprised when he heard about Fantasy and Si Hoon's name. His subordinate answered, Yes, sir, both Soon Yen Motor and this matter are sure Fantasy has a close relationship with the chairman, sir. His uncle had a headache thinking that Fantasy could not be his father's gold mine. If his father had a gold mine, he would not make a fuss about it for everyone to know. He angrily asked his subordinate, is there no other news? The subordinate said fearfully, I'm sorry, chairman. They ordered us to keep quiet for a while, so I can only say that everything is still unclear. 
Why don't you go and see the vice chairman yourself? The chairman said angrily, They are all my people. There is no one worth asking. The subordinate then asked, What about Director Kim Huen Sheet? He is still young to be considered your person, right? It seems that he was recently promoted to the board of directors. He is trying to hold on to the rope, so if the vice chairman calls him, he will surely run here. The chairman then ordered his subordinate to invite him for dinner and not to make a fuss. Then there was the lavish dinner of the vice chairman. He poured wine and said, Congratulations on your promotion. I'm late to wish you. Kim Huen Sheet stood up nervously and replied, No, vice chairman. The vice chairman then asked, You resigned right after being promoted? Kim said, I'm sorry, vice chairman. I have to prepare urgently, so I haven't had time to greet you properly. The vice chairman pretended to be happy and said, Whether you work outside or inside, you are still a person of Sun Yen. What else? He paused for two seconds to observe Kim Huen Sheet's face. Then he asked further, Do you feel tired working with Director Si Hoon? Kim replied, I'm fine. He has lived abroad for a long time, so he is very straightforward. The vice chairman thought to himself, looking at his attitude, he must not be on guard. Let me start slowly. He then asked aloud, Do you mean that the work is progressing fast? Director Kim Huen Sheet explained, Yes. The day of buying DA construction is coming. Dan and moved to Nam Media City and also has a clear idea. The detailed plan is done. The construction period and total cost are calculated. It can be completed in half a year. The vice chairman then said, You think buying DA construction is a digital city? What is he talking about? At this point, Kim continued, Do June? The head of the department is also Do June. He is very good. Sometimes I feel that he is leading us instead of learning. He is truly the chairman's blood. The vice chairman heard the name Jin Do June and got angry. Why is that kid there? He asked, There is also Do June? Head of department? I heard it for the first time. Kim was surprised and asked, You don't know? It's nothing. He just followed Director Si Hoon to help deliver business cards. The chairman didn't believe that Du Jun was learning from Director Si Hoon. He said, It's the first time I heard that our youngest grandson followed Director Si Hoon to learn. What did he learn there? Kim laughed and said, Oh, I'm sorry. I misspoke. The vice chairman laughed and continued, It's okay. I'm too busy to pay attention to what our nephew is doing. Don't worry, just speak freely. Kim said, You must have guessed it without the chairman telling you, right? His goal is to become an investor and MNA expert. The vice chairman then asked further, Like Director Si Hoon? Kim didn't think anything and answered yes. Hearing this, the vice chairman smiled wickedly. He thought to himself that even if he didn't join Sun Yen and only postpone his investment in m and outside, he was still just a merchant of Sun Yen. He had no chance to play with power. Then he said, Actually, I thought there would be a grandson who would be a prosecutor. It's really the power of blood. Then he picked up the bottle of wine and poured Kim another glass and continued, I also want to hear your thoughts. Will the DA construction project go smoothly? I heard it's a big project, but since it's an outside project, I don't care. Kim innocently replied, the project has no obstacles. Don't worry. This is a trillion one project. There can't be any mistakes. The vice chairman heard that and remembered his father and wondered what his father was thinking. We were stunned for a while until Kim called us back to our senses. He pretended to answer yes and then continued, even if that project succeeds well, it's hard to combine with Sun Yen to back. Fantasy will surely buy it back. Kim hesitated and said, that's right. But the chairman said differently. The vice chairman heard his father's intention and quickly listened attentively. He pretended to say that he was just talking about work and nothing else. Eat quickly. 
Seeing that Kim only silently picked up food and didn't say anything else, the vice chairman thought he was too obvious. Looking at his face like that, he must have decided something strange. It's hard to hide it anymore. The next day, the story continued at the Sun Yen building. The second son of his uncle was sitting in his room when someone came in. Seeing his eldest brother come in, the second son was annoyed and asked, What are you doing here? Didn't you call me first? But the eldest brother still calmly sat down on the sofa and said, I have something to discuss with you. Why are you unhappy? No, I'm still annoyed. But no one who works in the office next door has ever come in here. But today you came, so I feel strange. The eldest brother heard that and just smirked but didn't say anything. The second son said again, I guess you didn't mean to stop by and say hello to me, did you? Just say what you want. The eldest brother replied, yes. Do you know that the director of Sun Yen Construction Company resigned en masse? The younger brother answered, yes, that made the company's whisper big and small. The older brother heard that and was annoyed. He asked if he knew why. The younger brother cautiously replied, I just heard rumors. I'm not sure. The older brother then asked, is it related to director Si Hoon of Fantasy? The younger brother answered, yes, I heard they all went to work at Jawandu. The older brother heard that and knew that his reasoning was correct. He thought to himself, Jin Donkey's ears and eyes are really many. He must have known that this was to buy DA construction. Then he asked, Do you know what kind of relationship there is between father and fantasy and Sihun? He was surprised and asked, What are you talking about? What did you notice? His brother angrily asked, Don't you care about your cousin? But he calmly replied, It's not time yet. His uncle asked impatiently, Why not? He answered, I think it's because Junzi's father loves Du Jun very much. Of course, he also values Junzi. Besides, he is good at making money now. Maybe his father wants to give him something. He probably thinks that if he gives Sun Yan's shares to him, you or I can take them back. His brother was furious and asked, Is that a fantasy thing? But he said, I heard that Si Hoon is Junzi's friend. His father invested in that company. Maybe he is trying to improve some things there and make it grow more. Then he will give it to Junzi. He must think that we can't touch it. His brother was still annoyed and said, Is that why he gave him the construction company and the car company? Don't you think he gave Johnny too much? He still said casually, Oh, you mean DA construction? Its scale is only half of Sun Yen construction. It's not like he split up Sun Yen construction and gave it to him. Hearing his brother's speculation, he smiled sarcastically and said, You seem so calm. I guess you don't know what the first project that DA is planning to do this year is? He was annoyed and thought to himself, as he said, I don't know what they are planning to do. Does he know? Then his brother said, I know you are curious but too proud to ask. So let me tell you. The project that DA is planning to do is a project worth thousands of billions of won. He was shocked when he heard such a large amount of money. He stood up and asked again, Did you just say a project worth thousands of billions? His brother calmly answered, Yes, if the project succeeds, DA might be on par with Sun Yen construction. We should check why his father gave it to someone else. He was still stunned by the shocking news, but he replied, how can there be a project worth thousands of billions in this country? And it's a project of a bankrupt company like DA? They should pay their debts first. His brother replied, But what if the person who drew this picture and directed everything is his father? He looked at his brother suspiciously and wondered if he was lying or telling the truth. He couldn't tell by looking at him. His brother continued, His father gave Yoji a car company. What about a business worth thousands of billions? Can we consider it as a gift for Junzi? He was more angry as his brother spoke more. He clenched his fists and shouted, What are you trying to say? What do you want me to do? 
His brother calmly answered, ask his father who he wants to protect. Why does he want to protect him in the battle for Sun Yin? We are enough for him, right? I still want to go crazy when I hear what my brother says. My uncle can't control himself anymore and yells. He always does that. Whenever something happens, the boys come and whine to dad. Aren't you afraid dad will get bored? My brother just stays silent, listens to me, then thinks for a while. Then he says, then let me go and cry to dad alone. But if you and I are with him, why don't we complain? My sister told dad to reveal the business situation so we can help. What do you think, my younger brother, after venting your anger, then stand still and ponder what he says? My brother continues, if we tell dad we will buy back DA and try our best to make the project successful, then it means we come to work, not to complain. If we don't want dad to see our appearance, running to find dad and tell him our troubles, we should exchange information. I see my brother act so superior, then I get very annoyed. Then I calm down, sit down and say, it's not Junji, I talk to him, this is not what Junji wants. He wants to give Du Jun something. My brother asks in surprise, Junji? Didn't expect that, huh? I reply, he is also a father. If he had ambitions with Sun Yen, he wouldn't need to say that. We just need not to make him sad. Compared to Junzi and Du Jun who seem more powerful. Dad values Du Jun very much. The kid has never disappointed Dad. My brother replies, it's not Du Jun either. It seems Dad will train Du Jun to become an expert in finance, investment and m and I ask again, are you sure? My brother confirms firmly, that's right, the kid is under Sihun's school to learn more. I say again, if you can't think of anyone else, Suunji would have been kicked out long ago. And going through Rome there is no way to squeeze in. My brother is also at a loss because he can't think of a suitable name. Then the two brothers fall silent. Don't know who the last person behind is. That night at the chairman's mansion he asked his two sons, You two asked me what relation I have with fantasy, ha? Huh? The two sons both kept silent and didn't answer their father. At this time the chairman was very annoyed. The chairman raised his voice and called, Hey eldest son then again to the other son, Hey fifth you have to distinguish whether the other side is holding a knife or we are holding roses ha. Huh? You two don't think about whether you have the right to discuss becoming the heir of Sun Yen group or not ha. Huh? The two sons were surprised by their father's question. Then the chairman said again, Don't remember ha. Huh? How just three to four months ago, they came with a billion dollars and said they would exchange it for our money, including the exchange fee. Even including the shares of the group that Sun Yang Motor is holding. Never seen such a blatant robber in my life. Yet you two dare to ask, do I have any relation with them or what? The eldest son sweated profusely on his back and didn't dare to speak. The second son asked, if you don't know then why did you accept such an unfair deal? The chairman asked back, what if you didn't accept? The second son thought wrong, then at that time the company's situation couldn't last for ten days. Not to mention we also once despaired that the company would go bankrupt. At that time even if it was an unreasonable request we had to accept it anyway. Then he bowed his head to his father and said, I'm sorry dad I misspoke. The chairman heard that but his face was still very unhappy. He continued, I gave Sun Yen Motor and some group shares to overcome the IMS crisis. You two don't feel too wrong now the eldest son finally spoke up but sir we don't need to lend a hand to a robber holding a knife. The annoyed father answered, before you want to argue with me, you two should think about why I did that, right? How ridiculous. You two dare to discuss my decision. The two sons heard that and quickly denied, don't misunderstand us, we don't mean that. We ask to understand your thoughts better. The chairman continued, what is it called? When there was a war, they created a huge wooden horse with many soldiers inside. The wooden horse of Troy. The eldest son asked in horror, so you're sending Sun Yang's people at the same time? The chairman smiled slyly and said, 
of course, I have to get back both the capital and the profit. The two sons then realized that it was like that. In the end, we are just some big kids who only complain to our father at the age of 50. But you haven't answered the matter of Du Jun and construction DA. The chairman said, fantasy is taking advantage of us. They will use our power and relationships to swallow construction DA and carry out a big project. They will grow bigger. After growing bigger, construction DA will invade Aki Group. Then we will take over Akimoto Group. Although we lost Sunyan Motor, we have to consider Akimoto Group and Construction DA as the profit, right? The eldest son felt like he was stupid. The chairman continued, I don't know the exact time, but maybe you two will be the ones who do it. The eldest son was overjoyed and said, I will remember your words. But the second son was still thinking about something else. He knew that this was not everything. There was something that his father didn't say. What is it? His father always pretended to say everything but actually hid things secretly. Surely his father still had something he didn't tell. Then he asked his father. Although we get back Aki Group and Construction DA, the owner is not Sun Yen. The chairman didn't understand what his second son was saying. The second son continued, Sun Yen Motor has been separated completely. I think it would be better to give it to Junzi. Of course, we have to get back to the Aki group first. The chairman was very surprised when he heard his second son mention his youngest son Junzi. The eldest brother also didn't expect his half-brother to be so stupid. Then the second son pretended to be kind and said bluntly, give it to Du Jun. After thinking about it, none of us are as smart as Du Jun. Junzi has no ambition so he always feels guilty for not creating opportunities for Du Jun. The eldest brother stood aside and clenched his teeth and thought, this guy dares to surpass even the eldest grandson of this family. The chairman didn't expect his son to love his nephew so much. He was silent as if observing his two sons. He knew that Yankee was the eldest son so he had a lot of influence on others while Junzi was the second son but he liked the way he had everything and handled everything in secret. But who was protecting them here when they were just people who could only open their eyes and watch their young nephew take over the company? Then the chairman called his second son's name. The second son hurriedly answered. He was annoyed and asked. Where did you learn the habit of treating my things as yours? The second son pretended to be kind and didn't expect to be scolded. He quickly bowed his head and said, I'm sorry, I misspoke because I felt sorry for Du Jun. Then the chairman said, that's enough. I've heard everything you two want to say so go away. Remember what I told you, think of a way to get back what was stolen. My two obedient sons nodded and said, yes, sir. The chairman continued, at the end of this month, they will announce the second startup of the Achen Group. You should also participate and send your congratulations. Sihun, don't forget to encourage Director Cho to Ho. He has to work hard to resist in another place. Then he looked sadly at his two sons and said softly, and watch how Sun Yen, our motorcycle, falls into the hands of others. Do you understand? Then his eldest son and his second son each had a different expression. He knew what they meant but said nothing more. Then they turned around and left. After the two sons had gone out, the old chairman sighed tiredly. He thought to himself, protecting my grandson from those wild dogs is not easy. I'm old and I have to lie. Then at the ceremony to announce the second startup of the Akin Group and the inauguration of the company director, he spoke to greet the guests. Thank you for taking your precious time to come here and make our day complete. Once again I stand in this position after bringing Achimoto to a dangerous situation. He paused for a moment, pretending to be moved, and then continued, A young enterprise always looks to the future, always prepares carefully to achieve the impossible, realizes its dreams with creative thinking and strong will. This is the appearance we have to try to find again from now on. We will leave Achimoto and Sun Yen in the past and replace them with a new name, H.W. 
we will try to help this place last forever. That day at the large mansion of the chairman, he was surprised to see who came today. Du Jun walked in with surprise. He stood by his grandfather and put on a good grandson's face. His grandfather asked, Why are you here so early? The party is just getting started. Du Jun politely thanked him for making him the owner of the Aki group. How can I enjoy it alone? I want to invite my grandfather for a glass of wine to celebrate. The chairman looked at his grandson and asked, Why did you bring wine from a bankrupt company here? Du Jun just smiled when he heard his old grandfather say that. Then he said, This is a wine that contains 70 years of history that Chairman John Coes, the founder of Pedro Brand, never expected that this wine would last for 70 years. Moreover, even though the company went bankrupt, these wines are still widely sold. Then he looked at his grandfather and assured him that Pedro wine would not disappear. The old man took the bottle and said, even if the owner changes, the product will not disappear. Then he looked carefully at the label of the bottle. The old man continued, I'm very pleased with that statement. Let's have a drink. Du Jun thought to himself, maybe he has figured out what I want to say, that Pedro wine is the future of Sun Yen. Well, a little different, that if we share blood, then the owner can be changed, right? Then the chairman raised his glass and said, Congratulations to my grandson. I'm very proud of you. When I was your age, I only had a few pieces of gold, but now you have what I had at 40 when you're only 20. Du Jun heard that and stood up to thank him. Because you didn't get a farm from your grandfather when you were 10 like me. He bowed his head and said, Thank you very much for everything. It's all thanks to you. The old man replied, No pain at all. The grandsons of the Chable groups in Korea own farms worth tens of millions when they are 10 years old like you. They are all 23 to 10 now and many of them only know how to have fun and enjoy themselves. Only I can help that farm increase by a hundred thousand times what I have now. It's not because of me, but you have created the miracle. You have the right to be proud. Du Jun stood and listened to the old man praise him and smiled. Suddenly today this old man was cheerful and cute in a strange way. Then the old man drank a glass of wine and said, I used to drink this kind of wine a lot, but now I can't taste it. Du Jun held the glass of wine in his hand and thought, me too. I used to think it was fun to drink this kind of wine and eat pork belly, but now I don't have that taste anymore. At this time, the old man asked about the situation of DA construction. Du Jun replied, I'm negotiating with the bank. Both sides are making concessions. The administration department is also calculating the exact amount of money. They are also recovering the money embezzled by Director Kang Mo Sung. The chairman pretended to sympathize and said to the police, it's hard work. Du Jun replied, I'm very grateful for your support but Director Khan still refuses to pay for the shares even though the police said they would arrest his daughter and nephew for embezzling funds. Du Jun exclaimed to the old man, money is scary. He still clings to it even though he's dying. The chairman heard his nephew say that and paused for a moment and said, no, it's not. Du Jun was very surprised. The chairman continued, the money from the shares is his last weapon. He thinks that he will withdraw it only once at the decisive moment. Du Jun asked in surprise, but doesn't Director Kong have much time left? The chairman replied, if his family is arrested and convicted, the money from the shares will be used to pay fines, right? Du Jun answered, yes. How can he still have a chance? Hearing this, the old chairman laughed, showing his worldly experience. Du Jun was dumbfounded as he listened to the old chairman explain, that money will go to the state treasury. You can't touch it either. Du Jun thought to himself, although he still didn't understand what he meant, but if he returned the money from the shares to DA, Director Kong and his family would avoid being arrested. And if he still resisted, the money from the shares would go to the state treasury, his family would be arrested, the first choice was wiser. Anyone could see that he had no chance left. 
so why did his grandfather say he still had a chance? At this time, the chairman spoke up and said, you are being drawn into meaningless emotions. And letting go of the money, the old man looked at his nephew and said, it seems you have forgotten the spirit of a businessman. Then Du Jun panicked and said, meaningless emotions? No way. I only think about money. DA construction will be normalized again thanks to that money. At this time, the old chairman shouted two words of righteousness, making Du Jun shudder. The old man continued, you are feeling indignant because of righteous emotions. Director Kong and his family can steal money from a collapsing company to live comfortably, while not paying wages to employees, they absolutely cannot be forgiven, right? The old Director Kong is treating you as a businessman. He believes that you will try to make a proposal to squeeze more money out of him so he has been resisting until now. Du Jun was extremely surprised when he heard his grandfather say that. The chairman continued, what does it matter how other people live or think? A businessman must think of ways to get money from other people's pockets into his own pocket even if it's just one penny. Du Jun felt like he was collapsing when he heard those cruel words. He remembered himself. My anger towards Director Kang Mo Soon was because I saw my past in the image of the DA employees. At this time, the chairman said, from now on, think carefully. How much money do you have to leave in Director Kang's pocket to make him accept your offer? After saying that, the old man breathed out, probably because he was tired from talking. Du Jun then asked, so you mean you want me to leave some money for Director Kang's family and help him escape the crime? The old man laughed and said, that's right. If he agrees to return half of the money from selling the company shares, then he can be considered repentant and can reduce his sentence. It's a very good scenario. Du Jun was very angry when he heard the old man say these words. He was very uncomfortable but didn't know what to do. When he was angry, the chairman said as if he knew his thoughts, don't think of any other way. Don't think of keeping the money first and then dealing with Director Kong later. I tell you again, you should only think of money unless Director Kong is not a threat to you. Otherwise, don't bother. Du Jun was startled that the old man was so sharp. He seemed to know his thoughts well. He bowed his head and said, I will remember your words. I will decide according to the businessman's way. After saying that, Du Jun was almost desperate. He didn't expect to become like this one day. The old man looked at his grandson and wanted to say something but then stopped. The next day at a prison that looked like in a movie, the sun shone brighter than outside. Du Jun sat opposite Director Kong and asked politely, Is the prison food to your taste? Director Kong answered casually, I underestimated a company that I had never seen or heard of like fantasy, so I had to suffer this fate. Du Jun was very annoyed to see him arrogant even in prison. He secretly judged that he still looked comfortable. Maybe he still had a sharp weapon as his grandfather said. Then he said, the visiting time is not long, so I will convey Director Si Hoon's words. He asked, do you intend to return all the money from selling the shares to the company or give all the shares to the company? Director Kong answered arrogantly, I know what you guys want to say so get lost. Du Jun sighed when he heard him say that and continued, the prosecution only investigated this far. The execution of the sentence will be arranged by us. We will give you the position of advisor for DA. I heard that the advisor's salary is very generous. Just cooperate well in the future. The old director Kong remained silent and listened. At this time Du Jun continued, we will help you remove the label of shameless that has been ingrained in your bones by the company. It was all a misunderstanding. You were only smeared with your reputation while trying for the company. We saw your goodwill and wanted to invite you back as a communication advisor. We will use eloquent words to make a splash in public opinion. After saying that, he looked at him and thought that he was old so he must care about his reputation. Although the advisor position of DA was not very impressive, it was better than being called a criminal with a record. 
Moreover, he was a superman who knew that his reputation and money would both decrease if he wanted to fight to the end. Sure enough, at this time Director Kong spoke up and said, Director Sihun is really meticulous. How do you guys plan to handle the money I hold from the company? Shouldn't an advisor get more money? Hearing the old man brazenly say that, Du Jun just replied that he also had to pay a lot of taxes. Director Kong heard him say that and laughed out loud. He suddenly stood up and reached out his hand and said, Paying taxes honestly is a citizen's duty. I hope you can help. Then Du Jun also reached out and shook hands with the old man who stole money from the company. He replied that he would prepare a contract for the advisor position. That afternoon at Si Hoon's building. Si Hoon could not hide his annoyance and asked Du Jun, why is Kondimo son our advisor? Du Jun answered, yes. He said he would give up all his shares and only get an advisor's salary, although his salary is quite high. Si Hoon asked again, are you sure he accepted that condition? Du Jun calmly replied, anyway, his whole family can't escape prison, so he agreed to use all the money from the shares as a fine. He probably realized that it was better to split the money than to fight to the end. Si Hoon asked again, how much do you want to pay him? Du Jun had an answer ready. He wants a salary equal to 3% to 4% of the share value and will receive it for 10 years. Si Hoon thought for a while and said, that's a lot of money, but I guess it's for his own protection. But his salary will be much higher than the director's salary. Du Jun just smiled and said, it will be higher at first. Si Hoon was surprised and did not understand what he meant at first. Du Jun explained, for the first few months, I will pay him as promised, then I will reduce it gradually. He will also have to suffer when he doesn't get paid. Si Hoon just looked at him because he didn't understand how Du Jun would reduce it, but Du Jun continued, the country is in trouble until the project makes a profit. Everyone has to tighten their belts. You know that he always tells his employees that he will pay them the remaining salary based on the actual situation. At that time, Du Jun was sitting on a plain seat reading a book. The man next to him was Assistant Kim who looked around in confusion. Du Jun saw that and said, You can relax. The service here is paid by me. You can order whatever you want to eat or drink alcohol. The flight time is quite long, so you can drink a glass of wine and take a nap. Assistant Kim quickly agreed and then said, There is something related to Deputy Director Jin John Jun. Du Jun asked, Mr. John Jun? Assistant Kim answered, Yes, he was appointed as the director of Cho's construction company Sun Yen. Actually, he wanted to be the executive director of the electronics company, but Vice President Jin Zuan Ki ignored his request. Du Jun left the board of directors, so there should be many positions available. He should at least get the executive director position. That's too cruel. Assistant Kim continued, I heard that the construction company is not bad, but it's not as sweet as the electronics company, right? Du Jun turned to him and asked, what do you think? Who has more power between the director of the electronics company Sun Yen and the permanent director of the construction company Sun Yen? Assistant Kim scratched his head and answered, I don't know. Anyway, the main position in the electronics company Sun Yen should have more authority. Du Jun heard that and muttered something to himself. Then he said, things like driving, working hard, reporting on changes in the company can be done by anyone among thousands of employees of Sun Yen as Assistant Kim Assistant Kim was surprised but still listened quietly. Du Jun said again, I once told you an Assistant Kim. Or Manager Shin has a business relationship with him. What do you think you should do to overcome this relationship and gain trust? Manager Kim heard that and thought something to himself but remained silent. Du Jun continued to say, don't just report what happened, but also judge the situation at that time. Why did this happen? What will change and what will happen in the future? Because of this, I want to hear those thoughts from you. Assistant Kim bowed his head and thought, then answered, yes. Then he heard Du Jun continue to say, 
Only when your judgments are accurate and more often accurate, then you can create trust. The deal makers can change at any time, but nothing can replace trust. Assistant Kim bowed his head and said, I will remember what you said. Du Jun heard that and smiled lightly, then said further, I'm not grading you, don't feel sad. Assistant Kim said, No, it's because I can't get rid of the thinking of a runner. Thank you for your advice or warning. Du Jun was silent and didn't say anything, just silently hoped that he would remember these words. There were many people who showed determination, but those who used actions to show determination were very rare. At this time, the plane continued to fly towards the other side of the horizon. The next morning at Hyge University of Iran, the scene switched to the inside of the document room of the school. There were many types of newspapers and books stacked on the floor and on the chairs. Du Jun and another man were in the room. The fat man asked, Why do Hollywood magicians want to meet me? I'm just a person struggling with mathematical formulas. He was A.M. Sama. Du Jun answered, Hollywood is just a part of our investment project. We are always interested in new companies with many features and new technologies. Mr. Sama asked, Are you interested in Conitans or Say? Du Jun answered, Can you explain it to me? Sama heard that and was a bit thoughtful, then explained, Conitenser is a three-dimensional optical solution that can measure the accuracy of metal parts or assembly details. It is the name of the solution and also the name of the company. Du Jun smiled, I don't fully understand it yet, but it's okay. This person is a genius professor and every product he makes is famous. I will add his company to my list. Mr. Sama was surprised and said, what? Du Jun answered, yes, the reason I came to see the professor is because I'm interested in the technology that provides income information from cameras to users within the minimum digital range. How astonished Mr. Samira was, he asked, how did you know? Du Jun said, I once read an article about artificial intelligence and computer vision. Well, not exactly read. An employee in the company showed me the article. I only understood the general concept. Mr. Sama asked, Do you think that concept is so amazing that it can surpass other continents? Du Jun answered, It depends on where the technology is applied. The value will vary. Have you thought of any fields yet? Mr. Sama stroked his chin and said, Of course I have, but I'm also curious about your thoughts. Du Jun replied seriously, The eyes of a car. Mr. Sama was very astonished to hear that. Du Jun continued, I tried to imagine a car that applied your technology. If a small camera collects information from the area around the car and informs the driver within a minimum range, then it will warn before contacting the outside. What if the camera on the rear shock absorber projects the whole scene onto the monitor inside? Then the driver doesn't have to turn his head back when reversing or parking. What if the front camera calculates accurately the distance with the car ahead? Then the accidents will be significantly reduced. It can also brake automatically when it receives a traffic light signal. Mr. Sama said, I will try to improve the lane recognition ability. That will prevent drifting out of lane. If we convert analog data to digital, we can put it into the car system. Du Jun smiled and said, That's right. The ultimate goal you want is a self-driving car. Mr. Samo was so excited that he stood up. Du Jun opened his mouth and said, Let's get to the main point now. Mr. Samo wondered, What main point? Du Jun said, The reason why I crossed the sea to come here. Mr. Samo crossed his arms and said, I only have the concept and basic theory. Do you want to invest? Du Jun said, I haven't mentioned the investment conditions yet, but don't be too surprised. Mr. Sama was surprised and opened his eyes wide. Wait a minute. The possibility of developing a self-driving car is very low. It only appears in science fiction movies. Well, of course it is possible in theory, but I don't know when it can be used in reality. Du Jun smiled mysteriously and said, What could be happier than turning dreams into reality? 
The name of our company is Fantasy. Mr. Samo was speechless. Du Jun stood up and walked toward the door. He said, I'm staying at Sio Tun Hotel. You can think carefully about the investment conditions and contact me anytime. Oh, and Conitenser too. Goodbye, Professor. The professor was still stunned. He regained his senses and said, Goodbye, Du Jun. I'll contact you. Du Jun left the room without answering. He would soon become a major shareholder of a company worth over 10 trillion won that owns the core technology of self driving cars. He would accept any proposal he made. He would use the technology he got here to increase Asin Motors' market share in Korea and compete with high tech cars abroad. The scene shifts to the villa of the old chairman. The old man is angry and asks the kid why he went to that dangerous place. Du Jun smiles and answers. I'm fine now, sir. The old man continues, I tried hard not to call you. I didn't want to disturb your work. Du Jun replies, You can call me anytime. I just went for some fresh air. The old man says, You went all the way to the other side of the earth for some fresh air? I won't ask you anything, so don't give me any empty words. Du Jun smiles faintly. The old man continues, that's not the reason why I wanted to see you urgently. At this moment, someone knocks on the door of the room. The chairman's daughter enters. She says, oh, Du Jun is here too. The old man sees the couple coming and says, sit down. I have something to announce. The old man looks serious and says, son-in-law Choi, do you have any problems with your nomination for the soul market? Choi answers, no, sir. Everything is going smoothly. Du Jun observes them and thinks to himself, they look very happy. They must have achieved their first step. Market expansion is inevitable. The old chairman says, I'm sorry to say this, but there is something you need to know. It seems that the ruling party has chosen Go Khan Zone as their candidate for the mayor of Seoul. The couple is shocked. Du Jun thinks, Go Khan Zone was the ruling party's candidate who won the second local election in my previous life. He has met a big opponent. The old chairman looks at his nephew Du Jun and says with a smile, It seems that you wasted your money, Du Jun. Du Jun asks, But sir, how do you know that? I haven't seen any news about it. The old chairman answers, How do I know? That Goka Zone called me this morning. He asked me how to join the ruling party. Du Jun wonders why he needs his permission. The old chairman says, he used my money to climb up to that position. Of course he needs my approval before he dares to compete with my son-in-law. I also wanted to hear him say that he won't interfere too much. Du Jun thinks disdainfully, that smile. He is enjoying this situation.